You simply led the whole class of students to work part-time abroad, scaring global criminals into panic and causing even the notorious dark web to shut down immediately. It's all because the part-time job you did was slightly different from normal people. During the summer vacation, you all went abroad to become mercenaries. In just 10 days, your graduating mercenary organization made waves globally, with many prominent tycoons willing to spend a fortune just to have you protect them for a few days. And now, you will face the most challenging task of this part-time job rescuing the citizens of Dragon Kingdom who have been kidnapped by criminals, against a group of extremely vicious and well-equipped criminals. At this moment, as you are asking Uncle Zhang for useful clues, Uncle Zhang is sitting beside you looking around anxiously, seeming to have some concerns and unwilling to say anything. Instead, he stands up to bid you farewell and hastily leaves. Just as Uncle Zhang reaches the other side of the street, a group of masked armed men suddenly rush out and tie him up. You hurry to run towards Uncle Zhang's position, but you are still a step too late as the armed men have already loaded Uncle Zhang onto a van and driven away. Witnessing this scene, the top student Yang Lu remains calm and smiles, picking up a tablet to look at. It turns out she was prepared in advance and had hidden a tracker on Uncle Zhang. Other team members curiously gather around, looking at the tablet in her hand, which displays a satellite map with clear streets, showing a moving red dot on one of the streets. You remain calm, turning to Yang Lu and ask, where are they? The armed men are making a left turn, 240 meters away from us, and the car is traveling at 55 kilometers per hour. Yan Lu immediately reports the relevant data information. Soon, you return to the street food stall where you had your meal earlier. Without a word, you jump into the car parked by the roadside. Start the engine. The other team members quickly follow suit, each jumping into a car. Yan Lu continues to report the positions of Uncle Zhang and the enemies. They are 710 meters away from us. The car stops at a traffic light. I transmit the tracking data to you. You can view it on your phone. Following the tracker, you leave the bustling downtown area and drive to the desolate outskirts. Seeing this, you immediately command. Everyone stop, retrieve weapons from the trunk, and move forward. Everyone retrieves their weapons, reloads their magazines, and sets off again. At this moment, Yang Lu alerts. The enemies have stopped, approximately 500 meters away. Upon hearing this, you directly slow down the car. Glance at your phone screen. The satellite map indicates that it should be a banana plantation, appearing to be one of the criminal's hideouts. Your car rapidly approaches the destination. You remind everyone to check their weapons and gear, preparing for battle. The fighting spirit of each person ignites at this moment. Adrenaline surges in their bodies, and their focus greatly increases. You hide the car in the banana grove by the roadside, and you start to quietly walk forward with your team members. Paying attention to the surrounding environment and being careful of ambushes. Shueba, let the drone take off. And you give instructions to the team members. Yang Lu took out a miniature drone from the equipment bag on her back. And soon the drone transmitted reconnaissance images back. There were indeed small wooden houses hidden in the banana grove. Outside these houses, there are about three armed criminals guarding. And Zhang Xu's van is parked outside. At this moment, the van's door is opened. And several armed criminals get off the car. Dragging Zhang Xu whose head is covered with a black hood, down from the car and directly into the house. Seeing this situation, all team members become nervous, and you immediately command to act separately and move forward quickly. Kianlian, monkey, you are responsible for dealing with the enemies outside. The situation inside the house has not been confirmed yet, and we don't know how many enemies are inside. Don't rush in. You look at Yang Lu, who shows a puzzled expression. You then command Yang Lu to check the situation inside the house with the mini robot dog in the equipment box. Upon hearing this, Yang Lu immediately rummages through the equipment box, takes out the mechanical dog, and everyone quickly moves along the banana grove. Soon arriving at the periphery of the small wooden house, Qianlian is already in position, and the voice of sniper Wang Shichuan comes through the communicator. Yang Lu shares the latest intelligence obtained by the drone reconnaissance with each of you. The latest confirmation is that there are a total of five enemies outside the house three in the front and two in the back. Did you hear that, Qianlian? It's up to you. Understood. Wang Shichang activates the scope, locking onto one of the enemies. At this moment, Yang Lu wastes no time and immediately releases the robot dog. The fist-sized robot dog advances stealthily on the uneven ground. Soon, the reconnaissance images inside the house were transmitted back. One of them looked like a small leader, sitting in a chair with his legs on the table, holding a cigar in his hand, puffing smoke while the other two henchmen were solemnly facing a locked room on the opposite side, vigilantly guarding. You judged that there must be something important in that room, either the kidnapped victim or something else. Yang Lu continued to control the robot dog to investigate the remaining rooms. Soon, 
you received more intelligence information, through the reconnaissance images transmitted back by the robot dog, you saw that Lao Zhang was being hung by five or six enemies with his hands tied and hanging from the ceiling fan, one of the criminals was viciously beating Lao Zhang with the butt of his weapon in his hand, the other criminals were muttering and speaking in a language you couldn't understand, saying something to Lao Zhang, suddenly, from the next room, came the sound of a woman screaming, stop, please stop, the woman cried miserably, begging repeatedly for mercy, and you felt a slight chill in your heart, furrowing your brow, Yang Lu remained calm and analyzed the data information in the images transmitted back by the robot dog, in addition to Lao Zhang, there were five other victims locked in that room, you ordered, Qianlian, get ready, ready to act at any time, Wang Shirchan replied, and the robot dog extended into the crack in the wooden house wall, capturing the images in the room, however, as soon as the room's image appeared, it was suddenly obscured by a shadow, followed by a voice of doubt, what's that, then the robot dog's transmission image began to shake, showing signs of signal interference, and then the image was restored, you saw a man with a full beard squatting down, leaning his face close to the camera, observing, uh oh, the enemy has found us, Yang Lu's face changed slightly, looking at the curious man's face in the picture, your hearts were in your throats, you decisively gave the order, Qianlian, take action, with a swish, a silenced sniper rifle shot a bullet, accurately hitting the enemy behind the wooden house, the observer's son been reminded, pay attention, the enemies in front are about to enter the house, Wang Shirchong loaded the bullet, recocked the trigger, and made another precise headshot, the remaining two enemies were quickly taken care of, squad leader, all enemies outside the house have been eliminated, Wang Shirchang boasted excitedly about his achievements, but you calmly replied, the world's best sniper has shot twice with an 11 second interval, your skills still need improvement, at the same time, you have silently approached the wooden cabin, the faces of the criminals inside the cabin changed drastically as they stood up, grabbed the handgun on the table, and aimed it at the ceiling to warn the other criminals, However, you were faster than him, the muzzle of the assault rifle reached in through the window, aimed at the target, and with a swoosh, the criminal fell down, you quickly glanced around the entire house and found that besides the enemy who had just been taken out, there was only a young woman tied to a chair without any clothes on, you cursed inwardly, thinking these bastards were really despicable, by this time, the other team members had already taken action, Zhang Nanjia and Liang Chaoshu successfully took out the enemies in the other cabins, while Yang Lu operated the robot dog and drone to prevent other enemies from approaching, Shen Feng, Zhang Nenjia, and Liang Chaoshu quickly surrounded the wooden cabin where Zhang Shu was being held. Suddenly, the room fell silent, indicating that the enemies inside had noticed the unusual movements outside. One of them raised a hand with a serious expression, signaling the others not to make any noise. Each person slowly pulled out their weapons and moved towards the wall in front of the door. One enemy squinted through a small gap in the wooden wall while the other two sneakily moved to the window at the back of the room, quietly opening it to see outside. However, at that moment, gunshots rang out. Your weapons were all equipped with silencers. With two faint muffled sounds, bullets whistled through the chests of the enemies. The two enemies near the window at the back of the house were instantly killed, and Liang Chaoshu, who was responsible for the frontal assault, decisively shot the enemy trying to peek through the gap in the wall, blowing his head off. Now, only two enemies remained inside the room. With this, three of the five enemies in the third room were taken out, only the last two enemies remained, as well as the enemy in the fourth room, the one guarding the kidnapped person, there were three in total, there are enemies, one of the remaining enemies in the room shouted out, immediately afterward, he raised the arc of 48 in his hand like a madman and fired at the wall in front of him, the bullets rubbed the air and whistled with fire, Liang Chaoshu, who was standing outside the wall, was unable to dodge in a hurry and was hit on the spot, crap, your grandmother's, feeling a sharp pain coming from his body, Liang Chaoshu cursed out on the spot, squad leader, I can't, I've been shot, dog bear, hold on, Shen Feng and Zhang Nanjia, who had burst in from the back of the house, heard Liang Chaoshu's voice and hurriedly rolled in through the window, the two fired simultaneously, each taking out the remaining two enemies in the third house, immediately after that, without the slightest hesitation, Shen Feng rolled on the ground and shot at the enemy in the fourth house, which was next door away, he was also taking a risk. He had memorized the enemy's approximate location based on the image transmitted by the robot dog just now. Swoosh two gunshots rang out. In the fourth house, there was a muffled thud. Immediately afterward, a stream of blood flowed and spread along the gap in the wall. Shin Feng and Zhang Yanjia let out a sigh of relief at the same time. Butler, go check on the dog bear. Shin Feng issued an order to Zhang Yanjia while quickly checking the situation in the room. 
After confirming that all the enemies had been taken care of, he glanced at old Zhang, who was still hanging from the roof, and ignored it for the time being, instead quickly opening the door of the room and walking out. Liang Chaoshu sat on the ground with a pained expression. Squad leader, I don't seem to be able to make it. He opened his eyes and saw Shen Feng, and immediately grunted and groaned. Shen Feng took a look at his body, and the deformed bullet was firmly embedded in the steel plate of the bulletproof vest, while Zhang Nanjia beside him was in a relieved look. He knew that this kid was pretending to be dead. You're not wearing a bulletproof vest. Shen Feng did not have the good sense to say angrily. In his heart, he let out a long sigh of relief. Fortunately, this time the operation was well prepared. The system not only gave them weapons, but also provided the best protective performance of the bulletproof vest. In the enemy shooting just now, one of the bullets hit Liang Chao Shu's chest and abdomen. That happened to be the key protection area of the bulletproof vest. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode can read normally. So this kid only suffered a little bit of superficial injury and received a pain. There is no danger to his life. Sort of luck amongst misfortunes. At this time, Yang Lu also followed and ran over to join everyone. Confirming Liang Chao Shu's situation. She was also relieved. Squad leader. Is the dog bear alright? Wang Shichang and Sun Bin were still occupying the best firing positions. Providing support to each team member while preventing the enemy's support forces from approaching. They did not easily leave their firing positions. They just heard Liang Chao Shu's cry in the communicator just now. And now they still don't know his situation. Liang Chao Shu, who had come back from the dead, heard the inquiry in the communicator and immediately got weird. I died. So miserably. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. He pretended to pretend to be a god. Hearing his voice, Wang Shichang and Sun Bin both put their hearts down. Squad leader, there are quite a few kidnapped people in this house, Zhang Nenjia reminded. Shen Feng sniffed and glanced at Liang Chaoshu. If you're not dead, hurry up and don't pretend. Squad leader, although it can't die, but, martyr, wearing body armor being hit by a bullet turned out to be so painful, I feel like my ribs are going to break. Liang Chaoshu covered his stomach, barely stood up and grunted. Fortunately, we are fast and accurate enough. Otherwise let the enemy reaction. To their hands of firepower and the vicious viciousness, we are afraid that we also have to pay a small price. Yuan Weihong had palpitations in his heart. Hearing this, the other team members, all of them felt very reasonable. The slight psychological discomfort that they felt just now because they were shooting to kill for the first time, it was completely washed away because of the ferocity and brutality of these enemies. Now instead of feeling that what they did was wrong, everyone was glad that they were decisive enough. Shen Feng took the lead and turned around and walked into the house, releasing old Zhang who was still hanging above the ceiling fan on the roof. Old Zhang, who had received a severe beating, looked dying at the moment, with blood still hanging from the corner of his mouth. Is it, you guys? The hood on old Zhang's head was removed, and when he opened his eyes, he saw a familiar few faces. These were clearly the few young men that he had just eaten with. Uncle Zhang, is everything alright? Shen Feng laughed. At this time, Zhang Yanjia was also finished checking several other rooms with other team members. She came back and reported. Squad leader, there are a total of eight other abductees here. Two from the 9th district and the rest are locals. Her expression looked a bit odd as she said these words. It was obvious that she had gone to the 5th house and saw the tragically ravaged young woman inside. At this moment, Zhang Yanjia hated these damned criminals even more inside. Hating to bring them all to justice. For the things that just happened. The last bit of discomfort in her heart had completely and utterly dissipated and collapsed. She only felt it was a pity that she had just shot too quickly to end her enemy's suffering. It should have let these scum beasts have a good taste of what it was like to be tortured and in excruciating pain. Old Zhang still hadn't been able to recover from his shock at this point. Hearing Zhang Yanjia's words, he turned his head and looked at the rest of the team. Shock written all over his face. You, you, are, in the end, what kind of people? Old Zhang hesitated and looked at Shen Feng again. Earlier, Shen Feng had said that he would help himself with the trouble he was in. But at that time, old Zhang just thought that this group of young people, not knowing the heights of heaven were talking big. Now it seemed that he was afraid that he had underestimated them. We are mercenaries. Liang Chao Shu grinned at old Zhang, revealing a bright smile. Mercenary. Mercenaries? Old Zhang sniffed and was even more surprised. This is not the time to explain. Uncle Zhang, if you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, Garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Look at the kidnapped people here. Is there your wife? Shen Feng asked old Zhang to recognize them. He also instructed the two people. 
Wang Shichang and Sun Bin, to closely monitor the surrounding movements. At the same time, Yang Lu was also still controlling the drone, alerting the area. Hearing this, Old Zhang was considered to have slowed down. He hurriedly got up and went to the next room to recognize someone. But after some checking, Old Zhang was full of disappointment. None, none of them, I don't recognize these people. There is no my wife and daughter here. Old Zhang replied with a saddened expression. Then it seems that this is just one of their strongholds. Xin Feng immediately came to a judgment. It was obvious that this group of people did not just kidnap old Zhang's wife and daughter. There were many other victims who had been kidnapped here. Uncle Zhang, is this group of people the same group that hurt your family? Why did they kidnap you? Xin Feng came back to his senses and looked at old Zhang and inquired. They are the accomplices of the group that kidnapped my wife and daughter. Old Zhang locked eyes with Xin Feng, learning that they were mercenaries in their own right, and that they had now stepped in to save themselves, as well as so many kidnapped people. Now, Old Zhang had a little more trust in Xin Feng and the others. He began, revealing more of the news. These people are known locally as a black and evil force, and have long been entrenched in the area of our Guangming district to commit evil. In addition to engaging in all sorts of illegal and criminal businesses, they also collect protection fees and extort money from stores along the streets. It's not just the people of the 9th district who are being extorted by them, they don't even spare the locals, and many people dare not speak out against them. After introducing the background details of the enemy, the old Zhang revealed a somewhat palpitating expression. Young man, it's fortunate that you guys came in time, otherwise I'm afraid. I'm going to have to be cut off by them to sell my waste and organs. After saying that, he lowered his head painfully. So this group of people grabbed you for this reason? Zhang Nenjia immediately frowned deeply at his words. The other members of the team, too, each looked serious. Everyone's disgust for these criminals deepened a few points. The inner discomfort about using lethal weapons to kill them painfully faded a few more points. It's not all. Old Zhang shook his head. We just heard them in the house, yakking about a bunch of stuff. What did they say? Liang Chaoshu curiously asked. Old Zhang sniffed and looked towards him in surprise. Only then did he realize that Xin Feng and his group had followed him. He gratefully nodded once again at all the team members and explained. They received a tip-off from the local patrol division that someone had reported and uncovered their criminal offenses. This group of people, ha, huh, doing all the bad things. It seems that I'm not the only one who wanted to report them. It's just that they misunderstood me, thinking that it was me who went to report them again. So they kidnapped me, saying that they wanted to teach me a lesson. Speaking here, old Zhang's eyes were filled with tears, and he looked at Xin Feng with anger and helplessness. His mouth opened, as if he had something he wanted to say. But in the end, he was too embarrassed to speak. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Uncle Zhang, just say whatever you want to say. It's fine. Xin Feng saw the other party's desire to speak and immediately comforted him. Alas, young man, you guys stepped in to help me. I really, really don't know how to repay you. It's a pity that all of my possessions have already been seized by this group of beasts. Otherwise, hearing old Zhang say this, Xin Feng and the others already understood what his concerns were. Don't worry Uncle Zhang, we won't charge for this mission. Liang Chashu looked like an old-fashioned person and patted his chest and laughed. Old Zhang was immediately filled with emotion when he heard Liang Chashu's words, but soon his face darkened again. Alas, also do not know my wife and daughter, where in the end is now. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. These thugs are simply worse than animals. They still don't know. Still don't know. Inwardly worried about their wives and daughters. May encounter inhuman treatment. The more the old Zhang thought, the more sad and worried. A time of sadness from the heart. Cannot help but weeping tears. To have a big man behave like this. It could be seen how much torture and aggravation he had suffered over this period of time. Don't worry Uncle Zhang. Since we've already made a move. We will of course manage this matter to the end. Xin Feng gave old Zhang a peace of mind. It just so happened that he also intended to let his team members take this opportunity to practice their skills. Xin Feng had already seen it in the battle just now. Although these thugs had lethal weapons in their hands, they were nothing more than a mob. If they were to be replaced by well-trained enemies, this operation would never have been so easy for them. So taking these people to give the team a wave of experience was most appropriate. However, there were some things that Xin Feng didn't say. The enemy was so vicious that they would even traffic in human organs. He wasn't sure if old Zhang's wife and daughter were still safe and sound. He could only say that he would try to rescue the other party as much as possible while they were still alive. Dog bear, you guys go check to see if there's anything worth taking here. Don't spare the weaponry and ammunition either. Shen Feng looked at Liang Chashu and Zhang Yanjia and the others and ordered. 
As soon as they heard Xin Feng's words, immediately Liang Chaoshu's eyes lit up. What was one of the purposes of them being mercenaries? Wasn't it to be able to appropriately confiscate the proceeds of those criminals? Now wasn't this the opportunity to do so? Without saying a word, Liang Chaoshu hurriedly took action, and at this time, suddenly aside the few rescued kidnappers, one of the bruised women fell at Xin Feng's feet. She hugged Xin Feng's leg, tilted her head and looked at Xin Feng pitifully, and spoke a bunch of local languages that Xin Feng could not understand. What is she saying? Xin Feng shook his head to indicate that he couldn't understand. And at this time, old Zhang opened his mouth to translate for him. She said that her husband was imprisoned inside the dungeon, and there are still some survivors there. So I hope that all of you can help to save them. Dungeon? Where? Xin Feng's heart thumped at the words. Old Zhang. On the other hand, turned his head to ask the woman where the dungeon was located. The dungeon is underneath this house, and the entrance is next to the abandoned car outside. Old Zhang quickly got the answer and told Xin Feng. Upon hearing this, Xin Feng immediately looked outside. There was indeed a rusty abandoned car parked next to the banana forest, and all four tires had completely dried out. Uncle Zhang, ask her if she knows the situation below that dungeon. How many enemies are inside, and how is the structure? In a situation where the intelligence was unknown, Xin Feng would definitely not let his companions take risks. However, the words that this woman said next made Xin Feng, as well as old Zhang and the others, all of them were dumbfounded as their faces changed drastically. She, she said, if you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. The space below is about 30 square meters or so. A basement. Those criminals are in, in. Old Zhang already had goosebumps all over his body, chills all over his body, and a creepy feeling. Seeing such a reaction from old Zhang, Xin Feng and Yuan Wei Hong, Yang Lu and the others who stood on guard at the doorway to prevent any enemies from suddenly attacking, immediately frowned. They all realized that the situation was not good. Sure enough, old Zhang then added, they're inside that basement, handling some of the kidnapped people who were determined to have been squeezed out of any value, removing their body parts and taking them to the black market to sell them. These words were said, causing Xin Feng and the others to have their scalps tingling. The crowd associated those bloody images with a burst of nausea. It turns out that this is not just a stronghold for them, but also a for them to dispose of people who are about to lose their squeezing value. Yuan Weihong's three words slaughterhouse were already on her lips, but she swallowed them back after she and Xin Feng exchanged glances. At this time, Lao Zhang also realized that the woman's husband is very likely to have been killed. He was at a loss for words. The woman was still crying and saying something. Old Zhang translated the other woman's words. She said that there should be three enemies and a doctor down there. The three enemies are in charge of guarding and watching over the people being handled. And the doctor is in charge of performing surgery to remove the organs. It was a man with a bloodstained face next to him who finally followed suit. With a half-baked mouthful of the language of the ninth district. He said to Xin Feng, she's right. I've been down there. And the situation is exactly as she described. Hearing this man say this, Xin Feng turned back to look toward him. The other party immediately took the initiative to explain again. I'm an expatriate from the ninth district. My name is Jin C. You went down and you can still come out? Yang Lu asked this offhandedly. Jin C immediately explained again. My family paid the ransom, but they didn't release me. They just didn't remove my organs for the time being. They want more money. Damn, these people are really too cruel. Yuan Weihong really couldn't bear to continue listening. She frowned indignantly, her chest rising and falling violently. We are all human beings. Some of us are even fellow human beings. How on earth could they do such cruel things? You're wrong. They're not humans. They're animals. It's beasts that are worse than pigs and dogs. Jin C immediately said with a trembling body. At this time Liang Chaoshu who had gone to scavenge the enemy's supplies came back with gusto. Squad leader, come over and see what we found. He cupped a pile of green banknotes in his hand and raised it at Xin Feng and the others. Knowing at a glance that it was knife music, there's a lot more over here. We've simply made a fortune this time, Liang Chaoshu excitedly added. However, he saw that there seemed to be something not quite right with Xin Feng's expression, and subconsciously looked at Yuan Weihong and Yang Lu, what's wrong, everyone? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. What happened? There's still a basement here. Xin Feng told what he had just learned. Roughly, Zhang Nenjia, who had just walked back from another house, happened to hear all this. Then what are we waiting for? Hurry down and clean up those enemies and save the victims. She immediately said, the situation down there is complicated. We can't just rush down. We have to lure the enemies out before we finish them off. Plus I want to catch a live one. 
Xin Feng said in a deep voice with sharp eyes. Hearing Xin Feng say this, everyone followed and nodded their heads to indicate that it made sense. Zhang Yinjia looked at Xin Feng and asked, Squad leader, what do you have in mind? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Xin Feng cupped his chin and thought for a moment, walking to the door to check it out. He saw that there was a humble shed at the end of the house on the left-hand side. There was an object there that was very eye-catching and unusual. It was an exhaust fan hanging on the wall. Squad leader, is that? The team members also followed Xin Feng to the door. Following Xin Feng's line of sight they also saw this exhaust fan. If I'm not wrong, this should be the exhaust vent of the basement. And down there, they must also have water and electricity. Xin Feng raised his head and looked at the power lines located above the banana grove, supported by several wooden or bamboo poles that spread all the way to the highway outside. At once, he already had an idea in his heart. Squad leader, are you cutting off their water, electricity and exhaust? Liang Chaoshu asked excitedly. Brilliant, that way they'll definitely have to come out to check the situation. And we'll take the opportunity to finish them off. Xin Feng immediately nodded. I'll be in charge of cutting off the electricity. As a science dog who aspired to get into the top-ranked university for science and engineering majors, Liang Chaoshu volunteered at this time and decisively stepped in. I'll cut off their water pipes. Zhang Nanjia was also not idle and immediately volunteered. Everyone else, ambush and prepare to strike. Remember to leave me a survivor. Xin Feng reminded. Squad leader are you going to torture them for information? Yang Lu asked curiously. And Xin Feng immediately nodded his head. What they were smashing now was just one of the enemy's dens. It wasn't clear where the enemy's main camp was. So it was important to catch a live one and interrogate it properly before saying anything. The team members divided the work amongst themselves. They quickly cut off all the water, electricity and gas in the basement. And the team members also cleaned up the bodies of the enemies in the surrounding area to other places. And the few kidnapped victims also followed and hid, not daring to come out of the atmosphere. The climate of the 6th district belonged to the tropical rainforest climate. It was hot and humid all year round, especially in this kind of wilderness. If there was no exhaust system in the basement, people would definitely not be able to stand it if they stayed inside for a long time. Sure enough, not a moment later, Xin Feng and the others saw that the soil on the ground next to the scrap car loosened a bit. Very quickly the iron cover of the entrance was pushed open, and a criminal with a dark complexion and a towel tied around his head poked out half of his body. He looked around and shouted a few times, seeing that no one responded to him. He turned his head to look in the direction of the exhaust fan, and seeing that the exhaust fan had indeed stopped running, the criminal immediately cursed and grumbled, very dissatisfied, and crawled out from the entrance completely. He looked left and right again in confusion and shouted a few times, although there was still no response. The criminal didn't even realize that something was wrong. Carrying an Arca 48, he strutted towards the shed where the exhaust fan was located. Do it, catch him alive. Xin Feng immediately commanded Liang Chaoshu, who was ambushed outside in the banana forest, to make his move. Liang Chaoshu suddenly pounced out from inside the banana forest like a real bear. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode to read normally. The distance between him and the enemy was less than 5 meters. This short distance Liang Chaoshu crossed in 3 or 2 steps. The enemy didn't even react before he was pressed under his body and subdued on the spot. Tie it up first, there are still a few enemies down there. Xin Feng reminded. After waiting for a while, sure enough, the enemy underneath couldn't take it and came out another one. Again, he was quickly subdued by Xin Feng and the others. There should be one more armed man, plus a doctor who performs surgery. Xin Feng told the team to stay calm and continue waiting. After about 15 minutes, sure enough, the third armed man carried a weapon and climbed out from the entrance of the basement. However, this time this enemy that appeared was much more cautious. Two consecutive accomplices had come up without making a move. So as long as one wasn't a fool, one would know that the situation was not right. This guy probed his head, half of his body hiding in the entrance and constantly looking around. After trying to shout a few times without getting a response, this guy, surprisingly, Redug back in. Is there any other exit in this basement? Xin Feng suddenly remembered this question and hurriedly asked Old Zhang. Old Zhang, in turn, relayed Xin Feng's question with the others. According to the descriptions of those few kidnapped victims, that basement only had such an entrance and exit. Xin Feng looked at the mechanical watch on his wrist and patiently waited with his team members for a while longer. At this time, the enemy still hadn't come out. It seems like they already know there's danger up there. We have to give them a little bit of spice and boost to make them hurry up for some air. Xin Feng looked at Yuan Weihong on the side. The latter instantly understood when she saw Xin Feng's eyes and climbed out from her hiding place without saying a word. 
she pulled out a smoke bomb from the bag on the side of her pants leg. After carefully approaching the entrance of the basement, she lifted the iron cover and directly threw in the smoke bomb with the fuse pulled open. Not long after, a faint gunshot came from underneath. The crowd glanced at each other, and each other was glad that they didn't rush into it. Otherwise it would have been like becoming a living target for the enemy. After waiting for about two more minutes, finally the enemies inside could no longer endure the smoke bombs. The first one to climb out was a man wearing blue scrubs with a surgical cap on his head. After this guy climbed out from the entrance, he panicked and glanced in the direction of the house, turning around and running in the direction of the banana forest. No! Shin Feng stared at the other guy for a while and let out a low gulp. Catch him! This guy is the armed man from earlier. He recognized the other party's body shape and appearance. Obviously that armed man, disguised as a doctor escaped intending to hide from the world. Zhang Yanjia had long been impatient to strike. At those words, she aimed a shot at the enemy's right leg and shot out. There was a swift sound. The whistling bullet shot into the enemy's thigh, and the other party immediately fell down and let out a miserable scream. Immediately after, this vicious criminal, really from under the clothes pulled out a long gun, click loaded to the direction of the house to shoot. The wooden house could not withstand such bullets. If you let the other side shoot, what's wrong with that? Shin Feng decisively opened fire and killed the other party with a shot to the head. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Messy code and wrong words. Please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. At this time, it was from the direction of the entrance to the basement that a middle-aged man in his 40s or 50s slowly climbed out. He had a somewhat blonde figure and looked relatively white. On his body, he was similarly wearing a surgical gown. This guy, is the real doctor. Shin Feng coldly snorted. Without saying a word. The team members immediately went up to subdue this black-hearted doctor who was working for criminals and doing illegal and criminal deeds. Don't kill me don't kill me. I don't know anything. This doctor saw a group of young men with the faces of the 9th district, holding himself down to the ground, and immediately begged loudly for mercy. Hearing that the other party actually spoke a fluent language of the 9th district, Shen Feng's eyebrows immediately wrinkled deeply. I grass. Even a 9th district person? You scum. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, Garbled and wrong words. Please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Why are you aiding and abetting this kind of hurtful thing? Liang Chaoshu saw that the other party was actually a 9th district person as well, and was instantly annoyed with the first kick on the other party's body, and loudly questioned the other party. Zhang Nenjia, Yuan Weihong, as well as Yang Lu and the other members of the team were also indignant, staring angrily at this man who was not only morally corrupt and had no medical ethics to speak of but had even engaged in illegal and criminal activities. Everyone was close to rushing up and beating him up. Shin Feng walked over at this moment and stopped the team members from rushing. Ask him what's going on underneath. Hear me? Ask you. Liang Chaoshu kicked this black-hearted doctor viciously again. The other party held his head with both hands and raised his head warily to look at Shin Feng. Seeing that Shin Feng was actually so young as well, a flash of surprise and cunning flashed in the depths of his eyes. Underneath. Underneath. There is no one left. All came out he immediately replied. It seemed kind of honest. Dog bear, take him down to check. Shin Feng made a wink at Liang Chaoshu, who immediately understood. As soon as he grabbed this black-hearted doctor, he pinched the other party's neck as a shield in general and entered the basement with the other party. Just entered not more than a few seconds. Inside the basement came bang bang two gunshots, immediately followed by Liang Chaoshu's counterattack. His gun was equipped with a silencer, and the sound was different from weapons without silencers. Shin Feng and a few other team members' hearts fluttered and their faces changed drastically. Dog bear, is everything alright? Shin Feng hurriedly inquired. Marred, this guy is too cunning, there's even an enemy hidden down here, but it's fine. Squad leader, I solved the enemy. That's, it's, Liang Chaoshu hesitated for a moment. This black-hearted doctor was used as a shield by me and hiccuped. Shin Feng and the other team members glanced at each other when they heard this. They didn't have the slightest bit of pity for this kind of evil person who committed crimes and broke the law. Just be safe yourself. Be careful. What's the situation underneath now? Damn it's too disgusting. You guys better not come down. Liang Chao Shu Yu inside the communicator just as he finished his words. Soon he came up from the middle of the basement. His entire body was permeated with a bloody flavor. At the same time, Liang Chao Shu's face was greenish white. The whole person looked bad. Is everything alright dog bear? Zhang Nenjia immediately went forward to inquire. As the medical soldier in the team, she had the responsibility to safeguard the health of every member of the team. I'm not eating tonight. Liang Chaoshu just shook his head and waved his hands back and forth, not explaining what exactly he saw down there. However, judging from his current reaction, everyone was able to guess the association without asking. Has the little guy, 
Enemy been resolved? Old Zhang inquired as he poked out half of his head in the room behind him. The information you provided was incorrect. Our companions were almost sacrificed down there. Zhang Yanzhou looked at Old Zhang somewhat reproachfully. They said that there were only three armed criminals underneath, as well as a doctor. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. But the situation just now was that there was one more criminal inside. If Liang Chaoshu Han T been alert and used that black-hearted doctor as a shield, he would have had to take another painful beating at least. If he was unlucky, it would have been a banquet for the whole village. Right. Sorry, everyone. We were locked up in the house, and we didn't know when there was an enemy inside. Jean C stood out and took the initiative to apologize. The other abductees were also full of apologies. All right, don't talk nonsense. Hurry up and interrogate those two alive and find out where their base camp is, and their other strongholds, Shin Fong reminded. The crowd heard this and immediately brought the two captured enemies over. These two people were not from the 9th district and looked like locals or people from several nearby regions. It was also unknown if they understood the 9th district language. Can you speak the 9th district language? Shin Fong looked at one of the enemies and used the muzzle of the assault rifle in his hand to pick up the other's chin. The other party looked at the black hole of the gun aimed at him and was suddenly jolted. Warily, he replied, will, will a little bit. Although he didn't speak in a very standardized manner, this guy obviously not only understood but also spoke. How many people are there in total in this crime syndicate of yours? And where is the headquarters? Answer my question honestly, lest you suffer. Shin Fong coldly asked again. The other party sniffed and was hesitating at first, unwilling to answer. But as soon as he looked up and saw the black hole gun muzzle, he immediately wimped out. Martyr is asking you, answer honestly. Lian Chao Xu's violent temper couldn't hold back. He slapped the back of the opponent's head. When the other team members saw Liang Chaoshu's action, they didn't feel that he did anything wrong. When dealing with these vicious, brutal, and genocidal criminals, one should not reason with them and talk about humanity. After all, when they treated those kidnapped victims, they never talked about that. Seeing that the enemy still didn't open up, Liang Chaoshu ruthlessly punched the other party a few times and slapped him a few times. This time, he hit the other party's nose and face, and he was in a state of disarray. Those two enemies, originally saw that Shin Feng and his group were young, and still had a lucky thought that they didn't dare to do anything to them. Now that they had seen the tactics of these young people, this was how they knew to be afraid. I say I say. The criminal who had received a beating immediately told Shin Feng honestly what he had asked. Their group of criminals were indeed the dark forces that were entrenched and active in the bright area of the 6th district. There were about 50 to 60 members in total. Their lair was located in a residential building at the end of Monty Street. In the middle of an old city. The places where the team members were usually active were in several bars and nightclubs in the neighborhood. This is where they often meet their clients, the targets of their kidnappings. Most of them are foreigners traveling here. This kind of people, was kidnapped and the local can be said to call the sky not to call the earth does not work. The family can only be honest to pay the ransom, otherwise waiting for them is their loved ones of the severed hands and feet. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can read normally. Some of the relatives, even, may never see the victim again in their lives. How many other strongholds do you have here? Shin Feng questioned again after listening to the other party. Strongholds? The other party seemed to be a bit confused. Do you mean the operating room? Here is one, and there are two others respectively in. The other party spoke the names of the two locations. Shin Feng asked old Zhang to confirm that these two place names were in this neighborhood, and they were both the names of nearby villages. This was all banana forest land in the middle of nowhere and it was usually sparsely populated. It was indeed very suitable for criminal activities. It seemed that the other party should not be lying. Write down the names of the members of your gang. Every single one of them. Shin Feng ordered as he looked at the other party again. Once this criminal heard that Shin Feng wanted the name of every member, he froze on the spot. Subconsciously, he exchanged glances with his accomplice on the side. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, Please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Every, every one of them? I don't remember the names of so many people ah. This guy was still pretending, trying to muddle through. He didn't expect that this comment would get himself another beating from Liang Chaoshu. Still not honest is it? Let me help you recall your memories. Little master. Liang Chaoshu thought of the tragic situation inside the basement. Even now, he still felt his heart beating wildly and his blood pressure soaring. It was definitely the most brutal. Tragic and inhumane thing he had ever seen in his life. Ever since he grew up, these criminals deserved to die. If it wasn't for the fact that he had to keep them to ask for information, 
Liang Chaoshu would want to mutilate them right now. Shen Feng looked deeply at Liang Chaoshu and did not say anything. He had already guessed what exactly was going on in the basement. To be able to make a young man who grew up in a civilized society, was well taught and had received a good education, react like this. It could be seen that these vicious criminals had done a lot of things that hurt the heavens and harmed a lot of innocent people. And how many souls, because of the greed and evil thoughts of this group of scum, buried in a foreign land. After Liang Chaoshu a meal of friendly exchanges, sure enough, the two criminals began to beg for mercy. Now they were finally honest, and spent a few minutes writing down the names of all the members of the team. Xin Feng took a look at the list and realized that there were quite a few names common to the 9th district inside. He could not help but frown. Afterwards, Xin Feng took out his cell phone. Squad leader, what do you want the list of these people for? Liang Chaoshu asked as he came over in puzzlement. Xin Feng didn't say anything, and in front of the team members, he used his cell phone to directly search for these names on the list. He searched one by one, and some of the names didn't turn up any relevant information. Some of them checked out a bunch of renamed information. However, the last few names, Xin Feng searched out a bunch of related crime news. It had been reported many years ago. One of the names on the list was a guy named Li Songpa. And the information that Xin Feng searched out showed that this guy had committed a lot of crimes, and had been active in the bright area of the 6th district since about 12 years ago. The ones that stood out the most in the news were almost all related to crimes and offenses. Kidnapping, forcing firms, smuggling human organs, committing solitary, and so on. However, the news reports against the accusations against this person called Li Songpa never once managed to successfully convict him. Among them, there were a few news articles at the bottom, which were precisely the information that Li Sun Pao had been acquitted many times. When Xin Feng saw this, he already understood in his heart. He raised his eyes and looked at the two criminals again. What is Li Sanpa? Xin Feng did not let them know that he was inquiring about cell phone information. At this moment, one of the criminals, without thinking, replied, He's the boss of our club law. Everyone in the bright area knows him. If you don't believe me, ask that. The other party raised his chin towards old Zhang who was dodging behind Xin Feng. Xin Feng turned back, and old Zhang really nodded immediately. This Li Songpa is the leader of the criminal gang that kidnapped my wife and daughter. They are indeed right. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Is this the guy? Xin Feng handed over the cell phone in his hand. On the cell phone search page there was also a picture of Li Songpa smiling at the camera when he was arrested. It's him, it's him. Seeing the photo old Zhang immediately nodded his head vigorously. At the same time, an intense glow of hatred appeared in his eyes. A person from the 9th district? Xin Feng asked curiously. He is a District 9 expatriate. With his knowledge of his compatriots in the 9th district, he specialized in pitting his compatriots in the 9th district locally in the beginning. In these years, his gang's power has developed rapidly. So the team not only includes the 9th district's own people, he has also absorbed many criminals from other districts to further expand the team's power. At this moment, inside the several victims, Jin C also couldn't help but open his mouth to explain. It was obvious that he also knew this Li Songpa. After confirming the information from within everyone's words, Xin Feng knew that these two criminals were not lying and nodded his head. School teacher, housekeeper, you two take them to leave first, and let them get off and walk on their own after reaching a safe place. Since you're out of the tiger's mouth, you guys should be careful on your own next. Don't get caught by the enemy again. Xin Feng instructed his two team members to use the enemy's car to send these few victims away. After that, he turned around and instructed Old Zhang and Jin Si and the others. Hearing his words, the few kidnapped victims other than Old Zhang were grateful to Xin Feng and kept thanking him. Little guy, what about you guys? Aren't you guys going to follow along? Old Zhang asked worriedly. He just said that there are two other strongholds in this neighborhood. We can't just leave. A good man has to make it to the end. Xin Feng smiled playfully. Squad leader, what about those tickets here? Liang Chaoshu didn't forget about the huge pile of banknotes found in the room. Of course it's taken away. What are you thinking about? We've been eating and drinking for the past few days. We've already spent almost all of our money. We need to replenish our funds. Xin Feng was also only a well-off family. This time out, he had to spend money on food, clothing, housing and transportation. And he didn't have much money left in his pocket. He he he. Understand. This money will be taken as a hard-earned fee for overcoming these criminals. Liang Chaoshu was not ambiguous either. Immediately turning around to pack up those belongings. When he came out with several duffel bags, Xin Feng took a look and saw that there was indeed quite a lot of cash. He took out a few piles from it and gave them to old Zhang as well as those few victims respectively. Take it. This money should be enough for you guys to start from scratch. Remember to stay away from these criminals in the future. 
Don't get caught by them again. Shen Feng's words had just finished. When old Zhang opened his mouth to speak, Shen Feng immediately looked towards him. Uncle Zhang, what do you want to say? I, I want to follow you guys. That won't work. It's too dangerous. Zhang Yanjia immediately shook her head at the words. Old Zhang looked at her, once again wanting to speak. His gaze returned to Shen Feng's face. Young man, you should be new to this place. You're not familiar with it, and you don't understand the local language. So it's inconvenient when you encounter special situations, right? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. I promise not to give you guys any trouble. I can be your interpreter. What Lao Zhan was worried about in his heart was the safety of his wife and daughter. Now that he had seen the strength of Shin Feng and his squad members, that was why he wanted to follow Shin Feng and the others into action. That way, he could, in the first instance, obtain the latest news, find his wife and daughter as soon as possible, and get them back. Hearing old Zhang say this, Shin Feng thought that they did need an interpreter. Otherwise, with the language barrier, it would be easy for the enemy to trap them. So he nodded and agreed to old Zhang's request. After arranging for his team members to send the remaining victims away, Shin Feng decided to keep old Zhang with him for the time being. When the time comes, solve all the problems. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Rescue his wife and daughter, and then let them leave is all. What's to be done here? Should we call the local patrol division? Zhang Yanjia asked. Shin Feng immediately shook his head and refused. Have Blasting clean up the scene in a while to remove our traces. Then send them to the cremation package. Liang Chaoshu followed suit and laughed, Butler, be merciful, right? These people are in cahoots with the local inspector's office. One and the same. If we report the case, aren't we getting ourselves into trouble? Dog bear, go carry those bodies over and throw them into the basement. Shen Feng ordered. Okay. Liang Chaoshu got the order and immediately went to execute it with alacrity. Soon, the team members settled the aftermath. Yuan Weihong set a fire to eliminate all traces of this place. The crowd made a concerted effort to fake the scene here as if it was a sneak attack by the hostiles of this criminal gang. Afterwards, the vehicles were driven to the two remaining strongholds. With the experience of the first battle, during the second operation, Shin Feng and his teammates acted a little more quickly and decisively. Everyone's mental baggage had been thrown away a lot more. This time, there were no more surprises of any great magnitude, such as the team members accidentally being shot in the head. And this kind of thing didn't happen again. The squad raided the remaining two enemy strongholds with a thunderous stance. Not only did they take in a large amount of money, at the same time, it also killed a total of 17 enemies and rescued 21 kidnapped victims from their hands. It was worth mentioning that three of the victims, when they met Shin Feng and the others, had already just had their eyes gouged out by the group of criminals, and there were two others who had a kidney removed from each of them. The most cruel thing was that there was a teenager who was probably less than 15 years old who had his heart brutally ripped out. And this was also an expatriate from the 9th district. These genocidal crimes made Shin Feng and his team members once again feel incomparably angry. They were determined to completely dismantle this criminal gang. Before, we took out a total of 15 armed criminals in the first stronghold, plus 17 in the two strongholds here. That's 32. And according to the enemy's previous explanation, their gang totaled around 60 people. In other words, we still need to clean up at least 28 enemies next. Shin Feng and his team members gathered in the middle of the banana forest to discuss their next actions. They had acted decisively on both occasions. Basically, they had disposed of all the enemies in the shortest possible time. This meant that the remaining criminals in the city now definitely didn't know that all three of their strongholds in the suburbs had been destroyed. But it was impossible for the news to remain hidden. That was why there was a need to hurry up and launch an operation now to wipe out the enemies before they could react. My wife and daughter were not found in any of the three strongholds. I'm afraid that they are in mortal danger. At this time, old Zhang was sadly in tears. However, upon hearing this, Shen Feng was comforting. Don't worry, Uncle Zhang. Didn't those enemies say that before? These few strongholds in the suburbs are to deal with those victims who can no longer squeeze out money. This also means that they should still have strongholds in the middle of the city to hold their victims. Think carefully and see if you can think of any valuable clues. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Shin Feng helped old Zhang divert his attention. Upon hearing this, old Zhang really thought seriously about his recollections. As for Shin Feng and the others, they drove their vehicles and rushed back towards the direction of the city. When they were about to return to the urban area, old Zhang suddenly raised a guest to Shin Feng and the others. Those criminals, 
They are operating several pornographic places in the Guangming area. Boy, do you think my wife and daughter, were they given, to them? Old Zheng couldn't bear to make such a guess. Yet, he had to think so, because only this possibility could explain why the three strongholds in the suburbs did not find his wife and daughter. The money himself was definitely not affordable. If one had to say that there was any value left in them being kept, I'm afraid that this was all that was left. The emergence of this thought caused old Zhang to feel immense pain. He hugged his head and lowered his head and cried bitterly after he finished speaking to Shen Feng, Shen Feng and the other members of the team. Hearing these speculations were also filled with bitterness in their hearts, which was very unpleasant. Don't worry Uncle Zhang, no matter what, the enemy will definitely pay the price. Shen Feng could only properly comfort old Zhang now. He didn't know what else to say about this kind of tragedy. Marred. Liang Chao Shu gritted his teeth and cursed angrily. When we arrive at the place in a while, scout for intelligence first. Don't rush to expose yourself. The urban area is different from the suburbs. Firing here will easily attract the local officials to intervene. That's why our actions should minimize the commotion as much as possible. And it's best if we can do it without using hot weapons. Shen Feng reminded the team. Meanwhile, the car slowly drove into the busy street. At the end of Monty Street, inside a bar, countless figures swayed under the dim lights. Young men and women were partying here. And at this moment, in a dark alley opposite the bar, Shen Feng parked his car after turning off the engine. This is the bar where Li Songpa and the others often gather. According to the information we got from our previous raid on those two strongholds, Li Songpa is celebrating his birthday today. He invited almost all of his juniors who are active in the city to come over to celebrate himself. This is our perfect opportunity. Shen Feng analyzed the intelligence for his team members while signaling Yang Lu to release the drone to scout an area around here. It was now close to midnight. The stores in the surrounding business district had basically closed down. Only the nightclubs with red lights and some roadside vendors running the late night snack business were still in business. Are we just going to kill our way straight in? Liang Chashu asked. Of course not. There are so many innocent people here. Are you afraid that you won't be famous if you kill your way in? Right squad leader? Zhang Ninja rolled his eyes and glanced at Liang Chashu before turning his head towards Shin Feng and casting an inquiring gaze. Shin Feng nodded. Not bad. Our purpose is to save people, not to draw the attention of the local officials. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. This is someone else's land after all. I'm afraid it won't end well if things get too big. Shin Feng had specifically checked the road when they arrived. There were quite a few cameras on the street outside, so it was never wise to make a move here. Then, squad leader, what do you think should be done? Wang Shichang inquired, seeing that everyone was at a loss. At this time, Old Zhang suddenly spoke up. Perhaps, there is someone who can help us. Upon hearing this, the crowd looked towards him. As a businessman who had been in the local area for more than 10 years, Old Zhang certainly had his own connections. Hearing him speak at this moment, everyone's eyes lit up. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Uncle Zhang, what's your good idea? Liang Chashu asked. You guys come with me. Old Zhang didn't say much and led Shen Feng and the others away from the other end of the alley. Soon, they arrived in front of a single, dilapidated residential building in the old city center. Old Zhang took out his own cell phone and dialed a phone number, and gabbled a bunch of words in the local language. Let's wait here for a while. He's coming down. After hanging up the phone, Old Zhang said to Shen Feng and the others. Everyone was very curious about what kind of god he was looking for to help. Not long after, there were indeed footsteps coming down from upstairs. Immediately after that, the lights inside the stores on the first floor lit up. Then there was the roller shutter door being lifted up, only to see a middle-aged, hairy, balding man looking a bit scruffy and wearing glasses standing in front of Shen Feng and the others. Shen Feng, the team, fat uncle. The crowd looked at each other and froze on the spot. Soon this blonde middle-aged uncle came back to his senses and gabbled a couple questions to old Zhang. Go in and talk. Old Zhang directly used the language of the 9th district and pulled Shen Feng and the others inside. This hairy middle-aged uncle could only helplessly get out of the way. What's wrong with you, old Zhang? What are you doing bringing this group of young people to me? Who are they? Closing the door. This hairy uncle immediately opened his mouth and asked. Surprisingly, he also spoke the language of the 9th district fluently. Shen Feng curiously sized up the other party. This person didn't exactly look like the people of the 9th district, and it looked like he should be an expatriate second generation who had already mixed with the blood of the locals from his appearance. Don't be nervous, they're fine. We're here specifically to ask you for a favor, old Zhang explained. However, after hearing this, the hairy uncle was waving his hands and frowning. What I can help you with is limited ah, uh, 
those people you've incurred, who can afford to be offended? Big brother, I get rid of you to do good. My wife has just given birth to a child. He put his hands together and kept worshipping old Zhang, trying to press his voice to the lowest possible level, a look of aggrieved helplessness begging for forgiveness. Old Zhang sniffed and was also very embarrassed. At this time, Xin Feng took the initiative to introduce himself. We are mercenaries, ready to help Uncle Zhang deal with those criminals, but they are now gathering inside the bar. We have no way to start. Uncle, if you have a way to lure them all out, please help us. After saying that, Shen Feng looked at Liang Chashu. The latter, immediately pulled out a bunch of greenback cash from the backpack on his body. Don't worry uncle, we won't let you help for nothing. Liang Chashu waved the pile of banknotes, looking at this white flowery knife music. Finally the hairy uncle's face eased up. He turned his head skeptically to look at Shen Feng and his party and looked up and down a few times. You guys, are, mercenaries? What, don't look like it? Zhang Yanjia asked rhetorically with her waist crossed. The other party immediately shook his head, like definitely doesn't look like, rather like a student is real. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Okay old Chen, don't bullshit, just say this favor can you help it? It's not that I don't want to help. The hairy uncle who was called old Chen, his eyes looked towards the pile of banknotes in Liang Chaoshu's hand. It's just that. How can I help you guys? He hesitated. After all, what they had to face was a group of vicious, murderous criminals. If they knew that they were helping, they were afraid that their family would have no peace in the future. You don't want to avenge your brother-in-law? Old Zhang asked rhetorically. Upon hearing this, Old Chen's complexion suddenly flickered slightly, and a flame of anger came out from his eyes. He hadn't forgotten that there was still a wounded man in his family right now who was lying in bed and couldn't get out of it. That was last year. His own family's brother-in-law had accidentally offended that group of people. Just a little thing. Just because in the street accidentally looked at that group of people. I didn't expect to be beaten in the street and break his leg. In this life, he is considered to be a complete invalid. If it wasn't for the identity of the locals, I'm afraid their family would never have been able to endure such a little trouble. Every time he thought of the ferocity of that group of people, Old Chen was terrified. Of course, he hated those criminals to the bone. Not that he hadn't thought of making those evil people pay, only has always dared to be angry and dare not say anything. He didn't have any great ability, and he didn't know any big person with horrible energy who could help him solve this kind of problem. What to take against others? That's true, but I really don't have any way to help you guys. Old Chen responded with a sad face. Shin Feng looked at the other party's response and calmly explained, what we want is not only to finish them off and wipe out all their members. We also want to find their hidden strongholds in the urban area and rescue the victims who are being held captive, including old Zhang's wife and daughter. Hearing Shen Feng say this, old Chen's two eyes rolled around and suddenly had a thought in his mind. In that case there is a way to perhaps try. Only, he looked at Shen Feng and the others, all of whom were a group of youngsters, and hesitated for a moment. Only what? Shen Feng immediately pursued. You guys might be able to disguise yourselves as big bosses who are coming to buy goods, and in the name of looking at the goods, They'll definitely have to take you to see the kidnapped personnel. Wouldn't you guys be able to blend in and rescue them that way? When he said this, Shin Feng suddenly had a slight movement in his heart. It wasn't that Shin Feng hadn't thought of using this trick before. It was just that with this kind of hook, it was often necessary to have a middleman to pull the strings. If you went to the door yourself like this and told people that you wanted to talk business, then 80% of the time you would be rated as if you were an undercover agent of the patrol division. Do you have a way to help us disguise ourselves, Uncle Chen? Shen Feng did not move and asked calmly. At this time, Old Zhang picked up the conversation and said, You guys don't know. Old Chen is a famous king of connections in this area. He knows a lot of people. A lot of people who are in trouble like to come to him to solve their problems. So he definitely has a way. Right Old Chen? Why are you looking at me like this? Who doesn't know about your little business? What little business? If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Sunbin looked curiously at Old Chen. TSK, Old Zhang, are you trying to expose my old self? Hearing this Old Chen breathlessly rolled his eyes at Old Zhang. But the words have been said here. Lao Chen did not choose to hide at this time. You guys don't listen to his nonsense? I usually just help some customers in need. Be a matchmaker and earn some hard-earned money. He shook his head and added, I am not that capable of helping you guys with packaging. But there is someone who can definitely help you guys. What person? Shen Feng hurriedly asked after him. Uncle Six, Uncle Six, formerly known as Young Lu Fei, it was a hall master of one of the largest community organizations among the expatriates active in the 6th district and from the 9th district, 
If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Normally, he is mainly responsible for the work of the Bright District, utilizing the power in his hands. Uncle Six acted as a middleman for some criminal syndicates, helping them introduce buyers. The goods traded include but are not limited to trafficked human beings, solo goods, guns, human organs, and so on. Over the years, he gradually formed his own influence in the area and made a lot of money. To be able to do such a big business, strength was certainly one aspect, and credibility was of course also essential. At this moment, in the dimly lit bar, two beams of light were hitting the faces of Xin Feng and Sixth Uncle Yang Liufei respectively. With a cigar in his hand, Uncle Six glanced at Old Chen, who was standing next to him with an awkward smile on his face and trepidation. He waved his hand, signaling Old Chen to go down and collect the money. Afterward, his gaze raised his eyes to the young man sitting across from him, who was less than 20 years old. Within the clients I've received, the youngest was a 12-year-old girl who had a congenital heart disease. At that time, I quoted $100,000. Blade music. You, which part of the body do you want to replace? Shinfon put on makeup. At this time, he looked pale and weak, as if he had wasted himself playing with himself by overindulging for a long period of time. Under this dim light, Ordinary people couldn't tell that he was using one of the four evil arts. Kidney. Shin Feng patted his hindquarters. One or two. Uncle Six glanced toward his waist and asked. What's the price? Depends on the exact match. 98% match. The price is 200,000 for two. I'm talking about the knife music. Also I have an unwritten rule here. We do business with a reputation. We never ask about the identity of our customers' origins. And we definitely won't disclose everything you've done here. But you came and met us. And if you can't get this money, then I can only take something from your body to compensate for the loss of the deal we couldn't complete. Uncle Six Tone was a bit cold when he said these words. Beside him, those gun-toting thugs even exuded a solemn aura. After Shin Feng heard the other party's words, he pretended to be a bit scared and asked cautiously, How can you determine the match between me and those goods? A smile appeared on Uncle Six's face. So, the price is not a problem for you? When the time comes, confirm the deal. You give us the money and will take you to see your goods. A professional doctor will do the examination for you and make a match. His words made Shin Feng's heart flutter. This was a done deal. Just follow this group of people to meet the criminals. By then, it would be possible to know the exact location where the enemy was holding the kidnapped person. As for the matter of money, it was certainly not a problem. The money they collected from the three enemy strongholds they attacked this time. The cash alone added up to almost one or two million daggers Lu. And that's not even counting the gold. Silver jewelry, and other valuables. The child can't be caught by the wolf. Shin Feng decided to give it a go. However, he didn't put this thought on his face, and at this time, he pretended to be worried and asked, what if the match doesn't work? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. If the match is unsuccessful, you will have a waiting period of one month's time, at which time you will be arranged to be matched again. If it's still unsuccessful, then you'll only have yourself to blame for your bad luck. The money is non-refundable. You can choose to pay the fee again, and then continue to wait for a new shipment to arrive to continue the matching process. How about it young man? Are you ready to make a deal? Or are you prepared to leave your eyes or heart here? With me? Shin Feng hesitated and nodded. I'm going to get the money first. The corner of Uncle Six's mouth slowly rose, revealing an intriguing smile. He winked at his henchman on the side, signaling him to follow Shin Feng. Shin Feng walked out of the doorway of this blacklit restaurant and rummaged through a nearby patch of flower pots, turning out a black handbag. Then, under the surprised gaze of the bearded big black man, he walked back. Uncle Six saw the scene through the floor to ceiling glass. Watching Shin Feng walk back, he placed the handbag on the table and opened it to reveal piles of cash that smelled wonderful. He instantly grinned again. Young man, you're quite cautious. If you want to live, you always have to learn to be more cautious. Shin Feng responded meaningfully. Looking at this brat uttering such profound truths, Uncle Six was slightly surprised and once again deeply sized up Shin Feng. If it wasn't for the fact that this kid was too young, with a worldly and childish look on his face, he would have suspected if this guy was an undercover agent sent by the Inspector General's department. But now that the money has arrived, the next thing is the problem of this kid and that group of people. Uncle Six had his men check that the cash was okay, so he dialed a phone number on the spot. Your business is here. Come to me. After saying that he hung up the phone, seeing that the enemy had already taken the bait, he would soon be able to meet those criminals from Li Songpa and follow them to meet the goods. Xin Feng's mood could not help but be a little nervous. 
In fact, he was quite nervous throughout the whole process, just in front of the danger. He had to restrain himself as much as possible to make himself appear calm. After waiting for a while, Li Songpa's people really came. After Xin Feng was put in a black hood, he was picked up in a black van and left. Liang Chaoshu and the other team members, who had already been ambushed in the shadows, immediately tracked the enemy by means of drone tracking in their vehicles. Yang Lu did not install a locator on Xin Feng's body. For a transaction of this level, the enemy would be extremely cautious and would definitely check if there were any bugs, cameras, locators, and the like on the client's body. Soon, Xin Feng was taken by the group of criminals and brought to the middle of an old residential area. The road here was dimly lit, and the residential buildings were even darkened, making it eerie to look at. Having gotten the news that there was a big business coming in, Li Songpa had already waited here. Seeing that the client had arrived, he immediately went forward to greet him. However, when Xin Feng's hood was removed and he saw that Xin Feng was so young and very handsome, he suddenly froze for a moment. Take the guests up first, has the doctor arrived yet? If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or the uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Li Songpa returned to his senses and asked the little brother behind him, still in contact, went to the operating room for surgery during the day. The little brother replied, Sorry, have to trouble you to wait for a while, do you mind? Li Songpa turned his head and greeted Xin Feng with a smile. He didn't dare to offend the clients that Uncle Six had introduced to him. After all, Uncle Six's power in the area was too much more powerful than him. Offending a customer is like smashing Uncle Six's hard-earned signboard, which is also like cutting off his own way of life. Can you show me the goods first? Xin Feng asked with a nod. When Li Sangpa heard this request, his heart moved and his two eyes rolled. Okay, no problem. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. He agreed quickly as if nothing had happened. The two henchmen immediately led Xin Feng inside the residential building, and at this moment, Li Sangpa turned around, his gaze transmitting a cold aura to Xin Feng's back. Is this kid okay? He coldly inquired to the junior brother beside him. Customers introduced by Uncle Six usually don't have any problems. The ones with problems have probably all been solved. The little brother immediately replied. Marred. Li Sangpa cursed. As soon as you come to see the goods, most likely either undercover agents or mercenaries. In a moment everyone be smart, find out what's wrong and finish him off immediately. After years of living a life of licking blood from the head of a sword, Li Sangpa had long since developed a cautious character. Otherwise, he would have died more than a hundred times. At this moment, just because of Xin Feng's words, his vigilance was aroused. He immediately made arrangements for his men. However, what Li Sangpa hadn't expected at all was that in the night sky above their heads, less than 50 meters away, right now, there was a small black drone hovering. This mini surveillance drone not only had a full HD camera that could instantly send back relevant surveillance images, at the same time, there was also a live broadcast function. It could directly record and transmit back the conversation of the target at the scene without missing a word. This time, Liang Chaoshu, Yuan Weihong and Yang Lu, who were waiting for Xin Feng's action instructions at the back, all heard and saw it clearly. It's not good. The enemy seems to have discovered squad leader's disguise? Sun Bin said in surprise. Don't be ridiculous, the enemy didn't discover it, but his vigilance is strong. Zhang Yanjia made a decisive judgment. If the enemy had really determined that there was something wrong with Xin Feng, they would have directly taken action. How could they still be so polite? Everyone get ready for battle. Wait for the squad leader to signal us an attack and immediately. Liang Chaoshu reminded all the members. However, Yang Lu shook her head at this moment. No, that would make us too passive. And our purpose is to save people. If we attack head on, not only will we expose ourselves to danger, we may also involve those kidnapped victims inside. At that time, the enemy is anxious to jump over the wall and may want to kill and exterminate them. Yang Lu's analysis immediately gained the approval of the other team members. Everyone looked at this schoolteacher. Yuan Weihong curiously said, Schoolmaster, what good advice do you have? Yang Lu immediately spoke out her thoughts. If I were the squad leader, I'd go in and confirm that this is the enemy's main camp for holding victims. Then, I would first find a way to lure the enemy away. Then take the opportunity to take out all the enemies here before rescuing the hostages. She tried, thinking from Xun Feng's perspective. Hearing Yang Lu say this, the other team members revealed thoughtful expressions. I understand. Wang Shichang nodded. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. This look of his immediately caught the attention of the other team members, and everyone looked towards him, 
What did you understand? Liang Chaoshu asked. We're going to set up a trap to ambush the enemy, because we only have seven people at the moment, and the squad leader is still following them in. If we want to get rid of the remaining dozens of enemies as fast as possible, we have to plan well. It won't be easy if we let them react. Well said. Continue on. Yang Lu encouraged. Wang Shixiong looked at the rest of the team and nodded. Blast, it's up to you next. Wang Shixiong looked towards Yuan Weihong. The gazes of the other team members also subconsciously looked towards Yuan Weihong. Yuan Weihong, on the other hand, confidently revealed a smile. What do you want me to do? Feel free to say, there's gasoline in our car, and we can get bottles at the convenience store on the back corner. You mean, gasoline bombs? Without waiting for Wang Shixiong to finish his sentence, Liang Chaoshu immediately reacted. And Wang Shichang glanced toward him and nodded. Not bad, he said and raised his head to look at a building across the road. This was an excellent shooting vantage point. He had just confirmed that as long as he ambushed himself on the roof of the building, his vision could cover 70% of this area. Especially now that the enemy's lair was an open space in front of it. Once the enemy came out from inside, they would be completely exposed to their own sniper rifle firing range. Equally, they would become their own living targets. When the time comes, together with a wave, the other team members will attack, those 30 to 40 enemies, it would be hard not to meet the king of hell, Wang Shichang spelled out his plan, the first step was for Yuan Weihong to make incendiary bombs and then use them to set fire to the enemy's lair, that way they would have to come out, it was impossible to live and watch themselves burn to death, then, after successfully drawing the enemy out from inside the stronghold, the second step was to further inflict killings on the enemy through earth bombs, by the time the enemy had experienced two rounds of attacks, they would have already lost their bearings. Then at that time, the third step would be Sun Bin and Wang Shichang's turn to strike. The main sniper, Wang Shichang, targeted the confused enemies one by one. Observer and deputy sniper, Sun Bin, is responsible for mending. In this way, they could ensure that nothing was lost. After hearing Wang Shichang's plan, several team members felt that it was very reliable. So each of them started to act. Right. How are we going to inform the squad leader of our plan? Liang Chaoshu thought of this question. Right now, Shen Feng was still in the middle of the enemy's lair. The situation was still unclear. There had to be a way to inform their plan, to Shen Feng, before they could start the operation. Once everyone got together and combined their ideas, Yang Lu immediately had an idea. Got one. She took out her cell phone and everyone looked at her. What did you think of? A school teacher? Do you guys remember? When we were in math class, the teacher taught us Morse code? I remember. What? You want to use Morse code to inform the class monitor? But the class monitor is inside. He can't hear us, right? Everyone said one thing and I said another. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. Yang Lu, on the other hand, was already in the clear. She only saw that she smiled mysteriously and tapped on Shen Feng's contact information on her cell phone. Afterward, a long string of numbers was sent over to Shen Feng. These numbers, each one of them corresponded to a specific Morse code. The teacher in math class had once let them practice with each other, using this way to communicate with the other students. Let's see if they can understand each other's meaning. Yang Lu, the school bully who was a member of the study committee, certainly couldn't be overwhelmed by these things. After sending a secret message to Shen Feng, Yang Lu also playfully sent a sentence over. The red beans in the south are blooming. Guess what I want to say. At this moment, Shen Feng was walking into the dimly lit basement under the leadership of several enemies. It was not only dim, but also very humid. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Every now and then a burst of water drops dripped from the ceiling. After following the enemy deeper and deeper and passing through several choke points, soon Shen Feng was brought to the most crucial area, only to see that in the middle of the not so large area ahead, a huge iron cage was neatly placed. There were even stacked ones. These large iron cages that were supposed to be used to hold lions, tigers, brown bears and other fierce beasts. At this moment, what was being held inside was not some wild animal. Shen Feng clearly saw that what was being held inside those iron cages were numb and bruised figures. Most of them were women as well as children. There were also some cages that held men inside. There were 20 to 30 cages of all sizes. Inside each cage, there were between 1 and 4 victims. The total number of people added up to almost a hundred. They were like livestock. Not only were they kept in cages, each one of them also wore iron collars around their necks, with chains attached to the collars. These, that is, goods? Shen Feng hesitated and turned back to look at Li Songpai and his group who followed in behind him. 
Li Songpa immediately nodded with a cold smile at his words. Not bad, these are our goods. You've seen it now. Are you satisfied? Shen Feng, however, gently shook his head and asked skeptically. They are surviving in this kind of environment. They won't carry any germs on their bodies, right? Transplanting organs to me. Is it hygienic? These words instantly made Li Songpa and his group of minions, unable to stop themselves from snickering. With an expression of looking at a fool, Li Songpa looked at Shen Feng and replied, Friend, don't worry, put a hundred hearts. There's an old saying in the ninth district that one side of the water raises one side of the people. Our place is just poor mountains in bad water, and the people who grow out of it are all sturdy and resistant. So what kind of viruses and bacteria can't invade their bodies? Here, our organ transplantation technology is well known. Or else so many rich people from all over the world would come here to seek our help? Saying this, Li Songpa walked towards Shen Feng. He put one arm around Shen Feng's shoulder, and with the other hand, he stuffed the cigar in his hand into his mouth, took a puff, narrowed his eyes and added, the doctor won't be here until a while later. I'll take you to a good place first now. To what place? Shen Feng was on guard. Originally, going deep into the tiger's den had put him in danger. Now that the enemy was outnumbered, it would be even more dangerous if the enemy intended to turn against him. However, just at this moment, Shen Feng's cell phone rang. It was the beep of a message. Your cell phone is ringing. Li Sangpa raised his chin at Shen Feng's pocket and did not answer Shen Feng's question. Just by looking at his behavior at this moment, Shen Feng had already guessed that the other party did not trust him. He hesitated and took out his cell phone. He found that it was a message from Yang Lu to himself. However, the locked interface couldn't preview the content of the message. So Shen Feng didn't know what Yang Lu had sent to him. Aren't you going to open it and take a look? Seeing that Shen Feng had no intention of unlocking the phone screen, Li Songpa raised her chin again. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally, and looked over toward Shen Feng's face, carefully staring at the details of his expression. This guy, he was a bit more difficult to deal with than expected. Shen Feng had finally seen what kind of characters the leaders of these vicious criminals were. However, this was a very valuable experience for him. For himself, it was much more valuable than training against targets at the training ground. It could refine his heart, so that he could be more relaxed when facing these thugs in the future. Shen Feng hesitated and chose to trust his team members, especially Yang Lu. He believed that the schoolteacher would never pit himself at a time like this and send over information to himself that he shouldn't have sent. Shen Feng raised his phone for face recognition. Just after unlocking the phone screen, the phone was snatched over by Li Songpa. Shen Feng's heart was flabbergasted, and he was secretly glad that he had deleted a lot of sensitive chat messages before he came. Now, there was no fear of the other party viewing them. A string of numbers? What is this? A password cipher? After checking Shen Feng's cell phone, the chat messages received. Li Songpa threw a questioning look at Shen Feng. Immediately afterward, he read out the sentence that followed. The red beans in the south are blooming. Guess what I want to say? A crush. Ha! Huh? When Li Songpa saw this sentence, he instantly laughed heartily and once again raised his eyes towards Shen Feng. Shen Feng glanced towards his cell phone screen. He saw that Yang Lu had indeed sent herself a string of numbers, and could tell with just a glance that the words were a secret key consisting of a string of Morse code, but Yang Lu was very vigilant. She deliberately messed up the order of this string of secret keys, and also disguised as a string of ulterior motives. According to the order of the translation is indeed related to love love content, mountain has wood as branches. The heart pleases the gentleman and the gentleman does not know. But in fact, according to the real Morse code after the arrangement and combination, the real meaning of this string of numbers is, we have made a good ambush plan, waiting to lure the enemy out to kill them all. Seeing through what Yan Lu really wanted to express, Shen Feng first revealed an awkward yet polite smile, then laughed heartily. Just, an ordinary friend. Oh, ordinary friend. Li Songpa had an odd face and casually clicked on Yang Lu's avatar and saw the female gender on the profile card. He looked at Shin Feng's handsome and incomparable, as if it was the ghostly work of nature, the perfect side face of the knife and axe. Understandingly, he returned the cell phone to Shin Feng. What does this sentence mean? Just after the cell phone was handed back, Li Songpa suddenly put it back again and asked coldly. His smile was all retracted, and at this moment, he looked as if he was a demon that way, staring at Shin Feng with an unsuspecting, Hostile gaze. I didn't guess. Shen Feng replied seriously. He he. Let me tell you what this string of numbers means. Li Songpa did not suspect Shen Feng. He just wanted, in front of this customer who was better looking than himself, to find his own sense of superiority. At this time, he showed off in general, pointing to the first line of numbers in the cell phone screen. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, 
Messy code and wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Starting from the opening number, from left to right, you group pinyin against the numbers on your own cell phone's keyboard. This first one is Sean. See if it's right. Mountain. Shin Fong sniffed and tried. He quickly nodded his head. According to the nine grid numbers against the letters on the keypad, it seems to be true. Seeing Shin Fang's reaction, Li Sung Pa smiled proudly. Playing number games, I've been the best at it since I was a kid. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. The mountain has a wood and a branch. The heart pleases you and you don't know it. Hum, this so-called friend of yours, is a female right? Looking handsome is not the same. Mad. Women are stepping on the horse to rush to want to sleep with you, right? He playfully patted Shin Feng's shoulder. Shin Feng immediately pretended, covering his back waist to show a burst of painful expression. These were also what Old Chen and Old Zhang had taught him. They had been hanging out in the 6th district for more than 10 years, and Old Chen had done matchmaking for quite a few clients who were suffering from kidney diseases. So he knew very well what the symptomatic reactions of such people should be like. Seeing Shin Feng in such pain, Li Songpa looked at his waist in surprise. What's wrong? Kidney failure caused by stones. It's already incurable. The doctor has said that he can only replace the kidney. TSK TSK, kidney problems are very serious. You're so young that you can't even do it. Li Songpa looked at Shin Feng's crotch and laughed playfully. Originally, he wanted to take the opportunity to flirt and tease Shin Feng a few more times. But at this moment, one of his juniors hurried over and whispered a few words in his ear. Suddenly Li Songpa's face changed violently. Are you sure? He looked at the junior brother with a sullen face and questioned. A thousand times sure. Our people have already gone over and checked. All three operating rooms are. All of them have been. Before that little brother finished speaking, he received a big slap on his face. He immediately pursed his lips, licked the blood that spilled out from the corner of his mouth, and didn't say anything. What the hell? Which asshole son of a bitch dared to touch old me my territory? Li Songpa was vicious and looked over towards Shin Feng. When the other juniors saw his eyes, they immediately looked at Shin Feng with ill will as well. Shin Feng was bewildered and somewhat wary. What's wrong? He asked in a feigned manner. Numerous thoughts flashed through Li Songpa's mind, and he also felt that he was probably thinking too much. This kid in front of him, seeing them all trembling in fear and sincerity, was so scared that he was all pretending to be calm there. His own three strongholds in the suburbs had been given a clean sweep, and all the goods and money had been robbed, and the people under their own hands were all killed. How could these things be done by this week? Refined and delicate looking kid in front of him? Like their kind of people. Do these things? In the sixth district as many as the hare. Not only a group of them are doing this business. Sometimes in order to compete for turf and business, it was common for them to set traps for each other. Or even directly erupt into fire and conflict. This should all just be a coincidence. However, although he was sure in his heart that this was not Chen Feng's doing. However, Li Songpa was still furious. I'm sorry, friend. Looks like your surgery today will have to wait. We've got a little situation here that we have to take care of. Where are you staying? I'll have someone take you back and let you know when we've resolved the problem. Don't worry. Business won't run away. We're out to make a living. We're the most credible. Li Songpa didn't say anything more. He made a wink at the two little brothers next to him. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Sir, please come with us. Those two juniors looked at Shin Feng and made a gesture of invitation. Shin Feng's heart moved slightly, didn't say anything, and followed those two little brothers to quickly leave. And at this time, Li Songpa greeted another junior brother and came to himself. Mard, have you found out who did this? Still checking, the underling replied cautiously. Mard, Li Songpa clenched his teeth once again, very upset. How much is the loss? He asked again. All the goods were robbed, and the money from the three strongholds combined is around three million. The junior brother hurriedly answered truthfully. Hearing this news, Li Songpa's heart seemed to tremble. He raised his palm in annoyance and gritted his teeth at his little brother. But in the end, he didn't slap down. Mard, what the hell are you guys doing for food? So little things are not good? Why don't you hurry and check again? Immediately mobilized all the people. Get me to find out clearly. In the end who dares to move earth in my head? Li Songpa said, grabbing a weapon in anger himself. He personally led the way towards the outside. It looked like he was going to find the enemy who attacked his stronghold and get him killed. Shin Feng followed the two enemies, and after coming outside, he was immediately asked to put on a hood again. The enemies were ready to take him to the car and send him back to the hotel. But just at this time, suddenly, a beer bottle flew over from the opposite side of the street. With a pop, 
the beer bottle landed behind one of the enemies. That person looked back, and immediately felt a gasoline smell fill the air. Before he could react, another beer bottle flew into the air. Suddenly, another beer bottle flew over and similarly smashed near them. It's gasoline, damn, hurry up and take the guests away. That enemy said as he pulled out the weapon he had hidden in his pants and fired decisively at a bush across the road. The moment Shin Fong saw the other party pull out his gun, he immediately rolled to the side and prostrated himself on the ground. The moment the gunshot sounded, boom sound, the gasoline that filled the scene was instantly ignited, and the explosion directly overturned the two enemies who were still in a state of confusion, and they flew out at once. At this time, those enemies who heard the commotion outside, rushed out to check the situation. It was also at this time that more petrol bombs flew towards them. The fire, all of a sudden, surrounded those seven or eight enemies. One of them couldn't dodge in time, and was even spread by the flames to his body, and the blazing fire immediately made him let out a pig-killing howl of misery. Pago Pago, it's not good, the enemy has come to attack us. Several brothers have been injured outside. One of the criminals, hurriedly picked up his walkie-talkie and warned Lee Songpa, who was still inside the stronghold. Lee Songpa, who was already furious and planning to lead his men out to search for the enemies who attacked his stronghold. The moment he heard this news, he first froze on the spot. Immediately after, he became furious and cursed angrily in the local language, and then loaded his weapon with a click. Brothers, the stompers are coming. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can read normally. All step out for me, kill those bastards, Lee Songpa said. Quickstep first led 17 or 18 juniors to rush outside. Wait. Suddenly his footsteps lurched and he turned his head to look at the dark passage behind him. Immediately after that, he looked ahead again. Did that kid just send it away? Lee Sangpa was alert and used his walkie-talkie to ask his junior who was still outside. Lee Sangpa certainly wasn't concerned about Shin Fang's dead or alive safety. At times like this, caution was the key to success. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or read mode to read normally. Even though Shin Fong didn't look like he could threaten his existence, he always had to confirm it first and rule out the suspicion of that kid. The client was killed in the explosion just now, along with two of his brothers. At this moment, inside the walkie-talkie, the little brother came to answer. Hearing this, Lee Songpa's face changed slightly. Are you sure? Yes, boss, I saw it with my own eyes. The little brother affirmed categorically. Tread the horse. This is bad. Li Songpa scratched his head with a headache. The client was introduced to him by Uncle Six. And now not only was the surgery not done, he couldn't get a penny for himself. The person also died here. This shit, when the time comes, it is inevitable that he will have to spend a lot of words on Uncle Six's side. He scratched his head again in annoyance. Go, follow me out. Tramp. Li Songpa completely dispelled his suspicions about Shin Fong. People were dead. It was impossible for him to launch an attack and blow himself up. Right? The open space outside the residential building was in flames at this time. Many enemies had been hit by incendiary bombs and were rolling around screaming. The scene was chaotic. As for Shin Fong, he had already taken advantage of the chaos at the very beginning to break away from the enemy's group and ran underneath a small car. At this moment, an enemy, who was affected by the flames, screamed miserably and rolled down next to the cart, which was less than two meters away from Shin Fong. Shin Fong saw that the weapon in the other party's hand fell to the ground. It was an Arca 48. He immediately snatched that weapon over. In addition Shin Fong also heard, before the walkie-talkie on the enemy's body was burned, the angry voice of Lee Sungpa coming from inside, all step on the horse and hurry up, go out and kill those bastards. That enemy watched as Shin Fong crawled out from under the car. However, the flames on his body had already spread to his entire body, and he was unable to get rid of them at all, and soon fainted from the pain of the burns. Shin Fong did not care whether the other party really fainted or pretended, raised his weapon and hit a silencer swooshed two times to the other party to make up two cuts. After that, he raised his head and scanned the situation in front of him. The remaining enemies in the open space at the entrance were all killed by Wang Shichang one by one. At this time, a person scurried out from the dark shadows beside him. Squad leader, it's me. Liang Chaoshu handed over a communicator. After Shen Feng put it on, he immediately ordered the rest of the team. The enemy has been tricked. Everyone get ready. Dog bear you and I will go in and get the people out. Blast clairvoyant, monkey, schoolboy, housekeeper, the rest of the enemy is in your hands, said Shin Feng patted Liang Chaoshu's shoulder, Liang Chaoshu, who was raising his gun on guard, immediately hid next to the entrance of the residential building's gate with Shin Feng, the two of them had only just crouched down in the shadows to hide, at this time, 
Li Songpa had already rushed out from the inside with 20 to 30 minions. As soon as he saw the tragic situation, Li Songpa suddenly became furious. Where is the enemy? He quickly searched around. Under the dim street light, other than his own few juniors who had already been killed, where was there any trace of the enemy? Should have run away. Paco, if you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. A junior brother warned. Attacked us and ran away? Tramp. Give chase. Although Li Songpa was a bit confused in his heart, he was in a state of anger and didn't think that much. With a command, he led his juniors to scatter. Shen Feng and Liang Chaoshu, on the other hand, flexibly both bypassed them and silently sneaked into the interior of the enemy stronghold to free the hostages being held inside. The two came to the basement in one breath. Only then did Liang Chaoshu let out a sigh of relief. It's so exciting ah squad leader. His heart thumped wildly and he grinned. Don't let your guard down. Actual combat isn't a joke with you. Shen Feng had just issued a serious reminder when he suddenly saw a flash of silhouettes in the dimly lit passage in front of him. Immediately afterward, flames lit up and the sound of gunfire accompanied by bullets whistled. Shen Feng was quick to dodge to the side, only heard a swoosh sound in his ear. The sound was exceptionally clear, as if the bullet flew past his ear. Squad leader? Liang Chashu looked back and realized that Shen Feng was fine, and immediately raised his weapon and swooshed twice at the enemy who had fired a cold shot in the darkness just now. About 15 meters ahead, the black shadow shook for a moment. Immediately after that, the ground let out a muffled bang sound. I said it, right? Shen Feng and Liang Chaoshu looked at each other. There should still be a small number of guards here. Be careful. The two men looked at each other and nodded to each other. Crossing forward, they quickly burst into the deeper depths. Meanwhile outside, the two of them, Zhang Nianjia and Yuan Weihong, had already ambushed earth bombs at several major entrances and exits near this old and almost deserted residential building long ago. At this moment, the enemies were trying to leave through these main passages to pursue the so-called escaped enemies. They had no idea that they had stepped into a death trap. Bang! The first trap was detonated as five enemies crossed over. The flashbang instantly blinded those five enemies briefly. Wang Shichun, who had already locked onto them, decisively fired at this time. With every bullet that flew out, an enemy would definitely fall to the ground in response and pass away on the spot. Kaching, Kaching, for every enemy knocked down, Wang Shichun would silently count a number. At the same time, he quickly loaded the gun before firing it. I say, buddy can you hit the target with such a shooting method? Sun Bin saw Wang Shichang's operation and questioned a bit. Just as the words finished Wang Shichang had stopped shooting, Sun Bin raised the binoculars to take a look and realized that all the enemies had actually been put down. Hey, Line Ah you, not ashamed to be a sharpshooter, squad leader said, the world's top sniper. The interval between two shots is within one second. Wang Shichang said, already raising his weapon to aim at another direction again. Sun Bin silently recited his earlier words twice and nodded. The squad leader might be bragging to you. Why are you so serious? Despite his words, he himself began to subconsciously, counting along with the number of times Wang Shichang fired his gun. On the other side, Yang Lu controlled the black drone, perfectly blending into the night, constantly tracking and monitoring the situation within this area. At the same time, she shared the enemy's movements accurately and timely to each of her team members, helping them to better block the enemies who were trying to escape. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can be read normally. Li Songpa watched as, one after another, his brothers fell. Finally, he realized that his side had been ambushed. Not good, hurry back, go back inside the building, there are snipers. Li Songpa shouted, turned around and ran back. But just at this time the two juniors beside him, suddenly fell down. Wang Shixian had already locked on aiming at Li Songpa. However, he recognized this guy as the leader of this small criminal organization. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. So at this moment, Wang Shichang hesitated. Squad leader, that guy Li Songpa is within my firing range. Should I leave him alive? Wang Shichang inquired. His finger was gently pulling the trigger, ready to fire at any time. Inside the basement of the residential building, Shen Feng and Liang Chaoshu had just liberated the victims who were locked inside the iron cage. Moreover, through the key information given by old Zhang, they had also successfully found old Zhang's wife and two young daughters here. At this moment, they were preparing to take these people for transfer. Hearing Wang Shichang's inquiry, Shen Feng thought for a moment and shook his head. No need. The commotion here has likely attracted the attention of the surrounding residents. Let's hurry up and settle the rest and retreat. Have you resolved the battle outside? 
Xin Feng finished and asked again, 43 enemies, no more and no less, together with Li Songpa, exactly 44, this number, ha, is so unlucky, while responding to Xin Feng's question, Wang Shiqiang, decisively fired a shot at Li Songpa who was fumbling about, as if he was a frightened mouse not knowing where to run, in an instant, the bullet passed through the other party's head, sniper team is outside on guard with fire support, schoolboy is in charge of controlling the drone to monitor the nearby area, notify immediately if someone comes, everyone else, come in and move things with me, Xin Feng also didn't tell everyone what to move, it just told Yuan Wei Hong, Zhang Ninja and the others to hurry in and join them, soon everyone gathered together, you too, take them out and let them leave on their own, they're following you, don't lose them, saying this, Xin Feng handed over the three female victims, one large and two small, to Zhang Ninja, squad leader, are they, looking at these three victims who were scaly, covered with bruises and purple bruises, and were disheveled and unclothed, Zhang Ninja hesitantly looked at Xin Feng, while Xin Feng nodded, they are old Zhang's family, upon hearing this, Zhang Ninja's face eased and her gaze instantly became much gentler, she gently pulled those two little girls, don't be afraid, follow your sister out of here, she will protect you, she said and gently touched the heads of those two little girls, Xin Feng, on the other hand, shook his head at Liang Chao Shu, signaling him to turn back, dog bear, let's go back, when he was searching this area just now, he found some jewelry and stuff that the enemy had hidden here, there was also some cash, the quantity seemed to be quite a lot, but because he was busy rescuing people he didn't bother to deal with it, now that all the victims have been rescued, it's time to deal with these super expenses, Zhang Ninja and Yuan Weihong didn't dare to be vague, after all, it was now a race against time, avoiding the enemy or the local official forces from rushing over, causing everyone to get into even more trouble, the two of them, personally escorted old Zhang's wife and daughter, as well as guided the hundred or so victims to quickly leave the basement and come to the ground, you guys are free, you can leave on your own now, Zhang Yanjia said to them, if you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally, however, these rescued victims were staring at each other with wide eyes, seems to be unable to understand the words of Zhang Yanjia that way, old Zhang's wife and daughter stood behind the two of them, of course, these words could not have been said to them, they also did not leave, go, if you guys don't run for a while when the enemy comes, you'll be taken back again, Yuan Weihong also urged, but those people, however, remained indifferent, seeing such a strange reaction from them, the two people were a bit speechless and looked at each other really not knowing what to do, good at this time, Xin Feng and Liang Chashu two people, shoulder and hand holding, holding a large bag of superhuman expenses out, seeing everyone gathered at the door, Xin Feng looked at Zhang Yanjia and Yuan Weihong in doubt, what's going on, didn't I tell you to quickly dismiss them, squad leader, it's not that we don't want to, they don't want to leave, nor do they say anything, presumably they don't understand our language, Zhang Nenjia replied breathlessly, at this Xin Feng turned his head to look at those victims, at this moment, one of the victims took the initiative to stand out and look at Xin Feng, and in the ninth district language, which was not pronounced standardly but was relatively fluent, he said to Xin Feng, it's not that we won't leave, we just want to thank you in person, thank you for saving all of us, said this dry and skinny man, unexpectedly kneeled down on both knees and caught out to Xin Feng, and his action immediately drew a response from the other victims, everyone followed the movements of the skinny man and followed his example of kneeling and kowtowing to Xin Feng and Liang Chao Shu and the others to say thank you, some were mumbling languages that Xin Feng and the others could not understand, while some were directly using the raw language of the ninth district to thank them, such a heavy gift, how can we afford it, everyone hurry up, it's still dangerous here, the enemy's accomplices will most likely rush over, so everyone hurry up and get out of here, Xin Feng helped the man in the lead up while he winked at Liang Chaoshu, he signaled Liang Chaoshu to take out a portion of the transcendence fee and distribute it to these victims who had suffered and been tortured, when Liang Chaoshu saw Xin Feng's eye gesture, he immediately froze, his face was full of dismay as he looked at Xin Feng, inquiring to confirm the situation, hurry up and don't be long winded, Xin Feng looked at this kid squinting and immediately put down the bag of jewelry he was carrying. He then picked up a handful of them and walked towards one of the women in the crowd who had a yellow face and skinny bones and waxy hair. This woman's eyes were numb as she watched Xin Feng approaching her, and her hands immediately folded together. Xin Feng, on the other hand, stuffed the large handful of jewelry in his hand into the other person's hand. Immediately after that, he turned back and similarly gave the other victim a similar portion of jewelry. These are to compensate for your losses. Think of it as atonement for the evil deeds committed by those criminals. Everyone take this money and wealth and leave quickly. 
Xin Feng said and continued to distribute the money and wealth to the others. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Seeing Xin Feng's actions, although Liang Chaoshu was in great physical pain, he still operated along with him as well. The two people quickly finished dividing the bag of jewelry and money. Immediately, without even thinking about it, Xin Feng opened another big bag that was full and bulging. Still splitting it? Liang Chaoshu looked up at Xin Feng in dismay as his flesh ached. However, Xin Feng did not say anything, but distributed more jewelry money. Those victims who got the money. They thanked Xin Feng once again and bowed down with a big salute. Afterwards, they all wept with joy and took their money and jewelry with them, scattering away from all directions. Seeing these circumstances, Liang Chaoshu had no choice but to helplessly, also follow to continue to divide things. At this moment, Yang Lu's voice of reminder came from inside the communicator. Squad leader, we have to hurry up. The local official forces are on the move. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. The closest one to us is currently less than 3 kilometers away. Yang Lu's reminder made every member of the team tense up in succession. Liang Chaoshu couldn't help but speed up the distribution. At this moment, Yuan Weihong, Zhang Nanjia also followed suit and joined the distribution action. The four of them, quickly dispersed the entire five big bags of money and jewelry, all of which were distributed to more than a hundred victims. These victims who had received compensation soon all dispersed on their own. Let's go too. Xin Feng handed over the remaining two small handbags to Liang Chaoshu, then carrying his own weapon. He led a few other team members in the direction where they had hidden the car. It was supposed to be a rewarding harvest. This is good. Now, only this much left. Liang Chaoshu spat out heartily. Yuan Weihong and Zhang Yinjia, on the other hand, were not so obsessed with this. They had rescued so many kidnapped victims, and now their hearts were full of fulfillment. Having this was already enough. It didn't even matter if it was money or not. Don't complain. These things were originally the criminals' ill-gotten gains, as well as squeezed from those kidnapped and oppressed victims. Now we're kind of returning it to them. Xin Feng turned back to Liang Chaoshu and explained. Afterward, he brought old Zhang's wife and daughter to his car in quick steps. They had driven over more than one car this time. Xin Feng started his car, and the rest of the team members had also finished gathering. Everyone jumped into the car individually and followed Xin Feng as he headed off. With Yang Lu controlling the drone to scout the movements of the entire area, it wasn't difficult to avoid the forces of the local official patrol division. On the outskirts of the countryside, next to a dark banana forest near the highway, at this moment old Zhang was waiting here with old Chen. The two people were leaning on the side of the car. Old Zhang smoked cigarette after cigarette. All right, you should stop smoking. If you keep smoking you'll get lung cancer sooner or later. Old Chen impatiently waved his hand, trying to fan away the secondhand smoke wafting over from the side. However, old Zhang was simply ignoring his protests. I don't know whether those few young people, in the end, can successfully solve the problem? I'm nervous in my heart ah. Old Zhang took a deep breath and said calmly. Just as the words were finished, the two heard a sound of a car engine in the distance. Simultaneously raising their heads to look forward, they saw a beam of light shooting over. Old Zhang and Old Chen's hearts were slightly flabbergasted. For a moment both of them were nervous and uneasy. This was because they couldn't be sure whether it was the enemy or Xin Feng and his group that were coming over now. The two hurriedly hid on the other side of the car, near the direction of the banana forest, and sneakily looked out. Soon, they saw the car coming from the distance and gradually slowing down. The lights from the car's headlights were very shaky, making it impossible to see the driver's side clearly. And looking at the number of headlights, there was more than one of these cars. Old Zhang and Old Chen's mood became even more tense. Neither of them dared to say anything or come out. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Until Xin Feng stopped the car, turned off the lights and took his wife and daughter out of the car. Only when old Zhang saw this scene did he finally put his heart down completely. At the same time, he trembled with hot tears and carefully walked out from his hiding place. Su Weisai, is that you? Old Zhang was calling his wife's name. He couldn't believe that this was real. While trembling as he walked towards his wife, he subconsciously looked at his two daughters again. His wife, as well as the two women, were also shocked and happy at this moment as they walked over towards old Zhang. This, this is really great. It's really you guys. It's really you guys. Old Zhang wept with joy and excitement. He embraced his wife and two daughters in his arms, and the family hugged each other and cried. Next to him, Old Chen, as well as Xin Feng and his teammates, looking at this warm scene in front of them were also touched inwardly. Young man, this time it's really thanks to you guys. 
Old Chen looked at Xin Feng with relief. Before he remembered to say thank you, it's just a show of hands, the enemies should have all been taken care of, including their leaders. Even if there are still very few leaks, they are just small shrimps that can't make any waves. Xin Feng waved his hand modestly. Hearing his words, at once Old Chen's expression was stunned for a moment. He had just thought that Xin Feng, these few people, had utilized some kind of cleverness or something to opportunistically deceive the enemy, and then took the opportunity to find and rescue Old Zhang's wife and daughter. But now listening to Xin Feng's words doesn't seem to be the case. You, you, ended the lair of Li Songpa's gang? Old Chen looked at Xin Feng incredulously and asked tentatively. Xin Feng, on the other hand, nodded seriously. Not bad. Liang Chaoshu, on the other hand, was showing off and generally hemmed and hawed. If you don't believe me, you can ask Uncle Zhang's wife. At this time, Old Zhang and his wife and daughters also heard the conversation over here. They all turned their heads to look over. Old Zhang's expression was also filled with incredulity as he and his wife exchanged glances. His wife, on the other hand, immediately nodded solemnly. They did indeed kill all of their enemies. And they also gave us a large sum of money. You see, Old Zhang's wife was married to a local. So at this time, when she opened her mouth to speak, she was also using the local language. Hearing his wife say this, and seeing a large pile of money and jewelry come out of her hand, Old Zhang's entire body was a bit confused, his head buzzing. After a moment, he came back to his senses. He hurriedly turned around and thanked Shen Feng and the others. Immediately after that, he took those money and jewelry from his wife's hand and said to her seriously, These young men are mercenaries. They have already helped us too much. They were also the ones who rescued me from being captured by the enemy before. Not only that they have already given me quite a bit of money, we can't ask for any more of this. The wife immediately nodded her head obediently after hearing old Zhang's words. While old Zhang took the money and handed it to Xin Feng, young man, we can't ask for your belongings anymore. It's okay Uncle Zhang, keep it. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. You guys will need these to live your lives in the future. Xin Feng pushed the belongings back, but old Zhang gave it another push back. No matter what he just insisted on not accepting it. Young man, originally I was already very embarrassed when I didn't have any reward to give you guys. You guys can over bring my wife and child back safe and sound. I really can't thank you enough. You really can't have these things. Old Zhang was so insistent. Xin Feng did not say anything more. He signaled Liang Chashu to put the things away. At this time, Old Chen also came over looking at them with a face of appreciation and worship. Looking like he had something to say. Old Chen looked at Xin Feng and his group with a strange expression and excitedly went up and said, I really didn't expect that the 9th district would still have such outstanding mercenaries like you. Good, good. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. This time, it's really a long face for our 9th district. Raising eyebrows ah. Young man, do you mind giving me a contact? In the future, if there is a need, I can introduce you to customers. Old Chen looked at Xin Feng expectantly and requested. He didn't just say this in order to promote his professional ethics as a pimp. He didn't just say this in order to gain enough benefits for himself and to match up with clients in need. Old Chen actually has his own little plan. Xin Feng and his party really cannot see the young strength actually so powerful. With just a small team of seven mercenaries, they had defeated a small criminal gang that had been a scourge in the area for many years, and it was a complete and utter crushing of this small gang. What kind of concept is this? I'm afraid that even some veteran mercenary teams might not be able to do such a thing. As someone who was also on the verge of breaking the law and committing crimes, Old Chen himself sometimes ran into trouble. Therefore, asking Xin Feng for his contact information now was also just in case. In case one day he, or his family and friends, were also kidnapped. Then, it was possible that one would have to turn to Xin Feng and his team for help. Xin Feng looked at Old Chen and thought of his profession. Originally, he was a bit hesitant. However, Old Zhang stood out to speak for Old Chen at this time. Don't worry little guy. Although this guy doesn't do anything serious. He's a nice guy. He won't do those things that are eating out of the palm of his hand. Otherwise I, Old Zhang, will be the first to not let him go. After decades of crawling around in society, Old Zhang had seen all kinds of people. As a human savant he instantly guessed the reason for Xin Feng's hesitation. That was why he said these words at this time. When Xin Feng heard this, he nodded and gave Old Chen a contact information. This was one of his own cell phone cards. It was temporarily handled locally and did not require an ID card. It could be discarded at any time if needed. So there was no worry that Old Chen would really be unfavorable to himself. Thanks a lot. Old Chen arched his hand and thanked Xin Feng and his teammates repeatedly. It was as if he had picked up a great bargain. 
Shen Feng took a look and old Zhang and his family members had all been reunited. Things were basically settled. It was almost time to take his teammates to go into hiding for a while. They next, they had to go back and prepare for the preparations. The mercenary mission that they had taken on earlier. But they hadn't completed it yet. Tomorrow was the seventh day of Shen Feng's planned preparations. After taking care of the intelligence news of that black criminal gang, they would be ready to strike. Shen Feng then proposed his farewell to old Chen and old Zhang. However, just at this time, suddenly old Zhang's wife walked over. She looked at Shen Feng with a somewhat strange expression. Yet she did not say anything. Such a move made everyone present a bit puzzled. And everyone watched old Zhang's wife's every move. What's wrong? Old Zhang asked suspiciously. His wife glanced at him and her gaze returned to Shen Feng's face. You guys, being so powerful, can you help out and also, save the others? If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. In a not-so-standard accent, she spoke the language of the Ninth District and made a request to Shen Feng. Immediately afterward, turning her head, she explained to old Zhang fluently in the local language. In turn, old Zhang acted as a translator between the two. Soon old Zhang understood the ins and outs, and the look on his face became incomparably distraught. He turned his head and looked at Shen Feng and explained, Young man, the matter is like this. While my wife was being held by the enemy, she got a message that the enemy intends to sell them within these two days to a company called Edessa. It's really thanks to all of you, who saved my wife and daughter in time, otherwise the consequences would really be unimaginable. Old Zhang once again thanked him profusely, constantly casting grateful glances at Shen Feng and the rest of the team. Shen Feng felt that this company called something like Edessa was a bit familiar. He frowned and asked, what is the Edessa Company? The 6th District was coiled with a lot of dark forces, some of which were deeply rooted and disjointed, and very large. And there were even more black and evil forces similar to small workshops and small groups like Li Songpa in general. However, Shen Feng always felt that he had heard of this Edessa Company somewhere. At this time, without waiting for old Zhang to explain, Yang Lu opened her mouth first, this Edessa Company, is a phonetic name, right? Old Zhang turned back to look at her and immediately nodded, yes. The real name of the Adelsha company should be called. He thought for a moment. It's called Adisa, and some people also call it Adisha. All in all, this Adisha company is a relatively powerful criminal gang among our area. You all can think of them as a sinister organization on the next level up from Lee Sampa's organization. And the criminal activities they engage in aren't really that different. It's just that on top of some of the criminal activities, those organizations with more power and energy look more legitimate. Lee Sampa usually, if he catches the right victims, he will sell them to the Edessa company. According to old Zhang's explanation, the crowd quickly understood the general situation. To put it simply, the Edessa company held almost all of the business with color in this area. That's why they were very interested in acquiring, buying and selling some women with color. As a grassroots criminal organization, gangs like Lee Sumpa have long maintained business ties with Edelweiss. After acquiring these women, Edelweiss may not always put them into the local color business. It is also possible that they sell them to other districts in exchange for higher profits. About two years ago, one of Lao Zhang's wife's cousins was also kidnapped by a criminal organization and sold to the Edelweiss company. After that, it was as if her cousin had evaporated from the face of the earth, and there was no trace of her. No matter how much the family searched, there were no clues. Someone told them that old Zhang's wife's cousin had long since been sold beyond the seas. All in all, in terms of the degree of evil, the Edelweiss company was definitely more than Li Songpa's small gang. Their armed forces are certainly stronger. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Squad leader. Why do I hear this Adissa? As if it's the same as our mission objective? At this time, Yang Lu curiously, looked at Shen Feng. Shen Feng was silent, already checking the mercenary missions they had taken before. He then nodded. This Adessa company, is indeed our target. Hearing his words, both old Zhang and old Chen looked at each other. What did you say? You, are going after the Edessa company? They were shocked. As two human savants who had been crawling around in the area for more than 10 or 20 years, old Zhang and old Chen knew the terrifying aspects of the Edessa company. At this moment, they were both shocked by the decision of Shin Feng and his crew. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Old Zhang subconsciously closed his slightly open mouth, gulped, and reminded, Young man, perhaps I didn't make myself clear just now. This Edessa company is one of the biggest black forces in our bright area. They are not something that can be compared to those rabble-rouser general criminal organizations. Yeah, as far as I know, 
Just the department of the Adelsha company that engages in the telecom fraud business alone has more than 150 employees. There are many more in their other departments, and they can already be considered a regular company. And the armed forces under their hands are not comparable to ordinary punks. They are all trained fighters. I even heard that they also used to recruit ex-military personnel to act as armed forces to protect their company. Old Chen also came forward at this time and reminded Chen Feng. He spoke out some of the news he had heard. Hearing them say that, several team members looked at Xin Feng, and Liang Chao Shu couldn't help but say, Squad leader, this criminal force is that powerful? The team members were obviously a bit surprised as well, because this mission they took on, the reward given was only a mere 100, 000 knives, and that wasn't even the amount that came to hand. It had to be split with the Mercenary Management Association before they could do so. I don't know if the real amount in hand is 50,000. If the seven members of the team split it up, then each of them would only get that much. Yet to deal with actually such a tricky opponent? In our light district, there are many other organizations like this. All in all, the sixth district is a sin paradise. Crime is not punishable here. Human life is even less valuable. Old Chen sighed helplessly and picked up the conversation. Shen Feng, on the other hand, glanced at Liang Chaoshu. Mercenaries who carry out this kind of mission against the forces of darkness and evil have never lived on bounties. His meaningful words immediately reminded Liang Chaoshu of the overdrive fee. Instantly, Liang Chaoshu revealed a heartfelt smile and looked at the two small bags he was carrying in his hand. Uncle Zhang, Uncle Chen, do you two have any more clues about that organization? As detailed as possible, the more the better. Xin Feng looked at Old Zhang and Old Chen. Hearing him ask this, the two of them were once again surprised. Young man, are you really going to deal with that criminal organization? Xin Feng nodded seriously. This is the mercenary commission we accepted earlier. Seeing that he was so insistent, Old Zhang nodded in understanding. Mercenaries also had to be credible and reputable. Otherwise, who would look for them to carry out missions in the future? Young man, you have extraordinary strength and outstanding abilities. I can only wish you good luck in your mission here. However, the enemy is not a kind man or woman. You all must be well prepared before launching your actions. And you must pay attention to safety. In addition, my wife may be able to help you guys. Old Zhang said, turning to look at his wife. His wife immediately stepped forward and looked at Xin Feng, while Old Zhang continued to explain, two years ago my wife's cousin disappeared, suspected to have been sold by the Edessa group to a place outside the 6th district. For this reason, our entire family devoted all our efforts to entrusting all connections to investigate. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. A lot of money was spent. Although in the end, we still couldn't find my wife's cousin. But, we more or less have some knowledge about the Edessa company. After old Zhang's words were finished, he turned his head to gesture to his wife, and his wife immediately followed and opened her mouth, using the somewhat broken language of the 9th district to introduce herself to Xin Feng and the others. According to his wife's introduction, Xin Feng and the others were further informed about the intelligence about the Edessa group, this Edelsha group. In addition to opening a proper company under the name in the 6th district and blatantly engaging in wire fraud business and business with colors, they also engage in a variety of illegal activities. For example, human trafficking, trafficking in human organs, smuggling of arms and uniques, etc., which are very common in the 6th district. The viciousness and inhumanity of this criminal group is simply too numerous to mention. Old Zhang's wife told Xin Feng and the others that according to the results of their previous secret investigation, the number of employees in several major business divisions of the Edelweiss company added up to roughly between 600 and 800 people. Of course, the vast majority of these employees were also victims. They were all tricked into coming here through some illegal means, or were treated as slaves, and were purchased by the company at a low price from other black organizations. They were forced to engage in illegal activities, the slightest disobedience. At every turn, they would be verbally abused and beaten, and some were even directly drawn blood to sell their organs. The total number of their real hitman force is around 120 people. Many of them, I've heard, are professionally trained security personnel who ran from other districts to the 6th district to act as hitmen for the Sin Syndicate because they can earn more that way. Old Zhang continued translating for his own wife. The key information such as the enemy's armed forces were spelled out. These were actually not considered secrets. However, anyone who had been active in the 6th district for a while and had the presence of mind to observe similar crime syndicates could basically get a rough idea of what was going on, and the figures wouldn't be too far off. This was because crime syndicates also needed to control costs and be cost-effective in order to raise so many hitmen. Uncle Zhang, do you know what weaponry the enemy mainly uses? Liang Chaoshu suddenly couldn't help but ask. Upon hearing this, 
Old Zhang and his own wife glanced at each other and subconsciously shook their heads at each other. This is unknown. We don't know much about these specialized things, Old Zhang helplessly explained. His complexion looked a bit self-condemning. It could be seen that he genuinely wanted to help Shen Feng and his party. After all, these were the saviors of himself as well as his wife and daughter. It's fine. The information you guys have given us is already valuable. Zhang Yanjia comforted the two couples. And at this moment, the old Chen beside him spoke up. Don't worry young man, they're just a crime syndicate. It's not like they're a regular force. The main weapons used by the criminal organizations in the 6th district are all ARCA 48s. Almost every crime syndicate's standard firepower configuration is this, because it's cheap and leathery. In addition they have a few long guns like RPGs, heavy machine guns, shotguns, and other weaponry. That's basically it, with a focus on portability. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Airplanes, tanks, and cannons like this are definitely not available, and the local official forces won't allow them to blatantly possess these heavy weapons. Of course, I can't rule out the possibility that these enemies are privately harboring such things, but the possibility is very, very small is all. Old Chen explained to Shen Feng and the others, even Old Chen, a second generation expatriate who had been working in the area for decades, had already said so. Shen Feng and the others certainly wouldn't ask any more superfluous questions. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. The crowd was speechless at this time. After a moment of silence, Shen Feng suddenly looked at old Zhang. What are Uncle Zhang's plans for the future? Alas, what plans can there be? This time to escape from death. Let me sort of completely and utterly give up all the fantasies in my heart. The 6th district is a place that eats people and does not spit out bones. Not ordinary people can stay. Half a lifetime of hard work has gone down the drain. Now, I don't want to make a comeback. I just want to bring my wife and two children back to the 9th district. Now think about it. Looking at the whole world. Or our 9th district is the safest ah. Tree is a thousand zhang high. It is also time to return to the roots. Old Zhang was incomparably emotional. Shaking his head and sighing in response to Shen Feng. And at this time, Shen Feng spoke again. Uncle Zhang, I wonder if you can do me a favor. What favor? Just feel free to ask. You guys have done so much for our family. As long as it's something within my old Zhang's power, I definitely won't excuse myself. Old Zhang nodded decisively, and also made a promise. And old Chen, who was on the side, also revealed an expression of eagerness. This was a rare and good opportunity to help this group of powerful mercenaries. And each other could just take the opportunity to establish a deeper friendship. Shen Feng turned his head to look at Liang Cha Shu who immediately understood and handed over the two bags he was carrying in his hand. Uncle Zhang, here is what we scavenged from the enemy's stronghold earlier. Some jewelry and jewels and gold bars. I'm afraid I have to trouble you to help process these and turn them into cash. Shen Feng made his request. Upon hearing this, Old Zhang looked at the two bags in Liang Chashu's hands. He then turned his head and Old Chen exchanged a glance. Young man, if you want to realize these things, I'm afraid this matter still needs to come from me. Old Chen did not make any pretense and immediately stepped forward to take the initiative. That's right. Old Chen's ability is much greater than mine. Old Zhang immediately laughed as well. He was now left with nothing. And if a few stores were still around, it might be possible to wash these jewels for Xin Feng and the others. Does Uncle Chen have a solution? Xin Feng turned his head to look at Old Chen. I know a few people who specialize in this. Only. Old Chen hesitated for a moment. Looking at his reaction Xin Feng knew that the other party wanted to express something. This kind of channel for handling black goods usually required some handling fees. It was all played out in the movies. It's a deduction, right? Shen Feng asked. Old Chen was a bit surprised when he heard that he actually knew the tricks of the trade. However, he didn't say anything more and nodded his head and replied. Yes, to find those people to handle this kind of goods, you need to give them an extra portion of money as a handling fee. It's usually around 30% of the price of the item being handled. However, I have a friend who only charges 20% for his friends. Old Chen held out two fingers. Shen Feng knew that there were such rules here. You want to find someone to liquidate these jewelry gold and silver and such things. You definitely have to pay some price. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. He also didn't bother to count whether the percentage Old Chen said was high or low. Turning his head, Shen Feng signaled Liang Chashu to hand over the things to Old Chen. Then, I'll trouble Uncle Chen. We'll pay you a hard-earned fee after it's done. Harm. What a thing to say. Out of the ordinary young man. Our ancestors have been from the 9th district for generations. And the bloodline of the 9th district flows in me as well. 
It's my honor to make the acquaintance of all of you today. It's just a matter of raising my hand. No need to take it to heart. Old Chen said smilingly and took those gold, silver and jewelry from Liang Chaoshu's hand. He gently weighed it. The weight was really quite a lot. It was indeed not too easy for an ordinary person to get rid of these. Young man, give me some time. Old Chen looked at Xin Feng. No problem, but try to be as quick as possible. Xin Feng nodded, and he wasn't worried that Old Chen would donate money and run away. Unless the other party had eaten bear heart and leopard guts, and still dared to embezzle his money after seeing himself as well as his team members, who were such strong fighters. Let's do it tomorrow afternoon. I will give you the results tomorrow afternoon at the latest. Old Chen promised again at this time. Good. Then I'll trouble Uncle Chen. After Xin Feng finished speaking, he and a few other team members exchanged glances. We have other missions coming up next, so we'll contact you then. Uncle Chen. Uncle Zhang. All right, then we won't bother you all anymore. I wish you all good luck in your missions. Everyone said goodbye to each other. Old Zhang and Old Chen left together in the car they drove over themselves. Xin Feng, on the other hand, turned his head to look at the remaining six team members. Squad leader. Those things seem to be worth quite a bit to me. Are you really so relieved to give them? It was only at this time that Liang Chaoshu finally found the opportunity to raise his concerns to Xin Feng. Previously, when Xin Feng had allowed so much gold and silver treasures to be distributed to those victims, he had already felt a fleshly pain. Xin Feng looked at Liang Chaoshu with a faint smile. Going out depends on friends, more friends more roads. Money is nothing more than something outside the body. If it wasn't for old Zhang and old Chen and their help this time, we're afraid that it wouldn't have been so easy to exterminate this small criminal gang. Xin Feng's words made the other team members not alone. Squad leader has a point. Zhang Yanzhou was the first to come forward to agree with Xin Feng. They were followed by Yang Lu and Yuan Weihong, who also expressed admiration for Xin Feng's pattern. Look at our squad leader's chest pattern, or else we wouldn't say that the squad leader is our leader. Wang Shixiang half-jokingly teased Liang Chaoshu and patted his shoulder. On the side, Sun Ben asked, Squad leader, what are we going to do next? When the other team members heard this, they all looked toward Xin Feng. Let's have a summarization meeting first. Xin Feng's gaze looked to Liang Chaoshu's clothes, the right arm position near the upper arm. There was a ragged hole there that was not easily visible. This was left behind when the two of them had just burst into the interior of the enemy stronghold and rescued those victims. And Liang Chaoshu was almost hit by the enemy. The bullet had gone through the sleeve of his coat. Although it didn't injure Liang Chaoshu too much, a hot bullet grazed next to his flesh, and a skin wound was essential. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Hearing Xin Feng say that he would first summarize the experience and lessons gained from this operation, the team members, in turn, had their spirits lifted. Find a place to eat? Zhang Nenjia proposed. Xin Feng nodded his head and agreed. Not only did he want to find a place to eat, but he also wanted to summarize the problems that had been exposed during this operation. He also had to understand the current situation inside the bright area. Such a big thing had happened. A small criminal gang being wiped out would definitely cause a stir. In fact, Xin Feng was right. The annihilation of Li Sungpai and his criminal gang had indeed caused a huge sensation in the 6th district. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. The reaction of the local patrol force in District 6 was huge. Originally, they had decided that they would eat something at a roadside snack stand and summarize the various problems of this operation in the meantime, but there were quite a few patrol division vehicles patrolling the road back and forth on alert. In order to avoid causing unnecessary trouble, Xin Feng and the team decided that it would be better to go back to the hotel to rest first, and the stuff could be packed and eaten back, because they seemed to be a group of ordinary college students. Although there were officers from the 6th District Patrol Division on the road questioning pedestrians, but Xin Feng and his team passed through without any danger and returned to the hotel. Luckily, we hit our weaponry in time. Squad leader, you really are too prescient. Back in the hotel room, the breath Liang Chao Shu was holding finally loosened. However, Xin Feng frowned and made a silent gesture, and made a wink towards Yang Lu. Yang Lu immediately understood and took out a black object that looked like a shaver from her backpack. She scanned around the entire room and found no problems before she walked back to Xin Feng with a sigh of relief. There's no problem with our room, class president. Holy shit, what kind of equipment is this for you? School master, it looks quite high class. Sun Bin curiously looked at the scanner in her hand. This thing can scan for eavesdropping devices and clandestine photography devices. By capturing a specific frequency it's possible to discover these devices hidden. Yang Lu briefly explained to everyone how this scanner worked. Everyone became even more amazed at what they heard and looked up at Xin Feng. Squad leader, 
You even prepared this kind of thing in advance. Ha! Huh? Xin Feng smiled slightly, thinking to himself that this wasn't something I prepared. It was something that already existed inside the weaponry box provided by the system. But of course he didn't bother to explain. All right, summarize this operation. Xin Feng took the lead and sat down on the sofa. The other team members, too, followed suit and sat down. Let's talk while we eat. Liang Chaoshu took the initiative to set out a large pile of food that had been packed back on the table. Just after doing so, suddenly the crowd heard, from the porch outside, the sound of knocking on the door. By the sound of it, it came from the door of the room across the hall. That's my room? Yang Lu looked at the other members of the team in surprise. The people glanced at each other and were a bit wary of each other. Xin Feng slowly stood up and quietly walked towards the door of the room, looking out through the cat's eye. At this time, he happened to see that two uniformed officers of the 6th District Patrol Division, after knocking on the door of Yang Lu's side of the room for half a day with no answer, taking a list of names, they turned to knock on the door of the room next to Yang Lu's. That was Zhang Yinjia's room. Seeing this, Xin Feng frowned slightly. He made a silent gesture to his team members and whispered the situation to everyone. It's someone from the 6th District Patrol Division. Ah, uh, the Patrol Division? Did they find out what we did? It shouldn't be. It's just a routine inspection. But everyone, don't take it lightly. After Xin Feng finished speaking, he walked back to the sofa and sat down first as if nothing had happened. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. The other members of the team saw his actions and all followed suit and walked back. Everyone took a few deep breaths to make themselves look as calm as possible. Soon, the knock on the door came to Xin Feng's room. Liang Chaoshu and the other team members exchanged glances and Shen Feng nodded at him. He then took another deep breath and walked over to open the door. Are you guys, are you the tenants here? The two patrol division officers at the door were almost startled when they saw the lanky Liang Chao Shu who was almost as tall as the doorframe. At this moment, one of the two men seriously questioned in the global language. I am staying next door. This is my friend's room. Liang Chao Shu replied fluently, and made a curious questioning expression. And at this moment, one of the other party subconsciously looked behind him and saw Shin Feng and the others sitting in the living room. What are you guys doing here? These two officers of the patrol division, ignoring Liang Chao Shu who was blocking the doorway, directly forced their way inside the room. We are gathering for dinner ah. Shin Feng and a few other team members stood up. One by one, they looked curiously and innocently at the two patrol division officers. Those two men came to their side, and their eyes fell on top of a large pile of snacks on the table. Then, the two men raised their heads again and surveyed Shin Feng and his team members separately. Seeing these young faces, each one of them was harmless and pampered. It was obvious that they had come here to travel and play. The serious faces of these two patrol division officers eased a bit. Take out your ID cards and passports for a moment. After they checked the identity information of Shin Feng and a few team members, and verified that the information on the list of guests staying at the hotel was correct, without even saying a word of apology, they just left like that and continued to knock on the doors of other guests' rooms to check and verify. Liang Chaoshu closed the door, walked back and sat down with the other members of the team and Xin Feng you look at my eyes. Each other knew in their hearts that the 6th district inspectors were on the move to screen for suspicious people. After all, a small criminal organization that had been paying tribute to them for a long time. 60 to 70 criminals were all wiped out. This was a very serious issue no matter what angle one looked at it from. We won't be exposed, right? Yuan Weihong asked in a lowered voice as his two eyes dribbled around. Don't worry, we've done very carefully in our several operations. We've destroyed all the evidence clues that we could. Wang Shixiang said confidently. However, the patrols of the six districts are really ridiculous ah. Civilians are kidnapped and even killed they pretend not to see it and don't go to deal with it at all. Instead, a group of criminals were taken out and so many forces were deployed to investigate. Liang Chaoshu coldly snorted in mockery. Everyone knew that those criminals were so rampant because of the existence of umbrellas in the 6th district. At this moment, none of them knew what to say. That's why we must be more careful in our actions starting next time. This time, our actions were noteworthy. Overall, everyone's performance was very good, completely beyond my expectations. I had originally been mentally prepared, expecting to hang several, and even prepared to eat the banquet. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, Please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. After Shin Feng finished saying these words, his gaze purposely turned to Liang Chao Shu. The other team members, too, subconsciously looked towards him. Seeing everyone looking at him like this, Liang Chao Shu immediately blushed and scratched his head in embarrassment. Squad leader, I wasn't, I didn't expect the enemy to strafe in that way. 
he subconsciously rubbed his belly and defended. However, when he thought about it, at that time, his first action and the enemy were doing it for real, and the bullet hit his bulletproof vest to bring about a sharp pain. Leon Chaoshu was instantly struck with fear. If he didn't have that bulletproof vest, he was afraid that he would really be eaten at the table. Shin Fong ignored Liang Chao Shu's self-justification and continued to summarize the lessons learned from this operation. The dog bear fought bravely. His shooting skills are well trained. It's just that his tactical sense is poor and he's rather impulsive. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Messy code and wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode can be read normally. Not only is it easy to put yourself in danger, but it's also easy to involve your teammates. I hope you improve next time. Never make the same mistake again. As for clairvoyant, your sniping skills have improved a lot, but there are still shortcomings. Sniping techniques can test not only your eyesight as well as your neural reflex arc, but also tests your judgment as well as your heart and your willpower. Know that one day's practice is one day's work, and it's not advisable to be greedy. You need to be more thankful to your observing hand. Shin Feng said and turned his head to look at Sun Bin. He had observed the actions of the sniping pair of Wang Shirchang and Sun Bin. In several battles, from the video captured by Yang Lu's drone, Sun Bin had repeatedly made up for Wang Shirchang, especially in the middle of the final attack on the enemy stronghold in the city to round up the remaining enemies. Whether Wang Shirchang was trying to compete with himself or challenge his own limits, the interval between shots was too short, resulting in insufficient aiming time and much poorer accuracy. Enemies that could have been eliminated with a single shot often required a second shot. This second shot was exactly what Sun Bin had done. Hearing Shen Feng's evaluation of himself, Wang Shirxian lowered his head a little embarrassed. Squad leader's lesson is right. I will learn from my mistakes and strive to be the top sniper in the world. At this time, Shen Feng looked at several other team members and continued to summarize the problems exposed on the operation. He gave a spot-on critique of each team member's performance. Everyone also accepted the criticism with an open mind and absorbed the experience. Time passed unknowingly like this. Seeing that it was getting late, there was still an operation tomorrow. Shin Feng told everyone to go back and rest first, and then formulate the next plan of action after they had rested. The next day, early in the morning, Old Shin called Shin Feng and told him that the things had been dealt with and all of them had been liquidated. The money was clean and there wouldn't be any problems. He personally sent the cash downstairs to Shin Feng. A full 280, 000 knives. Shin Feng had wanted to take out 20, 000 and give it to Old Chen as his hard earned money this time. But Old Chen refused to take it and insisted on saying that it was to make a friend. Shin Feng knew that the other party was looking at their strength and thought that befriending them might be helpful in the future. So he did not make any more pretense. By the way, young man, you guys are now famous ah. Old Chen suddenly said mysteriously to Shin Feng. Hearing his words Shin Feng but his heart flinched. What does that say? He hurriedly inquired. Thinking to himself could it be that he and his teammates had been exposed by yesterday's action? It would be troublesome if that was really the case. Not only would it most likely incur unnecessary trouble for them, but it would most likely affect the mercenary missions that were to be carried out next. Old Chen smiled mysteriously and proudly. Don't be nervous, young man. I know what you're worried about. Don't worry. Whether it's the local official forces or other criminal organizations, for the time being no one has discovered your identities. What I just told you is mainly what happened in the underground world. You have to know that Li Songpai and his criminal organization have been entrenched in our bright area for many years and have already become one of the local snakes here. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. There have been teams of mercenaries that have tried to come against them, but obviously, you know what the result was. That's why this criminal organization has always been regarded as a relatively difficult bone to chew on. This time, you guys not only dealt a severe blow to the arrogance of these criminals, but you even wiped out Li Songpa and his accomplices. This battle was just too beautiful. Many local gang organizations are now on edge and have stepped up their vigilance. But countless people regard you guys as heroes, even though they don't know your identities. Old Chen spoke eloquently and told Shin Feng the whole story. It was only after hearing this explanation from him that Shin Feng was relieved. He thought that their identities had been exposed. Although he also wanted to make a name for himself right away. But now was not the most appropriate time. If the wood shows in the forest, the wind will destroy it. Uncle Chen. Anyway. Thanks for your help this time. Now that the enemy is so vigilant, you should go back first, so as not to arouse the suspicion of those criminals. After Shin Feng sent Old Chen away, he returned to his room with the cash and informed a few other team members to come over. He placed the 280,000 knives neatly on the table. Looking at such a large amount of cash, the eyes of the remaining six team members went straight all of a sudden. Squad leader, 
Is this our hard-earned money for this operation? Wang Shichang subconsciously gulped. What hard-earned fee? It's called the overdrive fee. It's the reward for our hard work. In order for those criminals who have committed the most heinous crimes to be able to pass on to the ultimate bliss, Liang Chaoshu heatedly laughed. After saying that, he also looked at Xin Feng, squad leader. How much money is this in total? No more. No less. A whole 28 dobs. 280,000? Doesn't that mean that each of us can share $40,000? Yang Lu was a bit surprised. This was only the income gained from one operation. It didn't include the portion that had already been distributed out to those victims. Well said. Xin Feng had already started dividing the money at this time. He divided the $280,000 into seven equal parts and handed it to each team member. My god, this money, it's a little too easy to earn. Zhang Nanjia was filled with shock, as well as incredulity. Holding the heavy 40,000 knives in her hand, she still felt like she was dreaming. No wonder, this is a paradise for criminals and a hell for ordinary people. As long as one is ruthless, making money is really too simple. Sun Bin also couldn't help but lament. According to the current exchange rate, this 40,000 knives in one's hand was almost equivalent to 300,000 ninth district coins. If this was placed in a small place, one could buy a house with decoration or a nice car. Looking at the team members, each surprised and incredulous, Xin Feng was also quite emotional in his heart. I've said it before, being a mercenary, the real source of income is not the rewards from those bounty missions at all. He laughed lightly and put away his share. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Afterwards, he raised his head to look again at the team members who were still in a state of excitement. The team members were planning how to spend this money. And at this moment, Xin Feng opened his mouth and poured a pot of cold water on them to cool them down. Does it feel like happiness came too suddenly? That's okay. Now there is bad news to share with you. Xin Feng laughed, hearing Xin Feng's serious words. At this time, all the team members had put away their smiles, and one by one, they curiously looked towards him. Squad leader, what issue is so serious? If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Liang Chaoshu asked curiously. Yeah squad leader, what's the bad news? Could it be that we've been discovered? Can't be? Then wouldn't we have to run away now? Let's just run for it, to be able to get so much money. This time our experience is well worth it. The team members, were speculating one sentence after another. It was Yan Lu who hadn't opened her mouth to say anything. And at this moment, seeing that everyone was guessing wildly, she couldn't help but remind them. Everyone be quiet and listen to what the squad leader has to say. Xin Feng waited for everyone to quiet down before saying, We're famous. Out. Famous? What kind of bad news is this? Yeah, is this bad news? The team members sniffed, and one by one, they looked at each other in dismay. Everyone was unable to understand. How was being famous still bad news? Zhang Yanjia cupped his chin and after thinking for a while, he frowned at Xin Feng and said, Squad leader, is it possible that our target has been alerted? Smart. Xin Feng gave her a thumbs up were famous in the underground world. The results of the official investigation came out, saying that Li Songpa and the others died from the mercenary organization strike. They didn't confirm that it was us, but after this news was released, we caught fire locally. Many people who had been persecuted by Li Songpa and his criminal organization treated us as heroes and praised us. But our enemies, the criminal groups that are still active, especially the Edessa Corporation, now that they're on edge because of this, they're starting to get more and more wary. This means that our next operation, I'm afraid it will be difficult, much tougher than our first operation. Xin Feng spoke out all of this news. Hearing his explanation, everyone then realized. This time, sure enough, the team members couldn't laugh anymore, and everyone began to think seriously. Squad leader, then can we still do this mission or not? Liang Chaoshu asked. It can be done, but I'm afraid we need to make fuller preparations. Xin Feng decided to go to the Mercenary Management Association first and ask their people to help update the latest mission information. These were things that they could be asked to do for free, and at the same time, it was also one of the duties of the Mercenary Management Association. After all, for every mission that the mercenaries completed, they had to take a share of the bounty, so they had to do something to facilitate the completion of the mission, right? Xin Feng spoke out this idea. It quickly gained the approval of the team members, so everyone simply packed up and left the hotel. Soon Xin Feng and his team arrived at the local mercenary management association. Xin Feng found a person in charge at the reception window and explained his intentions. The other party glanced casually outside the window and shook his head helplessly. Young man, your ninth district is so economically developed and has such good social security. Why don't you stay there and work well and run out to do what? 
these words obviously had a different meaning. Obviously, he saw that Xin Feng and his party were too young and looked like new recruits, so it was thought that Xin Feng and the others were asking for trouble by coming here and taking this level of bounty mission. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Want to experience a different life? Xin Feng replied with a smile. The other party once again shook his head helplessly at his words, but did not say anything more. The Mercenary Management Association. Although they would not disclose any information about the identity of mercenaries to the outside world, but they also didn't have the responsibility or obligation to stop those who didn't have the self-importance to take on bounty missions that were beyond their capabilities. Anyway, the one who suffered was not themselves, and if they were lucky enough to let these mercenaries accomplish something, they would still get a share of the bounty from the Mercenary Management Association. So who had nothing to do but meddle in their own business? Here's the information you wanted. The latest update this morning. By the way if you guys really like experiencing mercenary life that much, here's another bounty from your 9th district. Do you want to take a look? The other party suddenly asked again while handing the intelligence to Xin Feng. Oh, is it possible to take two missions at the same time? Xin Feng became curious. It's possible. Not to mention two quests. 20 of them are no problem. But if the requirements of the bounty mission have a time limit, and you fail to complete the mission within the time limit, then you will be penalized, and your comprehensive ability rating in the Mercenary Management Association will drop. What does this rating affect? Xin Feng immediately pursued. Of course, it affects your ability to take on missions. Good missions definitely won't get the turn of mercenary teams with low ratings, and there's also the fact that low-scoring teams will have to pay an extra amount of money if they want to take on missions. So, do you want to take that mission or not? The other party watched Xin Feng grinding and asking questions. Some impatience rose at this time. Xin Feng, on the other hand, subconsciously raised his head and looked at the bounty information scrolling on the large electronic screen. Sure enough, he soon saw it. A reward message from the 9th district. The content of the reward was actually very simple. It was hoped that a mercenary team operating in the 6th district could be found, a few specific targets sought out, and that they would be protected and returned to the 9th district unharmed. The time frame for the mission was a month's time, and the best time frame was to complete it within a week, which would be rewarded with double the mission reward. The reward for the mission was 20,000 knives, with such a small amount of money. Even the introductory mercenary team couldn't look at it. That's why no one had taken up this mission until it was released. Because the Mercenary Management Association wanted to keep the mission initiator a strict secret, Xin Feng couldn't see the identity information of the bounty commissioner. However, this mission made him feel a bit strange. It's a mission to find someone. What do you guys think? Xin Feng looked at a few of his team members. It doesn't matter. Just think of it as exercising our intelligence gathering skills. Liang Chaoshu shrugged. I don't have a problem with it either. Zhang Yanjia followed and spread his hands. Seeing that everyone had no objections, Xin Feng turned to that receptionist and said, I'll take this mission. You have to pay, right? No need. It's free for you guys. Inside there are the commission details of the mission, including the identity information of the target you're looking for, as well as their photos and so on. Take your time to check it out yourselves. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. He casually waved his hand and hurriedly handed out the mission commission to Xin Feng. At the same time, he looked like he wanted to send them away quickly. Xin Feng glanced at his hand, the tightly sealed commission, and then looked at the receptionist, wondering in his heart why there was no charge this time. However, since it was a free mission, not for nothing, he didn't ask too many questions and turned around with his team members to leave. Watching Xin Feng and his team leave, this receptionist was relieved. Shaking his head, he snorted. Sure enough, it's a bunch of newbies in the 6th district who want to find the missing personnel? Go into the wild ground and dig slowly. Perhaps it is also possible to find at the bottom of the Yingduo Ocean. Xin Feng and his team left the Mercenary Management Association, and just after returning to the car, the team members couldn't wait to look at the file bag in Xin Feng's hand one after another. Squad leader, hurry up and open it to see what this mission is. I just now always felt that the receptionist didn't look right off. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Yeah squad leader, it's not possible that there's some kind of pitfall in this mission, right? If it's really that easy, why doesn't anyone take this mission? Liang Chaoshu and Sun Bin, the two of them had a word for each other. They spoke out the worries in their hearts. The other team members, too, expressed their curiosity and worry. Xin Feng checked the document bag and found that the ceiling was very good and there were no traces of it having been opened. Under the expectant gazes of all the team members, 
He slowly opened the document bag and took out the documents inside. Just by taking a look, Shen Feng froze. The few team members around him were also all wide-eyed and a bit confused. What is this, squad leader? How come the target being looked for is actually you? Liang Chaoshu looked up at Shen Feng in surprise. At this moment, in Shen Feng's hand, on the first page of a bunch of documents, the person who had been rewarded by the mission for help and asked the local mercenaries to look for was none other than Shen Feng. What's going on, squad leader? The other few team members, too, were all curious. Shen Feng carefully examined this document. The photo was indeed his own right. Exactly the same. The name, gender, and other information was also the same. It shouldn't be the same name. Shen Feng subconsciously turned the page to check the information of the other people being looked for. On the second page, the photo was clearly Liang Chaoshu. This time everyone's eyes. All of them fell on Liang Chaoshu's face. Everyone looked at me with your eyes. And then subconsciously looked at the file information in Shen Feng's hand. This time everyone unspoken. Shen Feng subconsciously turned the page again. As expected, the third page was really one of the other members inside their seven-member squad. Wang Shichang. In addition to Wang Shichang, followed by Sun Bin on the fourth page, Zhang Yanjia on the fifth page, Yang Lu on the sixth page, and Yuan Weihong on the seventh page. Seven members, seven profiles. On top of recording their photos, ages, names, and other key information, they also left their corresponding contact numbers. Someone is looking for us, squad leader. It can't be that this mission bounty commissioner is our parents, right? Zhang Yanjia immediately thought of this. There weren't many people who knew that they had arrived in the 6th district from the 9th district. Right now, it was the patrol division of the 9th district, the school, and their parents' relatives who knew about these circumstances. And the ones who were most worried about them were undoubtedly their own parents and relatives, combined with the content requirements of this bounty mission. In fact, the answer has already been called out. The one who initiated the bounty to commission mercenaries to search for their whereabouts and commissioned the mercenaries to escort them back to the 9th district unharmed. Besides their parents or relatives, who else would it be? Shen Feng didn't say anything, and at this time, he was a bit teary-eyed. What ah, feelings, we received a mercenary commission mission to find ourselves? Lian Chaoshu was also very amused and didn't know what to say. The other few team members likewise looked oddly playful. Who would have thought that they would have received such a mission by mistake? If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Messy code and wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode can be read normally. For a time everyone felt both fun and helpless. Parents are still but overly worried about themselves. At this time, Yang Lu saw that above her profile, there was a contact number. She recognized this number after looking at it twice. It was her father's cell phone number. Call over and try, confirm it? Yang Lu reminded. Everyone nodded along at the words, thinking that this method was good. Although they already had an answer in their hearts, it was still best to confirm the exact situation. I'll fight to try it out. Liang Chaoshu hadn't contacted his family for several days. He was still on good terms with his family. So he took the initiative at this time and took out his cell phone and was about to dial the phone number he left on top of his piece of information sheet. He vaguely remembered that this should be his father's cell phone number. However, just as Liang Chaoshu was about to dial the number, Shen Feng stopped him. Don't rush first. What is it? Squad leader? Everyone looked at Shen Feng in confusion. In turn, Shen Feng explained, if this bounty mission was issued by our family, then their purpose is to get us to go home. Do you guys want to go back now? Shen Feng asked as he looked at each member of the team. After a slight hesitation, the team members shook their heads. It's a bit of missing the big bed and air conditioning at home. But even if we want to go back, let's at least finish the mercenary mission at hand first, right? After all, there are points to be deducted. Zhang Yinjia was the first to take a stand. Yeah, that's what I think too. I don't know how much money I'll get for completing this mission. In any case, I want to finish it first too. Of course I don't mean for the money. I'm doing this to help the local officials fight against the evil strength. Hey why are you guys looking at me like this? What do you mean? Wang Shixiang touched his pocket, still carrying the 40,000 knives that he didn't have time to go and save up. With a hoary look. He he he. I'm also trying to fight evil and uphold justice. Liang Chaoshu laughed. Seeing the team members each agree to stay and complete the mission before. Shen Feng, on the other hand, asked again. So you guys? Do you want to continue to be bombarded by phone calls and text messages from mom and dad's relatives starting today? As soon as he said that, the team members immediately woke up to why Shen Feng had stopped Liang Chashu from making phone calls just now. They had previously blacked out the parents' contact information. Now, if they were to contact their families in their normal capacity, using their current cell phone numbers to call them, then, it was basically predictable what would happen next. 
those family members who were worried about their sons and daughters, as well as those seven great aunts and eight great aunts and whatnot, were afraid that they could blow up their phones, how can they communicate with each other, how to keep in contact, and how to continue to fulfill the mission. Squad leader, what about my disguise? Liang Chao Shu, who had come to his senses, inquired. That's right, we can disguise ourselves as mercenaries who have taken on this mission, Sun Bin immediately suggested. The other team members nodded their heads when they heard this proposal. Good idea, we can use this identity to ask our family members for more details and see what exactly is going on in the 9th district right now. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. For example, are they still seeking help from the official patrol division? Is it possible for them to personally run to the 6th district to find us? And so on. Yuan Weihong immediately said, Good, then I'll call and ask now. Liang Chashu sniffed and immediately took action, watching him prepare to dial the phone number. Identity reached out to cover his cell phone screen and solemnly reminded again, Take it easy, don't be exposed, unless you want to be endlessly disturbed for the next few days. A more dangerous and difficult mission was coming up soon. It's times like these that everyone needs to stay in contact, and having your cell phones on is essential. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. However, if parents are made aware of their specific cell phone numbers, the consequences will be difficult to predict. These parents and relatives and friends who didn't know the truth could really call them once every minute. Liang Chashu gave Shin Feng a thumbs up. Don't worry squad leader, you still can't trust me to do my job? After saying that, he dialed his father's phone number in front of all the team members, and he turned on the voice intelligent voice change mode, choosing to turn into the voice of an uncle. The phone was quickly connected. Liang Chashu turned on the speakerphone. We are the 6th Region Kamikaze Mercenary Group, and have received your mission commission. Now want to confirm the exact situation. He said seriously to the other end of the phone. On the other end of the phone, the one who answered the call was Liang Chaoshu's father, Liang Jiangwo. Hearing a guy on the phone with a Region 9 accent who claimed to be a member of a mercenary organization calling him to say that he wanted to confirm the situation, Liang Jiangwo first froze for a moment. In his heart, he wondered how it was a mercenary with a Region 9 accent. However, he immediately came back to his senses. Oh, you, hello, Mr. Mercenary. Liang Jiangwo's solemn voice came from the phone, hearing Liang Chaoshu cover his mouth and snicker very unkindly. A few other team members, too, pointed at the kid and then snickered along. Liang Chaoshu snickered a few times and said in a serious and proper manner, We would like to ask you guys a few questions to confirm the situation of the target we are looking for. Oh well, ask then. On the other end of the phone, the parents of several team members were still gathered together. At this time, Liang had already told the others about the mercenary calling him. Right now there were also several parents over there gathered together, listening to the voice on the other end of the phone, hearing that there was already a mercenary organization that had taken up the bounty mission they had posted. Everyone was very happy in their hearts, and they all sidled their ears with the intention of hearing what these mercenaries were going to ask. May I ask your children? Liang Chaoshu had just sworn to reassure Shin Feng that he would never reveal himself, but that was when he started to make mistakes. As soon as he heard him open his mouth, Shin Feng's face immediately changed drastically. Fortunately, Liang Chaoshu also woke up in time and realized that he had blurted out. However, he continued as if nothing had happened. From when did it come to the 6th district? I mean, how many days have they lost contact with you? This relates to us determining the range of their activities so that we can find their whereabouts faster. The parents on the opposite end of the phone had already heard that something was wrong. Everyone looked at each other. Someone inquired in a low voice. How does he know that we are looking for our own children? Yet yeah, just now I heard it too. This is really strange. Could it be that someone leaked the information? I don't think so, right? A group of parents, who matched the information with each other, realized that no one had revealed this matter. They had posted the bounty quests all anonymously, nor had they told people about the relationship between the target they were looking for and themselves. It's probably because people have done a background check on us. After all, they are a professional mercenary team. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, Please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. It should be like this. Alas, the trading of citizens' information is really too rampant now. This is also something that can't be helped. It's not our turn to manage Ah, It's better to hurry up and ask people if they can find someone. These parents, although a little puzzled, but at this time, they didn't go deeper. Soon everyone's thoughts came back on track. Liang Chaoshu's father answered the question of how long his son had been missing, as well as the times of several other people. Liang Chaoshu once again covered his mouth and snickered a few times before he asked in a serious manner. 
Then do you know which city in the 6th district they are operating in? Can you check their airfare information? Yes yes yes, it's possible. Liang immediately replied. We looked up their plane through their identity information and found that they flew to the Bright Area Airport in the 6th region about a week ago. That's why we decided to entrust your local mercenary management association to issue a bounty mission. Mr. Mercenary, could you please act as soon as possible? Please do help us retrieve my son and the other children. Liang Jiangwo grew agitated on the phone. Right now, above the TV news, there were appalling things everywhere. What kidnapping GA waste to sell blood? Most of the people who were tricked into going over there ended up in a very miserable state. Thinking of all the news and images pictures videos and other information that they had inquired about in the past few days, Liang Jiangwo felt that his heart was trembling. The criminal's methods were really too cruel and horrible. Listening to the voice of Liang Jiangwo on the other end of the phone with a strong request, the smile on Liang Chashu's face slightly converged, and his heart felt a bit overwhelmed. The other team members, too, all felt that it was indeed a bit unkind to deceive their parents like this and make them worry so much. Everyone didn't say anything. Silence for a few seconds. And at this moment, on the other end of the phone, a man's voice with a strong mental voice said, Mr. Mercenary, if you can help us get our children back in the shortest possible time, I am personally willing to pay three times the honorarium to thank you. These words immediately caused several other parents to chime in. They love their children very much. At this moment, where do they care about what money and so on? As long as their children can go home safely, money and wealth are all external matters. After all, the longer the delay, the more dangerous it may be. Hearing the phone, the parents of those worried voice. At this time, Shin Feng as well as the other team members, all of them fell silent again. Everyone felt a bit sorry for their parents, letting them worry about themselves in such a way. Shin Feng pushed Liang Chaoshu, signaling him to hurry up and respond to the caller. Liang Chaoshu came back to his senses and immediately replied, You guys don't worry about it, we've already grasped the relevant clues, just leave the next matter to us. All you guys need to do is to prepare the honorarium and then wait at home peacefully. Liang Chaoshu's words immediately made the parents on the other end of the phone happy. Strong hope surged within everyone. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Then Mr. Mercenary, I'm counting on you guys for everything. I really appreciate your help so much. I hope it goes well. The voices of gratitude from the other parents were faintly heard on the phone. At this moment, Liang Chaoshu remembered something and reminded again. During our mission, I hope that you will not contact anyone for help for the time being, nor try to come to the 6th district on your own personal strength. Don't even try to contact being looking for a target. Liang Chaoshu said seriously. Liang Chaoshu's reminder caused the parents on the other end of the phone to be on guard. The joy and hope that surfaced on everyone's face just now transformed into worry at this time. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Messy code and wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. They were all people with rich life experience. Naturally, they can figure out why this mister. Mercenary on the other end of the phone is making these reminders. In case their own children were in the 6th district, they had encountered some unexpected situation. If you contact them at this time, if you contact them at this time, or even call for help from other official forces, there is a possibility of alerting the police. There was also the possibility of placing the children in a dangerous situation. After realizing these possibilities in their hearts, the parents didn't ask too many questions, and everyone nodded their heads. Liang Jiangwo, on behalf of all of them, agreed in one breath. Don't worry mister. Mercenary, we won't give you guys any trouble. Right now we just hope that all of you will be able to find our children as soon as possible, and then bring them back to the 9th district unharmed. You guys also don't worry, we are all professionals. Liang Chaoshu replied. He briefly chatted with the opposite party for a few more moments. Only then did he hang up the phone. After ending the call, Liang Chaoshu and the rest of the team looked at each other and burst into laughter with each other. Ha 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 ha. Look at how you scared your dad. That's your dad, right? Sun Bin happily looked at Liang Chaoshu. Just my dad. Ha, huh? your parents aren't at that end? The one who yelled the loudest just now. The one who said he'd give triple or even quadruple the bounty. Whose dad ah that is? Liang Chaoshu rolled his eyes and pulled his neck in defiance. Squad leader. It can't be that's your dad, right? Wang Shichun looked at Shen Feng who looked odd. The other members of the team, who heard this, also looked over. Instead, Shin Feng changed the topic. All of you stop joking around here. Can't you hear how worried they are over there? As soon as Shin Feng said this, the smiles on everyone's faces subconsciously tightened up. Everyone revealed a guilty look again. Harm, what are you all tensing your faces for? We came out this time to do something meaningful. And we've even made money. No less. When the time comes, 
we'll go back and give our parents a big surprise, right? Don't look so tense. Be happy and cheer up. We have to go on a mission later. Liang Chao Shu saw that everyone was silent. The car instantly became deadly dull with a gloomy atmosphere. He immediately cheered everyone up. Hearing him say this, everyone remembered the 40,000 knives in their pockets, and they were indeed immediately more comfortable in their hearts. Right. Not only did we gain a very valuable life experience this time out, but we also got a lot of money. If my dad and my mom knew that I earned so much as a mercenary, they would be afraid that their jaws would drop in shock. That's a whole year's income for both of them already. Wow. Schoolmaster. Your parents' income is so high? It seems like your family is quite rich ah that. A few members of the team. You spoke and I spoke. In addition to cheering each other on, everyone also talked about the harvest issue this time around. This topic, however, was finally ended because of Xin Feng's words. This income is quite normal now, isn't it? Three to four hundred thousand dollars a year. Is it much? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Why are you looking at me like that? Xin Feng looked at the other team members strangely. Squad leader, are you deliberately pissing us off or are you in Versailles? So it turns out that squad leader's family is the rich one. TSK, no wonder you're so generous. Bought us so many weapons and equipment, and even prepared the car. Squad leader, what do our uncles and aunts do? The team members looked at Xin Feng half flirtatiously and somewhat enviously. An income of several hundred thousand dollars a year, placed inside the topmost city in the ninth district, was not something that just anyone could get. That was why they acted so surprised. In most cases, it was already considered very good for a family to have a hundred thousand or so savings a year. All right, don't talk about what's there. Let's discuss the next task. Xin Feng didn't want to say more and hurriedly changed the topic. And at this moment, Liang Chaoshu scared twice and exclaimed, Hey, hey, you guys say that when the time comes, we send ourselves back to the ninth district. How surprised would they look if they saw us? He had already begun to envision his parents' reaction when he returned to the ninth district as a mercenary escorting himself, the sought-after mission target, to hand in the mission and collect the bounty. Hearing Liang Chaoshu say this, the other team members also followed suit. Everyone was very much looking forward to this. However, Yang Lu was an exception. She was clearly more mature in her thinking. At this moment, seeing that everyone was joking around, Yang Lu couldn't help but remind. All right everyone, save your expectations for after completing the mission and think about it slowly. We don't have much time left. There's less than 10 hours before it gets dark. We'd better hurry up and figure out more information about the enemy before then. Yang Lu's reminder was finally what calmed these exuberant guys down. Every member of the team looked towards Xin Feng one after another. If he remembered correctly, Xin Feng had the intelligence provided by the Mercenary Management Association in his hands right now, and it was still the latest one. Xin Feng opened the intelligence file bag that the receptionist at the Mercenary Management Association, who had previously handed it to him. The information inside was not as much as expected. There were only two A4 sheets in total. It recorded some place names, the number of armed men, the current approximate reaction of the Edelweiss company and their defense deployment, etc. Anything more specific was missing. It can almost be said that it was clear at a glance. Looking at the two sheets of intelligence in his hand, Xin Feng helplessly glanced at each other with the other team members. This mercenary management association, it's perfunctory, isn't it? This is considered intelligence? The number of enemy armed personnel they gave out. Any local outside can ask out? Not much different from the intelligence Lao Chen and Lao Zhang gave us. Liang Chaoshu couldn't help but spit it out. This was really too pitiful. The other team members, too, nodded along. This kind of intelligence doesn't help us much in accomplishing our mission ah. Of course they provided us with a specific location information. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Yang Lu said. After all, they are armed criminals. The mercenary management association themselves don't want to cause trouble. Right. Otherwise they could have gone out to clean up those enemies themselves. Why would they need to entrust the mission to us? Instead of complaining. It's better for us to think about how to start the operation. Right squad leader? Zhang Nianjia turned his head to look at Xin Feng. Upon hearing this, Xin Feng nodded. Let's first go over to the field to investigate this location in the intelligence and take a look at the surroundings. Xin Feng's decision was naturally fine with everyone. Only at this time, Wang Shirtian was keenly aware of the problem. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Curiously. He took the intelligence information in his hand and compared it to the bounty mission they had taken before. A doubt arose in his heart at this time. Squad leader. It's not right. When we took this mission before, 
that person said it was a very simple mission. The number of enemies is not large, and it's not a too powerful gang. But now, based on what we've learned, this Edessa company, it seems like it's already a criminal organization with several hundred employees. That's a bit too big of a gap, isn't it? Wang Shichuang voiced out his doubts. The other team members, reminded by him, also immediately remembered this problem. Everyone subconsciously looked at Shen Feng. They had gone to the Mercenary Management Association to register for the first time, and then took that mission in passing. It was only that they had to train later to familiarize the team members with the habits of mercenaries, mastering combat skills as well as other abilities and so on. That was why Shen Feng had delayed this mission by a week. Now the latest intelligence information that they had learned was a bit different from the mission they had previously taken on at the Mercenary Management Association, and the information recorded on it was a bit different. It was natural for everyone to feel puzzled and even think that there was something odd in it. Shen Feng sniffed and took out the very first copy of the commission mission to check it out. After looking at it for a few moments his brows couldn't help but furrow. However, Shen Feng had a sharp eye and quickly realized what the problem was. Look guys, the printing date of this entrusted task book is three years ago. Three years ago? Holy shit, isn't that where the problem lies? Lian Chao Shu couldn't help but burst out. A commission mission from three years ago was actually given to them next. One didn't know whether to say it was fortunate or unfortunate. More than three years, it seems like that's the problem. When the Mercenary Management Association issued this mission, that criminal organization was still only in its fledgling entrepreneurial stage. Now that more than three years have passed, they have grown into a huge criminal organization with distinct layers. So, this is the old information recorded on the commission, causing us to be misled, causing us to think that this is a simple mission. Yang Lu analyzed with a frown. The other team members nodded along. Everyone agreeing with this deduction. No, I rather think that it's the Mercenary Management Association that's deliberately punking us. They themselves definitely know when the mission was released, and they also know very well what exactly the enemy is from. You guys, this latest intelligence was also provided by them. What does this mean? It shows that they are clearly aware that the enemy is very powerful, but they are deliberately not updating the intelligence information inside the commission. Wang Shichuan was a bit indignant. This kind of pitiful operation could easily kill newcomer white people. After all, they didn't understand the targets that were being rewarded and how strong they really were. Like this situation, if it wasn't for the fact that they, the members of this team, had thought a bit more and learned the latest intelligence, really thought that that Edessa company only had a dozen or so enemies, that rashly broke through, afraid of how to die without knowing. It is also possible that we ourselves are inexperienced and unfamiliar with the Mercenary Management Association's task-taking process as well as other operations, and didn't ask them for the latest intelligence clues in a timely manner at that time. Shin Feng was relatively calm and calmly gave his own analysis at this time. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Of course, inside the Mercenary Management Association, the group of receptionists who are like wine bags and only know how to eat and wait for death with a dangling work attitude are also most likely the problem. Come to think of it, in the local mercenary management association, those receptionists, every one of them looked very unreliable. Shin Feng then became even more certain of his thoughts. Anyway, there's no use complaining. The mission is already next to us. Now even if we know that the enemy is quite a bit stronger than expected, we can only seriously go about accomplishing the mission. And this time, we have learned another lesson. The corners of Xin Feng's mouth rose up in a smile. Squad leader, what did you learn? Everyone looked at him curiously. Xin Feng smiled playfully once again. The lesson of being pitched this time tells us that in the future, when we take on a mission, the first thing we should do is to ask for the enemy's latest intelligence. For another, it's even more important for us to do a better job of confirming the intelligence ourselves. And we definitely can't be sloppy and careless. And then there's the fact that mad, Xin Feng himself couldn't help but come up with a foul mouth. I also feel that the Mercenary Management Association is intentionally pitting newcomers. They couldn't be having some PY deal with other high-level mercenary organizations. Shin Feng muttered to himself in a depressed manner. Upon hearing this, the team members all looked at each other. Squad leader I think your words make sense. Just now at the Mercenary Management Association, didn't that receptionist say that? Mercenary organizations with high points and strong strength can receive better missions. The ones that are not well known like us can only receive some low level missions or some tricky missions that have been camouflaged. If you look at it that way, then the mercenary management association is too pitiful, isn't it? Everyone spat out once again as you spoke and I spoke, expressing their dissatisfaction with the mercenary management association's tawdry maneuvers. This should have already become an ecology. Our personal power can't change the status quo. The only thing we can do is, Xin Feng's gaze transmitted two sharp and determined rays. 
When the other team members heard his words, they also looked towards him. Everyone quieted down and waited for Shen Feng to open his mouth and continue. What we can do is to build our own reputation, step by step, keep growing our own strength, so that more people, especially the Mercenary Management Association, will know what we're capable of. That way, they won't deliberately make things difficult for us anymore. Shen Feng nodded firmly, his eyes flashing brightly as he said, Squad leader, well said, not only do we want our own reputation to spread, so that more people will learn about us and give us more and better missions. We also want to represent the ninth region in battle and raise the prestige of our ninth region within the world. Liang Chaoshu immediately stood out as well, following suit with such impassioned words. Hearing him say this, Yuan Weihong said quietly, Speaking of which, it seems that our ninth region doesn't have any particularly famous mercenary organizations, right? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Her question caused everyone to think carefully, and they all followed suit, shaking their heads. It seems like no. I've read before that the top 10 of the world's top mercenary organizations are all from other districts, especially the first district. Then what else is there to say? We'll take on this heavy responsibility. That's right. We'll raise the prestige of our great ninth region. The team members were all speaking generously, while at this time, Shin Feng was in his heart, still unable to resist thinking about the matter of this mission. There are many mercenary management associations in the 6th region, and it's not just this one in the bright area. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. The Mercenary Management Association of the Bright Area released this mission, but there was no hint as to who the commissioning party was, nor did it provide the commissioning party's contact information in the commission for easy docking like other commission tasks. Then there was only one possibility for this mission. It was not a mission released from an individual or a civil organization. This mission we received. There is a good news for us. I should say. Shin Feng suddenly opened his mouth and reminded a few team members. Upon hearing this the team members who were still vowing to make a name for themselves and fight for the ninth region had looked towards him once again. This mission. After we complete it, there should be someone to wipe our asses. There's no need to worry about something like overthrowing Lee Songpa's criminal organization. Causing the local officials wrath thus putting ourselves in a crisis situation. Shun Feng continued. Hearing his words the team members looked at each other with your eyes. A little puzzled. Squad leader. How can you be so sure? Liang Chashu asked. Shun Feng. On the other hand. Spoke out his analysis and deduction just now. This mission. It doesn't give the contact information of the principal. It doesn't reveal the identity of the principal's origin. Nothing. There's only one possibility for a mission like this. And that is. This mission came from the local officials. There are other clues that can also support this inference. You guys think about it. From the time this mission was initially released, it's already been more than three years since then. So why hasn't it been completed yet? The query raised by Shin Feng caused the team members to fall into collective thought. The mercenary bounty mission released more than three years ago. At that time, that Edessa crime syndicate was not very strong, and there were only about a dozen members. According to normal logic, there would have been mercenaries to clean them up a long time ago. But the mission hadn't been completed until now. And instead, it was mistakenly given to Shin Feng and these people to follow. Moreover, this mission had been deliberately packaged by the Mercenary Management Association at that time, disguised as a very simple mission. Then there was only one possibility. It wasn't that no one had taken this mission, but the mercenaries who had taken this mission had probably all cooled off. In other words, the Edessa Corporation, in the local area, or in the bright area, there exists an extremely powerful umbrella. And the one who issued this bounty mission is definitely not the official force of the bright area. Yang Lu was a quick thinker and quickly gave her judgment. The remaining few team members and Shin Feng glanced at each other. Everyone did not say anything. They just silently nodded their heads and felt that it made sense. Obviously, the official forces of the 6th district were definitely not ironclad. From top to bottom, the forces must be disjointed and the factions intricate. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible to govern the 6th district into the current hellish state leading to criminal activities everywhere. According to this, it seems that the Edessa Corporation has been protected by the local official forces from the very beginning, but their appearance and rise over the past few years has caused the other official forces in the 6th district to feel dissatisfied, so they're going to out them. It looks like it's just an ordinary commission mission to clean up the criminals. Squad leader, we won't get involved inside an even bigger trouble because of this, right? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, Garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. As Wang Shichang spoke, he frowned and looked at Shin Feng, 
From the situation analyzed so far, their target, the Edelweiss Company, had a greater force standing behind it. But there was another force that ordinary people could not afford to mess with that wanted to get rid of them. Both forces came from local officials. In other words this was a battle between the local officials of the 6th district. This mission was far from as simple as it was thought to be. The complexity was beyond what all the team members had expected at first. No wonder. No mercenaries are willing to take on this mission. Those old greaseballs of theirs, they must know that there is something fishy going on here. Right? Liang Chao Shu became annoyed. Once again, he was furious that they had been deceived by the Mercenary Management Association. No wonder. The Mercenary Management Association doesn't update the latest intelligence news, and even has to disguise it as a simple mission. They aren't trying to intentionally trap newcomers, but they know how tricky this mission is, and they want to trap those mercenaries who have a certain amount of strength but don't understand the local ecosystem of the 6th region. If they can lull those mercenary organizations into completing the mission in this way, it's two birds with one stone for them. Not only can they give an explanation to the commissioning party that issued the bounty mission, that mysterious local official, and they can also get a good share of the bounty. Marred. This is really too pitiful. After analyzing the situation for half a day, even Zhang Nianjia, who hadn't been swearing, couldn't help but come up with a foul mouth at this time. Because the Mercenary Management Association's TART operation is really two people angry. Looking at the team members, each and every one of them was indignant. Xin Feng took a deep breath. This time it's us who screwed ourselves, we're inexperienced and can only admit it. Since the mission has been taken, there is no way for us to refuse it. Otherwise the credit score will be deducted. This credit score is synchronized with our profile for the rest of our lives, and will be uploaded to the record no matter which district we go to. Let's all calm down and think about how we should take action. Although the heart was also very upset, but Xin Feng knew that as the leader of the team, he couldn't follow the emotions as well. Otherwise the mission would really have no way to proceed. Hearing Xin Feng's reminder, the team members calmed down and kept taking deep breaths. It still feels bad, squad leader. This mission even gave us only such a small amount of money. Liang Chaoshu said indignantly. Xin Feng ignored him and instead spread out the previous intelligence. The two sheets of A4 paper. The enemy's base camp is here. This isn't some small workshop in the wilderness, but within an industrial area on the outskirts of the city. From the looks of it, it's a legal and regular factory. What we need to do now is to first go on a field trip to examine the surroundings of this location and confirm the situation. Time is running out. It's best to make a trip over there now. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Xin Feng said and turned his head to look at Yang Lu, our small unmanned reconnaissance aircraft. There shouldn't be any way to conduct camouflage reconnaissance during the daytime, right? Yang Lu immediately shook her head. The target is too obvious in the daytime. Even if it flies a hundred meters above, it can still be seen with the naked eye. That would be tantamount to telling the enemy that we're here. Then we'll go step on the spot first and do more specific reconnaissance at night. Xin Feng immediately made the first step of his plan of action. Bright area suburban combination. A small car was traveling on the busy streets, and the car of Xin Feng's group was among them. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, Please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Originally, Xin Feng and the others thought that since it was already a suburban area, with the level of development in the 6th district, it should belong to a place close to the middle of nowhere. Who would have thought that the industrial area here would be so prosperous? The streets were filled with pedestrians and vendors. There was a fairly mature commercial area nearby. Food and lodging bars, entertainment clubs, all sorts of places you could think of for commercial activities. There were all of them here. To the southeast of the commercial area, there is a piece of planned industrial area, said industrial area, in fact, the locals do not call it so, because they know that inside, not engaged in any industrial production activities, the exact name should be factory area, inside, it is the lair stronghold of one after another locally famous and powerful criminal gangs, in the factory area, each criminal group that packaged itself as a network technology company or some other type of company controlled countless employees who were tricked or captured or bought over. Let them engage in telecommunication fraud, online internet gambling, and other activities here. In the factory area, the newly constructed high-rise building was the place where these criminals operated, and it was also their lair. For example, the building to the right of Xin Feng's car at this moment. Good guy, this Edessa company seems to be really doing whatever it wants in the middle of this bright area. Ah blatantly writing the name of their crime syndicate on the factory gate. Liang Chaoshu looked at the gilt letters Adisit in front of him and couldn't help but spit it out. Sun Bin glanced at him, my brother, they're wearing the coat of a legitimate company. What can't they display? 
Shen Feng did not say anything after some observation. At this time, he released the brakes and allowed the car to move slowly with the traffic in front of him, continuing to drive forward. Only when he passed a small road did Shen Feng turn around and turn in. This small road was located on the right side of the factory of the Odessa company, and next door to it was the location of the factory of another crime syndicate. Here, crime syndicates with slightly greater strength all had their own companies and factories, and each factory area is independent of each other. Everyone seems to stay out of each other's way. A state of happiness where everyone earned money together. Shen Feng drove his car and walked around the entire factory area of the Odessa company, but did not return to the starting point. Instead, he directly turned left and drove onto the nearby highway, driving towards the outskirts of the city. Squad leader. There were at least three companies in that place just now. Odds are they're all crime syndicates. I'm wondering if it's possible that this bounty mission was posted by other crime syndicates in order to combat their competitors? Yuan Weihong curiously raised his speculation. Upon hearing this, everyone revealed thoughtful expressions. There is such a possibility. I should say, it's quite possible. To personally go out on your own and send people to go on a firefight with a powerful criminal organization. That would be too costly. And it might be met with the good offices of the local officials or even stepping in to stop them. But entrusting mercenaries to settle the opponents can be considered godless. Wang Shichang immediately agreed with Yuan Weihong's speculation. Several other team members, too, expressed their views. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. However, Shen Feng, who was driving, did not say anything, driving the car for a distance. He confirmed that their scouting behavior just now had not been discovered and after there was no enemy following behind them. Only then did Shen Feng slow the car down. At the same time, he looked back at a few of his team members. It doesn't matter what person issued this commissioned bounty mission now. We've already decided to take on this mission and complete it. So just do it wholeheartedly. Now come and tell us what you guys have just observed. Shen Feng reminded as he looked at his team members. Upon hearing this, Sun Bin was the first to raise his hand. I'll speak first. Everyone all subconsciously looked at him and Shen Feng's gaze also fell on Sun Bin's face. The factory area where the Odessa company is located presents a standard rectangular layout, surrounded by a roughly 5 meter high fence blocking the way, so we can't see what's going on inside. Just now we started from the factory's main entrance, which is right in the center, and you, squad leader, were driving in first gear cruise control, with a constant speed of 25 kilometers per hour, so we can calculate that the length and width of the entire factory area is 125 meters and 70 meters respectively. That is to say, the area of the entire factory area is 8,750 square meters. There are a total of three buildings inside, showing a triangular distribution to each other, each between 30 and 50 meters apart. Among them, the first building at the main entrance, which we can mark as building one, has a total of 10 floors and a height of about 33 meters. Sunbin stated what he had observed. One by one, these seemingly useless data were actually very helpful in accomplishing their mission. However, only professionals could hear and understand them. At this moment, Shen Feng and a few team members, after listening to Sun Bin's words, glanced at each other. No one said anything. This was because they knew that Sun Bin definitely had more to say. Sun Bin indeed continued after a break and pause of two or three seconds. With this data, along with what we learned about the surrounding environment today, we can formulate a more detailed attack and retreat plan. The most important thing now is to figure out the internal situation of those three buildings. Well said. Shin Feng nodded at Sun Bin. Then he looked at the rest of the team. He did not bother to ask everyone if there was any error in the data calculated by Sun Bin. This was because an error of a few meters or even 10 or so meters would not have much impact on the formulation of the plan. And actually, Shin Feng knew in his own heart that Sun Bin's calculations were correct. What other information do you guys have to provide? Shin Feng looked at the team members and asked, Squad leader, you're taking this opportunity to test us. Ha, huh? Liang Chaoshu laughed. A qualified mercenary must be able to do so at all times to accurately grasp the surroundings of the specific location where he's about to go on a mission. Don't forget that the squad leader just said not long ago that intelligence gathering is a very important part of our mission process. Zhang Nanjia looked towards Liang Chaoshu with a serious and earnest expression. And in time, Yuan Weihong followed suit. She raised her hand and said to Shen Feng, Squad leader, I have just observed it. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. The enemy has done a good job of protecting the exterior of the factory. On top of the 5 meter high fence, there's a 1 meter high barbed wire plus a high voltage power grid. And there's also broken glass slag on the fence that's specially designed to prevent theft. 
together with the deathless surveillance, it's almost impossible for us to break in from all around. It will be discovered by the enemy in the first place. Yuan Weihong provided the observed intelligence information that Xin Feng also noticed. Above the enemy's factory fence, there were several cameras at the four corners as well as in the middle section, providing 24-hour surveillance shots from all angles. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Wanting to break in through the surrounding walls was basically impossible under normal circumstances. That's a good point, but you're speaking a bit absolutely. Xin Feng looked at Yuan Weihong. If we can override the surveillance screen through technical means so that the enemy can't see our actions, we still have a chance to climb in through the fence. He explained. Hearing this Liang Chao Shu instantly became interested. Squad leader you're talking about hacking technology, right? Are we really going to break into the interior of the enemy's factory from the fence? Xin Feng glanced at him and didn't say anything. His gaze turned to the rest of the team members, revealing a questioning look. However, no team members spoke this time. Stomping around from the outside, one could learn about the surroundings of the factory, but the intelligence news that could be obtained was also limited. The specifics of the interior were simply unknown unless one could go in and investigate. The information that the team members had observed was basically what Yuan Weihong, Sun Bin and the others had just finished saying. Have none of you ever paid attention to the situation at the main entrance? Xin Feng asked with a bit of disappointment at this moment. Hearing him say this, the crowd looked at each other, and one by one, all of them revealed a puzzled expression. Squad leader, what's unusual about the main entrance? Liang Chaoshu said in disbelief. At this time, Wang Shichang was the first to answer. When we drove past the factory gate, there were a total of three cars entering and leaving the factory. Saying this, he looked at Xin Feng. He had observed this, but did not understand why Xin Feng was asking. Xin Feng nodded at him. Good observation skills. It is indeed three cars, but these three cars are not the same. Do you remember their characteristics? He followed the instructions. Doing so was namely to help the team members strengthen their information gathering skills. At the same time, it was also to focus on training Wang Shichang as the team's sniper. Observation skills were of the first importance, just as important as his sniping skills. If one didn't have a good grasp of their surroundings, they wouldn't know when they were being wiped out. Wang Shichang sniffed and thought back carefully. Worthy of being a clairvoyant, he quickly remembered quite a few details from that time. Squad leader, the two cars that drove out at the very front were black commercial vehicles, which should be used by those criminals themselves, but the third one behind was driving inside the factory. That car was a white van, a bit dirty looking. As I recall, the advertisement on its body bore the name of some catering establishment. I think it was. Right, it's Yuwa Catering Company. Wang Shichang recalled the details bit by bit under Xin Feng's guidance. Hearing him say so Xin Feng immediately revealed a satisfied smile. On the other hand, the other few members of the team were a bit less happy, because they were focused on looking at the others. They had neglected the details of the vehicles and pedestrians coming in and out of the main entrance and so on. It's exactly noon mealtime at this point. That catering company's van should be delivering meals to this Edessa company. Squad leader, could it be that you want to start from this place? Yang Lu looked at Chen Feng in surprise and asked, If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Several other team members also came back to their senses and realized Chen Feng's idea. However, Chen Feng shook his head, Not necessarily. It specifically depends on which approach is the most suitable. Let's now, first go over and investigate this Yuwa Catering Company. However, one or two people should be left here to continue to keep watch. Continue to observe the situation of the Edelweiss company, and if there are any movements, everyone should contact them in time. Also someone has to go and prepare the tools of action. All of our equipment is still hidden in the countryside. Clairvoyant. Monkey, you two are responsible for going and transporting these things over. Shueba, I need you to formulate retreat routes based on the current data information. We might have to rescue a lot of victims by then. Xin Feng began to methodically, arranging specific tasks for each team member. Continuing to monitor the Edessa Corporation would allow them to learn about every single one of their next movements. As for letting Yang Lu formulate a retreat route, it was in consideration of the fact that, when the time came, it would be a situation of rescuing so many victims, it was impossible to have hundreds of victims, scurrying and running around on the streets at that time. That would not only affect the efficiency of the rescue mission, but might also alert other criminal organizations or even official forces. As for weaponry and whatnot, there was no need to say more. Squad leader, the two of us, Blast and I, will stay behind and continue to monitor the enemy. Zhang Yanjia took the initiative to volunteer. After saying that, 
He and Yuan Weihong exchanged glances while Yuan Weihong nodded in agreement. Good, then the two of you will stay and continue to monitor the enemy, but be sure to pay attention to safety. Remember to contact everyone at the first time if anything happens. Xin Feng's gaze fell on several other team members. Yang Lu had already started to formulate a retreat plan based on the environmental information she had just observed, combined with the local satellite map. As for the two of them, Sun Bin and Wang Shichang, they also followed them out of the car and teamed up to head to the outskirts of the countryside to retrieve the equipment and weapons they had previously hidden over there. Squad leader, I'll go with you to investigate Yuwa Catering Company, right? Seeing that Xin Feng didn't assign himself a task, Liang Chaoshu couldn't help but ask. Well, go take a look. Xin Feng nodded his head. The team members went into action individually. Soon, Xin Feng and Liang Chaoshu arrived at Yawa Catering Company, saying that it was a catering company. The place was actually a slightly larger stall. This stall mainly operated. Is the rice flour porridge rice fried food and so on? Of course, at night there will be a variety of small barbecue and so on. Behind the stall is a simple slaughterhouse. Xin Feng and Liang Chaoshu casually find a position to sit down. The process of ordering food from time to time can be heard from the back of the killing of pig screams. Occasionally, there were also the cries of chickens, ducks, geese and other animals. In addition there were even cows. The two randomly ordered some food. Waiting for the process Liang Chashu could not help but whisper a sentence, the back to kill so many livestock, if occasionally slaughtered one or two people, mixed into those cattle, sheep and pork inside. It is estimated that the general diners cannot eat out. Say what? Xin Feng frowned. He he he, squad leader, I'm not an alarmist, that's how many criminals do it in the movies. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Liang Chaoshu explained with a smile. His words caused Xin Feng to immediately lose any appetite for eating. Just at this time, Xin Feng noticed that a car in front of him turned in from the side of the highway. It was a white van, and looking at the license plate, it was exactly the one they had previously seen at the entrance of the Edelweiss company. At this time, the car in front of the stalls, the car came down two wearing overalls, about the age of the early twenties of the staff, from the car to the ground to move down a pile of tableware to be cleaned. Liang Chashu's back was to the entrance of the stall, so he couldn't see what was going on outside. Noticing that Xin Feng had been staring out, Liang Chashu curiously looked back out. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Then also saw the van. Squad leader. This shouldn't be. Don't stare too much at people gazing. Xin Feng reminded. Hearing this, Liang Chaoshu hurriedly and furtively withdrew his sight again and turned back. Squad leader. Is this the van you guys were talking about? Liang Chaoshu lowered his voice and asked. Not bad. Xin Feng nodded. Looking at the two young employees whose ages were not too far from theirs, they were carrying the dishes to be cleaned with their hands and feet. At this time, Xin Feng's heart already had an idea. Damn. Shift manager. I'd say that the dining conditions here are really something that people can't praise ah. They actually don't use disposable tableware. But reuse recycled ones? Liang Chaoshu couldn't help but spit it out. Dog bear. Carefully count the number of these tableware. Xin Feng reminded. Hearing this, Liang Chaoshu's heart flinched and immediately realized what Xin Feng was thinking. He hurriedly focused his attention and started observing. It's too far away to see clearly ah even though it was only 20 to 30 meters away. But with the big sun shining outside, the sunlight was blinding making one's vision greatly affected. In addition to those tableware stacked together, it was difficult to see exactly how many there were at this distance. This kind of cutlery, all built out of standardized molds, the average thickness is about in centimeters. The reference is the van's wheels. Look carefully. Xin Feng's reminder made Liang Chashu turn back to observe it once again. And, the van's wheels. The wheels of this van. The standard diameter is 60 centimeters. Corroboration is that employee. The van's body height is 1 meter 4 and a half. From this ratio presumption to get that employee's height is 1 meter 72. Again, based on his head to body ratio, one can calculate the length of his calf bones. And the cutlery next to the van is almost level with the height of the wheels, which means that they are 60 in a pile. From this, we only need to count how many stacks of tableware to be washed in total to be able to arrive at the approximate number of victims. Xin Feng explained, shit, squad leader, you're divine, but how are you so sure about the wheel diameter and body height of that one van? Liang Chaoshu was still a little bit not quite daring to believe it. Xin Feng, on the other hand, handed his cell phone to the other party. Liang Chaoshu looked down and realized that on the screen of the phone was the browser's search interface, and on it was clearly the detailed parameters of the van of the same model as the van parked outside. Convinced, 
Liang Chashu gave Shin Feng a thumbs up. Trees move to death and people move to life. You have to know how to make good use of the various tools at hand. Shin Feng laughed. At this time, Liang Chaoshu had already obtained accurate calculations through observation. Squad leader, the total number of cutlery is 420. Even if there is an error, it should be within 10. But you just said that these are the number of victims. Why did you say that? Liang Chaoshu looked at Shin Feng in puzzlement. And Shin Feng was currently staring at the menu on the table. Upon hearing this, he pushed the menu towards Liang Chaoshu. You're a manager of a crime syndicate. Would you eat cheap food that costs $8 a serving? If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Oh, got it, squad leader, you're really too good. Liang Chashu once again couldn't help it and gave Shin Feng a thumbs up, and at this time, the meal they had just ordered came. Liang Chashu wanted the dry fried beef river, while Shin Feng ordered the egg fried rice, so that's what human meat looks like after it's fried. Shin Feng took a look at the dry fried beef river in front of Liang Chashu. The pieces of darker colored red meat covered on the surface, and casually came up with this sentence. Liang Chao Shu, who was just about to start eating, suddenly lost his appetite when he heard this. That, class president, you, do you want to share some of your fried rice with me? What, don't like meat anymore? Today, I suddenly don't have an appetite. Liang Chao Shu awkwardly scratched his head, and hemmed and hawed, order it yourself. Xin Feng didn't bother with the other party. In three tries, he quickly picked up his own egg fried rice. Liang Chaoshu had no choice but to reorder a fried rice for himself. While waiting, he asked curiously again. Squad leader, although we've roughly determined the number of victims inside. But, how are we going to blend in? He had just finished speaking when a fat looking man with a large gold chain that looked like a dog chain around his neck, a gold watch on his wrist, and fancy clothes walked out from inside. Hey, you two wait. Drive the car over to the river outside to wash it. This man casually glanced at Xin Feng and Liang Chaoshu before loudly ordering loudly to the employees outside who were carrying the tableware under the sun. Those two employees raised their heads at the words and nodded at this side, obviously somewhat reluctant. Xin Feng silently watched all this in his eyes. He quickly finished the last few bites of fried rice, pulled a napkin from the table to wipe his mouth and stood up. Remember to settle the bill later. I'll go to the river first to look for a suitable fishing spot. After saying this, Xin Feng patted Liang Chao Shu's shoulder and turned around to leave the stall. Xin Feng found a river not far away from the big stall, about 500 meters away. The muddy river was flowing, but there were quite a few people washing their clothes nearby, and there were also some locals washing their motorcycles. After waiting for a while, sure enough, the two big stall employees from earlier arrived in their van. They parked the car by the river, positioned not far from Xin Feng. One of them got out of the van, took out a pack of cigarettes, smoked one and handed it to his companion, cursing in the language of the 9th district. Fuck you. This dog just knows how to exploit us all day long. He lets us do all the dirty work. This motherfucker, he's not even willing to pay the $20 car wash fee. He has to make us come here to wash. What the fuck? This is not a human life. There's no way. Who let us send people under the fence? To say a few words, his companion comforted. Hurry up and drive back after cleaning the car, or he will find a reason to deduct our wages again said this relatively good-tempered employee, began to take out cleaning tools from the car, ready to wash the car, but just at this time, he sensed someone approaching, if you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally, shadows were cast on the car, those two young men subconsciously turned to look behind them, what they saw was a man who was about the same age as them, but obviously came from a better background, with fair and soft skin, and looked like he was pampered and well-dressed. And just like them, this man also had the face of someone from the 9th district. At once, the two employees looked at each other. Shin Feng had just heard the two of them complaining. At this moment, after walking over he smiled and looked at the employee who had just cursed the hardest. Are you interested in coming over for a chat? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Shin Feng looked at these two people with a smile. You're from the 9th district? That employee looked at Shin Feng with dismay. However, the companion beside him appeared to be more alert and hurriedly gave him a gentle tug. I'm sorry we have to work. We don't have time for small talk. After saying this, he lowered his head and pretended to fill the bucket with water, and sneakily signaled his companion with his eyes to keep his mouth shut. Shin Feng silently watched all this in his eyes. Seeing that these two people were so vigilant, he was slightly moved in his heart. Don't worry guys. I'm not a bad guy, Xin Feng explained again. However, 
The other party obviously didn't believe it and instead didn't say anything. The two people just started to use rags on the car wash liquid and the muddy river water and started to clean the vehicle up. Xin Feng stood aside and observed for a while. He was now 100% certain that these two young men did not have the slightest relationship with that criminal group. It was even possible that they themselves had been persecuted by the local criminals. But now they were so wary and defensive of themselves that they weren't even willing to say much. What would it take to open their mouths? Xin Feng thought in his heart while observing the situation in the neighborhood. Many of the riverside were local residents. Everyone was busy with their own business and no one was paying attention to the situation here. After observing for a while, Xin Feng did not find any suitable topic. At this time, it was Liang Chaoshu who drove over in his car. Squad leader, why did you run here? He got out of the car and just opened his mouth to ask a question when he saw the two restaurant employees. At that moment, Liang Chaoshu's footsteps lurched and he rushed at Xin Feng with an inquiring look. They should have been persecuted by the local evil forces at one time. I heard their accents are from the 9th district, not the second generation of expatriates. It's more like the type of situation where black is here and can't go back for the time being. If there can be a way to get them to talk, then we might be able to get more valuable intelligence. Xin Feng walked over and told Liang Chao Shu his judgment in a low voice. Hearing this Liang Chao Shu already had an idea in his heart. He turned his head to look at the two young men who were seriously washing the car and peeking at them twice every now and then. Squad leader, getting close to this kind of young people, look at me, you're old, wait, he said and patted Xin Feng's shoulder, walking towards those two with an air of confidence. Liang Chao Shu hemmed and hawed, came to their side and squatted down, and did not say anything is to pick up a rag and clean the car up with them. The two restaurant employees looked at Liang Chao Shu's behavior suspiciously. Two brothers, I see that you are also from the 9th district, right? Liang Chao Shu laughed. Although he was big and burly looking, he looked very good natured, especially when he smiled. It was like a Mithraya Buddha. It looked like it gave off no hostile appearance. Nor did they look like vicious villains. One of the restaurant employees who looked like he had dyed a handful of yellow hair, which was of course more likely due to malnutrition, raised his head at this moment to look at Liang Chao Shu and responded. You too too? He also looked at Xin Feng, who was not far away. When he finished speaking, yes, the two of us are also from the 9th district. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. But why don't you guys go home? What are you doing here doing this kind of hard work? Can you earn $2,000 a month no? Liang Chao Shu asked again. Hearing his question, those two restaurant employees immediately looked at each other. The one on the left, was obviously more grumpy. He lifted his long bangs that almost covered his face, threw the rag in his hand inside the bucket, and angrily said, Of course there's no $2,000, this shitty place. How can that dangling hair give us such high wages? $1,500 a month, with deductions for food and lodging. Every month to find a little reason to deduct us, to our hands still left 300 is good. Treadmill. The more he said, the more angry he got. Obviously the internal dissatisfaction has long been not a day or two. Hearing these words Liang Chaoshu immediately turned back and Xin Feng glanced at each other. At this time, Xin Feng also walked over. Since you guys are so unhappy here, why don't you go back to the 9th district? Xin Feng asked. The two of them didn't look like they were bad people. And they were about the same age as themselves. Now that they asked these questions that cared about them. For a moment, the defenses in their hearts relaxed quite a bit. The little yellow hair replied. It's not that we don't want to go back, but we can't go. But this time it was his companion's turn to be on guard. Hearing him say this hurriedly rushed to make a wink at him. The little yellow hair immediately put away all his words. Looking like he was scornful of someone in general. You guys tell us your story. Maybe we can give you a hand. Xin Feng did not move and quietly spread out his palm. Inside was an armband. At that time, when the Mercenary Management Association registered, those receptionists issued it to them. Inside the mission's document bag. Xin Feng had never found it. He didn't see it until today when he rechecked the mission commission. So he brought it with him. These were the symbols of their mercenary status. Sure enough those two restaurant employees, once they saw the armbands that Xin Feng displayed, they instantly understood. You're a hired. The little yellow hair looked stunned. However, Xin Feng hurriedly made a silent gesture at him, telling him not to say the answer. The other party was also very quick-witted and immediately nodded his head when he saw Xin Feng's action. This time, their trust in Xin Feng and Liang Chashu increased by a few more points, and their defenses dropped once again. Now can the two of you tell us your story? Xin Feng laughed. However, upon hearing this, the two restaurant employees were on guard again. The expressions of the two looked a bit hesitant. It could be seen that they were still worried inside. If it's not convenient to talk here, it's fine if we change places. 
How about talking in the car? Shen Feng proposed. And at this moment, Liang Chaoshu also did a double take and promised, Don't worry about it. It definitely won't take too much of your time. Ten minutes. Is that okay? He looked towards those two employees. Those two sniffed and glanced at each other with a heartfelt understanding. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Then both of them nodded their heads. Shin Feng brought them back to his car and closed the door. These two immediately looked at Shin Feng and Liang Chaoshu. You are mercenaries from the 9th district? They couldn't wait to inquire. That's right. We are indeed. Liang Chaoshu was straightforward and nodded decisively. Great. Then you guys, can you help us go back? Little yellow hair immediately requested. The companion next to him, who had long hair, however, still looked a bit wary and wasn't in that much of a hurry. He looked at Shin Feng and Liang Chaoshu and carefully inquired. How can you guys prove your identities? The armband doesn't count. We can get that thing too. Over here, Shin Feng and Liang Chaoshu had just found a breakthrough. They were prepared to get their hands on the information they wanted by going through these two employees who often delivered food to the Edessa Corporation. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally, or even, infiltrate the enemy's interior through them to launch operations. Meanwhile, in the middle of the Edessa Corporation, inside the office on the 8th floor above Building 1, several top executives from the Edessa Corporation were gathered here, urgently meeting to discuss something important. Snap, Wang C. Gao, the chairman of the board and the largest shareholder of the Edessa Corporation, threw a piece of information on top of the conference table. This is the information that our friend just provided to us. Now there is another team of mercenaries who don't know how to die and are targeting us. Wang C. Gao himself looked fierce. At this moment, his complexion was gloomy, and even more so, he was permeated with an aura that made people scorn him. Hearing him say that, a management frowned and asked, There should be no mercenary organization in the 6th district that dares to mess with us. Could it be a newcomer? Humph, you guessed right. It really is a group of newcomers. I heard that they came from the 9th district. What a bunch of guys who don't know the sky and the earth. They don't know that the 6th district is our world. Whether the bright area is chaotic or not, I have the final say. Wang Sigeo sneered and lit a cigar. I've also heard, he added with a contemptuous smile. The other management inside the conference room, hearing this, revealed sideways listening expressions. At this moment, Wang Sigeo continued to speak. Li Sangpai and his organization were wiped out by a team of mercenaries. The higher-ups suspect that it was done by this group of newcomers, because after checking all over the 6th region, all the mercenary management associations did not match any of the organizations that took on that mission. Those bigwigs want us to solve this mercenary team. After Wang C. Gao finished speaking, he took a hard drag on his cigar. For a while, the entire inside of the conference room was filled with secondhand smoke. One of the management frowned and said, Although Li Songpai and his organization are just unimpressive goods, however, an ordinary mercenary organization would like to clean them up, and that too unknowingly and unharmed. That, I'm afraid, won't be easy, will it? What he clearly wanted to remind was that this team of newcomer mercenaries was afraid that their strength was not simple. However, Wang Sigeo was not at all amused by what he heard. It's just a blind cat bumping into a dead rat. Li Songpa's group. Some rabble. What are they going to compare to our company? We spent a lot of money to bring back so many experienced security personnel. Are they vegetarians? Hoof. Everyone says that the 9th district is a forbidden place for mercenaries. Now, their own mercenaries ran to the 6th district and want to move dirt on only my head. Since that's the case then I'll let them also learn that the 6th district, likewise, is a forbidden land for these mercenaries of theirs. Wang Si Gao laughed fiercely. Just after he finished speaking, the conference room was quiet for a moment. At this time, the phone in front of Wang Si Gao came to life. Everyone subconsciously looked towards that phone. Naturally, there was a woman with a delicate and exquisite figure who came forward to help answer the phone. However, this beauty answered the phone for only two seconds before handing the phone to Wang Si Gao, Mr. Chairman. It's specifically for you to report the situation. Hearing this, Wang Sigeo's face sank as he took the phone and gave a hello. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can read normally. On the other side of the phone, a little brother's somewhat grave voice came. Boss? No. Mr. Chairman. Just now we found a few stupid things trying to call for help from District 9 during the call. The people are now under control. At those words, Wang Sigeo's face sank once again, but that wasn't the end of it. At this moment, the little brother on the other end of the phone, hesitantly reported again. Mr. Chairman, there's still one more thing. What is it? 
Wang Sigeo's mood was already very irritated, he was very impatient now, two employees just escaped, and I heard that there are people from the 9th district outside to receive them, we have already sent people to chase them, the person on the other end of the phone replied, the tone seemed very cautious, but this still caused Wang Sigeo's anger to completely explode, with a bang, he slapped the table and stood up, opening his mouth to curse a very unpleasant sentence in the local language, afterward, he added angrily, the performance has not been completed, and they still dare to think of something else during working hours? It seems like there's a problem with your education methods. Wait, I'll go over there now. The two that escaped, I don't care if you flip the bright area to bring them back. I'll personally educate them. After Wang Sigeo finished speaking, he stuffed the cigar into his mouth and left the conference room in big strides. Before going out, he didn't forget to turn his head to look at the other management. That's right, tell the people under your hands to make preparations. We have to entertain those mercenaries who don't know how to die. In the car, facing the questioning of those two restaurant employees, Shen Feng didn't bother to choose an explanation, but smiled and asked rhetorically, If I'm not mistaken, you two were tricked into coming here, right? How do you know? Long Hair was instantly surprised. Not only do I know that you guys were tricked into coming here, I also know that you were once sold to the factory by your superiors. You, at this, the two restaurant employees' faces changed drastically. The two of them looked at each other eye to eye and they felt strongly skeptical about the identity and origin of Xin Feng and Liang Chaoshu, even they had begun to approach the car door wanting to escape. Just by looking at their current reaction, Xin Feng knew that his judgment was fine. Don't worry, we're not from the company, said we are mercenaries. Xin Feng laughed. Liang Chaoshu on the side was a bit confused as to what he was trying to do. However, he didn't say anything and stood on the side silently watching Xin Feng's operation. You, since you're a mercenary, how do you know about us? Little Yellow Hair asked in shock. I guessed. Shin Feng answered truthfully. He had indeed surmised all this from the two men's every move. Word indeed from the very beginning until now. Now, the reactions of the two had confirmed all. Guessed? You're that good? Long Hair also calmed down a little and looked at Shin Feng incredulously. Shin Feng didn't bother to explain. But continued. We can help you. But you also have to help us and cooperate with us to do something. He opened the door. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. At that the two restaurant employees looked at each other. What do you want us to do? If it's something illegal and criminal, we won't do it. The little yellow hair said in a wary and hesitant manner. Don't worry, we won't let you guys do those bad things. When this thing is done, not only are you helping us, you are also helping yourselves. Don't you want to go back to the 9th district? Shin Feng looked at the other party with a smile and asked rhetorically. When Shin Feng said this, the two restaurant employees were instantly moved. They had been stranded in the 6th district for a year or two, and their luck was quite good, not having their waists cut nor continuing to be sold around as if they were piglets. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. But they were stuck here and couldn't go back, having had enough of the inhuman life here coupled with a strong sense of homesickness, made this pair of difficult people want to escape a long time ago. They just didn't have the guts to be ready. Now that they heard Shin Feng say so, they were of course interested. Thus, the two started to try to trust Shin Feng and began to ask, What exactly do you want us to help? Little Yellow Hair looked at Shin Feng and asked seriously, Don't be in a hurry. I'll ask you guys a few questions first, and I'll tell you only after I figure it out. Shin Feng laughed. Okay, then you ask. Little Yellow Hair and his companion looked at each other and nodded after hesitating for a while. Your boss, is it the big gold chain that ordered you to wash the car in the restaurant just now? Shin Feng asked. At this the two were surprised once again, as if they did not expect Shin Feng to be present at that time. Yes, his name is Song Kuen. It's an expatriate from the 9th district. In addition he's also the head of a local gang. Little Yellow Hair answered without even thinking. Was he the one who saved you guys? Shin Feng asked again. Judging from the fact that these two young men, in their hearts, were very dissatisfied with their boss, Song Cohen, as well as their own current jobs, they were very eager to leave. The reason why they couldn't leave, Little Yellow Hair had already told part of the answer. Song Cohen was broken and powerful in the area, and was by no means as simple as the ordinary restaurant owner he appeared to be, so it was impossible for them to escape. In this situation now, the probability was that they were under house arrest. Being treated as black laborers forced to stay and work here, without any surprises they spent the rest of their lives like this, no different from slaves. Why do you seem to know everything? Little Yellow Hair was surprised again when he heard Shin Feng's words. Such a reply was undoubtedly an answer that had already been given. 
It was the same as Xin Fang's guest judgment. The big gold chain Song Kuan had saved these two boys, so they had to work at Song Kuan's restaurant. Understanding this, Xin Feng asked again, Are you two the only ones who deliver food to Odessa Company? This was considered to be a question that got to the point of the topic. The two small yellow hairs and long hairs looked at each other and didn't dare to open their mouths. Their silence made Xin Feng and Liang Chaoshu also feel curious and glanced at each other. What's wrong? Why don't you say anything? Liang Chaoshu asked suspiciously. The company you guys are asking about has a partnership with our boss, and it's powerful and deeply rooted in the area. If your goal is to deal with that company, then I think it's better to forget about it. Let's pretend that we haven't seen you guys. We're leaving. Little Yellow Hair said, pulled open the car door and wanted to get out. His companion Long Hair also followed and turned around. But Liang Chaoshu Bang pressed the car door. Do not let them get off, you do not make it clear today. No one want to go. Liang Chaoshu threatened viciously. When the two heard this, and then saw his big and thick appearance, they all got up with a bitter face. Seeking help, they generally looked at Xin Feng. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Xin Feng spread out both hands. This brother of mine doesn't have a good temper. You guys better say whatever you know. Besides, the topic is open. It's not too good for you guys not to say what you know, right? Xin Feng and the others were still making the final preparations for the next mission. And at this moment, at the gate of Edessa Corporation, a group of loaded, heavily armed, black clothed thugs dragged down two men with their hands tied from the top of the van that had stopped at the entrance. Those two men, seeing the surrounding onlookers, kept yelling and screaming, begging for mercy at the top of their lungs. But among the hundreds of onlookers, no matter whether they were expatriates from the 9th district or local residents, no one dared to say anything. They didn't even dare to lend a helping hand. Cha Nima still dare to run. Let you run, run, run. A battering ram with a face full of cross flesh, in fact, took out a throwing stick and viciously screamed and cursed, while continuously smashing the stick down on one of the men's body. Stick after stick, accompanied by a muffled sound, that man immediately screamed miserably. Help, help, please help call the police. He kept hissing, his voice muffled. Yet no one came to their rescue at all. The other man was much more honest. He was shivering, not daring to utter a word. Like a dead dog, he was dragged to the park by this group of criminals who blatantly beat people on the street. However, even though he didn't say a word and didn't try to resist, he was dragged into the gate by the criminals. But after being dragged into the gate by the criminals, he was still beaten up, and there were still two of them beating him up. Two thick and long throwing sticks were constantly beating on the man's body. The muffled sound of each blow was accompanied by a muffled grunt from the man. After receiving 20 to 30 consecutive beatings, the man finally couldn't take it anymore and began to yell for help. When he opened his mouth, he was beaten even more. At this point, his head was already bleeding, but those two criminals didn't even have the intention to stay their hands. Marred, let us look for so long. Run, how come you're not running? Keep running again. A criminal who looked like the head of the security guards held a throwing stick and struck hard at the knee of the man who had already been beaten half to death. There was a click sound which seemed to be the sound of bones breaking. That man immediately had his face twisted in pain, and once again let out a heartbreaking cry. Please don't fight. Really don't fight. Don't dare. I don't dare. I'll never run again. No more ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. The second man, is being electrocuted by criminals using a stun gun, looked at least also have a meter eight or so head, grow fat body is very robust. But in front of this group of criminals, this man was being abused and beaten without any temper and he didn't have the courage to fight back. It was as if he was a sheep that had been allowed to be killed and taken over like a docile sheep. These criminals were obviously trying to make an example out of them, to show everyone what would happen if they ran away from their park. Therefore, simply ignoring these two men's heartbreaking pleas for mercy. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. After beating them up at the gate, these criminals dragged them deeper into the park again. At the same time, they summoned all the employees to come downstairs to observe. Chao Nima, let them take a good look at what running away really is. Have everyone gathered downstairs in the playground immediately. Tie them both up and hang them. Let them dry in the sun for two days. The leader of the thugs viciously ordered loudly. Zhang Nianjia and Yuan Weihong, along with Yang Lu, were on top of a car. They were responsible for monitoring the enemy's every move. And they happen to be witnessing all of this right now. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode to read normally. Watching those two compatriots who were obviously from the 9th district, being beaten by the criminals like a dog, 
not even caring if they were dead or alive. At this moment, Zhang Yinjia's three people all felt very angry and intolerant. These criminals are simply not human. How can they beat people like this? Are those two planning to escape? They're not going to beat someone to death alive. Are they? The three girls, sitting parked on the far side, directly facing the front door of the Edessa company, watched all of this, and for a moment their hearts lifted. Hurry up and contact the contact squad leader and ask them how prepared they really are. It looks like we need to hurry up and take action. These criminals of theirs, who have no humanity, are worse than animals. Yuan Weihong angrily reminded the other two team members. She was worried that if they continued to delay, she was afraid that the two victims who were just taken back would really be beaten to death alive, or experience something even more cruel. For example, organs being removed, or blood being drawn to be sold. Zheng Yanjia had already taken out her cell phone. It was about to call Shen Feng. At this moment, however, Yang Lu frowned and said, Why do I feel that they are doing this to us on purpose? Why do you say that, school bully? Yuan Weihong immediately asked curiously, Didn't you all notice just now? Those criminals, while beating those two, looked outside the doorway. They seemed to be looking for someone. Yang Lu said hesitantly, This was merely a subjective judgment on her part, so she didn't dare to use a tone that was too certain. You mean, they are deliberately trying to let someone see these tragedies? But what is their purpose? I'm not sure. It might be to lure certain people to rescue those victims. Yang Lu replied casually. Just after she said this, the three of them simultaneously flinched violently, each glancing at the other. Those criminals are doing this. If it's really to lure some people to rescue them, then, aren't they doing it on purpose to show us? Yuan Weihong looked at the other two in disbelief. Zhang Yanjia and Yang Lu, too, both thought of this possibility at the same time. Right now, wasn't it them, the mercenary organization, that was preparing to strike against the Edessa Corporation? It shouldn't be. The enemy shouldn't know about our actions. The Mercenary Management Association. Isn't the identity of the mercenary organization that takes on missions strictly confidential? Zhang Yanjia asked hesitantly. No one answered her. Yang Lu and Yuan Weihong were both thinking. After a while, Yang Lu shook her head and frowned gruffly. There's no way for us to rule out the possibility that the enemy already knows our intelligence now. Because, after all, this is a criminal paradise for outlaws. And the official of the 6th district has even personally come down to collude with criminals. None of us can easily trust. Since the officials can even do those sinful things, how can a mercenary management association guarantee that they won't be pressurized in some way and then reveal the news out? Yang Lu said this, causing Zhang Yinjia and Yuan Weihong's moods to become heavy. They were still preparing for a big fight. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. I didn't expect that now. Surprisingly, they had already spooked the snakes before they even started to act. If the enemy really knew that they were going to deal with themselves, then they would surely put up a strict defense. At that time, the already difficult mission would become even more difficult. It's better to notify the squad leader and the others about this situation first, and then when everyone gathers together, we'll discuss it. Yang Lu took a deep breath and proposed. It can only be so. Look guys, Zhang Ninja reached out and pointed towards the distance outside the car window. Their current location was very secluded, and the endless stream of vehicles and pedestrians traveling around them provided the best cover for them. Moreover, the car was parked at an elevated position, overlooking a large area of the interior of the Edelweiss company below. At this moment, one after another, a large number of people were walking out from the office building on the square open space of the enemy's campus below. Yang Lu picked up a telescope and looked over, realizing that almost all of them were faces from the 9th district, and everyone, who looked blank, was trembling and cowering with fear. It's the employees in Edessa's company. They should all be victims who were tricked into coming here or sold here after being kidnapped. What are they up to? Zhang Nenzhou was also observing. At this moment, she couldn't help but say, it should be to give these people a kick in the pants. Those two runaways who were just captured and returned are going to be out of luck. There won't really be a death, right? Yuan Weihong asked worriedly. No one could answer her question. At this moment everyone saw that a group of people had come above the playground. Judging from the respectful attitude of the surrounding beaters towards them, they should be the managers of this group of crime syndicates. One of them, a man with short hair and wearing sportswear that looked extraordinary, after coming to the front of the crowd, received a baseball bat from the hands of his men. Immediately afterward, he unexpectedly, without any mercy, raised the baseball bat and ruthlessly smashed it down on the man whose head was already broken and bloodied and whose face was covered in blood. Chao Nima's letting you guys run away. Run, why don't you run? He beat the victim, who was already dying, one after another, without mercy or soft hands. 
and Zhang Nenjia and the three of them, Yang Lu and Yuan Weihong, watched with a burst of trepidation. People will really die if this goes on. Yuan Weihong frowned. But we can't do anything now. If we act rashly, even we ourselves will be in a dangerous situation. Yang Lu reminded in a deep voice. And at this time, they saw that about seven or eight more people were pulled out from among the crowd. Dozens of enemies, with loaded guns, surrounded them and made them crawl on their knees. Then, someone specialized in tasering and beating them from behind with a stun baton. There were even a dozen criminals who took down their pants and urinated on them. The urine increased the conductive effect, and for a while the group of victims, one by one, were electrocuted to the point that they were jumping up and down and crying out. Don't fight. Don't fight please. We are all fellow citizens of the 9th district. Why are you treating us like this ah? One of the thin men cried and asked. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Compatriots? Ha ha. Who the hell is a compatriot with you guys? Old me. I wasn't from the 9th district 10 years ago. I'm now a citizen of the 6th district. You are dogs, pigs, and animals. You know that? And your compatriots. Cha Nima. Each of you must fulfill your quota of $300,000 this month. If you don't, I'll cut off your fingers and feed them to the dogs. Compatriots. Damn it. You're the dogs from district 9. The pigs. I heard someone try to ask for help from the 9th district and hired mercenaries to save you. Hoof. Are simply a bunch of stupid things. Your mercenaries from the 9th district don't know that what awaits them is a heavenly net. Ha! When the time comes, I'll invite each and every one of you to see a good show with your own eyes. Yang Lu and Zhang Ninja and the others inside the car were too far away. At this moment, they could only see that inside the park, the criminals were constantly beating up the victims. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. In such a broad daylight, with an open view, openly beating their own employees. The purpose of these criminals was already clear. Yang Lu was 100% sure in his heart that they had been exposed and the enemy knew they were going to strike. It's a pity that I can't hear what they're saying. Zhang Ninja shook his head helplessly. In the age of technology, a lot of things happen. Yang Lu suddenly smiled mysteriously. After that, she took out her cell phone and tapped on a software. Immediately after that, she turned up the volume of her cell phone. Instantly, a voice begging for mercy and pain and a group of voices gnashing their teeth and hurling curses came from inside the cell phone. Almost all of the language used was the language of the 9th district. So the three of them didn't have a hearing impairment either. The voices inside the cell phone were the same flaunting and arrogant remarks that Wang Sigeo had made when he beat up those victims and threatened them. He told those victims that someone had secretly sent a request for help to the 9th district. Then the 9th district had commissioned mercenaries to deal with them and told them all together. It just so happened that all of this, all of it in its entirety, was heard clearly by Yang Lu and the three people, Zhang Yinjia and Yuan Weihong. Schoolmaster, this is, it? Yuan Weihong looked at Yang Lu's cell phone in surprise. Forgot about the robot dog we used before, right? Yang Lu laughed. Besides the machine dog, we also have machine bees, machine flies and so on. These black technology things, I have only seen them inside the movie in front of my eyes. I didn't expect that we would actually use them now. I also don't know how much money the squad leader actually spent to buy this kind of technological products. The only disadvantage is that they have a poor range. But the upside is that we have now gotten the most important intelligence. That is, the enemy did know that we were going to deal with them. So they set up a trap to ambush us. This news must be told to the squad leader and the others. Yang Lu explained while sending messages to Shen Feng, Wang Shiqian, and the others to remind them to pay attention. Originally, she had released the scouting machine flies this time around just to see if there was any chance of scouting for more information on the enemy through these black technologies. She didn't expect to get such an important clue by mistake. At this moment, the enemy was still beating up those victims, and were mouthing off. All of you fools, be honest with me. If you dare to do such stupid things again, next time it won't be as simple as beating you up. Cut off your waists. One of the leader of the beaters threatened viciously. Immediately afterward, Yang Lu and the girls saw the man who just beat those victims with a baseball bat and looked like he should be a management sneer. When the time comes, I'll show you guys what kind of existence your mercenaries from the 9th district are messing with. When the three heard this, they immediately looked at each other with your eyes. There was an unspeakable anger on their faces. The two of them, Shen Feng and Liang Chaoshu, had gotten the desired clues after some friendly exchanges with those two restaurant employees. It was the same as what Shen Feng had judged before. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. 
These two people came from the 9th district and were originally tricked into coming here by criminals through internet chat. Afterwards, they were sold back and forth to different parks and forced to engage in fraudulent activities. I don't know. I should say they were more fortunate or something. The two had a pretty good track record in the company. Basically, they were able to fulfill the performance given by the company on time every month. That's why they weren't tortured and beaten. On the contrary, they saved up enough money for themselves to redeem themselves. About half a year ago, the two men in the fraud more than 5 million, successfully submitted to the company through a variety of cleverly named fees, to their redemption. But they know very well that what they are doing here is illegal and criminal behavior. Although redemption regained their freedom, but once they go back to the 9th district, they may receive legal sanctions. Therefore, the two simply blacked out here in a heartless manner. The two of them left the company at that time could be said to be netted out, and were already penniless, happened to meet their current boss, that is, in the local some strength of the gang forces of the hall master Song Koen. This Song Koen usually do not dip those black things. Of course, these are only on the surface. On the surface, he is a legitimate businessman, monopolizing the local restaurant business. In reality, behind the scenes, Song Koen was no different from the leaders of other criminal organizations. At the time, these two employees met Song Koen and got a bite to eat. So they stayed and worked in his restaurant, because they were quick with their hands and willing to work hard. In other words, they could withstand exploitation. So Song Koen to the two of them, not to say trust, but also gradually will be some. Ordinary people cannot touch the work to the two of them to deal with. For example, delivering food to the park. The two of them had been doing this job for almost five months now. Of course, they weren't just responsible for delivering food to Edelweiss, all the parks in the vicinity, and almost all the criminal organizations were ordering food from Song Koen. Every day the two men's job was to deliver the meals over to those companies on time, then recycle the tableware, send the cutlery to be cleaned. These jobs are hard and tedious, but at least there is a meal and a place to live. However, the two gradually couldn't stand Song Koen's exploitation of them. After all, such a life was never a long-term solution. So during this recent period of time, the two gradually felt dissatisfied with Song Koen's orders, but they had no way to escape. For one thing, they didn't have the money to buy a ticket back. Secondly, they were also afraid that if they left without saying goodbye like this, they would be retaliated against by Song Koen. After listening to these two people's explanations, Shin Feng and Liang Chashu glanced at each other. Do you guys want to go back? Shin Feng looked at little yellow hair and long hair and asked. Want to yes? But, little yellow hair and his companion glanced at each other, a little hesitant. At this time, Shen Feng's cell phone was ringing. He took out his cell phone and found that it was a message sent to him by Yang Lu. Seeing the message immediately Shen Feng's eyebrows gently frowned, his gaze a bit gloomy. What, squad leader? Liang Chashu noticed that Shen Feng's expression was not right, and his heart could not help but slightly thump, subconsciously asked. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Shen Feng did not answer him, but put away his cell phone as if nothing had happened, and his gaze went back to the two employees. Answer me, do you guys want to go back? If you want to go back you have to do us a favor. He opened the door and didn't bother to continue wasting time with these two. There wasn't that much free time to waste at the moment. Because just now, he got a message alert from Yang Lu. The enemy had already discovered their intentions to deal with themselves. Edessa Corporation. Ninth floor of office building number one, behind the one-way floor to ceiling glass. A group of bearded mercenaries were sitting leisurely on the sofa at this moment. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. One of them, who looked like he should be in the shape of a captain, was holding up binoculars and was peering out the window. Found them. But, what's coming against us is a bunch of pussies. This mercenary captain who was about 1 meter 8 and a half tall with short brown hair and a full beard, frowned suspiciously and looked at those team members behind him. Nymphets? A bald-headed dark-looking team member immediately stood up from the sofa at the words. He walked over and took the binoculars in his captain's hand. His captain, on the other hand, raised his chin at the window in the distance. Across the street was a long slope that stretched down from the hillside on the right. There was a nondescript-looking SUV parked near the middle of the slope. Take a closer look. The three young women inside that vehicle have been watching the situation here. They've obviously noticed the tragedy in the plaza below. And the angry expressions on their faces mean they're very concerned about this sort of thing. Of course, the most important thing is that the intelligence we have received shows that the group of mercenary organizations that intends to target our company. The members happen to be three women and four men. A total of seven young people from the 9th district. This mercenary captain, saying this, 
once again raised his chin at the window, and the black team member beside him heard him say that and raised his binoculars to look over. Sure enough, they saw Yang Lu, Zhang Nenjia, and Yuan Weihong in the parked SUV on the ramp halfway up the opposite side of the hill. Looks like new recruits. This black and unkempt team member made a judgment in a deep voice. Just as he finished his words, the door of the room behind him was pushed open, while Wang Sigao walked in and sneered, whether it's a new recruit or a veteran soldier, if they dare to go against us, let them all meet the king of hell. His body was still stained with blood. The blood had not yet dried. It was obvious that he had just come up from the square below. Let's set off now. Definitely won't let them live to see the sunset today. The mercenary captain heard Wang Sigao's words and immediately took a stance in response. At this time, Wang Sigao had already picked up the binoculars from the black ghost's hand and checked the distance outside the window for a few moments. He then blandly ordered, Those three females look pretty good. Try to keep them and don't kill them. The others are at your disposal. After saying that, he raised the binoculars to look at them twice more. When little yellow hair and long hair heard Xin Feng's open door request, they immediately looked at each other. Both of them had experienced a tragic scene before. Although they were not the ones who were victimized, they had already had palpitations in their hearts. Now, they realized that it was highly likely that Xin Feng was trying to deal with Song Kuan's group or with the Odessa company. The two of them would of course feel scared. What? Is it that hard to make a choice? Either you guys stay here for the rest of your lives. Black here. Being squeezed and exploited is not to mention. Maybe one day you guys will be buried alive. Either you accept our conditions and help us solve those enemies, and we will naturally take you back. Think about your parents and relatives. Your relatives and friends. It will be hard to see them again in the future for the rest of your lives. Liang Chaoshu looked at these two hesitant. Half a day without a squeak. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. At this time, he couldn't help but threaten viciously. His words immediately caused those two to be slightly shocked, and once again looked at each other. They had seen before, compatriots from the 9th district who were killed alive because they couldn't fulfill their performance. Those people merely casually dragged people to the suburbs, found a place and buried them, without anyone caring at all. I have also seen young girls who were tricked by criminals through internet chat. The same is because the criminals do not obey the arrangements, or did not complete the company's performance on time. So, experience the unimaginable cannot even open mouth to describe the terrible things. Thinking of the viciousness of those criminals, the two of them had a moment of scalp numbness, and fear was born in their hearts. In the end, after a battle of ideas, the little yellow hair chose to compromise. What do you want us to help? Two dangerous things. I'm afraid we can't help. What you guys have to do is simple. Come over. I'll tell you guys. Xin Feng hooked his finger at them. The two of them sniffed at each other and looked at each other again. Then both of them came over. Xin Feng whispered a few words in their ears. The two men once again looked at each other in all directions. However, after merely hesitating for a second or so, they nodded to each other. Xin Feng took a look at the time. Just about 10 minutes. He waved his hand. You guys can get off now and go do what you need to do. When the time comes, remember to give us a signal. Xin Feng didn't give them any more nonsense. After saying that, he let them get off and leave. Squad leader, can these two guys be trusted? Liang Chaoshu was a bit worried. However, Xin Feng was half concerned about their problems, regardless of whether they are trustworthy or not. In any case, the enemy has already discovered us. That's a fact. What? The enemy has discovered us? What? Liang Chaoshu froze when he heard this. His first thought was naturally Yang Lu, Zhang Nenjia and their exposure. Xin Feng, on the other hand, handed his cell phone to the other party and showed them the message that Yang Lu had just sent to him. This can't be possible, right? How did the message leak? Liang Chaoshu frowned incredulously. No matter what, in any case, we have to be careful next. Xin Feng didn't bother to make wild guesses. At this moment, he remembered something and immediately sent a message to Yang Lu. Since the enemy is putting on a show for us, you guys have to be careful. This company keeps a large number of fighters under their hands, and they also cooperate with some mercenary teams specializing in solving troubles for them. You guys get out of there right now and meet us at the following location. After sending a message reminder to Yang Lu to Zhang Yinjia and the others, Xin Feng immediately sent the same reminder to Wang Shichang, Sun Bin and the others. After getting the message reminder, Yang Lu showed the message to the other two. They immediately drove their cars and prepared to leave, heading to the location that Xin Feng had told them to rendezvous at. And at the same time, the group of mercenary organizations on top of the No. One building of the Edessa company had also seen the movements. These mercenaries who were just about to go and deal with Xin Feng's group found that the car on the halfway up the hill was starting up, and the captain immediately issued an order to all of his team members. 
If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Those chicks are leaving. Hurry up. The other members of the team who were organizing their weapons and equipment sniffed and brought their equipment with them, hurrying downstairs. The three of them, Yang Lu, drove their car out of the Odessa company's range and headed directly towards the suburbs, preparing to meet up with Xin Feng and the rest of the team. However, they had only driven out a few kilometers when they realized that they seemed to be followed by someone. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Schoolboy, look at the car behind us. Does it look like it's following us? Zhang Nanjia observed through the rearview mirror and reminded. Upon hearing this the remaining two team members also subconsciously looked back. Sure enough, they saw a Hummer following them. It looks like it should be following us. What should we do? Should we ditch them? Yuan Weihong tensed up. At the same time, she had already started rummaging through her pockets for weapons and equipment that she could use. In her backpack, she had hidden some materials for making earthen explosives. But this kind of place was obviously not suitable for using such weapons. Inform the squad leader and the others of the situation first. It looks like these enemies have already discovered us from the Odessa company. And now the place has become a dragon's den. Yang Lu said while sending a message to Shen Feng. At the same time, she quietly released a few machine flies and tried to take pictures of the trackers behind her. Schoolboy, what are you doing? Seeing Yang Lu's behavior, Yuan Weihong asked curiously. Yang Lu, on the other hand, smiled faintly and took out a laptop. I'm going to confirm the identities of those trackers. I suspect that they are also mercenaries. While speaking, several released machine flies had already flown next to the enemy's car. They stopped at the glass of the enemy's car. One stopped right above the front windshield and the enemy didn't even realize that these were surreptitious filming devices. The neighboring suburbs were full of flies and mosquitoes. They didn't care at all. Soon, Yang Lu got the information he wanted. The exact picture of the enemy inside that Humvee was clearly transmitted back. And at the same time, Yang Lu started to check their information through the computer. Yuan Weihong and Zhang Yanjia only saw her fingers rapidly tapping on the keyboard, and strings of codes were written down at a rapid pace. After a while, Yang Lu revealed a meaningful smile. Sure enough, they are mercenaries too. Yang Lu turned the laptop around and gave Zhang Yinjia and Yuan Weihong to check the information retrieved on it. Seeing the information, Yuan Weihong was very surprised. Schoolmaster, you actually know hacking techniques ah? Learned a little. Yang Lu smiled modestly. In fact, she had already started to get in touch with programming since the second grade of elementary school. Because her father was a senior programmer, and her mother was a teacher in the information technology major in the university. With a dual programmer family, Yang Lu had been exposed to programming from a young age. In addition, her hobby is also in this area. More than 10 years of systematic and professional learning, so that Yang Lu in this area of technology quite established. Her hacking skills were no better than some professional hackers. If not better, worthy of being a school bully, too good for you. Zhang Yanjia looked at Yang Lu adoringly. Yang Lu, on the other hand, smiled slightly and pointed at the information on the computer screen and explained. This group of mercenaries, named Chasers, is basically the same as what they are doing now. The leader of the group is a well-known mercenary from the second district named Vaglin Ailey, nicknamed Demon. In addition the five team members he leads are all one and all somewhat famous in the mercenary world. The number one raider is nicknamed Hercules. His real identity is a well-known retired special forces soldier from the first district, named, if you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. Yang Lu said the enemy's identity information one by one. From these mercenary identity information that was searched out by the query search, these six enemies, one by one, were all once retired veterans of the elite special forces from various regions around the world. The combat experience could be described as very rich. It seems that we have, this time, encountered a tough opponent. Zhang Yanjia's face instantly became much more grave. Yuan Weihong, the co-pilot next to her also looked very moody at this time. They were both newcomers who had just become mercenaries not long ago, although they had already had a good battle experience. No one expected that this time they would actually meet a well-known mercenary team. Newcomers versus experienced mercenaries. Just in terms of identity, they lost a big chunk of their momentum. Looking at the experience of those members on the other side, each one of them looked like they were several blocks away from their own side. At this moment, it was reasonable for Zhang Ninja and Yuan Weihong to have such a reaction. Enemies are also flesh and blood as well as human beings. Don't worry so much. We're not so bad either. Remember, the narrow road is won by the brave. 
Yang Lu saw that both companions were a bit down in the dumps and immediately encouraged them. Upon hearing this the two of them immediately perked up. The schoolmaster is right. Let's not grow others' ambition and destroy our own. We haven't competed yet. Who dares to say that they are definitely better than us? Zhang Nanjia regained her confidence and said confidently. And at this time, Yang Lu's cell phone also transmitted Xin Feng's reply. The other two heard the sound of the message and immediately quieted down, waiting for Yang Lu to tell them the latest situation. The squad leader told us not to panic and head to the rendezvous point at the current speed. They are already there waiting. They will meet us there when the time comes. Hearing Yang Lu say this, the other two were quite relieved. The location where the squad leader told us to rendezvous was the stronghold we attacked earlier? Zhang Yanjia glanced at the navigation before realizing this. Well, I don't know why he arranged it like that. Yang Lu shook her head. At this moment, Xin Feng and Liang Chashu, as well as Wang Shichong, Sun Bin and the others, had arrived at the stronghold that Li Sangpa had hidden in the middle of the banana forest in the suburbs, because no one had called the police, after they had attacked the place. It had remained calm until now. Li Sangpa had already let his men deal with this place, and the bodies of all the criminals had long been cleaned up. This place is now like a deserted civilian slum. Yang Lu and the others are being followed. The enemy is also a professional mercenary. This time we'll give the enemy a surprise. Let them have no return. Xin Feng introduced the situation to a few other team members to know about it. While, from among his own equipment bag, he took out a row of grenades. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Squad leader, you're going to set traps for the enemy? Liang Chaoshu immediately woke up when he took a look at Xin Feng's move. On the other hand, Xin Feng smiled mysteriously and did not explain. Let's start from the intersection where we came in at the fork in the banana forest. Xin Feng did not say anything more, leading the team into action. He began to ambush all kinds of traps around here. Mixed fire mines and pressure fire mines were all arranged. There were also some simple animal traps, just waiting for the enemy to come to the door on their own. Following Xin Feng, he finished arranging all the traps. Liang Chaoshu was a bit puzzled. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Squad leader, since you said that the enemy are professional mercenaries with rich combat experience, then they must be able to anticipate these little tricks of ours, right? Why do you still need to bring us to set up these rudimentary traps? ISNT this, superfluous? Liang Chashu looked at Xin Feng doubtfully and inquired. At this time, Xin Feng was informing Yang Lu and the others about the location of the traps and their deployment arrangements. Hearing this, he let out a light laugh and looked deeply at Liang Chaoshu but did not explain. On the contrary, it was Wang Shichang on the side who hemmed and hawed, you don't understand this, do you? The squad leader is playing psychological tactics on the enemy. We know that the enemy is a veteran and professional mercenary, having fought hundreds of battles. Similarly, the enemy also knows that we are mercenaries, and newbie mercenaries at that. Under these circumstances, with those high-minded senior mercenaries, they must be looking down on us in their hearts. In a while, after they come here and see the botched trap on the ground, guess how they will react? Wang Shishan looked at Liang Chaoshu with a smile and asked rhetorically. And when Liang Chaoshu heard this, he slammed his thigh in sudden realization. Wonderful ah squad leader, you're trying to make the enemy further relax their guard against us right? Liang Chaoshu looked at Xin Feng with a face full of admiration. But Xin Feng just smiled. Learn from it. We'll go to this location to ambush in a while. He took out a tablet, pointed to the point on the satellite map above, and said to a few other team members, Okay, squad leader, I'll follow all your arrangements. Liang Chashu didn't even look at the topographical map on the tablet, but remained staring at Xin Feng's side face like a demented man, smiling adoringly. About half an hour later, Yang Lu and the others' cars arrived at the rendezvous point. According to Xin Feng's instructions, they parked the car outside the house of Li Sungpa's stronghold and then quickly ducked into the banana forest to hide. Yang Lu also released a few reconnaissance machine bees. After about two to three minutes, the group of mercenary organizations that had been tracking them followed them. These people were very careful. It wasn't as reckless as expected. They parked their car outside the banana forest and walked in on foot. Soon, this group of people discovered the first trap that Xin Feng had set up. Looking at the one right in front of them right next to their feet, a silk string that was vaguely about 15 centimeters from the ground. Several enemies immediately smiled playfully with the corners of their mouths rising. They followed this string and looked to both ends. And indeed, at the root position of a banana tree three meters away to the right, they saw a camouflaged grenade that was covered by leaves. This kind of child's playground trap is something only a novice can do. One of the lanky enemies snorted playfully. A few of the team members around him followed suit with light laughter. 
These people easily stepped over the first trap, having only stepped out less than 10 meters away, they immediately found a second trap. Looking at the ground, the dirt that was clearly a different color than the surrounding, these few enemies glanced at each other. One of them, gently pivoted with his foot, and the dirt and sand on the ground collapsed, revealing a trap that was roughly a meter deep. The bottom was covered with spikes. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Put, is this their plan to capture wild boars? Where would any boar be that stupid to fall into a trap like this? These few veteran mercenaries couldn't help but snort with laughter once again at the sight of such a poorly constructed trap. From their professional point of view and the standard of operation they always had, these traps left by Shen Feng and the others were simply so broken that they could be seen at a glance, and it was simply impossible for them to be trapped. A bunch of brats whose hair hasn't even grown back, presuming to fight against us. I've lost a bit of the fun of hunting now. The mercenary looking at the sniper rifle muttered to himself with a serious face. These words were immediately echoed by several other team members. Everyone was filled with disdain for the opponent they were about to face. Their vagaran, however, was looking somewhat cautious. At this moment, with a gloomy expression, he reminded in a deep voice, don't be careless, it's already very good that these guys were able to create such a trap inside such a tight time frame. They are indeed quite a bit better compared to the average new recruits. And since they know how to set traps here, it means they've already found out about us following them. Being gullible is a big no-no in our line of work. Vagarin finished speaking, while quietly lifting his foot and slowly stepping over the strings of the third tripfire mine. However, it was clear that his teammates didn't feel the same way. Each still had a contemptuous grin on their faces. These enemies had no idea. Their every move at this moment was being watched clearly by the scout bees Yang Lu had released. The conversations between them were also heard clearly. Yang Lu shared these images and sounds with each of the team members. Squad leader, your ploy looks like it's working. Sun Bin laughed softly. Blast, clairvoyant, it's up to you two next. Schoolmaster, you and Butler too can go destroy their cars now. Xin Feng turned to several team members and issued orders respectively. On the other hand, himself and Liang Chaoshu remained in ambush and did not move according to the original battle plan. Their task was to take advantage of the enemy's chaotic efforts to clean them up when the battle broke out later. Several members of the team split up and started their own operations. Wang Shixiang and Sun Bin were already ambushed on top of a hill 500 meters away. The hill was less than 100 meters high, but it was enough to overlook this banana forest. The enemy was completely exposed within his sniping range. Yuan Weihong, on the other hand, as if she was a nimble panther, began to set up traps on the periphery of the banana forest. Her traps were not the same thing as the broken traps that Xin Feng and the others had deliberately left behind. Moreover, what press Yuan Weihong used was not an explosive trap. What she used were toxin traps. Neurotoxins that could instantly paralyze the enemy were deployed properly through a crossbow that was aimed at the route the enemy might pass through. Everything was ready. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Suddenly, a loud boom came from outside the banana forest. Immediately after that, flames shot up into the sky. The mercenaries who had just arrived at the core area of the trap and saw Yang Lu's car parked outside the cabin were startled by the sudden explosion. They turned back one after another, and one frowned in astonishment. What's going on? Vaglin asked in a deep voice. Captain, our car was blown up. Those crafty guys aren't inside, but outside. Upon hearing this reply, Vaglin's face turned gloomy in an instant. He coldly opened his radio communication and called. Scorpion, Scorpion, what's the situation there? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Scorpion was one of their team members. Staying outside the banana grove to guard the car was coming. But now if the car was really blown up, then wouldn't their own team members already be in grave danger? The call waited for a while without getting any response. Wagland's face once again became gloomy. And at this time, the other team members also finally realized that the situation was not right. Everyone looked at each other. Sniper Clyde cocked his weapon with a click and said to Vaglin, I'll go out and take a look myself. Zod, you go with him, Vagrin ordered to another member of his team. Although each of his team members had been through hundreds of battles and were elites among elites, however, now that one of the team members had lost contact, he didn't feel comfortable letting his team members act alone. Everyone else, find these brats for me. Remember that the females are captured alive, and the males can be killed outright. There was an extra trace of sharp killing intent in Waglin's eyes. Just now, although his mouth was talking and reminding the team that the enemy was not simple, but in reality, he didn't take Shin Feng and his party too seriously in his own heart, but this time he was really getting serious. 
The team members who had gotten the order immediately split up and started their actions, they still hadn't realized what exactly was wrong with them. On the other hand, the reconnaissance machine little b that Yang Lu had released had silently landed on each and every one of them. At this very moment it was hidden behind their bulletproof vests, in corners that could not be seen easily. Not only could they provide back the corresponding reconnaissance footage, as well as locate the exact position of the enemy, but they had also recorded all of the enemy's conversations. In other words, Shen Feng and his party not only grasped the enemy's movements at this moment, but also knew the enemy's operational deployment. Which god will translate for me? What did they just gabble about? Liang Chashu looked at his cell phone's pavement, the reconnaissance image shared by Yang Lu, and couldn't help but spit it out. In fact, he did not not understand, but pretended to be a fool to get a cheap but also good. However, Sun Bin still replied in a serious manner. Those guys split up. There's a sniper and a machine gunner heading outside. Blast, schoolboy, and butler. You guys have to be careful. Squad leader, our side is ready to strike at any time. While Sun Bin explained to Liang Chashu, he also reminded Shen Feng, and at this moment, Wang Shichun had already locked onto the raider among the enemies with his sniper rifle. That guy was the one with stronger maneuverability. Take out their sniper first, clairvoyant. Shen Feng ordered at this moment. Understood. Wang Shichun, who had gotten the order, immediately turned to change his aiming target to the enemy sniper. At this moment, that sniper and the other machine gunner providing fire support had just carefully arrived outside the banana forest. With just a glance they saw the Humvee that was parked on the side of the road and almost burned to ashes. The Scorpion, the team member who was originally sitting inside the vehicle guarding as well as responsible for receiving them, was still in the position of sitting in the driver's seat of the vehicle. It looked like it was taken out right there and there was no time to react at all. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can read normally. Fark, seeing this, machine gunner Zod couldn't help but curse. Sniper Clyde, on the other hand, pinched his radio and warned the other members, the opponent is doing it professionally, doesn't look like a newcomer, everyone should be careful, after saying that he immediately patted the back of the machine gunner who was on guard, and the two co-workers rushed over towards the distant high ground, it seemed obvious that it was to find a suitable sniping position to provide fire support to his squad, and hearing his reminder, the group of mercenaries were instantly on alert, squad leader, are we going to make a move, they're coming towards our side, Looks like this guy is indeed a professional. Wang Shichang asked at this moment. Shen Feng, on the other hand, questioned Yang Lu playfully. Schoolmaster, can this little bee of yours talk? Yes it can, but that would consume a lot of power. Yang Lu replied with a passing reminder. These gadgets for reconnaissance have the obvious advantage of being disguised as flies, bees and other inconspicuous animals. This made it easy to sneak in for reconnaissance, but the disadvantage was equally obvious. That is, the range was relatively poor. After all, the volume was right there. Wanting to maintain flight, audio and video recording, transmission, as well as call functions, but also to ensure the range. The requirements for technology were too high. It was normal that the current level of technology could not reach such standards. It's fine. Shin Feng smiled playfully and tapped the remote call button. At the same time, he gave an order to Wang Shichun, clairvoyant, prepare to strike. Understood. Just waiting. Immediately afterward. Shin Feng laughed quirkily through the small bees on the enemy snipers. You guys are exposed. The two enemies who were rapidly advancing towards the high ground suddenly heard the sound coming from their bodies and all of them were shaken. They stopped in their tracks and looked at each other in disbelief. It's now, clairvoyance. Shin Feng issued the order. Wang Shichun, who had already been ready to fire, decisively pulled the trigger. There was a swoosh sound. The bullet whistled from hundreds of meters away, hitting the enemy on the spot in less than a second. Before the sniper named Clyde had time to react, his head was whistled through by the bullet, his body instantly tilted, and his entire body was driven backward by the huge impact and fell down on his back. Clyde, Fark, Zod, the machine gunner who had witnessed his companion being shot, cursed while pouncing on the ground with a roll on the ground, and quickly got into a fighting stance. He kept moving his body backwards, as if he was a crocodile crawling backwards to hide inside the banana forest by the roadside, while vigilantly observing the situation outside. He didn't forget to pick up the radio to inform the other team members. Clyde has been taken out. Captain. The enemy is a professional. Definitely not new recruits. Sniper at 9 o'clock. Distance 445 meters. I need fire cover. Wang Shichang immediately shifted his target to aim at this machine gunner after hitting the first enemy and putting him down. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed. Garbled and wrong words. Please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. At this time. 
he had already completed his new lock-on, just as the enemy sent out a warning towards his team members. Wang Shirqian also laughed quirkily through the scouting bee on the other party. Hello, bye. The same time the words rang out, bullets whistled out following his trigger pulling action. The sniper bullet that was as fast as 1120 meters per second hit the target in less than 0.5 seconds. Perhaps it was because the enemy's hidden position was more advantageous. Or perhaps, it was because Wang Shirqiang had a bit of a lapse in judgment. This shot went out although it also hit the opponent. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can read normally. But it was not able to first headshot to solve the target. Wang Shirqiang saw from inside the sniper scope that the enemy's body was still moving and instinctively moved to move in towards the deeper part of the banana forest. Missed, clairvoyant. Observer Sun been reminded. And aside, Wang Shirqian was silent and defiantly loaded his gun and took aim again. But at this point, the enemy had already been lost, and he had lost his only chance to snipe. That guy has been seriously injured. He can't run away. Wang Shirqian said in a deep voice. It was only when it was too late that the enemy's captain finally spoke up and warned. Zod, you have to be careful. That guy might have already aimed at you. When Shin Feng and the others heard this, they couldn't help but cover their mouths and snicker but they didn't have that free time. The enemies, being professional mercenaries, were also reacting at this time. The few remaining ones began to split up and launch their operations, quickly bursting through the banana forest in search. Not only did they easily avoid all the traps that Shin Feng and his team members had set up earlier, but they were also surprisingly able to accurately track over through the traces left on the ground, if it wasn't for the fact that on the enemy. At this moment, there was the positioning information provided by Little B which could clearly allow Shin Feng and the others to see their position and direction of movement. Perhaps, it was really possible for the enemy to feel them over. Everyone be careful. Shin Feng looked inside the cell phone screen at the three small red dots that were moving towards himself and Lian Cha Shu, and reminded them in a deep voice. At the same time, the gun was already aimed outside. However, before the two of them exchanged fire with the enemy, the trap set by Yuan Weihong earlier had already begun to work. There was a swoosh. A crossbow was triggered by the enemy and the crossbow arrow shot out from inside the trap. The neurotoxin instantly spread quickly through the arrow that penetrated the enemy's skin, spreading with the enemy's blood flow. Ward Fark? The enemy who was shot by the crossbow was confused for a moment as he looked at this arrow sticking above his right rib cage. He subconsciously reached out to pull out this arrow, and the pain instantly spread to travel throughout his body as well as strongly stimulate his brain. Ward, before he could even finish a sentence, this enemy began to lose his mind as the neurotoxin took effect and with both eyes rolled over he collapsed directly to the side. Maddox? Captain Vaglin glanced at the raider called Maddox. The other party had already started foaming at the mouth unconsciously. It looked hopeless. He cursed in a low voice and opened fire violently in the direction where the crossbow bolt had just come out. Da 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 Bullets kept shooting out from among the assault rifles. As if it was like moneyless tap water. A shuttle was soon shot out by him. This mercenary captain displayed his professionalism. Changing magazines with one hand in less than a second. The entire movement was very dashing. However, his movements had only just been completed when a sudden burst of gunfire came to mind. Surprise surprise surprise. Shin Feng decisively opened fire when he found the right opportunity to do so. What he aimed at was not the enemy's body in body armor, but the enemy's legs. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. The bullet hit the enemy's thigh, immediately causing blood to stain the other's pants red, while at the same time the enemy immediately fell to his knees as expected. Look at me. Liang Chashu followed suit and fired decisively. With two shots, the enemy's head was blown off on the spot. The last enemy left was a medic and communications soldier, watching his captain and team members all get killed. This enemy seemed to be a bit dumbfounded. At this moment, he raised his own weapon and frantically strafed the surroundings. The bullets whistled out and flew in all directions with tongues of fire. And such a sweeping method could easily hit Shin Feng and Liang Chao Shu who were hiding 50 meters away. However, just when the enemy had just swung in a semicircle and was about to face Shin Feng's side, suddenly, there was a swoosh. His head was instantly pierced by a bullet. And as if he was a big buffalo that had been viciously whacked, his whole body straightened up and fell straight to the side. This time, all the enemies had basically been killed. Except for the one that Wang Shirqiang had just missed. Shin Feng was just about to order a search for the severely injured enemy that had just escaped, when inside the radio communicator, it was Yuan Weihong's voice that came through, her voice sounded a bit agitated, and she was also panting slightly, squad leader, I caught that guy, upon hearing this, all the team members immediately rushed over quickly towards Yuan Weihong's location, 
Is it all right, blasting? Shin Feng reminded worriedly, and through the life monitoring interface provided by the system, which only he could see, he checked the situation of each team member. It was confirmed that Yuan Weihong was simply emotionally agitated and not injured. Only then did Shin Feng let go of his heart. The crowd quickly arrived at Yuan Weihong's location to join her. Sure enough, they saw that she had already subdued the seriously injured, big and thick-looking enemy. The opponent's hands were tied behind her back, lying face down. His sturdy and robust physique became a burden under this posture, making it very difficult for him. Shin Feng checked, just now Wang Shuqian hit the right shoulder of the other party. It almost hit the carotid aorta, but this was already enough to seriously injure the other party. This enemy, who had been given a uniform, saw that Shin Feng and the others had surrounded themselves. Moreover, each one of them was young and looked no different from a new recruit. He couldn't help but curse. Farking squid, do you damn well speak the language of the Ninth District? Liang Chashu viciously kicked the other party, and the gun was aimed at the other party's head questioningly. You, these, hairless, little beasts, lick, my ass. The other party cursed in broken District 9 language. Yo, still have the audacity to talk tough. Speak, who sent you guys? Liang Chaoshu viciously kicked the other party once again and questioned loudly. However, the other party sneered, with a haughty look on his face, as if saying you guys can kill if you want to. Alright, a bit of backbone. Little master, I love dealing with criminals like you. Hard bones, right? If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Liang Chashu put away his own weapon and rolled up his sleeves, ready to get his hands dirty to clean up the other party. However, at this moment, Shen Feng spoke, All right, there's no need to question him. Don't we already know the answer? He took out his pistol and loaded it, aiming it at the enemy's head. Yuan Weihong, Zhang Yanjia and Yang Lu, who had converged over, subconsciously turned their heads away when they saw the scene. There was a swoosh sound. The bullet from the silencer-equipped pistol exploded the enemy's head. Squad leader, I still want to ask if he has any money. These people must have earned a lot from being mercenaries for so many years. Liang Chaoshu had a face of regret. Hearing Liang Chaoshu's words, Shen Feng and the others couldn't help but laugh playfully. And at the same time, after solving the last enemy, a system beep came from Shen Feng's mind. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled. Please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Ding! Congratulations to you and your team for completing the unexpected challenge mission, encountering professional mercenaries. You have received a reward, material resupply gift pack asterisk 1. Please proceed to your exclusive training ground to receive it. The sudden beep that sounded in his head caused Chin Feng to freeze slightly. He did not expect that it was possible to trigger a random mission reward. Previously, the mainline mission given by the system was to complete any one of the mercenary missions after which the rewards could be obtained. This first mercenary commission mission, Shen Feng and the others hadn't officially completed it yet. Now it seemed that random events would also cause the system to react to get themselves rewarded. Not bad. Shen Feng snickered in his heart. He also didn't know what kind of goodies the system had given for this material supply. Don't get into the eye of money. These mercenaries have professional teams behind them to help them deal with commissions. You can't get them even if they have money. Let's just hurry up and clean up the battlefield. Shen Feng turned his head and looked at the other team members. At this time, Wang Shuqiang and Sun Bin had also returned from the sniper position to converge. There were six team members one and all. What was even more rare was that everyone was surprisingly uninjured. Except for Wang Shuqiang's greed for success just now, who shot early and missed and failed to finish off the enemy with a single shot. Everyone's overall performance was very good. Shen Feng knew that this was the credit of the system. Although everyone was no longer training inside the training ground. However, the system was still reinforcing the team's combat skills, as well as their physical fitness, every moment of every day. Although this subtle way of becoming stronger was generally not felt by the players themselves. However, as the days and months accumulate, sand is gathered to form a tower. The changes that converged bit by bit could eventually cause a qualitative change from a quantitative change. Shen Feng led everyone to clean up the battle site. All of the traps that had been set here before were removed to avoid accidentally injuring the local farmers who came to harvest the bananas in the future. Immediately afterward, they disposed of the enemy's corpses and dug pits to bury them on the spot. After that, they started to clean up the battlefield, trying to avoid leaving any traces of them. The last thing was to count the spoils of this battle. The enemy didn't really carry much. It was mainly some weapons and ammunition and so on. There weren't many that were truly valuable. And there weren't even a few of the money that Liang Chaoshu had his heart set on. Should we take their weapons and equipment? Squad leader? Wang Shuqian was tinkering with the enemy sniper rifle. 
It was a world mainstream sniper rifle that sold for a lot of money, and besides the highly sophisticated sniper rifle, they had left behind several assault rifles, pistols, heavy machine guns, and other weapons. In addition there were quite a few bullets and grenades, these were all specialized weaponry, and the bullets were universal models that could be shared with Xin Fangs and their weapons. It was just a pity that the weapons they didn't seem to be able to use, because the equipment in their hands wasn't bad either, and was even a bit more refined than the enemies. Put it away first, when the time comes, I'll find a black merchant to help get rid of it. This is also considered an extra income. Xin Feng hemmed and hawed and did not bother to say anything more. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Hearing him say that these weapons could even be sold for money, the eyes of the team members immediately became fiery. Originally, they thought it was just a bunch of scrap that they couldn't use anymore. Unexpectedly, it was another sum of extra money. It's true that there's food and drink when you follow the squad leader. Liang Chashu laughed pleasantly. But are these mercenaries really senior mercenaries? How come they're so weak? Yang Lu got a little curious. The other members of the team nodded at the words. They thought that the enemies would be a bit stronger. Who knew that they were easily taken care of by themselves? What's this? We've gone through hellish training. We're professional too, right? And all of this is of course thanks to our squad leader. Liang Chaoshu vigorously patted Xin Feng's shoulder and laughed. Everyone subconsciously looked at Xin Feng and nodded in admiration and recognition. It's still the squad leader who's great. The ambush tactics this time were formulated by the squad leader. Wang Shichuan looked at Xin Feng with light in his eyes. Harm, squad leader must be awesome, or else people are squad leaders? Liang Chaoshu immediately picked up. Squad leader, when will we continue to consolidate our training again? I feel like we can still improve our strength again. Sun Ben asked. Aren't you guys already on your way to training? Xin Feng asked rhetorically. Immediately after, he emphasized again. Training is actual combat. Actual combat is training. No difference. Cut the crap and move all these things to the car. He pointed at the pile of weaponry on the ground. The team members handily carried the loot back to the car. Squad leader. These mercenaries were sent by the Edessa company to get us, only to be taken out by us. The enemy definitely doesn't know about this now. Should we kill them while the iron is hot? Liang Chaoshu looked at Xin Feng and asked after he returned to the car. The other members of the team, too, looked towards him waiting for Xin Feng to give the order. However, Xin Feng shook his head. There's no rush first. I placed an order for a new supply of materials. Let's go over and receive it first. Now that the enemy is aware of our actions, their defenses must be sufficient. It's not too late to clean up those enemies when we're ready. Xin Feng explained. Previously, Yang Lu and the others had already discovered the enemy's plotting and scheming. And they had also eavesdropped on the enemy's actions and learned that the enemy had already known from special channels that they had gone back to deal with themselves. Therefore, Xin Feng's words sounded like there was nothing wrong with them. Several team members looked at each other and nodded. Everyone knew that Xin Feng had special channels to buy weapons and equipment, so they didn't ask too many questions. At this time, Yang Lu suddenly asked curiously, Squad leader, are there any miniature microbots in this purchase? She was of course referring to gadgets like little bees and flies. This kind of thing was really considered black technology, too good to be used for intelligence scouting. The only drawback was that they were too easy to damage and lose. Just now in a battle, Yang Lu had consumed all the little bee robots in his hand. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Hearing her query and seeing that everyone was gazing at him curiously, Xin Feng smiled mysteriously. Won't you guys know when you go and see it? He also hadn't seen the latest material supply given by the system yet. What good things were there? So he could only give the other party an ambiguous answer. A group of people, with the loot they had just harvested, drove far away towards the exclusive training ground outside the suburb. At this time, Xin Feng and the others did not know that their deeds had quietly spread in the 9th district. The matter of Xin Feng and the others carrying out a mission as mercenaries in the 6th district and delivering a brutal blow to criminals was continuing to ferment on the network of the 9th district. The ones who leaked the news were a few of the victims who had previously been rescued by Xin Feng and his team in Li Songpa's stronghold. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or read mode to read normally. After they returned to the 9th district, they spread their horrific experiences, as well as a series of stories about their lucky rescues, on the internet in the form of autobiographies. Some were made into videos, while others directly posted on the internet. Others are just secretly sharing them inside their own small circles. These victims, after being rescued were like a lifetime ago. Originally, sharing these experiences was, for one thing, 
to alert the other compatriots in District 9, to reveal how dangerous and terrifying District 6 really was from a first-hand perspective. It was an attempt to advise more people to never easily believe the lies of the liars and not to casually travel to the 6th district. The second purpose is to record the story of his own life after the robbery in this way. Sort of a psychological therapy method, but also contains the unusual meaning of recording the precious experience of life. Only, these victims may not realize it. By doing so, they were inadvertently bringing pressure to Shen Feng and his party. It was even possible to bring danger. Those criminals, some of them are specializing in mingling on top of various large and small social platforms in the 9th district. They disguise themselves as normal users and look for suitable targets. For example, if they see someone looking for a job, they will try to take the initiative to contact you, and then initially promise to give you a high salary and all sorts of benefits that will make your heart skip a beat. In fact, the purpose of doing so is to trick you out, and by the time you fall for it and listen to their command to sneak across the border of the 9th district to the other side, They'll take control of you on the spot and confiscate your cell phone, wallet, and passport, and everything else. There, you don't know the place well. You can't call for help. They'll take you to a small dark room and lock you up first, and after two or three days of being locked up you'll be out of temper. If you still think of escaping and resisting at this time, they will verbally abuse and beat you, and at every turn, they will use electric batons, belts, or even knives and other things to beat you and torment you, mentally and physically doubly abusing you inhumanly. If you are a girl, then, your experience will be even more horrific, especially if you are a relatively good-looking girl. Those who go far inside the criminals can easily be hundreds of people. Wait until after about a week of torturing you all. By this time you will have been destroyed both mentally will and physically and will have no ability to resist. They will start to get money from your bodies. The easiest way to do this is to blackmail your families and make them pay a high ransom. If your families don't have the means to give that much money, it doesn't matter. They still have other ways to squeeze you such as making you engage in some illegal and criminal activities. Usually at the very beginning, you are made to engage in telecommunication fraud. And if there are good seedlings, they will arrange for you to engage in other activities, such as drug transportation, murder, and so on. The females will then put you in some color work. The reason they give you guys is that it costs money to buy you airfare, and that there will be room and board at their place, which you will have to pay back. If you really can't finish the performance handed over to you by the company, there will be two kinds of results in the final treatment. The first is to directly karma your waste, or draw blood to sell, sell organs and so on. The second way of handling, which is the most common, is that they will sell you to other parks. If what you experience is the second kind, then congratulations. The experience I mentioned above you can experience it again, or even twice, three times, until the last little bit of value in you is squeezed out. If they really can't squeeze out any more benefits, then they will use the first treatment method. GA waste. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. At this moment on the internet, an article titled Uncovering the Unknown Darkness of the Sixth District, enter with caution for the faint of heart, s post had already been viewed by over a million people. The number of comments had even exceeded 50,000. Some of them were survivors who had experienced the dark years in the sixth region and had personally spoken out praising and agreeing with the content posted by the posters. There were also people who were preparing to travel and work in the 6th district, and after seeing this post, they were curious and clicked in, only to realize that they might have been targeted by criminals. So scary. One of my classmates just messaged me yesterday and asked me to go work with him in the 6th district, said that the monthly salary would casually be over 10,000, and that he could go on trips and have lots and lots of employee benefits. Me too. Turned out to be a deadbeat liar. I almost went. I was almost tricked into going by a distant cousin in the family who said it was very cool over there and there were lots of things we hadn't played. Looks like everyone is the same. They were all tricked over there by acquaintances mostly, followed by tens of thousands of comments in reply. In addition to the presenters, there were many, many tweeters. Everyone was furious when they saw that the criminals in the 6th district were so rampant, recklessly enticing and harming their compatriots in the 9th district, one after another. At times like this, the officials of the 9th district should send special forces over to suppress them, destroy them. I suggest a long distance fire strike, a direct missile saturation attack to wash the ground and completely destroy those scum scums. Isn't it possible to request local mercenaries to step in and help? I've seen that after the people from the 1st district were captured before, their mercenaries immediately mobilized to rescue them. We don't seem to have any mercenaries in district 9, do we? Yes, there are, but they're not very famous. They're all very low key. Quickly shifted, I can't sleep at night, has the subject not updated yet? What about the back? How did you escape back? 
the melon-eating netizens, apart from a portion of them who were filled with righteous indignation and thought that the criminals in the 6th district were simply too rampant, made some unrealistic suggestions. There was also a portion of netizens who were curious about the poster's subsequent experience. Since this person could share his horrifying experience in the 6th district, it meant that others had already returned, or at least had been safe. If they were still in the hands of criminals, of course they would not have this opportunity to share such a dark story. Thousands of netizens followed these things through short videos and various mainstream social media platforms, seeing that there were so many people chasing after more. The survivors of this mysterious hijacking suddenly became even more energized. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Thus, he decided to write about his experience in the 6th district, where he was saved by a group of young mercenaries from the 9th district, as well. To put it mildly I should be considered relatively lucky. After all the above dark ordeals, I should have been about to have my waist cut off by them already, and I was mentally prepared to die a guest in a foreign land, and never see my parents and loved ones again in this life. Who would have thought that on that day, just as those criminals were taking me to one of their strongholds, which they called the operating room, ready to have their organs removed, a group of mercenaries who were brave and fearless, with amazing fighting skills, suddenly descended from the sky as if they were God's soldiers. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode can be read normally. They were brave, bold, and invincible, suddenly appearing inside the criminal stronghold, taking out all of the enemies in three or two moves, and stepping in to save all of our victims. Afterwards, we realized that these mercenaries were all from the 9th district, our own compatriots, our dearest compatriots. At that moment, I was really too thankful to them, too excited. If it wasn't because of their timely appearance, perhaps, I would have already become some nameless corpse in the wilderness of the 6th district. I once tried to ask those benefactors for their names and addresses, hoping that I would be able to personally come to the door to thank them after returning to the 9th district, but at that time I was too excited. The feeling of really surviving after a robbery, can you guys relate to that? In retrospect, I was the one who took offense at that time, shouldn't have asked people such sensitive questions, so guys, I'm sorry if anyone wants to know exactly who they are, I'm afraid I can't help them, but I can give you guys a little hint, those mercenaries are all very young and should look like a bunch of college students, if anyone also has a relative or friend who has been tricked into going to the 6th district, you can, perhaps, try to go to the local mercenary association to seek their help, as this victim with a mysterious identity, told his subsequent experience one by one, on the internet, once again, a storm of discussion arose, there were certainly many, Many netizens who sympathized with and condemned the cruelty and heartlessness of those criminals. But at this moment, what more netizens began to pay attention to was this mysterious group of young mercenaries. Judging from the content of the post, these young and brave mercenaries with superior strength were from the 9th district. But when did such powerful mercenaries appear in the 9th district? In fact, the reason why this matter had received so much attention was because of a long standing pain, because of the developed economy, military, technology, and so on. The 9th district has always been labeled as the safest area in the world. Moreover, this was a forbidden place for mercenaries. No mercenary had ever dared to come to the 9th district to carry out a mission. The most important reason, of course, was that the 9th district was very safe. There were very few criminal activities. And even if there were, it was the 9th district's own patrol division and internal security forces that solved these criminals. There was no soil for mercenaries to survive. So did they come here to drink the northwest wind? The second reason was also simple, although mercenary organizations were legal across the globe, but the official 9th district was by default not welcoming foreign mercenary legions to enter their territory to carry out missions. This concerned the internal security of the 9th district. After all, there were some regions in the world that were eyeing the 9th district. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. It could not be ruled out that they would send mercenaries to carry out normal commission tasks as a reason to take advantage of the opportunity to enter the 9th district to wreak havoc. Summing up the above, mercenaries were, in the 9th district, a rather special existence. This also led to the fact that mercenary organizations that were normal in other districts tended to be more low-key and mysterious in the 9th district. In many people's impression, the 9th district itself did not have any well-known mercenary teams. The people of the 9th district also didn't seem to be too fond of being mercenaries. If compatriots from the 9th district needed to commission mercenaries for a mission, they often had no choice but to commission mercenaries from other districts because they couldn't find a local doorway. However,
Doing so would result in their commission prices being much more expensive than normal. Sometimes this difference in price could reach several times or even a dozen times. And many missions, because of the sensitivity of the district and other reasons, entrusted to mercenaries from outside, could possibly be rejected. For example, there were people from the 9th district who had been kidnapped and swindled in the 6th district. The compatriots of the 9th district who intended to entrust mercenaries to carry out a mission would need to pay off in more than 10 times the normal price. But even so, there might not be anyone willing to take on the mission. Moreover, the most important point was, there was also a possibility that they would, in turn, encounter scams from fake mercenaries, leading to a situation that would add insult to injury. This was not something that was uncommon. After all, there were many, many people in the 9th district today who suffered the threat of kidnapping, scams, and other criminal activities. Many people in District 9 who have no recourse have thought about seeking the help of mercenaries at one time or another. Especially, seeking help from the 9th district's own team of mercenaries. It was just a pity that all they got was probably a scam over and over again. Or maybe they could only find inexpensive, poorly ranked mercenary organizations. The money was handed over, but the commission task was delayed. And all of this, in the final analysis, was because the 9th district did not have its own reliable, reputable, strong and trustworthy mercenary team. Or rather, even if such a mercenary team existed, because of their low profile, so the general public simply didn't know where they were, nor did they know how to find them to entrust them with a mission. All in all, mentioning mercenaries, it could almost be said that it was the pain within the heart of every person in the 9th district. It was also because of this. Now, on the internet, I saw someone post that mercenaries from the 9th district had appeared in the 6th district. They were young, brave and fearless, and their fighting strength was strong. For a while, countless netizens, one after another, began to look deeper. Our 9th district, it turns out that there are also outstanding mercenaries full of blood? Is it real or fake? How can I contact them? A cousin in my family has been out of contact with her relatives for more than half a month, and now she can't be contacted, only knowing that she went to the 6th district before. Please 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 posters help and find the contact information of that one mercenary team. There are heavy thanks. Is it really that powerful? A team that wipes out the criminal gangs in the 6th district? Didn't they say they were all harboring each other? The local officials can't do anything about those criminal organizations. It just looks so strong. Squad a contact. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled and wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. On the internet as the heat of the post continued to be pushed up, gradually set off a looking for mercenaries craze. And this kind of thing, is also caused more people's attention. Some once in the 6th district suffered inhuman torture survivors, also have come forward to speak. Among the tens of thousands of comments that followed the post, there were survivors who had returned to the 9th district from the 6th district after surviving the calamity and saw the content of the post. So they took the initiative to come forward to stand up for the posters and speak out. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. I can prove that everything the subject said is true, because I was also one of the kidnapped people who were rescued by that group of mercenaries. At that time, we were really close to being GA wasted, and if they hadn't arrived in time, I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to type here and chat with you guys right now. Plus one, I'm really so grateful to those young men, truly, they are the ones who gave me a second life. They are my saviors, and I wish to repay them with everything I have. Thank them for rescuing me from my misery. The 6th district is really not a place for people to stay, and I sincerely advise you all to never, ever, ever easily believe any of the words of the scammers, who have specialized words to trick people. Once you guys go there, it's really hard to come back. Also, thank you to the group of mercenaries who rescued me, and wish them a long life. Good people live a long life. More and more netizens are showing up to tell their stories. And these netizens who shared their personal experiences, their comments were in turn pushed up to the top row by other melon-eating netizens, directly liking them and being seen by more people. The heat of the post continued to ferment. Gradually, it wasn't just netizens active on Q&A social platforms who saw the content. Some short video clip bloggers, game commentary granny masters, etc., etc., and even long video anchors, also followed the trend and started carrying plus shuffling the commentary. Within a short period of time, the topic about a group of survivors in the 6th district being rescued by mercenaries and coming back from the dead rushed to the top of the hot searches and triggered the whole network. Countless netizens saw the personal experiences of these victims, and also learned that there were mercenaries from the 9th district operating in the 6th district. Even the mainstream news media began to focus on and follow up on these matters. 
Some media outlets with a keen sense of smell even directly found those victims who posted and paid money to invite them for exclusive interviews. The survivors who had just escaped from the evil slums did not expect their happiness to come so suddenly. Sharing their own personal experiences and revealing the true colors of the crime syndicates in the 6th district, they didn't expect to be paid. Of course they would not refuse, decisively accepted the invitation of the TV station to appear on the news program, and in front of the camera face will be their own personal experience, and repeat the story again, and this time, under the professional guidance of their friends in the media. These victims, recounting the details of being rescued by the mercenaries were even more truthful and rich. They were all young men, looking almost like college students. There were seven people in total, three women and four men. The strength was really super powerful. Those dozens of criminals were killed in three or two moves in front of them. They are all sharpshooters. It's the heroes of the 9th district. That's right I'd like to call them the heroes of district 9. Heroes of the 9th district. One after another. The victims who were interviewed, presenting themselves, all gave such comments at the end of the interview video. In their hearts, those mercenaries who rescued them from their misery were their heroes. The heroes of the 9th district. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, Garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. The mainstream media had more than enough fans, because they did not know the specific identities of the three women, four men, and seven mercenaries. The title Heroes of the Ninth District was directly quoted by the media to refer to the mercenaries who had rescued the victimized compatriots of the Ninth District in the Sixth District during this operation, under the influence of the news media. The popularity of Shin Fong and his group further increased, gradually. Even some of the official violent organs had noticed the relevant news reports. 9th Region C City Future Area, Patrol and Arrest Division. First grade constable Ma Tengda was currently sitting in his office with a worried frown on his face. The case of the girl who was lost in the 6th district more than half a month ago was handled by them here. Since it was a case that made the TV news, the social attention was very high, coupled with the fact that it came from the 6th district itself. Criminal activities specifically targeting compatriots in the 9th district became more rampant. There was a lot of pressure from above to solve the case as soon as possible. Ma Tengda had been working overtime for a week straight, but he was still clueless about this case. How would it be possible to find a person who had disappeared in the 6th district? Besides, their patrol division had no law enforcement power in the 6th district, and could not directly send people there to investigate. This was simply, worrying people's hair off two pounds. Ma Tengda was at a loss. At this time, someone outside the office knocked on the door. Come in. Ma Tengda raised his eyes in the direction of the door. A henchman immediately pushed open the door and walked in. Captain, have you seen today's news? The other party opened his mouth and asked. See what news us see the news, which have that free time. Worry are worried to death. Ma Tengda touched the bare head with only a few hairs left, and responded irritably. Then you should take a look. The henchman burst into a scowl and nudged at the cell phone he had placed on the table. Seeing the henchman act in such a manner, Ma Tengda's heart also became curious. He subconsciously picked up his phone and slid the screen to unlock it. The first news push immediately caught his attention. The mysterious and valiant, warlike people's hero. Of the 9th district mercenaries on a mission in the 6th district? Light of the 9th district? What's this with that? Ma Tengda froze directly when he saw this one news push. Some media outlets had exaggerated headlines, but they just didn't talk about what the content was, and had to attract you to click in and browse. At this time, Ma Tengda himself was also attracted to it. He decisively clicked on the first one. It was a video news interview. The content that was played happened to be the previous media interviews with the victims, allowing them to talk about their personal experiences in the 6th district in front of the camera. Soon, Matenda got the key information. Kidnapped. Victim. Back from the dead. And mercenary. A series of keywords were quickly distilled by him. Matenda raised his head to look at his men. Haven't the mercenaries in our 9th district always kept a very low profile? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Since when, do they still have this kind of battle record? His words were actually quite euphemistic. The implication was that the mercenaries of the 9th district, in fact, couldn't do anything about those criminal organizations in the 6th district. As an officer of the patrol division, it was natural to learn a lot more about the situation than ordinary people. Matenda knew very well that the 9th district had its own team of mercenaries. Moreover, there was more than one such team, but they were, after all, just unofficial forces, and some of them were even amateur players, registered to play for votes. It wasn't the same thing as the professional mercenaries who were out there all year round licking blood from their swords and making a living off of it. The henchman also revealed a helpless and bitter smile when he heard Matenda's meaningful words, 
He spread both his hands and replied, That's why I said I'd let you take a look at this news. This one mercenary squad, I heard that it was still formed by young people. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Three men and four women. Oh no, it's three women and four men. TSK TSK, seven people blew up an armed criminal organization with dozens of people. All I can say is that they're really bullish. This combat power should be able to rival the average special forces. This henchman couldn't help but exclaim in admiration. At the same time it also seemed to be hinting at something. How could Ma Tangda really not know what was in the other party's heart? He lightly grunted. What, are you reminding me to seek help from those mercenaries to find a missing girl? Captain, sometimes we should indeed need the help of some special means. The henchman immediately replied. Actually, it wasn't unprecedented for officials to cooperate with mercenary organizations. It was only that, given the current level of strength of the mercenary organizations in the ninth region, cooperation between the two sides was often a dilemma. That was why Ma Tangda had such a subconscious reaction. Now, however, the report on top of the news drew the attention of the officials. A certain team of mercenaries from the 9th district had successfully rescued hundreds of victims in the 6th district. Not only that, they had even personally crushed a powerful armed criminal organization. Captain, those criminals in the 6th district, each and every one of them is a ruthless character with a knife's head, and that 7-member squad of mercenary team can solve them so easily. Think about it carefully. How capable do they have to be? I'm wondering, if they're retired special forces from one of the official military districts in our ninth region? Retired special forces? Matenda looked up at the other party in surprise. Yeah, why else would they be so capable? This henchman immediately replied rightfully. However, at this time, the other female patrolman, who was at the side, shook her head. I rather think that they aren't from the special forces. The news on the internet and the self-statements of those interviewed are repeatedly emphasizing that those people are young people. This doesn't match the retired soldiers of the special forces ah. This female inspector's words reminded Matenda. He thought carefully, suddenly awakened to something, and turned his head to look at that female comrade, a few days ago. Wasn't there someone who came over to report that their children might have been tricked into going to the 6th district? Right, at that time, I was still the one who personally received them. Those parents were anxious to death but it was later confirmed that it was just a hoax, and that their children had run off to the 6th district to become mercenaries. Oh wait, this, this female inspector, speaking herself suddenly froze. She looked at the other two colleagues with a face full of consternation. It can't be, that those college students are the mercenaries mentioned inside the news this time, right? Her words made Matenga and the other colleague also feel that there was something strange going on. Inside the news it says, that those few mercenaries are all young people and look like college students. They are three men. No, it's four men and three women. Captain, this seems to fit perfectly with what those parents who came to report the case a few days ago said. Those children who were thought to be missing at that time also happened to be three girls and four boys. The henchman thought back on this matter and realized at the first moment that the mysterious group of mercenaries that were on a mission in the 6th district were most likely the ones they had previously tried to find. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, Please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. What was their name again? Ma Tainda realized that the problem was not simple. He hurriedly turned his head to the female inspector and inquired. The female inspector, on the other hand, skillfully opened the website, searched and logged into the mercenary information registration network to inquire. Those few people were indeed registered as mercenaries. Their names are Shen Feng, Liang Chaoshu, Yuan Weihong, Yang Lu, Zhang Yanjia as well as Sun Bin and Wang Shicheng. It is indeed a total of seven people, and it exactly matches the description of three women and four men in the news. At that time when we learned of this news, we thought they were just playing house on a whim, but now it looks like, they turned out to be so powerful? How did this happen? It's incredible. This kind of strength, already belongs to the level of professional mercenaries, right? The female inspector came out with continuous marvels while continuously reporting the personal information of Shin Feng and the others on the mercenary information registration website. Left behind. To the captain of the inspector, Ma Tangda, they were the violent authorities of the 9th district, and they themselves possessed the power to inquire about such relevant information. However, it was absolutely impossible for ordinary people to access the mercenary information of Shin Feng and the others. The mercenary information registration network would also not give them the authority to make such inquiries. After listening to his own men's return, this time, Ma Tangda was not calm anymore. He hurriedly stood up, walked over from his seat to the female inspector's computer and personally checked it. After some confirmation, it was found that indeed, 
several of Xin Feng's men had registered as mercenaries. The record on the registration time showed that they completed the registration before traveling to the 6th district, and just after registering as mercenaries in the 9th district, they immediately moved to leave for the 6th district. Did the news say when those victims were rescued? Matenda hadn't scrutinized the contents of those news reports just now. It was just a matter of roughly scanning a few times and extracting a portion of the key information. At this moment, he hurriedly turned his head to look at his other subordinate. That subordinate immediately replied, It's what happened in the past two days. The timing is also exactly right. Captain, he knew that Ma Tengda was asking for this information because he wanted to further confirm whether the mysterious mercenary team from the 9th district that was operating in the 6th district was Xin Feng's group or not. The time is right. The male and female genders and the number of members are also right. It looks like it's 8 or 9 not far off. However, we still need to find a way to confirm the confirmation further. Ma Tenda shook his head and muttered to himself, Captain, should we send someone to contact them? I still have the contact information of those people here. I just don't know if I can make a call. That female patrolman sniffed and immediately proposed. There's no need to. First, Ma Tengda shook his head. You contact contact those few parents who reported the case. First explore their mouth to see if they know these situations. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Such a powerful mercenary has appeared in the 9th district and it's still a group of young people. Great. The waves of the Yangtze River push forward the waves of the past, but, the 6th district is a menacing one. The situation is very complicated, far beyond the imagination of ordinary people. I'm afraid that they've just solved a group of criminals and are in a dangerous situation. Matenda had just said that there was no way to finally determine that the group of mercenaries was Xin Feng and his group. Now, he himself couldn't help but worry for Xin Feng and the others first while he was overjoyed. The topics of Hero of the Ninth District and Light of the Ninth District continued to attract great attention and repercussions on the internet. The TV news was also repeatedly reporting on related matters. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can be read normally. Countless melon eaters were speculating about the mercenaries that were carrying out a mission in the 6th district, and just what kind of god they were. And naturally, the news was also very quick reaching the ears of the parents and relatives of Xin Feng and several of his team members. It was the same as the inspectors of the future area patrol division. After learning this information, the several parents, quite naturally, corresponded the identities, numbers, and genders of those mercenaries reported on the network with their own sons and daughters. Three females and four males, exactly seven people, the same number as the children in our family. The genders all match up as well. All that's left is to confirm their names. If we have a photo, we can directly determine if those mercenaries are our sons and daughters. Inside the temporary contact group, a parent shared the most popular report on the internet and sent a long string of messages to the others. It was hard to hide the excitement inside between the lines. Soon, the group was buzzing inside. Before, Xiaofeng and the others said that they went to work as mercenaries in the 6th district. Everyone still remembers this matter, right? I remember. At that time I even said that they were joking. Could it be that our children are really that capable? If that's true, then I'm proud of my child. He's giving honor to the 9th district. It's also saving our fellow countrymen who are suffering. Those swindlers and kidnappers are so hateful, so vicious, but that's too dangerous, isn't it? Those criminals have guns and weapons, and they'll do anything if our children were to fight them. Wouldn't that be too dangerous? I just watched the news. I heard that the seven of them personally eliminated a gang of at least 60 people. They personally saved over a hundred victims. That's awesome. It's awesome. So proud. Aren't you all worried about the children's safety? They're in a very dangerous situation now. Many criminal organizations in the 6th district are in collusion with the local authorities. You wouldn't be unaware of this situation, would you? The parent group was very lively. Almost every parent put down the work at hand and started discussing. There were parents that were proud of their sons or daughters, thinking that by doing so, they were punishing the evil, punishing those vicious criminals, saving fellow victims of the 9th district, and giving glory to the 9th district. Some parents, however, couldn't help but worry after seeing this information. The 6th district was notoriously dangerous, not to mention that their children were directly fighting against those vicious, inhumane criminals. They really couldn't imagine what would happen if something unexpected happened. How could they be happy in such a situation? They were worried to death. Let's not just speculate here. Let's just call and ask about it. Won't we know? Yeah, let's call the kids and ask them what's going on. Inside the group, the parents have some combined. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can be read normally. 
Immediately, some people began to take action, took out their cell phones and began to make calls. Shen Feng, with his team members, had just arrived at the exclusive training area demarcated by the system at this time. This place had the special shelter of the system, and ordinary people wouldn't be able to discover any abnormalities here, so they were absolutely safe here. Apart from the fact that the location was a bit remote and it wasn't very convenient no matter what they ate, wore or stayed in. In fact, this place was far more suitable as a base camp than a hotel. Having just arrived here, Shin Feng and his group were about to check the latest batch of material supplies. At this time, however, Shin Feng's cell phone rang. He took out his phone and realized that it was a call from his own mother. There was currently no need to shield his relatives from phone harassment for the time being. So Shin Feng subconsciously answered the call. Hey, mom, what's up? Little Feng, is it really you? On the other end of the phone, Shen Feng's mother inquired somewhat incredulously. Right now, Shen Feng and his teammates were still unaware that on the network of the 9th district as well as in the news media, the speculation about their reports had long been overwhelming. Hearing such a strange question from his own mother, Shen Feng replied suspiciously, Yeah, it's me. What happened? Little Feng, where are you guys now? Is it safe or not? Safe ah. What's going on? Mom? No. We saw on the news that you guys went to the 6th district as mercenaries and rescued over a hundred kidnapped people. I heard that you guys fought valiantly, wiped out dozens of criminals, and crushed a local crime syndicate. Is there such a thing? Little Fong, tell mom honestly, what exactly did you guys run off to the 6th district to do? It can't be that you're doing something illegal and criminal, right? Shen Feng's mother, at this time, threw out a series of questions. Not to mention the fact that the questions she asked afterward smacked a bit of excessive worry. Shin Feng was stunned for a moment when he heard it said that the actions of himself and his teammates had actually been exposed on the news. Mom, what are you kidding? Our actions were very secretive. How could they be known? How would the news media know what we did? But just after the words were said, Shin Feng realized. He subconsciously locked eyes with a few team members who had stunned gazes and showed inquiring eyes towards him. It seems like it should be those rescued victims. Sure enough, at this time, on the other end of the phone, his mother added, You say so? Those seven mercenaries, really are you guys? Air, mom, this problem will be explained to you later. You first answer me, how did the news media know about us? Shin Feng still asked rhetorically. At this time, some of the team members had already started to use their cell phones to check the relevant news reports online. And Shin Feng's mother also answered. I heard that it was some victims who escaped back from the 6th district who personally showed up and said that seven young mercenaries saved them in the 6th district. And people also said that you guys are three women and four men. So when we thought about it, don't the seven of you happen to be three women and four men? One guess is you guys. Little Fong, you guys really went to become mercenaries? It's so dangerous. Don't mess around anymore. Don't let mom and dad worry. Okay? Be careful and safe yourself. Hurry back if you're okay and don't go on any more missions. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Shen Feng's mother. Learning that it was really her son who rescued those victims, was happy but also more worried. At this moment, while she was nagging and bugging, the cell phones of Liang Chashu, Yang Lu, Zhang Nanjia and the others were also ringing. The cell phones of the team members had calls coming in one after another. And of course, it was their parents and relatives calling them. Xin Feng saw that every single one of the team members turned around and went to answer the calls. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, Please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. And listening to what they said, it basically confirmed their judgment that everyone was now reporting the current situation to their families. While comforting their worried parents and relatives, they were also listening to their rambling instructions. It was a feeling that was very warm. Because there were always people who cared about them. Shin Feng came back to his senses from his short-lived state of wandering. And his mother's earnestly admonishing voice was still coming from the other end of the phone. Little Feng ah, listen to your mom and hurry back. Don't be a mercenary, how dangerous. The teachers and leaders of the school also already know about this matter. Everyone is very concerned about you and worried about your safety. That said, did you really not cheat mom? Did you guys really do that thing? It was you guys who rescued those victims? Saying this, she herself became a bit disbelieving again. Repeatedly, she asked Shin Feng to confirm the situation. For a while, Shin Feng cried and laughed. He considered many, many things at this moment. Those rescued victims had gone so far as to blow up these experiences after going back to the 9th district, and had inadvertently revealed the mercenary identities of a group of them. This led to someone in the 9th district inferring that those mercenaries were them through the number, gender, age, and other characteristics. This problem could be big or small. 
On a smaller scale now parents, teachers at the school, and melon eaters from all walks of life were concerned about this matter. It had caused quite a stir on the internet and even in real life. This was not necessarily a good thing for Shin Feng and the others. The good thing was that their reputation was up. And in the future, there would definitely be more mercenary commissions given to them. The bounty or the cost of overcoming the situation would definitely be increasing. More importantly, they could grow through constant real combat and constant missions. And Shin Feng would continue to receive more benefits from the system. However, the bad side was also obvious. The 9th district was vast. And there were many scum and scum mixed among the people within. This matter had now gotten so big that it had gotten the attention of the entire 9th district up and down. You could hardly say that the personal information of Shin Feng and the others would not return to be looked up by people with ulterior motives. For example, some criminals who were active in the 6th district were themselves from the 9th district. Because of various reasons, they had left the 9th district and sneaked into the 6th district to engage in illegal and criminal activities. If they knew that a group of mercenaries from the 9th district were operating in the 6th district and specializing in targeting local criminals, specializing in rescuing those deceived and kidnapped victims, then, imagine how these criminals would treat Chin Fong? That's not even the most important thing. The most important thing was whether it was possible for them, after inquiring about information related to Chin Fong and the others, to further follow the trail to find out about other people related to Chin Fong and his teammates? For example, Chin Fong and the others' parents, relatives and friends, etc., and then go after these people? In all things, one should not be afraid of the unexpected. There's another old saying, an open gun is easy to dodge, but a hidden arrow is hard to prevent. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. In the darkness of the enemy, facing the vicious and heartless criminals, no one can guarantee that accidents will not happen. This was also an important reason why some sensitive professionals engaged in anti-narcotics and anti-terrorism work had to keep their identities strictly confidential. Countless thoughts flashed through Shin Feng's mind one by one. In total, it was just a second or two. And at this time, Shin Feng's mother on the other end of the phone was still nagging. Little phone, little phone, why aren't you talking? Is the signal bad? Not getting a response from Shin Feng, the caller couldn't help but inquire. No, I'm listening to you. Shin Feng came back to his senses and hurriedly responded. Mom, you don't have to worry. We can take care of ourselves. You guys also shouldn't go around spreading the word about us being in the 6th district. Remember to keep it a secret. This is the only way to be responsible for our safety. And at the same time, you are also protecting yourselves. Mom did you hear what I said clearly? Shin Feng didn't choose to hide the euphemism, but directly told his mother what she should do and what she shouldn't do at such a time. Talking to her clearly about the pros and cons of it would allow them to be more careful and cautious to avoid not so good situations. On the other end of the phone, Lin Miaoyun who heard Shin Feng's words froze for a moment. Soon she understood what Shin Feng's reminder meant and her face changed slightly. Little Feng, I know, you guys better hurry back, okay? Just think of it as mom begging you, okay? Come back, don't linger in the 6th district anymore. Realizing that Shin Feng and the others had become mercenaries and offended the criminals was exposed and now there was a possible threat to their own safety. Lin Miaoyun's heart was mixed and she became even more worried. Mom, we'll go back after we settle some matters at hand. Don't worry about it. In short, you and dad taking care of yourselves is the biggest help to me. I still have things to do, so I'll hang up first ah. Bye. Shin Feng didn't want to continue listening to Lin Miaoyun's ramblings and hung up after finding a reason. He looked up at the rest of the team and realized that everyone was still chatting with their families. Judging from everyone's tone, demeanor, and the content of the conversation. It was easy to tell what they were talking about, the parents were basically saying the same thing. It was nothing more than advising them to pay attention to safety, telling them not to run around and not to continue to provoke criminals, and to hurry back to the 9th district and so on. Shin Feng waited beside him for a while, bored, picked up his phone and opened a certain question and answer social software to search. Sure enough, he saw that the first place on the hot list was the post about those rescued survivors the cruel and dangerous experience they encountered in the 6th district, and the heat was tens of millions, several times higher than the second place current affairs news. Looking at this post, Shin Feng cried and laughed, casually clicked in to take a look, browsed down and found that it was really the victims they had saved before, returning to the 9th district to personally tell their stories. Not only is the content of the posters true and detailed, the comments section is a lot of victims who are now speaking out, also with their own perspective recounting their various experiences of escape from death. Some of the victims were rescued by Shin Feng and others, because they all mentioned three women and four men, seven mercenaries, the hero of the 9th district and other descriptions. 
There were also survivors who had been rescued by other forces or who had escaped through their own efforts, and they were also giving their accounts. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or read mode to read normally. It was these victims, together with a group of watchful eaters, together, they pushed the heat of the post to the peak. At first, when Shin Feng viewed the content of the post, his face still wore a smiley expression. The demeanor looked a bit relaxed, even guffawing. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. However, the more he looked at him, the more alarmed he became, the more worried he felt in his heart, and a frown gradually rose on his brow. Because there were some victims who might have gotten high on their own words, they told everything, including all sorts of details about being rescued, even the location of their accident, and so on. They didn't even realize what it really meant to directly tell the process of how they were kidnapped and rescued by Shin Fong and the others in the 6th district like this, as well as the exact time and place where it happened. This meant that if there really were enemies who had also paid attention to the relevant hotspots and to the content of the news, then, it was very likely that they could easily lock onto Shin Fong and his group. This would cause Shin Fong and his teammates, tremendous trouble. Shin Fong scratched his head and looked up at the rest of his teammates, who were all still making phone kanji. Cough cough. Shin Feng gently coughed twice, reminding them not to talk too much, and walked towards Liang Chaoshu. At this time, the latter was talking to his father on the phone, and when he saw Shin Feng walking over, Liang Chaoshu immediately revealed a very helpless expression and spread his hands, pointing to his cell phone. Shin Feng, on the other hand, held up his cell phone and pointed to the key information on the post above, reminding Liang Chaoshu and the others, telling them that it was possible that their side had been exposed to the attention of the enemy. Let them go and remind their parents and family members as much as possible to pay attention to safety when going in and out in the near future. Liang Chaoshu and Shin Feng had known each other since elementary school, and the two of them could not be said to have a tacit understanding, but simply had a telepathic understanding. At this moment, he immediately understood Shin Feng's hints, and immediately changed his mind and began to urge his parents to pay attention to safety and take care of themselves and so on. And next to him, Zhang Nenjia, Yang Lu, Wang Shiqian, Sun Bin, and Yuan Weihong several people, similarly also saw Shen Feng's hint to Liang Chaoshu, and had heard what Liang Chaoshu had said to his parents. These few members of the team, immediately understood and immediately also urged their family members. After another moment, they finally finished talking to their families on the phone, and the six team members looked at Shen Feng in unison. Squad leader, we are, really famous now. Sun Bin looked at Shen Feng and said with an odd expression, Yes, I didn't expect that we would be famous in this way and it looks like this matter is still quite a big deal in the 9th district. Wang Shiqiang also couldn't help but lament. What do you mean it's quite a big deal? You guys didn't read the news yourselves? Didn't you see the hotspot list on the social media platform? Now the 9th district's large and small media and social media platforms are all discussing our matter. I really wondered. Those who were rescued, how come they have so many mouths? Liang Chaoshu couldn't help but spit it out. There was really no way for him not to talk about this, because Shen Feng's hint just now was already obvious. It's possible that our identities will be exposed as a result of this, and we may even be targeted by the enemy. I'm really worried about the safety of my family now. Yang Lu merely frowned, her previous happy and joyful feelings dissipating. The criminals in the 6th district were inhuman. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. They could do anything. No, I have to call my mom again and tell her to be more careful lately. Yuan Weihong said as he took out his cell phone again and dialed. I'll also remind my mom and dad again so that they don't continue to go around talking nonsense. Zhang Yanjia immediately followed suit, using her cell phone to send a message to her own parents, reminding them to never be loudmouthed and to stop going around proclaiming about them being mercenaries. Yeah, I'm afraid, the parents don't know about our plight and situation, and think that they can take these things and go around bragging about them, saying them to everyone, then it's going to take an old man's life. Wang Shixiang shook his head helplessly, hearing everyone say this, Shen Feng also silently took out his cell phone and continued to send messages to his parents to go remind them. At this moment, in the middle of the 9th district, the incident was still continuing to ferment. However, the parents and relatives of Shen Feng and his team members were no longer as disoriented as they were at the beginning. They had only just talked to their children on the phone and learned about the truest situation and directly confirmed that Shen Feng and his team members were the mysterious group of mercenaries from the 9th district as mentioned in the news. It was confirmed that it was Shen Feng and the others who had rescued more than a hundred victims. At this moment, the parents whose emotions had calmed down began to feel proud of their sons and daughters. Looking at the cell phone, 
that a tweet used the descriptions of hero of the 9th district, light of the 9th district and so on, to evaluate their sons and daughters, the mood of these parents, incomparable comfort, in the chat group, everyone was exchanging information with each other, everyone, just now my little phone reminded me that we should not publicize them everywhere to prevent the enemy from targeting them or targeting us as family members, my family Lulu said the same thing, repeatedly urging me not to go spreading rumors about them, much less reveal their true identity to anyone, and not to admit that it's them even if someone has already guessed that it is them, it seems that the fermentation of this matter has brought them considerable influence, so in order to avoid our children from getting into trouble and danger, we'd better do what they said, can't we also say it honestly if someone from the officials comes to ask about it, someone inside the group suddenly mentioned this question, this was because she had just received a call from the official patrol division, saying that there were questions to be asked of them regarding their own children, asking them to go over and cooperate. My child said that even if it's the official people who come to question them, they absolutely can't reveal half of the information, even if they have also guessed the answer, they can't admit it. Anyway, it's just absolutely confidential. A parent immediately responded. The other parents, too, followed up in parts, all expressing their attitudes. Soon these parents made a common agreement that no matter what, they could not reveal to the outside world the secret that their sons and daughters were on mercenary missions in the 6th district. No matter what, it was a flat out no. And it was just after everyone had just finished their discussion. Sure enough, the inspector general's department's phone call came back to them. Hello, this is the future area patrol division. We saw the relevant news reports on the internet and guessed that the seven mercenaries might be one of your children. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Could you please come over and cooperate? We have some questions we want to ask you. This isn't from our patrol division. It's from higher up. The higher ups have noticed this matter and are interested in the light of the 9th district. The person from the patrol and arrest division. On the phone, followed the parents' instructions with the intention of getting them to go over and cooperate with the inquiry. At this point, the parents listened to the voice inside the phone and thought about the decision they had discussed earlier whether it is for the privacy of the children or not, or for their own safety. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. No matter what, he could not admit that the mysterious mercenaries reported on the network were Shin Fong and his group. They promised with their mouths that they would make time to go over there. When they hung up the phone, they immediately discussed it again inside the group. And everyone still unanimously decided to firmly deny everything. You guys. Remember to delete the chat records inside the cell phone. Acting, we have to do it in the end. Do not give our boys and girls to get into trouble. That's right, we must delete the relevant chat logs, so as not to cause unnecessary trouble for the boys and ourselves. I've already deleted it, and this one will be deleted later too. These parents are all chicken thieves. After some deliberation, everyone deleted the secret from their cell phones about their children being the mercenaries who had crushed a crime syndicate in the 6th district and rescued hundreds of victims. Only after that did everyone plan to head to the patrol division one after another to cooperate with their questioning. But before departing, suddenly a parent thought of something. I suddenly remembered a question. Didn't we commission the mercenaries of the 6th district to look for our children? Now that our children are mercenaries themselves, how is this going to work? This parent, inside the group, suddenly inquired. The other parents who saw the message frowned. Mercenaries and mercenaries meet. They won't fight, right? A parent asked out of the blue. More than fighting, I'm more worried about other issues. Little Fong and the others carried out a mission in the 6th district. Combating a group of criminals and rescuing so many victims, they must have offended quite a few criminal organizations by now. The local situation is so complicated, there's no telling what dangers they'll face. What if those mercenaries are going to go after them and they don't know about it yet? There was another parent that voiced out his worries. His words immediately messed up the emotions of the other parents as well. Everyone began to worry. Mercenaries were both mysterious and very powerful to them, belonging to the category of violent people with powerful force in their hands. Legend had it that there were many mercenaries who would do any mission for money. It was not unheard of for there to be examples of eating from both ends. Thinking about this parents became even more worried. Can we just cancel the mission? It is possible to cancel a commission, right? Someone inquired. We can't. The money has already been paid to the local mercenary management association. Even if we cancel the mission unilaterally now, they won't return the money. Then should we? Should we contact Little Fong and the others to remind them? It's best to talk to them. Telling them about the situation will give them a bottom. After some discussion, the parents quickly made a decision. Everyone started to call Shin Fong and his team members. Once again, right, 
Remember to delete our call records in a while as well. Someone reminded this in the group. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can be read normally. In the 6th district, at this moment, Shin Feng and the others had just ended their call with the parents and had urged them to never, ever reveal the news to the outside world. Don't tell anyone outside that they were mercenaries on a mission in the 6th district. Shin Feng led a few team members and arrived in the middle of the exclusive training area. He was about to check the latest rewards given by the system and see what the material supplies were all about. However, just at this time, the parents called them again. Hey, mom, what's wrong? Shin Feng decisively answered the call. With such an uncontrollable and unexpected situation occurring, they were now helpless. Everyone had become cautious, just afraid that something unexpected would happen to their family members. The enemy might not be able to threaten them, but it could threaten their parents and relatives. Ah, little Feng, let me tell you something. You guys have to be careful. Mother Lin Miaoyun reminded Shin Feng in a serious tone. Hearing this, Shin Feng's heart was slightly flabbergasted, and he hurriedly asked after her. What's wrong? It's like this. Weren't we worried about your safety in the 6th district? Contacting you guys also can't get in touch with. So, after a group of us parents discussed it, we decided to hire mercenaries to look for your whereabouts. Lin Miaoyun told Shin Feng what had happened before. One by one. In its original form. Hearing that she was talking about this matter and not some unforeseen situation that happened inside the family, Shin Feng was more or less relieved. That mercenary commission mission was actually something that Shin Feng and the others had picked up on their own by mistake. Shin Feng secretly felt funny in his heart, but he didn't tell his mother about this matter for the time being, intending to give them a surprise when it was time to go back. Mom, we know about this matter. You don't have to worry. We can really take care of ourselves. On the contrary, it's you guys. You must remember what I told you before. You must remember that no matter who questions you, you must never admit that those mercenaries reported on the internet are us, even if the other party is an official. Absolutely, absolutely don't admit. It's, Shin Feng took this opportunity to once again exhort his mother. Lin Miaoyu nodded solemnly. We know the seriousness of the matter. Little Feng, your father and I are preparing to head to the patrol division. And just now, someone from there called, saying that the officials have noticed your matter, and intend to ask us some questions. So let's go over there and cooperate. But don't worry about it. We've discussed it with the other parents. No matter what we will absolutely not disclose your news to the outside world. Lin Miaoyun's words made Shin Feng's heart stir. It seemed that his previous worries were indeed not superfluous. Since even the officials of the 9th district had already noticed this information. There must be other criminals behind the mixed network of dragons and snakes who had also noticed the relevant content. Perhaps, trouble was going to come one after another in the future. However. There was no point in worrying about this now. Things had already happened after all. It could only be said that this time the operation must be careful and careful again. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or read mode can be read normally. Learning a lesson. We can't let similar situations continue to happen. Shin Feng chatted with his own mother. Lin Yun, For a while longer before hanging up the phone amidst a wave of worry. He looked up towards the front and realized that the other team members had also ended their calls with their parents. Everyone looked over towards Shin Feng. Seven people. Seven pairs of eyes stared at each other. And suddenly they all hooted and laughed at each other tacitly. The reason for everyone's unspoken. Unanimous laughter was of course because of the phone call just now. The parents were still unaware that it was they themselves who had taken up the mercenary commissioned mission. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled. Please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Calling over just now to inform them of this matter made every member of the team feel very joyful. And the layer of gloom that had shrouded everyone's hearts was more or less washed away quite a bit. I think we just now should directly tell the moms and dads that we are actually the mercenaries of those mercenaries who took the commission mission they released. After the sighs, Yang Lu shook her head bitterly with some guilt. Originally, her parents were already worried enough. And now that they were still kept in the dark. As a daughter it was really a bit unbearable to tease her parents like this. However, Liang Chao Shu had a different view. He looked at Yang Lu and laughed, don't worry, our mom and dad are not the kind of fragile people. When the time comes we go back, just give them a surprise, cut the crap, let's go over and check our goods first. After that, prepare to launch the operation. It's imperative to get rid of those enemies as soon as possible. Shin Feng didn't want to waste time and seriously reminded each member of the team. He now had a hidden worry within him because those victims went back to break the news after being rescued. The 9th district was now being blown sky high by all sorts of large and small media outlets, individual granny masters, and even the victims' own personal accounts. You know, 
In today's information-rich, technologically advanced society, every district in the world can communicate instantly. The things that happened in the ninth district, those big and small news, would have countless pairs of eyes from the outside world staring at them every day. Some of them were from the officials of other districts. Some of them were from some bad elements with ulterior motives. For something like today's sensationalization of the entire society, the criminals of the 6th district would inevitably be the first to pay attention to it as well. Originally, those criminals from the Odessa company had already known in advance that Chin Fong and the others would go to deal with them. Now if they saw these news again, combined with the intelligence they had in their hands, guess what? Those criminals, would they or would they not utilize their ability of association and combine the information from both sides, thus surmising the true identity of Shin Fong and the others? And if, through this information, they really guessed the identity of Shin Fong and the others and found the home addresses of Shin Fong and his team members, then, what were the consequences? So Shin Fong thought that it was necessary to solve the enemy as soon as possible before those bad things happened. Seeing that Shin Fang's expression was rather serious, the team members also put away their smiles and followed him towards the wide lobby on the first floor of the rotten building. There, the floor was covered with a tarp for draining water. Piled up on the tarpaulin were one after another four square boxes that were also covered with water draining tarpaulins. The team was familiar with these, these were their supply crates. Squad leader, I'm a little curious now, wanting to know through what channel you actually ordered these things. Liang Chaoshu excitedly rushed over to lift the waterproof tarp and saw at least dozens of boxes, large and small. He opened one of them and found that inside was a box of special canned goods. This kind of instant food products produced to adapt to field combat were all professionally prepared to deal with various combat environments. However, they were not sold to the public and were only supplied to some specific troops in various regions around the globe. So ordinary people could not buy them. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. What you should know will naturally be told to you. Shen Feng blankly glanced at Liang Chaoshu. Upon hearing this, Sun Bin was also a bit curious, squad leader. We're all comrades who have experienced life and death in times of trouble. Your old man still doesn't trust us ah? Less bullshit. Shen Feng similarly blanked him and walked over to open the biggest box. Inside was a bunch of weapons and equipment. There were submachine guns, sniper rifles, heavy machine guns, rocket launchers, and so on. In addition, the latest top-of-the-line bulletproof vests were also there. In addition there were grenades, flashbangs, smoke grenades and other auxiliary combat weapons. In addition there is also a circle set of combat clothing and combat boots. Yang Lu previously longed for, those technological equipment is also there. Drones, night vision, infrared thermal imaging, robot dogs, scout bees. These equipment were all brand new. The rest is various types of ammunition. There were also some single combat rations and so on. Wow, this sniper rifle. I remember seeing it online before. It sells for a lot of money. Squad leader you are so big. Uncle and aunt no? Wang Shichang saw in the box that a brand new sniper rifle. His eyes looked straight. It was more stable than the one he was currently using in his hand. High shooting accuracy, long shooting distance, and high shooting power. Yet the weight was reduced due to the new composite material used to build it. These were its comprehensive features. As a professional sniper, Wang Shichang certainly loved this weapon. Hey, hey. I like this. Liang Chaoshu, who was a raider and machine gunner, directly carried a huge heavy machine gun at this moment. With two rows of caliber bullets, it weighed at least a dozen pounds, and it was just hung on Liang Chaoshu's body. This kid also didn't know where to pull out a pair of sunglasses and put them on himself. Look guys, this look of mine, does it look like the Terminator? He deliberately asked in a low voice. Not like that, I look at you more like a dilettante. Zhang Ninja shook his head. Go go go, you're the douchebag. Don't know how to appreciate it. Squad leader. This weapon costs quite a bit of money, right? Liang Chaoshu took off his sunglasses and looked at Shin Feng. Shin Feng did not respond to the other party's question, but smiled and handed a light assault rifle to the other party. And, with a half-joking smile, he said, the BRPM-16 heavy machine gun, paired with the A-19 RPG rocket launcher, can provide the team with strong fire support. However, this outfit is less than 60 to 70 kilograms. Are you sure you can still run with it on your back? It's still this that suits you best. Why are you looking down on me? Class monitor. You really don't say. I'm now carrying this line of work. As if it doesn't have any big feeling. It's like. I've grown a lot more in these few days. I've gotten stronger. Liang Chaoshu surveyed his own body. And muttered to himself in a generally odd manner. The others nodded their heads up when they heard this. Yeah. When you say it like that. I've actually always had this feeling as well. As if my physical qualities are getting stronger every moment. 
If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Strange. How many pounds is this gun? Squad leader? Zhang Ninja carried a sniper rifle and waited in his hand a few times, with a look of weightlessness. The other team members, at this moment, also expressed that they did have the feeling of growing stronger all the time. The most intuitive experience was their own strength, which seemed to have really gotten bigger. They were puzzled in their hearts. And only Shen Feng knew clearly in his heart that this was the effect brought about by the system's special enchantment. One by one, you all, eat five pounds of rice and ten pounds of meat for every meal. If you still don't grow stronger like this, it's called eating without recognizing it. Shen Feng teased. Shen Feng was laughing. At this moment, Zhang Ninja suddenly handed over a small backpack. Squad leader, this is for you. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. What is it? Shen Feng curiously looked at the bag that the other party handed over, while Zhang Ninja directly unzipped the zipper, only to see that inside were piles of banknotes. It was one of the spoils of war that they had previously annihilated those criminals and scavenged from their strongholds. No, it should be said that it was the physical transcendence fee. What does it mean? Looking at Zhang Nianjia handing these banknotes to himself, Shen Feng suspiciously looked up towards the other party's eyes. Squad leader, you personally trained us and also bought us so many weapons and equipment. It cost a lot of money, right? We can't let you pay for this alone. So these are for you, Zhang Nianjia explained. Upon hearing this, the other team members also took all those banknotes in their respective hands and handed them over to Shen Feng. However, Shen Feng looked at everyone's movements, but directly shook his head and refused. These are your own dividends, what are you giving me for? Go go go, take it away, don't bother me. Shen Feng waved his hand repeatedly, rejecting the team member's good intentions. He thought to himself that the rewards given by the system has nothing to do with me. Shen, it doesn't hurt to take this money. Butler is right, we can't let your old man spend this money alone. That's right, we're all on the same team. We share the same blessings and difficulties. We can't let the squad leader pay for everyone's equipment by himself. Squad leader, don't reject us ah, let's consider this money as our investment. We're purchasing more powerful weapons and equipment, also for the purpose of better accomplishing the mission. When we accomplish more missions in the future, this money will still come back to us. He he he. Seeing that Shen Feng actually refused, everyone said one thing to you and one thing to me. Every member of the team insisted on giving Shen Feng money. At this time, Yang Lu also stood out and said to Shen Feng seriously, it's not easy for uncles and aunts to earn money. Class president, just take this money. Seeing everyone's generous intentions, Shen Feng had no choice but to agree. You guys are trying to tire me out, aren't you? If I'm allowed to carry so much money on my back alone, do I still need to wear combat clothes and carry weapons? Shen Feng rolled his eyes without any good humor. It was only when they heard his words that the team members came back to their senses, one by one revealing awkward smiles. All right, squad leader. I'll keep this money for you first, and then when we find an opportunity, go save it up and I'll transfer it to you. That's right squad leader. I'll also keep it for you first. Soon everyone put the money back again. Looking at these team members who were full of sincerity, Shen Feng felt very pleased inside. In many mercenary teams, conflicts often occurred because of the uneven distribution of benefits, but his own team obviously did not have such concerns. Money was important to the team members, but it was far less important than the friendship between them. Shen Feng picked up a high-precision sniper of the latest model and threw it to Wang Shichang. It will be yours from now on. These weapons and equipment, they are all the latest. The ones we used before are already a bit worn out. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. A mercenary's weapon is their second life. We must make sure that our weapons are stable and reliable. Change into new equipment. Everyone hurry. Rest in place for a while afterward. Then we'll start simple training. Shin Feng said, already starting to change himself into a new body armor. This kind of life-preserving equipment was especially important. In the previous battle, the team members were basically uninjured though. However, the body armor was damaged. Especially Liang Chaoshu's bulletproof vest. The kid had taken several bullets in a row and had to be replaced with a new one. Training? Squad leader? Why do we still need to train? Didn't we say we're going straight to fuck the criminals? Liang Chaoshu froze for a moment and couldn't help but ask curiously. The other team members, too, were looking at Shin Feng suspiciously as they were changing themselves into new equipment. New equipment needs to be broken in and familiarized. As I said, a good mercenary must do whatever weapon is in his hands to ensure that it can function stably and reliably. 
You guys don't have the means to master that skill for now, so we need to do some acclimatization training. The other thing is that with the big battle coming up, we have to make sure that we're in the best shape possible. You've all seen the strength of the enemy, they have the help of powerful veteran mercenaries, plus they must have mastered a lot of powerful equipment themselves. We must become stronger in order to better clean up after them. Training, it's essential, and it's also the easiest and most direct way to improve your fighting ability. Of course Shin Fong wouldn't tell the team members. Training in the midst of an exclusive training ground could achieve a truly twice the result with half the effort. Normally when performing missions, the system enhancement would also help the team members become stronger continuously bit by bit. However, the effect of that was far less obvious than directly participating in the training. However, just after Shin Fong had finished speaking, there was a sudden bang. Liang Chashu held up Wang Zhejiang's sniper rifle, aimed at a banana tree about 200 meters away, and directly fired a shot. What are you doing? The sudden gunshot caused Qin Feng to frown and look at Liang Chaoshu in dismay. Squad leader, look, Liang Chaoshu raised his chin at the distance, somewhat smugly, only to see that the banana tree, 200 meters away, was cut off by the sniper rifle's bullet. We're, now, pretty good, squad leader, let's dispense with the training, right? It's better to have actual battles to enhance our combat power. Of course that's what I think, Liang Chaoshu had a confident look. He was obviously a bit unimpressed with Xin Feng's training proposal. Upon hearing this, Sun Bin next to him also nodded. Squad leader, I also think that there is no need for us to waste time training. Before, all seven of us were able to easily take down a criminal gang of over 60 people, and we even successfully rescued over a hundred victims. What's so difficult about dealing with an Edessa company now? Yes squad leader, the main sniper, Wang Shichun, immediately followed suit and nodded. With my sniping skills, I can already basically hit a hundred shots, plus the technological equipment in the hands of the schoolteacher. When the time comes, she'll be responsible for providing reliable intelligence support, and will be responsible for getting down to business. Those enemies won't even know how they died. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. His words were likewise echoed by Yuan Weihong. At this time, Yuan Weihong, also looked at Xin Feng and spoke confidently. Squad leader, those mercenaries before, who claimed to be professional and powerful, weren't successfully ambushed by us just the same? I don't think there's any need for us to be presumptuous. In fact, we're already very strong. About half an hour ago, in the 6th region, the headquarters of the Edessa Corporation's campus, the second building's basement level, if you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, Please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Wang Sigeo was having a meeting here, discussing with a group of the company's executives about the recent competition with another criminal organization for territory and business. At this time, suddenly a figure hurriedly walked in low. Boss, you should take a look at this. The other party brought over a tablet and handed it to Wang Sigeo. Wang Sigeo glanced at it and his face instantly sank. He saw that on top of the tablet was a row of character information. All of them were the group of mercenaries that he had hired before, and it showed their vital signs monitoring. Now, all of the mercenaries' vital signals had gone offline. What this meant was self-evident. What is it? Wang Sigeo asked knowingly, looking up at the henchman. The henchman replied with trepidation. The mercenary squad that we sent out was taken out, all but wiped out. Hearing the exact answer, giving himself the exact same judgment just now. At once, Wang Sigeo's face sank on the spot. He gritted his teeth and gently clenched his fists. His mouth moved as if he was issuing a silent tirade. The henchman hurriedly explained again. However, we have also locked the exact location of those mercenaries. High altitude drones are scouting over them right now. And they took our people's equipment. The ones we installed locators on. Those boys, right now, haven't realized that they've been located. Hearing his men say that, Wang Sigeo's face still looked very gloomy and ugly. And didn't feel much happier for it. Evil Ghost and his Evil Ghost Squad are professional mercenaries who are little known in the world. Each member is a retired member of the special forces from all regions of the world, with rich combat experience and strength. What kind of opponent could have wiped them all out, without even sending a signal back to us? Wang Saigao sank his face and inquired word by word while his gaze swept over everyone in the room. Hearing his words, everyone present bowed their heads and fell silent. What does this show? It shows that the enemy is even trickier than we imagined. Next fucking door. When did such powerful mercenaries appear in the 9th district? Wang Sigeo was really puzzled, thinking about all the years he had done so many things that hurt the heavens and the earth, and that he had specifically targeted the people of the 9th district. He then had a bit of a hidden guess within his heart. 
It can't be possible that it's the official special forces of the 9th district disguised as mercenaries that came over to clean me up in person, right? Thinking like this in his heart, Wang Sigao launched himself even more fiercely. At this time, his men reminded, Boss, we can send more mercenaries to deal with them. If one team doesn't work, then send out two teams, four teams. Even if those brats are three-headed and six-armed, they will surely not be able to cope when facing so many of our combatants. The underling's proposal was not unfeasible. But right now, the fact that evil Ghost Wiglen and his squad had been completely wiped out had definitely spread throughout the mercenary world. Don't underestimate those guys' intelligence capabilities. Therefore, the other mercenaries would definitely be wary. To hire so many mercenaries to deal with seven enemies in this situation, the price wasn't low. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or the smooth reading mode to read normally. The cost was too high. The key may not be able to succeed. When the time comes, the basket is empty, and it is just a waste of one's money. At this thought, Wang Sigeo immediately raised his hand to interrupt his men's suggestion. It's not necessary, since we already know the enemy's location. Do we still need to go through that much trouble? He looked at his men and asked rhetorically. The henchman was a bit puzzled by the question and froze as he looked at Wang Sigeo. Stupid thing. Wang Sigeo inwardly cursed. His surface did not move and his face was majestic. Do you know what is meant by insufficient firepower phobia? Boss, do you mean, let's directly start bombing them? The men immediately understood. Wang Sigeo finally revealed a satisfied smile at his words and nodded. Get the helicopters out and send two squads there. Directly give them RPGs and use aerial artillery to clean them up. Let them experience what it's like to be bombed and crushed. I don't care what kind of marksman or sniper you are. In front of saturation strikes, all of them are paper tigers. Wang Sigeo snorted coldly a cruel light coming out of his eyes. He was able to grow to this point in just three or four years, from a local punk who was a fence, to this point today. What he relied on was not just impulsiveness and brute force. To be a gangster, you have to be smart. Against those enemies who roamed in the jungle and were good at guerrilla and ambush, the best way was not to send elite mercenaries to go gun to gun with them. Rather, use crushing weaponry to deal with them. Hey, Mr. Wung, wonderful. There's nothing that can't be solved by one round of RPG. If there is, then too. At this moment, after hearing Wang Sigeo's proposal, those executives present, one by one, revealed a knowing and cruel smile. Their men, on the other hand, immediately launched into action, and through the intercom, commanded the helicopters that were already waiting outside to depart, carrying RPGs, heavy machine guns and other weapons with strong firepower. They headed to the location where Shin Fong and the others had been located. The team members were incredibly confident basically believing that they didn't need to strengthen their training now. Shin Fong was going to criticize them a few times, telling them not to be complacent. However, at this moment, Yang Lu let out a surprised sound. Ha, huh, what's going on here? What's going on? The crowd gathered around. Squad leader, my equipment retrieved an equipment signal that doesn't belong to us. It should be a drone. It's using an L-band radio signal connection. I'll try to see if I can control it. Yang Lu said curiously and started trying to control the mysterious drone. How could there be a drone flying here? Yuan Weihong offered his guess. It's probably someone playing with a drone here. Yang Lu replied casually. No. Shin Feng frowned lightly and directly picked up a piece of binoculars, raising his head to observe the sky. Soon, he spotted the drone that was hovering just above their heads at a height of about 150 meters. While Shin Feng was observing, Sun Bin was also starting to rummage through the equipment box, trying to find another telescope to observe. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. What's wrong squad leader? What's wrong? Liang Chaoshu looked over curiously and walked towards Shin Feng. At this time, Sun Bin, however, rummaged out a black gadget from amongst the equipment box and looked at the others warily and asked, Look, what's this? Sun Bin's hand was holding a black colored thing that was blinking with red dots. This thing was unrecognizable to everyone and he turned around and his gaze fell on Shin Feng's face, who was also wondering in his heart at this time, if you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally, because this thing looked like some kind of technological equipment, but he didn't recognize it, the system gave too many rewards, it was impossible for him to know every single one of them, it would be hard to explain if he babbled something wrong for a while, this should be a locator that has been activated, Squad leader, this thing isn't ours. Yang Lu at this time, a glance saw that the thing in Sun Bin's hand was a locator. Hearing her say this everyone's faces changed. Not our locator? Monkey, 
Where did you take this thing out from? Right there ah. Just now after we annihilated that group of mercenaries. Their equipment. Sun Bin was dumbfounded as he said this. The other team members were also looking at each other with your eyes. Everyone woke up. This is the enemies. It's over. Squad leader. Our position has definitely been discovered by the enemy. Everyone woke up. And Shen Feng, at this time, had already seen through the binoculars that two helicopters were flying over from the distance in the sky. He clearly saw that above the helicopters, the heavily armed enemies had already locked onto their position. And one of them, even carried up an RPG rocket launcher aimed at this place. Damn. Get out of here. Hurry. Shin Feng shouted at all the team members. Immediately afterward, he took the lead and rushed out towards the flatland outside the rotten building. The other team members, hearing his warning, looked back at the sky and also saw the two helicopters that were faintly in the distance, flying against the light towards here. Without saying a word, they followed Shin Feng and ran outside. And it was at this time that a muffled sound of bang came from the sky. The RPG rockets, trailing a long tail flame, swirled in a spiral forward position, rapidly coming towards their position. Fortunately, the team members were able to move quickly and dodge in time. Rumble. After a violent explosion, the location where they had just been was directly blown out by the rocket into a large crater of about half a meter. The scene was scorched black and dusty. The strong smell of smoke and gunpowder even filled everyone's nostrils. Suddenly attacked. Every member of the team was in a state of shock. Damn him. Surprisingly, he used an RPG to bomb us. Let's see how I can get him killed. The adrenaline surge made Wang Shixiang come to temper. He tucked in his sniper rifle and was about to go upstairs to find a shooting position. The other team members, too, had only just gotten their breath back. Everyone was shocked and angry. But just at this time Shin Feng once again drank low. Be careful, it's coming again. Just as he finished speaking, sure enough, the enemy on top of the other helicopter fired another RPG rocket towards them. The rocket flew straight towards them. Shin Feng and his teammates had to dodge in a sorry state once again. Boom! There was another violent explosion. The violent shockwave came from behind them, accompanied by the dirt that was blown up, as well as the broken pieces of the shells. Shin Feng only felt that the moment the shockwave hit his body, he was simultaneously stabbed by something on his back as well as the calf position of his right leg. He realized that he was probably injured. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. But at a time like this, there was no free time to make an inspection. The enemy was still going on, using long-range firepower to launch a suppression attack on them. Not only were the RPG rockets being used, but the heavy machine guns and even the aerial guns carried by the helicopter gunships had actually begun to fire at the same time. If this were to be hit, absolutely needless to say, it was guaranteed that the entire population would be blown apart on the spot. Detour and break through. Wrap them up. Clairvoyant. You go and take out the drones in the sky. And the rocket launchers on the planes. The others follow me. After receiving two rockets in a row. And now being continuously swept by the enemy as if they were hurting rats. Using aerial cannons and heavy machine guns. Shin Feng could be said to be in a rage. His team members, of course, were all furious as well. Wang Shichang got the order and immediately brought Sun Bin along to find a sniper position to prepare for a counterattack. While the rest of the team followed Shin Feng and quickly detoured around back to their supply point. Everyone grabbed their weapons and immediately left from the other end of the rotten building. Circling around to the back of the building. Schoolboy. Provide their intelligence information. Shin Feng ordered Yang Lu. Later. It's done. Little B has already departed. Robot Dog is on its way. The drones are lifting off. Yang Lu rarely maintained absolute calmness and focus, methodically controlling the reconnaissance equipment in her hand, and began to scout the enemy before launching a counterattack. Soon, the drones in the sky, the robotic dogs on the ground, and the robotic bees in the air, among others, transmitted back synchronized images. Through these reconnaissance equipment, Shin Feng and the rest of the team members, each and every one of them clearly grasped the exact location of the enemy. The enemies on the two helicopters, after losing their target, started to come around the rotten building from the left and right ends respectively to the rear to search for traces of Shin Feng and the others. At this time, Shin Feng and his group had already passed through the rotten tail building and entered the jungle at the rear. Clairvoyant, did you take out their drone? Shin Feng was most worried about that thing. Because on that, the odds were that it was carrying a thermal imager or some other technological product. Otherwise, there was no reason for the enemy to be able to accurately lock onto their position. One should know that this was an exclusive training area protected by the system. The system had shielded the vast majority of the sound and light on the ground, as well as signal scrambling. Therefore, generally speaking outsiders approaching this place from the ground would not be able to discover their existence. 
it was naturally difficult for the locator to function as well. However, when the enemy came to scout from the air, it would be more troublesome. The system only did a certain degree of shielding. It didn't really create a physical boundary in situ that was used to isolate the outside world from the inside. Therefore, without taking out the enemy drones, their position would still be exposed to the enemy's vision. Bang! Not more than a few seconds after Shin Fong had just finished asking, a loud gunshot came from the middle of the rotten building. Squad leader, the drone is done. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Next it's the turn of their artillerymen. None of these guys can run away. Wang Shirchiang was confident. At this time, he had already found the best firing angle in the hidden area on the roof of the building, which not only allowed him to target the hostile drones in the air. Moreover, he was able to directly lock onto the enemy helicopter. Clairvoyance, directly hit the spiral wings of their helicopters. Shin Feng changed his mindset at this moment and suddenly ordered. The latest model sniper rifle in Wang Shirchung's hand now was a large caliber sniper rifle. In professional terms, it was called an anti-material sniper rifle. In addition to being used against the enemy, it can also be used against the enemy's equipment. Wang Shirchung also intended to do just that. Hearing Shin Feng's order, he immediately responded. Understood. Target locked. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Bye. He skinned inside the radio communicator, and had decisively fired while speaking. Instantly, the steel beam of the rotor of that one helicopter of the enemy was hit. The mighty effect of the anti-material sniper rifle came into play at a time like this. The helicopter instantly lost power due to the steel beam of the rotor being broken, and fell to the ground like a headless fly spinning in the air. Inside the bushes on the ground, Liang Chaoshu, who was facing another helicopter gunship's aerial gunfire and dodging in a hurry, saw the helicopter in the sky suddenly turn around and fly upwards. It looked like it was clearly heading towards Wang Shirchung on the roof of the rotten building. He hurriedly issued a reminder. Be careful, clairvoyant. The other helicopter went to trouble you. There was no response inside the radio. Wang Shirchung and Sun Bin reacted quickly. After taking out the first enemy helicopter, they had already changed their position to avoid being locked and covered by the enemy's firepower. And just after they had left the firing position they had just been in and found another hidden position to hide in. Another enemy helicopter had already arrived on the roof of the building. Surge surge surge. The aerial gun directly fired a burst of shots towards the roof of the building. The enemies on the airplane, also raising their heavy machine guns, were constantly raiding all the suspicious positions below. There was even an enemy directly carrying an RPG rocket launcher firing rockets at the bottom. The location that rocket was aimed at just happened to be the location where the two people, Sun Bin and Wang Shirchiang, were hiding. Crap. Squad leader. Were locked in. Sun Bin's scalp went numb when he took a look at the situation. On the contrary, it was Wang Shirchiang who was calm and collected at this moment and did not say a word. He was calm in the face of danger and raised his sniper rifle to aim at the enemy's helicopter rotor position. Bang. Shoo. On the enemy's helicopter. The RPG rockets and the bullets from the sniper rifle in Wang Shirchung's hand were shot out almost simultaneously. The sniper rifle bullets. The speed was much higher than the rockets fired by the RPG rockets. In less than 0.5 seconds, that helicopter suffered the same fate as the previous helicopter. The steel beams on the rotor were broken, and it spun around and smashed on the roof of the building on the spot. Boom. Boom. The enemy helicopter that had lost power, and the EPG rocket that had been fired over exploded on the roof of the building at the same time. A large and a small ball of fire shot up into the sky. Immediately afterward, the exploded helicopter once again exploded violently. The bodies of the enemies on top of the building were certainly gone. However, the concussion and shockwave power generated by the violent explosion also blew out a large crater on the roof of the building. The objects in all directions were even shaken to the ground. Clairvoyant? Is it alright? Monkey? Shin Feng looked at the bubbling flames and rolling smoke on the roof of the building with a serious expression. His call was not answered. His heart could not help but sink even more. Monkey, answer me, clairvoyant, how are you guys doing? Liang Chaoshu also hurriedly called out. But again, no response was received. At this moment, Yuan Weihong, Yang Lu, and Zhang Ninja, a few people, also rushed over to join Shin Feng and the two of them. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, Please exit the reading mode or read mode to read normally. Everyone's complexion was very heavy. Without a word, Yang Lu controlled the drone to fly to the roof of the building to scout the situation above. Soon, they saw two figures lying on the ground amidst the charred and blackened, smoke-ridden ruins on the roof of the building. 
Yang Lu hurriedly controlled the drone and moved closer to them, and found that it was the gray-headed Wang Shurqiang and Sunbin. The two people were covered in black smoke and fire ash. The entire person looked as if they had just crawled out from under the stove. Cough cough. Wang Shurqiang coughed out a mouthful of turbid air, barely opening his eyes and opening the drone that was less than two meters above him. His ears only felt a buzzing sound. Apart from the deafening buzzing sound, he couldn't hear anything. However, Wang Shurqiang arrogantly raised his middle finger at the drone in front of him. Martyr. Shook me to death. I shouldn't be dead yet? Clairvoyance? Sunbin similarly awoke from his brief coma after coughing twice. He also felt his head and ears buzzing. The sound of his own speech was barely audible. Turning over the individual, he inquired to Wang Shurqiang, but he only saw the other party's mouth moving and couldn't hear half a sound. What are you saying? I can't hear you. Sun Bin shouted. Opposite Wang Shurqiang also showed a puzzled expression. Shook his head and wiggled his fingers and pointed to his ears, indicating that he could not hear. On the ground, the team members who saw the two of them waking up, unharmed, let out a long sigh of relief. Soon, the two of them, Sun Bin and Wang Shurqiang, helped each other to walk downstairs, and Shin Feng and the others also quickly ran upstairs to pick them up. Is everything alright? Looking at the two people who were limping, Shin Feng frowned. This wave of attack. Although the enemies were all wiped out and also destroyed two of their helicopter gunships. However, their own team members were also damaged. Even Shin Feng himself had hung up his colors. Don't worry squad leader. There's nothing serious wrong with them. The shockwave formed by the sound wave from the explosion just now was too close to them. And it directly stunned them only. If I have to say, there might be a slight concussion. After all, they fell inside the rubble. In addition to that it's just a few skin wounds. Not a problem. Also the two of them briefly lost their hearing. Zhang Nenjia, as the medical soldier in the team, quickly examined Sun Bin and Wang Shurqiang before coming to a conclusion. Then look at my back for any wounds, and the calf position. Shen Feng turned around and asked Zhang Nenjia to help check. A few moments later, Zhang Nenjia came to the conclusion. There are no injuries on the back because of the protection of the bulletproof vest. But squad leader, the wound on your calf needs to be sterilized and bandaged immediately. While speaking, Zhang Nenjia had already taken out the medical kit. And using scissors to cut open Shen Feng's calf pant leg, he began to sterilize and then bandage his wound. Are the broken pieces of the shell inside? Shen Feng calmly asked. Checked. No. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. It should have been scratched by flying over, not directly stabbed in by the broken pieces. It is considered to be a blessing among misfortunes. Zhang Yanjia did not say much and began to seriously treat Shen Feng's wound. Other members of the team, at this time also each checked their own body. Good thing that the rest of each person is only suffered some minor traumatic injuries. Not in the way. Treading the horse. Squad leader. These enemies are really too arrogant. Escaping from death. This time it could be said that it was three parts luck and seven parts strength. Looking at his injured companions, Liang Chao Xu's heart was very hard to bear. And at the same time, he was annoyed beyond measure. It's too suffocating. Surprisingly, I was sneak attacked by them. Damn it. Wang Shurqiang's hearing, which was also gradually recovering at this time, gritted his teeth and said unwillingly, a surprise attack after being localized by the enemy. Almost all of them went to meet the king of Hades. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or read mode can read normally. At this moment, which team member's heart is good? Hearing Wang Shurqiang's words, all of them nodded their heads, and everyone looked furious, with a very unsympathetic look. Squad leader, if this revenge is not avenged, it's really hard to swallow this bird's breath. Liang Chashu looked at Shin Feng. It was the first time they had been beaten so badly by the enemy. When they had encountered those professional mercenaries before, they had never had this kind of experience. Several members of the team hung up their colors, and even Sun Bin and Wang Shurqiang, both of them, almost dogged it together. Thinking about it all still left their hearts palpitating. The enemy is really too arrogant. However, their equipment is really not to be underestimated. I really didn't expect that they would even be able to send out helicopters to deal with us. Zhang Yanjia followed suit and spoke at this time. Thinking about the scene of thrilling experience just now. Up to now she still felt like she was dreaming. If it wasn't for the fact that on the roof of the building, and inside the bushes behind the rotten tail building, there were helicopter wreckage that was burning and on fire proving that all of that had really happened. She might have really dismissed what she had just experienced as a dream. Squad leader, I'm now worried that the enemy will come back again. After all, our positions here have all been exposed. Taking advantage of the fact that the team members had been quiet for a while, Yang Lu reminded at this moment. Shen Feng was also thinking about this issue. 
The enemy has installed locators on the bodies of those mercenaries they hired, which is the key to us being discovered by them. At the same time, this is tantamount to teaching us a lesson. Xinfeng solemnly scanned every member of the team. Hearing him say this, the team members lowered their heads in shame. They had indeed been taught a hard lesson by the enemy. When they picked up those equipment and weapons, they didn't bother to check them carefully. Not to mention that no one had considered that the enemy would put their hands on top of those equipment. That was why this was killed by the enemy. It's also fortunate that those guys installed locators on their weapons and equipment instead of trick mines. Otherwise, we're afraid that all of us are cold. Wang Shichuan picked up the conversation with a palpitating heart. His words, once again, made all the team members, their faces turn ugly and ashamed. Now, do you guys still think you're great? Shen Feng looked at the face of each team member and asked seriously. When the team members heard this, they immediately became even more ashamed, and each of them became groundless. Shen Feng had previously told everyone to continue to participate in training to further refine each one's professional skills. However, everyone did not take it seriously, thinking that their fighting strength was already very strong. Unexpectedly, there was a mountain of strength among the strong. Everyone had only rejected Shen Feng's offer and immediately suffered a big loss. This time, we can only say that it is our luck. Really, we really seem to have underestimated the enemy a bit. They really aren't comparable to ordinary evil forces. These criminals, they are simply a military armed force now. Yuan Wei Hong frowned, recalling what he had just experienced, and felt fear in his heart. Ordinary criminals didn't have the means to get their hands on so many powerful weapons. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. The average punks with a machete in their hands were considered to have a formidable fighting ability, and the enemy they were facing at this moment could casually send out mercenaries to hunt them down. Even military helicopter gunships with RPGs and heavy machine guns could be deployed to hunt them down. How could their flesh and blood bodies not be afraid in the face of those weapons and equipment with a great killing range? It wasn't like the team members were adamantin or gods. Squad leader, how do you plan to train us? This time it's a real learning experience. A long memory. I'll never deny or question your words again. If your old man tells me to go east, I will never go left. Liang Chaoshu solemnly pointed to the sky and swore. The other team members, hearing him say this, also followed and nodded their heads silently while looking towards Shen Feng. After experiencing the crisis of escaping from death just now, a surge of pride in the team members had now been extinguished. They no longer felt that they were invincible. It had been clearly recognized what kind of existence the opponents they were facing were. Therefore, a few more modest expressions appeared on everyone's face. At the same time, Shin Foam also saw a deep unwillingness in their eyes. Squad leader, keep hammering us, train us up as soon as possible, and we'll go find trouble with those enemies. If I don't get this revenge today, how can I not swallow this breath? Wang Shichang was indignant and looked at Shin Feng and said seriously, Yes, squad leader, these enemies obviously don't want to let us leave the 6th district alive. In that case, let's fight them, compete to see who is more ruthless. Sun Bin followed suit and made up his mind. Several other members of the team, each taking their own stance, each of them developed a deep hatred for what they had just experienced. Without solving those criminals, they would not feel pain in their hearts. You guys don't worry about it. These enemies, we are definitely going to solve them. But we must leave here first now. This place has been exposed and is no longer safe. We'll officially enter training from now on, Shin Feng said, opening his tablet to check the topographical map of this neighborhood up. He was going to lead the team into a primitive forest in the rear. There, it would be difficult for the enemy's helicopters to track their location. And at the same time, this was also part of Shin Feng's training program. He had previously learned that there were some criminal organizations that would set up their strongholds in deep mountains and old forests far away from the bustling cities. This was convenient for them to engage in various illegal and criminal activities. This was because it was difficult to discover their traces. So for this training, he decided to place the venue in the middle of the primitive jungle, so that the team members could adapt to the jungle combat environment. On the one hand, he could take this opportunity to further improve the team members' combat skills and tactics. On the other hand, they could adapt to different combat environments in advance. There was a preparation for the special situations that might be encountered in the future. Squad leader, I think it's better for us to go and take a look at those weapons and equipment we have first. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Shin Feng made the decision to start jungle training with his team. He was in the process of picking the right terrain and choosing a relatively suitable area as a training ground. At this moment, however, Liang Chaoshu was mentioning it with an odd expression. Upon hearing this, Shin Feng raised his head to look at the other party. 
Liang Chashu and Shen Feng exchanged glances and immediately added, Just now, it seems that our supplies have also been bombed by the enemy. I don't think there should be much left of those things. It's bad enough anyway. Liang Chashu's words caused all of the team members to all look aghast. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Everyone glanced at each other and then looked at Shin Feng. Shin Feng also had a sullen face and looked towards the stairs leading downstairs. Go, go down and take a look. He led the way downstairs and quickly returned to the first floor location. When he went around to the front of the building, he really saw that the scene was a mess. The ground was littered with traces of bombardment, and broken pieces of RPG rockets still remained everywhere. There were also pieces of most of the supplies they had placed on the ground earlier. Those expensive firearms, food supplies, and ammunition supplies were almost half destroyed. Tread the horse. Seeing this situation, Shin Feng was so annoyed that he wanted to exterminate those criminals immediately. And at this moment, he couldn't help but curse directly. Everyone be careful. It's possible that the remaining ammunition has become unstable. Don't approach easily. Yang Lu reminded the crowd. At the same time, she controlled a robotic dog, slowly moving towards the remaining, undamaged materials in front of her to get closer for inspection. After an inspection, confirming that the remaining materials should not have any major problems, everyone then cautiously approached the past. These ammunitions are fine. They're not broken and can still be used. However, squad leader, a lot of our weaponry has been destroyed, and now the supplies are only left with less than a fifth of the original. I've done some calculations, canned food and drinking water and such, it's about three days worth of supplies if we split it between the seven of us. It's a good thing that when we retreated just now, we brought our own weapons with us, or else we might be facing the situation of not having any weapons to use right now. Yuan Weihong reported to Shin Feng after a quick count. Shin Feng swept a glance at the scene, which was full of wreckage and gritted his teeth, abandon all unneeded supplies, take rations and ammunition with you, we'll open training now, those trophies seized from the enemy, abandon them all, in addition, each person individually checked the weapons and equipment on you, as well as various supplies and so on, to see if there are any abnormal ones, Shin Feng gave the order while removing the tactical backpack on his back and loading the supplies on the ground into it, ammunition, food and water, as well as medicine supplies, these were the most important. These were the keys to ensuring that they could survive and even counterattack the enemy. The rest was dispensable. The other team members, seeing Shen Feng's actions, also followed suit. Soon everyone had loaded up all the supplies that they should bring with them. When they put their backpacks back on and were about to leave the area of the rotten building, Liang Chaoshu helplessly glanced back at the large number of equipment and weapons on the ground that had been damaged by the bombardment. Grandma, so much good equipment. Even if we take it to the black market, we can sell it for quite a lot of money. I didn't expect that it would just be blown up by those criminals with a single rocket. Our loss is too big ah. Squad leader. This group of animals. I vow not to die them. Liang Chao Shu was full of regret and muttered. Supplies and equipment worth big hundreds of thousands of dollars. Just like this is gone. Apart from the super mega rich. Anyone else would feel heartbroken. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display. Garbled and wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. The most important thing is not that they have destroyed our supplies and equipment, but that it has seriously threatened our lives. Squad leader, please make sure you help me get stronger next. Wang Zhichang looked at Shen Feng with a burning gaze. His sniping skills were not good enough, although he could also achieve a hundred shots within a thousand meters, but it was not to the extent of hitting wherever he pointed, much less to the extent of Shen Feng's ability to hit the finest targets one hundred times. They should know that their squad leader had previously demonstrated his sniping skills and was able to hit a finger-thin target pole one, 500 meters away, and it was two consecutive shots, hitting the target one, 300 meters and one, 500 meters away nearly simultaneously. Wang Shichuan knew that he still had a long way to go. Earlier, when dealing with the group of mercenaries that came after them, he had almost missed, not being able to finish off that enemy with a single shot, he almost let the other party escape. Therefore, he now became completely and utterly humble and began to think about what exactly he still lacked, rather than how awesome he really was. Squad leader, I think we should also conduct a training session specifically for some basic common sense issues. For example, this time, when we collected the enemy's weapons and equipment, we surprisingly didn't have that kind of awareness at all to check if there were any problems with the weapons and equipment or not, thanks to the fact that the enemy didn't install time bombs inside the equipment, or else we'd really be in danger. So I think we need to avoid as much as possible and be this negligent in the future. Yang Lu also made her suggestion to Shen Feng at this time, listening to the team members, one by one, 
giving their opinions? Shen Feng just nodded and did not say anything more. Anyway, get out of here first. Right. The first lesson before we start training. Clean up the traces. Remember that we also covered this in our previous training. Because it wasn't used every time. I'm afraid that you guys have forgotten. Starting now. Clean up all the traces of our activities here as much as possible so that the pursuers sent over by the enemy will have no way to track our location. Shin Feng said while looking down at the ground. This area of rotten buildings was now littered with traces of the activities of the seven of them. The traces on the ground in particular were the most obvious. Various kinds of footprints were left on the ground. And if the enemy sent professional mercenaries over to chase them, through the traces left on the ground, they would still be discovered soon. So this step was essential. Hearing Shin Feng say this, everyone all started to move. Squad leader, I can directly crack these locators before utilizing them. Yang Lu had already started to pack up those locators that were organized on the ground at this time. There were as many as seven or eight of them. You still know this kind of technology? Shin Feng was a bit surprised. He wasn't quite sure what Yang Lu's specific specialty was. It was just that we were all in the same class. She was a study committee member, and her grades were particularly good and smart. Class president you don't know yet, right? The school bully is a hacker Oh, Yuan Weihong walked over at this time to remind and laugh. They had already seen Yang Lu's skills before when they were spying on the Odessa company. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. The other party had directly cracked the back end of the local mercenary management system in front of her and Zhang Ninja, and had obtained the identity information of the mercenaries who were chasing them. I once taught myself a little bit of knowledge in this area. Not necessarily useful. At this moment, Yang Lu humbly replied. While saying that, she had already disassembled a few locators that had their signals interfered with and worked on them seriously. Yang Lu's hands and feet are very nimble, and his movements are fast and steady, so I can see that he is by no means a novice. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. She must have already gone through a long period of learning and training. By the time the other team members had finished organizing their backpacks and cleaning up the traces on the ground, she had just finished cracking all the locators. After modifying the program, these locators could no longer be tracked by the enemy and could only be used by herself. Looking at Yan Lu's operation, which was smooth and flowing, Shen Feng felt very satisfied inwardly. His own team members, each and every one of them had great skills, and they were all united as one, and their love was stronger than gold. Having so many reliable team members was really a gratifying thing. Depart. Shen Feng came back from his contemplation without saying much. With a command. He led his team members to clean up even the last trace. Afterward, the group disappeared into the jungle. In the middle of the Edessa Corporation. In the conference room at this moment, Wang Sigeo's face was so gloomy that it could almost drip water. Right in front of him was a huge and incomparable screen. On it, what was originally supposed to be playing were the images captured by the drone reconnaissance. However, at this moment, the drone's images had been lost. The last image was fixed at the moment when a high-speed incoming sniper bullet shot the drone and hit the fuselage. This meant that their drone had been destroyed. Not only that, the news that they had just gotten was just as disconcerting. Boss, Wang Sigeo's thoughts were interrupted, and with eyes as cold as frost, he looked at the henchman who spoke next to him. The guests from District 1 have arrived. The henchman respectfully and carefully reminded. At those words Wang Sigeo came back to his senses, stood up and was about to leave the place. But just at this time, another henchman rushed in from outside. It was a middle-aged man wearing a beret and looking serious in temperament. And after coming in, he directly saluted Wang Sigeo. We checked and confirmed that the two helicopters and ten team members, all of them have been destroyed and annihilated by those mercenaries. According to the analysis of the combat footage transmitted back from the single-armed recorder, a few of the enemies were hit by our rockets and should not have survived. But there are still one or two survivors who look like they are also tenacious enough to survive that. We are sending more drones to fly over to scout. Should we send another team over to clean them up? The henchman inquired to Wang Sigeo. His personal advice was of course not to let go of this opportunity to pursue them so easily. However, Wang Saigao just snorted coldly. A bunch of ants are just ants. There's no need to waste too many resources on them. The team has already been scrapped. What waves can they make? Gather the corpses at the scene and take a few pictures to release the news to the public. This group of mercenaries who took a bounty mission against us and tried to deal with us have already turned into charcoal. Put the news out as much as possible so that the rest of the mercenaries around the globe will know what it is like to be an enemy of us. Wang Sigeo contemptuously issued orders to his men. His purpose actually wasn't really to drive out all the mercenaries. 
It was just to use Shinfeng and his group to make an example out of them and deter other guys who were stupid enough to move. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Over the past few years, there were quite a few mercenaries who wanted to deal with the Odessa company and clean up after themselves to take their own heads in exchange for the bounty. Most of them were some ungrateful guys that Wang Sigeo didn't even put in his eyes. They couldn't even threaten a hair on their head. Nonetheless, it had to be said that these mercenaries who came forward to look for trouble had more or less caused Wang Sigeo some trouble. This made them, every time, have to send out manpower to deal with those mercenaries. Now Odessa's business had already reached beyond the 6th district. The momentum of development was getting stronger and stronger, and the business was getting bigger and bigger. The company's daily business was so busy that it was impossible for Wang Sigeo to spare manpower every moment to specifically deal with those small fishes and shrimps. Therefore, deterrence, so that the enemy is jealous, do not dare to easily come to mess with their own. This was the main means, even if it wasn't Shin Feng who came to deal with them this time, but some other mercenary organization, Wang Sigeo's approach would still be the same as it was now. It was just a coincidence that Shin Feng and the others happened to bump into them. This is the latest intelligence information we've obtained, and it's already basically confirmed the identities of those mercenaries. The Ninth Region, from the official media to the social self-media, are all talking about this matter, which can be described as a national discussion frenzy. Li Songpai and his men should have been wiped out by this group of people. This henchman, at this moment, took out a few photos and handed them to Wang Sigeo. The first of the photos was none other than Xin Feng's. In addition to Yang Lu, Wang Shiqian, Liang Chaoshu, and so on, obviously, they had already obtained the information that was being hotly debated all over the 9th district. It did not analyze and deduce the specific identity of Xin Feng and the others from it. Then, from a special channel, they had gotten the photos of the seven of them, seeing the photo in his hand above, just a few young faces, each of them vigorous, giving a kind of upward force, in Wang Sigeo's heart, he inexplicably felt angry, are you sure it's these few young people who are causing us so much trouble, the ninth district is publicizing them, he narrowed his eyes and asked through gritted teeth, right now on the internet over there, it's being publicized that they're the light of the ninth district and heroes, we got someone to contact a few of the guys who escaped back who broke the news, and asked to confirm that it was indeed the seven of them. Ha, heroes? Wang Sigeo handed the photo back to the other party, the smile on his face retracting. Just do what I just said and spread the news out as much as possible. Publish their names and photos as well, and say that they've already been taken out by us. Let those guys who are still dumb enough to move know that this is what happens when you confront us. At this moment, Wang Sigeo had another layer of intent in his heart. The 9th district had branded them as criminals of incomparable evil, causing the whole nation to be outraged in denunciation of themselves. The more they were like this, the more accomplished they themselves would be. Aren't you publicizing these little bastards as heroes? Mercenaries from District 9, the light of District 9? Poof, I'll give you all a shocking gift now. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. In the 6th district, Lazi is the sky. I'd like to see how District 9 can do anything about me. Wang Sigeo finished with a cold smile and hurriedly went out the door with a group of his men. He didn't care if Shin Feng and his group died or not, because his purpose had already been achieved. Right now, there were more important things that needed to be dealt with. After all, those guests, they could never offend themselves. When he finished dealing with the matter at hand, if he was sure that those people were still alive, then he would slowly continue to clean them up. In one's own territory, there were not many people who would be able to leave in one's entirety after having acted wildly. Wang Sigeo led the way and quickly arrived at the top reception room. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. There were already seven or eight blonde, blue-eyed, hawk-nosed men and women waiting here. When they saw Wang Sigeo enter, they didn't get up and just sat on their chairs in a bland and self-contained manner. Sorry to keep you all waiting. Wang Sigeo walked to the main seat and sat down, and accompanied with a smile. These were all big clients from the first district, representing the topmost tycoons in the first district, who had come here to discuss business matters with themselves. Although Wang Sigeo was a cocky and arrogant criminal, he wouldn't easily offend such big clients. Boss Wang, let's make it short. The hawk-nosed young man sitting closest to Wang Sigeo's seat grabbed a suitcase from his feet and set it on the table, and opened it in front of Wang Sigeo. Wang Sigeo immediately tilted his head to look inside the suitcase. The other party, on the other hand, turned the suitcase around and faced Wang Sigeo. Here is the 30% deposit we previously agreed upon, totaling 3 million knives, 
We need you to provide us with the agreed upon goods within a week. After placing the white flowery banknotes directly on the table, the other party also put forward their conditions on the spot. When Wang Sigeo heard this, his two eyes rolled around and he smiled. Of course it's no problem. This isn't the first time we've worked together. The goods will definitely be delivered to your hands on time. His verbal promise did not bring much joy to those few people on the other side. At this moment, among the several people next to him who hadn't said anything, a beautiful woman with long brown hair and glasses, who looked quite capable, looked at Wang Sigeo and opened her mouth. This time, we need to conduct the latest human experiments. These goods are very important. If you can't deliver the goods on time you must remember to tell us in advance. Otherwise it will affect the progress of the experiment and you won't be able to compensate for the loss. This kind of word spoken in front of Wang Sigeo was tantamount to a threat. Wang Sigeo's face looked bad on the spot. However, for the sake of the money, he still endured this breath. And more importantly for him, those top tycoons from the first district were definitely not good to mess with. Based on several previous collaborations, Wang Sigeo had already learned some relevant information. Among those top tycoons, there was more than just money. Some of them, if they wanted to deal with themselves, the energy they could use was absolutely terrifying. If one really offended them, even if the sixth region personally stepped in, I'm afraid that they wouldn't be able to protect themselves and their companies. There was another and very important reason. It was actually about the process of Wang Sigeo's fortune. Back then, Wang Sigeo was still just a small gangster, mingling in various neighborhoods in the sixth district to make a living. By coincidence, he met a certain big shot from the first district who was active in the sixth district. This big shot saw Wang Sigeo's decisive character and was willing to sponsor him to get to the top and help him establish his own power in the 6th district. Because of this, Wang Sigeo can be in the cruel competition. Eight people not spit out bones in the 6th district quickly rose. Just two or three years time, has led their own team, grew into the 6th district of the bright area of the number of criminal organizations. And as a price, Wang Sigeo also formally contacted the 1st district and several other districts. Those hidden behind the world's giant curtain of big brothers. And, from that time onwards, did things for them, if you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can read normally. Outsiders thought that Wang Sigeo swindled and lured and even forcibly kidnapped, bought and sold so many people, especially those from the 9th district, just for the sake of raking in money, selling organs and so on from their bodies. In reality, except for Wang Sigeo himself, almost no one knew that he had another layer of purpose in doing so. For Wang Sigeo, the acts of GA waste, fraud, extortion, etc. are just extra money, the real money he made, and the business that could really help him consolidate his position in the 6th district, was in fact the secret dealings with the bigwigs from the 1st district, the 2nd district and other places. Wang Sigeo never took the initiative to ask them what they were going to do with so many people, especially the healthy and strong living people from district 9, when they wanted to buy them. But mixing in this kind of shady underground world, one could more or less get some information. He had heard some rumors and gossip in the past few years. They said that those bigwigs had invested in some of the world's top pharmaceutical organizations, using living people as experiments to research some kind of special medicine. If it was successful, it would benefit the entire world. Of course, Wang Sigeo couldn't believe this kind of nonsense. What kind of drug needs to use healthy people to do research, and also specifically designated? Want the ninth district to be the experimental subjects? Only. He knew that he shouldn't ask what he shouldn't ask. That was why Wang Sigeo was able to earn money in style while being his own emperor in the 6th district. With these factors in it, even Wang Sigeo, who had always been ruthless and couldn't allow others to offend him, could only accompany a smiling face and nod his head in the face of the brown-haired beauty's threat at such a time. However, Wang Sigeo can endure this breath, but his men cannot endure. Usually in the 6th district has been bold and arrogant habit. Suddenly came a few people stepped on their boss's head to spread the wild. As a little brother, of course they had to stand out and show their loyalty at such a time. ka -ching. One of the bodyguards standing behind Wang Sigeo directly pulled out a pistol and loaded it at the brown-haired beauty who had just spoken out of turn. Speak to our boss. Watch out. This is the 6th district. Our territory. This little brother thought to himself that he was giving face to his own boss, but he didn't know that he had already pushed himself to the brink of death with such behavior. Those few guests from the first district on the opposite side frowned on the spot when they saw Wang Saigao's little brother behaving like this, and Wang Sigeo himself also changed his face. Bang! He observed his words and realized that those few guests had begun to show expressions of dissatisfaction. And on the spot, he pulled out his pistol and blew the head off of that henchman who was eager to show his loyalty. Afterwards, he smiled and sat back in his chair, 
giving the pistol to the tabletop to aim at the opposite few people. He's new here and doesn't know any better. Everyone please rest assured. I, Wang C. Gao, have always kept my word when doing business, and will definitely not go back on my word when I say I will deliver on time. The population of the 9th district is as large as pigs in a pigsty. It's our backyard. We can catch hundreds of them at random. Even if the world ends, we'll be on time and deliver the eligible goods to your hands according to your requirements. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Since we had such a pleasant conversation, why don't we go relax and unwind? I've prepared a banquet to wish us in advance for the successful completion of this transaction. Your company's business is booming and red hot. Wang Sigeo stood up and extended an invitation to these guests. Wang Sigeo was inviting with great hospitality, but those few big customers from the first district were clearly not interested in his so-called party. This was the sixth district. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Even with a status like theirs, they needed to be cautious when moving around here. A party should never be attended casually. Otherwise it would be normal to wake up one morning and find themselves lying inside some suburban field with a waste or something missing from their bodies. Of course what was more important was not this, but the fact that they had other pressing matters to deal with. No need for that, Boss Wong. You just need to deliver on time. Also, we came here to find you this time, and there is another matter. I heard that this time, you have quite a few goods of good color? The hawk-nosed man who was apparently the leader of the team, stood up and then directly opened the door. Looking at Wang Sigeo and asking the question, Wang Sigeo rolled both eyes and laughed. It's a group of relatively healthy and age-appropriate people who came. From the 9th district? Yes, absolutely 100% region 9 bloodline. Wang Sigeo immediately made an okay gesture. At the same time, his heart moved slightly. He knew that within this team, other than the ones in charge of the discussion, the rest of those were all raw faces, the ones that had never been seen in previous transactions. Moreover, after so many years of crawling around, Wang Sigeo had seen a lot of people of all shapes and sizes in society. He just took a look and knew that those few well-dressed and well-mannered people were not like ordinary people. It looks like the type of cultural people who hold the pencil to eat. Based on his experience, Wang Sigeo guessed in his heart their occupation. Either they were talents in the pharmaceutical industry or other personnel related to the technology companies under those top tycoons. However, he didn't say much and waited with a smile for the other party to give instructions. Sure enough, the hawk-nosed man said quite bluntly, Can you take us there for a moment? My people are more interested in their body data. He said, turning to look at the svelte men and women standing behind himself. Of course no problem. Follow me, please. We'll go down the elevator over here. Wang Sigeo turned around and pressed a tiger head decorative specimen on the wall. The wall shuddered and parted, and an elevator door appeared. This one elevator led directly to the ground floor. The negative floor was a parking lot, and these previous guests from the first district had come up from there. This was a way to avoid people's attention, and except for Wang Sigeo and a few people, no one knew that these guests had come here. However, in the area below the negative floor, they rarely went down there as well. Wang Sigeo led the way and these people quickly followed the elevator to the negative second floor underground. This place had a different world. The decoration environment looked quite clean and tidy, with good lighting and ventilation systems, not the same thing as the public's impression of the kind of dark and bloody strongholds where criminal organizations held hostages. Wang Sigeo had spent a lot of money to finish building this place secretly. This was the place where the goods of his important business were held. Because of the possible unusual status of the people he was dealing with, of course the goods had to be treated with more care and torturing and abusing them usually didn't happen. Wang Sigeo led these people through a long underground corridor of about 30 meters, and then came to the front of a door. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can read normally. Everyone, our goods are behind this door ban, Wang Sigeo said while performing the red film recognition bioverification, and in the twinkling of an eye the doorway was opened. Boss Wang, you can wait for us here now. The hawk-nosed man turned to him and said. At those words Wang Sigeo froze for a moment, his expression looking a little stunned. His own place? He couldn't even follow him in? Okay. He blinked and nodded. Watching the group of people, carrying white suitcases through the access control, Wang Sigeo's eyes flashed with a fierce light. He took out his communicator and ordered to the surveillance room. Record their every move. After saying that, he dejectedly walked in the direction of the surveillance room. The few guests who had entered the gated area behind the passageway were soon here, seeing house after house, as if they were separate cells inside a prison area. Behind the iron fence, 
less than 6 square meters of space on average, placed a bunk bed. There were two people living in each cage. These people, indeed, look very young, and their mental state is not bad. Seeing outsiders come in, they didn't panic in the slightest, but instead seemed very friendly. The hawk-nosed man stopped in front of one of the cages and flashed a smile full of kindness at the young girl inside who was looking at him and smiling as well, and nodded. He then opened the cage's iron door. Looking at these bullish and tall people suddenly barging in, the two young girls in their early twenties inside the cage finally panicked a bit. They stepped back in fear, and one of them, summoned up the courage to ask, You, what are you, going to do? Don't worry, we're just performing some body checks for you. The hawk-nosed man obviously understood the language of the ninth district. At this moment, he responded to the girl's concerns in the language of the first district, while a few subordinates behind him had already begun to take action. They opened the suitcases in their hands, and one of them, a man wearing goggles, took out a test tube filled with blue liquid, as well as a syringe. During these days of being held here, they were well fed and watered, and no one even scolded them. This had caused the two girls to have fully let down their guarded vigilance. Nonetheless, at this moment they still felt bad from the behavior of these people. Not knowing what fate they would face, the girls began to beg for mercy. No, don't, please let us go. What are you going to do to us? But those people didn't even give them a chance to resist, nor did they pay any attention to their bitter pleas. Some grabbed them and collected blood samples from their left hands. Some people were injecting the mysterious blue liquid directly from their right hands. There's nothing wrong with the blood. Their bodies are indeed healthy. The genomic data still needs some time. The data is out. Their genes are indeed from the ninth district. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. A few henchmen reported to the hawk-hooked man after some testing and checking. The hawk-nosed man, looking at the two girls who fell to the ground in a drowsy state after injecting the blue solution, the corners of his mouth slowly rose to emerge in a cold smile. It will take a bit of time for the potion to work. Use them as a control group for the next experiments but they need to be kept in solitary confinement to avoid infecting the healthy cargo here. After finishing his speech, the hawk-nosed man turned around and raised his head, looking towards the surveillance camera that was filming them on the passageway in the direction they were coming from, and smiled. Inside the surveillance room, Wang Sigeo saw the movements of the hawk-hooked man who was hooking his finger at the camera of the surveillance camera. Just now, he saw clearly what those men were doing to the girls inside the cell. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, Garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Using healthy living people from District 9 for human experimentation. And there's mention of some kind of infection or something. What are they, doing? Beside Wang Saigao, Li Shitsi, who was also the manager of the Odessa company and his right-hand man, frowned and asked at this moment. Although he didn't have much culture, he had been mixing in this kind of area for a long time, and he still had a slight understanding of some of the languages of the various regions of the world. From the sound of it, those few guests seem to be utilizing the healthy living people of the 9th district to conduct some kind of ulterior experiments. Intuition told Li Shitsi that the purpose of these people was definitely not pure. Even these experiments, it is possible that they will also jeopardize themselves. Whatever they do, what's it got to do with you? What business is it of ours? We just need to follow their requirements. Hand over a sufficient amount of healthy goods to them, and then sit back and wait to collect the money. Wang Sigeo glanced back at Li Shitsi and coldly grunted. After saying that, he picked up his walkie-talkie and asked the guards watching underneath to see what the hawk-nosed man needed. But, the 9th district has now focused on our 6th district, and even the official forces are ready to strike. There are also mercenaries from the 9th district that have recently come over to deal with us specifically. Isn't it a bit too risky now that the wind is so tight? After all, the 9th district isn't to be messed with. Li Shitsi was a bit worried. From past experience, the 9th district was truly not to be messed with. He recalled that about 15 years ago, there was a big-name leader of armed drug dealers in the three regions at that time, who attacked a cargo ship from the ninth region on the river at the border. And, at that time, they also killed a dozen or so crew members from the ninth district on the ship. This incident caused quite a stir at the time. Later on, the ninth district personally stepped in and asked all levels of official forces in the sixth district to fully cooperate with the ninth district and make sure to solve the case. In that operation, the ninth district took the lead, uniting the official forces of the sixth district's brightness. Aurora, Sacred Light, and several other districts together, entering the unregulated area to jointly combat that group of armed drug dealers. In the end, that group of armed drug dealers, which had been perennially entrenched in the unregulated area, and which was well known both locally and globally, was completely annihilated under the leadership of the 9th District. The leader, 
Mr. Nuodri Kang was transferred by the officials of the 6th region to the 9th region for trial. Nuodilekang ate the peanut rice that belonged to him in the 9th district in August of the following year. This matter was a big deal that year, and the commotion was so great that it brought the world's attention to the matter. The officials of the 9th district took this opportunity to further crack down on all the criminal forces operating within their territorial boundaries. This included cleaning up those mercenary teams that didn't belong to the 9th district and so on. Also from that time onwards, countless mercenary organizations started to become low profile in the 9th region until they completely left the 9th region. There were even many mercenary organizations that refused to perform missions in the 9th district after that, no matter how high the price offered by the commissioning party. From then on, District 9 became recognized as the world's only no-go area for mercenaries. In response to the provocations of external criminals against them, they often responded with thunderous measures. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. I just heard that Wang Si Gao ordered the photos of the mercenaries who came over from the 9th district to deal with them and were killed by the rocket attack to be disseminated throughout the entire underground world, and even on some of the 9th district's online platforms. This was tantamount to declaring war on the 9th district, a blatant act of provocation. At this moment, Li Shitsi was very worried. His own boss was doing things so out of the ordinary, constantly challenging the bottom line of the 9th district. At that time, in case they really provoked the official of the 9th district to come down personally, then, they were afraid that they would have to eat their words and follow in the footsteps of the big drug trafficker. Nuwa Delikang, HM, the 9th district, they count for nothing, district 9 right now, is our backyard, those piggies, just fool them twice and they'll come over on their own, no fooling for nothing, old brother, as for your concern, ha, huh, wait for them to react, old me I also long ago sent those goods out, without evidence who are they to move me? If they just send a few mercenaries over and try to deal with me, then they are not putting me, Wang Sai Gao, in their eyes too much. Wang Si Gao responded with a cold smile. What he hadn't told Li Shitsi was that he had long ago gotten a blue card for the first district through the channels of those big bosses behind the scenes. Nowadays, he was also considered a legal citizen of the first district. It was only that the business was in the sixth district, so he couldn't leave it for the time being. When the time came, he could always take a plane to leave here and go to the 1st district. Once he arrived at the 1st district, even if he gave the 9th district 10 guts, they wouldn't dare to touch a single hair on his head over there. So, what was he afraid of? Getting money was the most important thing. 6th district bright area. 15th mercenary management association. At this moment, the well-informed mercenaries had already learned of something astonishing. There was a group of rookie mercenaries who didn't know the heights of heaven and took on a commission mission to deal with the Odessa corporation. Now. I've heard that they've been completely wiped out. Not only that, all of their personal photos as well as photos of their remains at the scene where they were attacked were also released. Alas, another group of ignorant guys, souls broken on this land. Inside the bar next to the Mercenary Management Association, someone sighed in a low voice. People are sending a warning to us, any mercenaries who try to deal with the Edessa group in the past three years have failed. Interesting, issuing a challenge to us? Young men, you're new here too aren't you? I advise you to be careful with your words here. The Odessa Corporation is by no means as simple as you think. If you don't want to get killed, find another mission. Such an arrogant crime syndicate, and the reward amount is only 50,000? Is this a joke? He he, do you guys want to guess why the reward amount for this crime syndicate is so low? The Odessa Corporation, here, is an existence that the average person can't afford to mess with? I'm quite interested in them. This mission is very challenging. It's just a pity that the reward is too small which makes me lose all motivation. Inside the lively and dimly lit bar, the cacophony of voices muffled the conversations of the mercenaries. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Countless mercenaries, this was treating these news as after dinner talk. Not many people really cared about what happened to those rookie mercenaries from the 9th district. In itself, this was a profession where one took money to do a job and could lose one's life at any time. The moment one entered this business, one should be mentally prepared. Experienced mercenaries had long since grown accustomed to such blatant, kill a chicken for the monkey warnings from crime syndicates. They were guilty of sticking up for newcomers they didn't know. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can read normally. Of course there was no interest in taking on that kind of mission with a very low bounty and great difficulty. No one would have nothing to do to find themselves some suffering to eat. Amidst the sound of the moving music, and the dancing women's twisting and delicate bodies, casting a mesmerizing light and shadow, 
Many people gradually left these news behind. After waking up tomorrow, they would forget everything about this night. Those rookie mercenaries who were killed off were just one of the millions of nameless people buried in the 6th district, for the vast majority of the mercenaries. After a while, no one will remember them. But, many, many mercenaries after tonight will deepen their memories once again. In the 6th district, don't easily mess with the Edessa Corporation, as well as several other well-known crime syndicates, unlike the mercenary organizations in the underground world. When the news that Shin Fong and his group had been taken out by a criminal organization, using mass destruction rockets, spread back to the 9th district, the entire 9th district shook. The internet was in an uproar, with all sorts of rumors flying around. Previously, on top of the well-known Q&A community, the hottest post about the lucky escape in the 6th district plummeted in popularity. Replacing it as the new hot topic was a post titled The Light of the 9th District is suspected to have been retaliated against by a criminal organization, and the hero died tragically in his homeland. Multi-picture warning, how do you all feel about this matter? The question, under the detailed description of the question was a shocking looking picture. The first picture shows the ground after being bombed, leaving craters of various sizes that make one's head spin, as well as what appears to be fragments of human tissue. The description was, the content of the picture spread by a suspected criminal organization in the underground world. The image that immediately follows is of a broken, blood-stained finger, lying alone next to a patch of what looks like some sort of shell fragment. Description, the criminal organization claims to have launched a saturation bombing campaign against the suspected light of District 9 and heroes of District 9. The image shows the finger of a fallen mercenary. Next, there are a series of photos of the scene, all in high definition and uncoded. In addition to the broken limbs and arms seen earlier, there were several charred bodies lying amongst a large amount of mechanical debris in a charred, blackened crater that had obviously exploded and burned violently. These bodies were all wrecks, none of them complete. Either they were missing arms and legs, or they were lazily broken into two or even three pieces. At the end of the description, there is a line of large letters prompt, the following information from the 6th District Underground World. The photo is not confirmed. If it violates your portrait rights please contact us in time to delete. Then there was photo after photo, in high definition of what was obviously a photo ID. On the first photo, there was a young handsome boy, looking sunny and confident, with clear and handsome features. On it was also labeled mercenary no. 1. Dead. 9th District. Name Shinfong and other information. Lines of red words. Let a person look at a mouthful of cold breath. Think extremely fearful. The second photo that came down immediately afterward was a fair-skinned beauty with a ponytail a mouthful of neat white teeth and bright big eyes and a perky nose. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit reading mode or read mode can read normally. The information on the top was mercenary no. 2. Arrested. 9th District. Name Yang Lu. Etc. Then, it was mercenary no. 2. Arrested. 9th District. Name Yang Lu and so on. Then, it was mercenary number 3. Dead. District 9. Name Liang Chao Shu. Mercenary number 4, arrested. District 9, named Zhang Ninja. 7 whole photos. Each photo had a specific name and where they came from, and also labeled whether they are dead or missing or captured. Seeing such information, the entire network was in an uproar. Within just half an hour of the question being sent out, the number of views exceeded 80 million. The replies in the comment section were even more than 100,000. Crap, does this 6th region have spies in our area? How did they know so quickly? Also are these really the true information of those 7 mercenaries? It's really too terrifying. The criminals are simply heartless. They must have seen the information that was so hot from our network and then locked the identities of those mercenaries after comparing them. It's too bad. We're the ones who screwed over those mercenaries. I told you. A prophecy. If you guys don't believe me, you can go through my homepage and see what I said before and kept getting my answers deleted by the reviewers. Some barbarian even said I was psychologically shady and conspiracy theorizing. Oh, what happened now? Did it get those mercenaries killed? Sure enough, the heat is too much. I expected it to end like this. What we should worry about next is the families of those mercenaries. Since the criminals found and killed those mercenaries, they will definitely take revenge on the families of those seven mercenaries. So scary my god, how on earth did they get the details of those mercenaries? Who on earth leaked the mercenaries identity information? There are also photos of them, I hope it must be investigated severely. The first mercenary little brother. I didn't expect to be so handsome, it's really too bad that he was killed by criminals just like that. Criminals really deserve to die. I just want to say four words, fine thinking. On the internet, many of the netizen comments expressed great shock. There were also many people who acted as hindsight. 
analyzing from behind the horse's back that the previous discussion of the topic that was so high against Chin Feng and the others would have brought about all sorts of unfavorable impacts on them, and so on. And as things continued to ferment, gradually, those victims who had previously been eagerly sharing their escape experiences in the 6th district on the internet were also noticing the situation. When some of them, after seeing the high-definition photos of Shin Feng and the others that had been circulated on the internet, they instantly recognized these people as the very mercenaries who had rescued them at the beginning. Some people began to show up and speak with grief and indignation. I regret to tell you an unfortunate news. As a victim who was once imprisoned by criminals in the 6th district and treated like livestock ready to be slaughtered and sold for organs, I can prove that inside the description of the problem. The photographs of those seven young men are the seven mercenaries who rescued us. I'm sorry to learn about them again in such a way. I had already predicted that breaking the identity of those mercenaries would happen. So I've always kept silent. It's just a pity that ah, previous reports, the heat is too high. This is obviously retaliation from the criminals from the 6th district. The abominable criminals must not die. On the network, one after another survivors who had been rescued by Shin Feng and the others gradually learned of such misfortune as the news spread. Previously, many survivors who remain silent, this time have come forward to comment. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit reading mode or read mode can read normally. Many people felt sorry for Shin Feng and the others, and felt incomparably angry at the rampant cruelty of the criminals who had no regard for the law. At the same time, some people began to condemn those victims who had previously broken the news, as well as those self-publishing media outlets that had no limits when it came to rubbing heat for the sake of traffic. Even the mainstream media, together, came under fire. When the avalanche happened, not a single snowflake was innocent. And when such an unfortunate occurrence happened, it can be said that everyone who was hustling at the time was responsible. And your so-called heroes of the 9th district, who died because of you, you should feel guilty. First of all, three minutes of silence. Secondly, I would like to say, those unscrupulous self-media who only know how to rub off on the heat can you please go to hell? It was not easy for our 9th district to produce such an excellent mercenary team. Now it's good that it was directly killed by you guys. Did someone deliberately leak their identity information? It really needs to be investigated. Now that citizens' information is leaking so badly, those who are involved in this matter, it is recommended that all of them be shot. This kind of scum, dying a hundred times is not enough. Alas, besides sighing, I don't know what else to say. In fact, I should have thought of this kind of thing a long time ago. Those criminals are not good men and women. Mercenaries in the 6th district to carry out the task itself is very dangerous. I do not know which talent patted his head and thought out to let do TV interviews. Rice are eaten in vain. People's narcotics officers are still aware of the identity of the confidentiality of it. Mercenaries are directly with the criminal's force confrontation. Who stepped on the horse is still on the TV to go around saying ah. Also what three women and four men. Even the number of members and gender of others have said. I think the one who should be investigated is the one who broke the news. He definitely has a problem. It must be on purpose. Damn it. This group of people deserve to die. They should be the ones to die. Not those young mercenaries. What a beautiful age. A group of hot-blooded youths who fought for the glory of the 9th district were pushed into the abyss by all of you with your own hands. Those female mercenaries are really pretty. First-class beauties. Kidnapped just like that. Their next fate will surely be miserable. I think the criminals do deserve to die. But those who pushed the envelope that led to the leakage of the identities of a few of their young men should more than atone for this matter. Countless netizens took to the internet, calling out for Shin Feng and the others, condemning the criminals for their cruel methods. At the same time, they criticized and even slammed those people who were involved in the heat of this matter at that time. They even cursed the victims who ran out and broke the news at that time. Of course, there were also some, the purely melon-eating netizens who had nothing to do with themselves, who didn't have much of a reaction to this matter. Their focus was not at all on the matter of the seven mercenaries, kidnapped and killed by criminals. No, one is so handsome. It's a shame that he's so handsome. He hasn't had time to break the girl's hearts yet, right? Miss number two is also super pretty. It's my favorite type. Martyr it's a pity. I guess I have to be sold by those criminals to who knows where. And experience how many inhumane tortures and ravages. I also took a glance at no. One. Good for nothing. Alas. Why do you have to run to become a mercenary? With this face value. In the ninth district to enroll in a training course as a trainee. After the debut is certainly the top stream ah. No. One's face value is really super capable. However. The other few little brothers are not bad either. It's just a pity that they're all gone. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. I wonder if those few beauties, when the time comes, 
will encounter them while repairing the car at the junction of the 9th and 6th districts? What does repairing a car mean? Some new word? These inexplicable remarks were on the internet, and there were actually quite a lot of them. It is mainly a young group of people in their teens and around 20 years old. They were generally characterized by their inexperience in the world, neither having experienced the poisonous beatings of society nor knowing the treacherous hearts of the people out there. They were even more unimaginative about the brutal methods of the criminals in the 6th district. Or rather, since they could not threaten themselves, they did not care about this at all either, in order to make such strange remarks at such a time. But just because they didn't care about what happened to Shin Fong and the others didn't mean that others didn't care. At this moment, inside the group established by the parents of Shin Fong and his teammates, the news had similarly spread, blowing up in the group. My god, did you guys see this? It seems like something happened to our children in the 6th district. Something big has happened. A parent, directly sharing the question that was number one on the hot list above the Q&A community, shared it inside the group. The other parents clicked in and saw there at the end of the question, the photos of Shin Fong and the 6 team members, as well as the description above the photos. At that moment, the parents' heads instantly buzzed. Many parents felt as if the entire world had collapsed. How could this happen? This isn't true. Is it? Is it a rumor? Are their classmates playing a prank? There were parents who weren't willing to believe something like you. First thinking of a prank, then thinking that someone might be deliberately hyping up the content. If it's a prank, where did those live photos come from? Another parent questioned. Of course no one could answer their queries. I've already tried to contact my son, but the phone is not working right now. I don't know what's going on. Can you guys contact someone else? I'm trying. Worried parents began to try to contact their own children but everyone who called out was prompted that the other party was not in the service area. Getting such results, the parents became even more worried and uneasy. It can't be. Something really happened to little Feng, right? Shen Feng's mother, Lin Ngaoyun. At this moment, her eyes were filled with worry, and her face was filled with sorrow. She looked at the photos on her cell phone, the photos in the questionnaire, looked at those high-definition photos of the scene, and looked at that mass of bloody limbs and broken arms, and her tears involuntarily flowed down don't get carried away, right now, just relying on the news on the internet, what situation can be confirmed, what if it's just a deliberate rumor of some people with ulterior motives, or maybe it's a smokescreen put out by those criminals who can't find our Xiao Feng and his team members, I think we'd better calm down a bit and wait until we really figure out the situation, if you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally, don't get carried away, I'll be home soon, Wait for me. Xin Song was on the phone, comforting his wife while using his spare cell phone to make another attempt to call Xin Feng. To his disappointment, the prompt was still that the other party was not in the service area. For a while, Xin Song's mood was also low to the extreme. On the internet, as well as inside the parents' group, everyone was worried for Xin Feng and his teammates. At the same time, they were also constantly condemning those criminals who deserved to die, and criticizing those irresponsible media outlets that reported randomly. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. And at the same time, the officials of the 9th district likewise noticed this matter. The major intelligence agencies, as well as the relevant patrol organs, had synchronized the launch of the intelligence investigation system through the comparative analysis of information sources, as well as the auxiliary analysis of other intelligence. The final official conclusion was that the news released on the network, the probability is true. Alas, really didn't expect it. How long has it been? In the middle of the future area's patrol division, a female patrolman shook her head inside. She looked at the photos in her cell phone over and over again, looking at the young faces of Xin Feng, Yang Lu, Zhang Nenjia, and Liang Chaoshu, and only felt sorry to the extreme, only being a hero for a day. This is being retaliated by the criminals. This sixth district is simply a hell-like existence. Another lesbian, was similarly concerned about this matter. At this time, when mentioning the 6th district, she couldn't help but feel more than a trifle scornful. It had now truly become a recognized place of lawlessness, and the rampant degree of criminals had long since reached the point where people and gods were outraged. I thought before that our 9th district was going to have a superb mercenary team, and was particularly optimistic about them, like a rising supernova. Who would have thought that it would turn around and have something like this happen? Another male inspector, at this time, also sighed. Inside the entire office, an unspeakable atmosphere sank in, although the mercenaries had nothing to do with them, but the same were directly facing those criminals, and the same were from the 9th district. The innate sense of identity allowed everyone to naturally treat Shin Feng as their comrades in arms, 
Now that they have learned such bad news, of course, they can't help but feel emotional. I should have expected this kind of result. In the past, there were also quite a few new mercenaries from the 9th district who rashly intruded into the 6th district to carry out missions. In the beginning, their performance was also eye-catching, and then they disappeared later. No one knows how they developed later. If this team of mercenaries is really Shen Feng and his group, then I think that the probability is that those mercenary teams that disappeared in the past also ended up like this. In short, this group of newcomers made a big mistake. They shouldn't have chosen the location for practicing in the 6th district. At the same time some of the people inside our 9th district also made a fatal mistake, publicizing them on the internet. Isn't it the same as telling criminals who they actually are? In the middle of the entire office area, the inspectors, you and I, were constantly discussing this matter. While they felt painfully sorry for Shin Feng and his group, there were also people who felt curious. Hey, Da Hai, aren't you retired from the special forces? If it was your special forces in your place, how would you fight if you were on a mission in the 6th district? A person curiously asked a male colleague beside him. It was a man with sharp edges and a very capable looking man with an inch hair. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Upon hearing this, Da Hai glanced at the other party and replied. It depends on the specific terrain and the battle situation at the time. Analyzing from the photos, the enemy was using some sort of weapon with a huge killing range to attack the camp of those few mercenaries and I saw helicopter wreckage among the photos of the scene. This means that it's possible that the enemy deployed helicopter gunships, and if it's really what I've judged, then the helicopter gunships aerial cannons alone would be enough to make them drink a pot of water. Also, you guys look at this. Da Hai pointed to his cell phone, one of the scene photos to those colleagues who had gathered around to listen to his explanation. Inside the photo, was a broken piece of something that couldn't be seen to be exactly what it was. What is this? A female comrade behind him asked curiously. It should be a fragment of an RPG rocket. The specific model is unknown, but the mainstream RPG rockets in the world all have an effective killing radius of more than 15 meters. Most importantly, it's a powerful one-man anti-tank weapon that can generally easily penetrate tank armor thicknesses of over 40 centimeters. If it's hiding inside a brick and concrete structure bunker, that's like giving it away for nothing. This thing, the most powerful type, is even able to easily penetrate reinforced concrete of 1.5 meters in thickness, as well as brick structures of more than 2 meters. So, to really encounter this situation, what kind of special forces are good? The only way is to hide. The opposite side's firepower is completely crushing. To go hard with them would be giving away heads. My suggestion is that we call for fire support as well and strike at them from a distance. Da Hai finished, pursed his lips and shook his head. Obviously analyzing from his professional point of view, he also thought that the probability of Shin Feng and his group being killed was high. After all, they were facing such a powerful firepower surprise attack from the enemy. Caught off guard, not many people could withstand the criminal's wild bombardment. There seemed to be quite a few criminals lurking in the cyber world of our 9th district. Someone suddenly came up with this sentence. At this everyone's heart stirred, instantly understanding what this inspector meant by what he said. Everyone knew in their hearts why Shen Feng and his team members were discovered by the enemy. Obviously. The enemy had reverse surmised the identity and location of Shin Feng and his team through the reports above the network of the 9th district. Three women and four men. This number of people and gender characteristics were really too conspicuous. It only required a cross-comparison of the mercenary teams that were active in the area to screen out the vast majority of the targets. Adding the fact that all seven were from the 9th district, it was almost enough to lock down the final target. So, there were many melon eaters on the internet now, and although they analyzed a whole lot with the benefit of hindsight, they were right. The media and the exposers who escaped and came back at that time were the real pushers that caused those seven mercenaries to be retaliated against. Their responsibility could not be brushed aside. Of course everyone also knew very well why the enemy would deliberately release news and make a high-profile announcement of such a thing after killing those seven mercenaries. This move was called making an example out of a chicken. The mercenaries that were killed were the chicken. And as for who was the monkey, that was a matter of mercy. This monkey could be both those who were stupid enough to have thoughts about the local criminals in the 6th district. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Like other mercenary organizations around the world, the local area of the 6th district, the organizations that belong to a hostile relationship with that group of criminals, or even the local officials. Of course, there was the possibility that the monkey was the 9th district. The enemy is declaring war on our 9th district ah. There was an inspector who couldn't help but say what was in his heart. Some slides are more sensitive, and they can't even be touched easily. At this time, 
Hearing the words of that inspector, everyone's were silent and looked odd. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. But immediately, someone responded. Even if we know that the enemy is provoking us, then what can we do? According to the Memorandum Agreement on the Management of Mercenary Operations against both sectors signed by the 9th and 6th sectors, mercenaries from the two districts entering the other side's territory to carry out a mission should be borne by the mercenaries themselves, regardless of any consequences that may occur, unless the other side's mercenaries, within their own territory, do something that damages the local officials or even destroys the local security, neither side can intervene. In other words, there is no way for us, the officials of the 9th district, to speak up for this matter, to stand up for those mercenaries who were taken out. Hearing this inspector say this, everyone fell silent once again. They were all clear in their hearts that there was such a series of regulations. So while lamenting inwardly, there was nothing they could do about this kind of thing. All right, everyone, don't sigh here. This matter, when the time comes, there will naturally be a relevant department to deal with the solution. Hurry up and return to your respective stations and get the matters at hand done. An inspector who appeared to be the captain said a few words to the others. The crowd that had gathered together immediately dispersed individually, and soon the office area returned to calm. Meanwhile, the 6th district, in the middle of a primitive jungle far away from people, Shin Feng and his team members, were still silently advancing. However, as they walked, Shin Feng felt a slight pain coming from his calf. He glanced down and realized that it was the wound he had previously injured, which had collapsed due to the continuous movement. This was coupled with the fact that he had just dribbled through a few mud puddles. It would be even harder for the wound to heal at this moment after it was wet with water. Even if time dragged on for too long, not only would the wound not be able to recover, the lack of oxygen caused by the bandage wrapped around it would further make the wound deteriorate. Once infection occurred, in this kind of ghost place where there was no village in front and no store behind, the consequences would be unimaginable. Shin Foam looked around, seemingly searching for something. However, at this time, when he glanced out of the corner of his eye, he saw Wang Shichuan, Sun Bin and the others, all walking behind him almost 50 meters away. It looked like the progress was lagging behind by not a small amount. At this moment, Wang Shichuan was already walking a bit shaky. Sun Bin's situation was no better. The two were the most seriously injured in the previous battle. Although Zhang Yanjia had already examined them, there were no major problems with their bodies. But those were the situations that could be observed on the surface. What if? where the eyes couldn't see, Wang Shichang and Sun Bin had already suffered internal injuries, and their organs had ruptured due to the previous RPG bombing and helicopter explosion? The more Shin Feng thought about it, the more worried he became. He stopped and looked at the team members behind him who were limping over this way, the position he was standing in now, the path that opened up belonged to a slope, the height of the small hill might have a height of 10 or 20 meters, the slope sloped about 50 degrees, this made the team members, who were already having trouble moving, even more sluggish. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally, but there was no way around it. This was the only road in the neighborhood that could be traveled, and the rest of the area was overgrown with bushes and barren and stifling. Even holding the saber and constantly clearing the barricades, there was really no way to quickly clear out the road. Squad leader, why don't we take a rest here first? Yang Lu could already tell that the team members, and even Shin Feng himself, were a bit severely physically exhausted. I'm afraid they wouldn't be able to handle it if they continued to rush on like this. The enemy should have already been shaken off by us. We are after all tens of kilometers away from where the previous battle took place. Yang Lu continued to remind. Upon hearing this, Xin Feng took two steps towards the bottom of the hillside. Everyone rest in place here, but we can't take this lightly. Today, I'll give you guys another lesson, and that's the choice of a temporary camp in the wilderness. Xin Feng said, the corner of his mouth slowly rising, the previous wilderness survival training, because of the reason that the time was too rushed, had mainly trained the team members' combat skills and improved their physical fitness, there was not much chance to touch on many niche areas of training at all, therefore, Shin Feng intended to take this opportunity to properly consolidate the skills that the team members and himself had already mastered while also giving everyone the opportunity to learn new knowledge, when the team members heard Shin Feng's words, each of them revealed a look of anticipation, however, at this time, Liang Chaoshu, who was supporting Wang Shichang, couldn't help but say, Squad leader, I think it's better for us to stay out of the camp's business for now. Butler, do you still have any antibiotics there? Hurry up and give the two of them a few. Look at their condition. If they don't take care of it, they're probably going to hiccup. Go go go. Can you talk? We're just tired. Who's going to hiccup? 
Sun Bin waved his hand at Liang Chashu's mouth. However, he looked pale at this time and his lips were turning purple. It looked like he was in bad shape, even if he wasn't about to hiccup, it wasn't optimistic. Next to him, Wang Shichuan's situation was similar. Having been directly injured by the concussive power of the explosion just now, it didn't show up clearly at first, but after a few dozen kilometers of continuous hasty marching, the dark injuries on Wang Shichuan and Sun Bin's bodies began to flare up. The symptoms became more and more obvious. Zhang Nenjia naturally noticed this situation. Plus listening to Liang Chaoshu's words just now, she hurriedly went up to check Wang Shichuan and Sun Bin's condition. After a careful inspection, Zhang Nenjia's expression became a bit gloomy. Squad leader, I misjudged before. The two of them are bleeding under the skin, consistent with the characteristics of internal injuries. It looks like there should be organ damage, but I don't have a way to directly determine through the naked eye exactly which organ has been injured. That is to say, they need to go to a regular hospital and receive examination and treatment. Otherwise, Zhang Yanjia did not continue to speak here. With an expression of wanting to speak, the injuries of the two players looked a bit more serious than expected. If they were not sent to the hospital in time to receive treatment, the consequences would be hard to predict. But now that they were in a deep forest, coupled with the physical condition of the two team members, their cell phones had even entered the area of no signal coverage. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can be read normally. Under such circumstances, if one wanted to reach the nearest town, I'm afraid it would take at least half a day. Not to mention that this was the 6th district. They were being hunted by the criminal members of the Edessa Corporation. If they blatantly appeared at the hospital, most likely, it would provoke another retaliation from the enemy. If this really happened, the consequences would be absolutely unimaginable. Of course, if they had to send Wang Shichang and Sun Bin to the hospital, then their training program would naturally go down the drain. Even the plan to deal with the Edessa company would have to change along with it. When Xin Feng heard Zhang Yanjia's words, he already understood the seriousness of the problem in his heart. In fact, she didn't need to explain. Xin Feng himself could see it. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Even himself, a captain with such a strong physical quality, couldn't bear to have his wounds recollapsed after dozens of kilometers of hasty marching. Even a slight infection appeared. Wang Shichang and Sun Bin, at that time, were directly facing a double blow from the enemy's helicopter gunships and RPG rockets. They were lucky to survive. Suffering some internal injuries was really too normal. Inside your medicine chest, is there anything that can help them? Xin Feng was briefly silent for a second before he turned his head to look at Zhang Yinjia and inquired. Upon hearing this Zhang Yinjia hurriedly squatted down and began to check her medical kit. But after some searching, she shook her head. She actually knew exactly what items were inside her medical kit. It was only that at times like this, the dead horse was treated as a living horse, holding on to a kind of fluke mentality. Expecting to find any medicines inside the medicine chest that she had overlooked and that would be of great help to Wang Shichang and Sun Bin's injuries, now it seemed that the miracle did not appear. Xin Feng looked towards Wang Shichang and Sun Bin for two more times. Then, he remembered that he seemed to have a little something good. With a thought, Xin Feng opened his personal attribute panel. An illusory, attribute interface visible only to him immediately appeared in front of his eyes. Super Mercenary System. Host, Xin Feng. Identity, Mercenary. Level, introductory level 1, raised by completing the number of missions in one's overall strength. Ability, unarmed combat. Weapon mastery, driving mastery, climbing. Points, tasks, 1, in progress. System backpack, click to view stored items. Xin Feng also opened his personal attribute interface for the first time, and the entire attribute interface was clear at a glance, but it was a bit different from what he had imagined. The specific personal attributes such as force, sensitivity, and body attributes were not displayed. Of course, this was not what Xin Feng was concerned about. He mainly wanted to see how many system points he had. If he remembered correctly, this thing could be used to exchange rewards inside the system mall. In Xin Feng's mind, the thought flicked. Instantly, the interface in front of him changed, turning into a holographic mall interface. The same mall interface with a slight sci-fi feel was visible only to Xin Feng himself. The commodities on there were displayed in abundance, categorized according to different uses. They were divided into categories such as daily necessities, department store snacks, single-armed instant food, weapons, equipment, medicines, and so on. Sure enough, there are medicines for sale. Xin Feng saw what he was looking for at a glance. He directly clicked on the medicines column. In front of his eyes, bottles of medicines that were red, yellow, blue, 
and green in various colors and sparkling appeared immediately. It looked as if it was a game mall. Shin Fong was a bit powerless to spit out the system's aesthetics. However, he soon saw it. A bottle of special effect medicine priced at two points. Rapid healing potion elementary. After using it, it can provide rapid healing for the majority of internal and external injuries. It is suitable for minor injuries, light injuries of the first degree, and light injuries of the second degree. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Suitable for mild and moderate wound infection. Selling price, 2 points slash bottle. This kind of fast healing potion with powerful effects. Shin Fong believed that it was 100% unavailable outside. Even if you went to the top hospital, you couldn't buy something like this. In addition to this primary rapid healing potion, there were also intermediate and advanced rapid healing potions. Their effects were certainly more powerful than the beginners, but the selling price was also a bit higher. The intermediate healing potion sold for 10 points, while the advanced level was 30 points. Advanced healing potions could even treat injuries that were more than second level of serious injuries. It could be considered a divine medicine. A product of the system is a fine product. This slogan is not called for nothing. Shin Fong judged for a moment and browsed through the other categorized items for sale inside the entire system mall. It was found that there was everything from daily necessities to arms and weapons and so on. As long as you possessed points, you could basically buy anything you could think of. The prerequisite was that you had enough points. Of course there were still some unlocked items that showed question marks from gray to purple, making it impossible to view specific information for the time being. It seems like the quest points will be of great use to keep in the future. Since this is the case, let's first exchange the beginner's healing potion to try it out. Shin Fong made a quick judgment in his heart, and he spent 14 points from the mall and redeemed 7 bottles of primary healing potion. Squad leader, what's wrong with you? Liang Chashu couldn't help but ask when he saw that Shin Fong didn't say anything for half a day. And Shin Fong came back to his senses at this time and looked up at the other party. It seems that we can only use this. As he said that, he took out seven tiny healing potions from inside his system backpack. Seeing Shin Fang's hand from inside his pocket, he pulled out seven sticks of crimson color, which looked as if they were like blood that was about to solidify. All of the team members, at this moment, all of them curiously looked towards him. What is this, squad leader? Liang Chaoshu was the first to ask curiously. Zhang Nenjia, Yuan Weihong, and Yang Lu also gazed at the healing potion in his hand. This stuff can be expensive. It's a healing potion that incorporates adrenaline and other special effects ingredients. The top medical technology of the first district. I had someone purchase it back from inside the black market earlier. It can heal most injuries at the fastest speed. You two try it now. Shin Fong said, handing two primary healing potions, respectively, to Wang Shichang as well as Sun Bin. On the other hand, Zhang Nenjia and the others on the side were blinking their big eyes, looking at those two people incredulously. There's even this kind of medicine in the world? Squad leader, you can't have been pimped out. Right. Zhang Nenjia was a bit unconvinced by Shin Feng's words just now. Yes class president, it's not possible that those people in the black market are pitting you, right? This medicine, is it safe or not? Just looking at it, the color is quite creepy. It doesn't look like a normal drug, a potion that could quickly heal most injuries. This was a bit beyond their common sense perception. So every team member, at this time, the first reaction was not to believe Shin Feng's words, but to question them. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Even the two of them, Sun Bin and Wang Shichang, showed hesitant expressions. Won't you guys know if you try it? Shin Feng encouraged at them. When the two of them heard this, they glanced at each other and at each other, and then almost simultaneously looked at the healing potion inside their hands. But in the end, they still did not have the courage to try it, obviously unwilling to believe what Shin Feng said. Squad leader, me, I'm not not believing you, I just don't believe those black market guys, after all, this is the 6th district, Sun Bin explained to Shin Feng with difficulty, actually, Shin Feng was also a bit skeptical, if, for example, he didn't know that there were gold fingers in the world that were hard to explain clearly, if you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally, super mercenary system, his own golden finger. This one was already unexplained in the first place. Since obtaining this golden finger, he himself had gotten stronger every day, quickly mastering all those abilities that he had once not even thought of. His own team members had also all grown rapidly with the help of the system. If Shin Fong hadn't personally experienced all of this, he certainly wouldn't easily believe the description of the effects of this primary healing potion. But now, 
Chen Feng believed, the product of the system was definitely a fine product. Don't worry, you guys trust me, I definitely won't harm you. Xin Feng saw that everyone was still skeptical, and everyone was cautious, and he was a bit teary-eyed. He lifted his right leg and directly in front of everyone, he unwrapped the bandage on his leg. The bandage that had already seeped blood was completely undone at this time. The wound on Xin Feng's leg was exposed in the air, and everyone could see it clearly. Squad leader, your wound is starting to get infected. I'll take care of it for you. Seeing the situation, Zhang and Jia hurriedly took out the medical kit and prepared to retreat and bandage the wound for Xin Feng. But Xin Feng waved his hand and refused her help. You guys watch. Xin Feng smiled confidently, unscrewed a primary healing potion, and was about to drink it in front of everyone. Squad leader, don't. Liang Chaoshu was quick on his feet and took a fierce step forward to stop Xin Feng. However, he was still a bit too slow. Xin Feng had already tilted his neck and drank the entire primary healing potion completely. Watching Xin Feng's operation, all the team members were dumbfounded, and their mood instantly became tense. Everyone didn't dare to blink. Staring at Xin Feng to death to watch his changes. Squad leader, how do you feel? How is it? Zhang Yanjia asked worriedly. Is everything alright, class president? Yang Lu also couldn't help but speak. At the same time, everyone was subconsciously observing the wound on Xin Feng's calf belly. Ice cold. Is so smooth, there's a feeling of body comfort. Strength is being restored in a steady stream. Fatigue is gone. And even I feel like I have unlimited strength. And the cells of my whole body are agitated. At least with this stuff. I can be sure it's not poison. Xin Feng described his physical feelings at this moment, and at the same time, he felt that the wound on his calf belly began to itch a little. Xin Feng subconsciously looked down at his wound. It was at this time that he clearly saw that his wound was slowly healing at a speed visible to the naked eye. The reason why it was said to be slowly healing was because it was only when you stared at the wound and looked closely that you would be able to see the obvious changes in it. In just less than 10 seconds. Xin Feng's original broken piece of scratch on his calf's belly of about 10 centimeters had been shortened and healed to about 8 centimeters, and the healed part was as good as new. The skin did not even leave half a trace. Such a miraculous scene was clearly seen by every member of the team. They were directly dumbfounded when they saw this. I'm going to. Squad leader. You're wound? Ah. It's healing. I saw it. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, Please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Xin Feng nodded his head. At this time, Zhang Yinjia was afraid that she would look at her eyes, so she directly lay down on the ground and was amazed to see Xin Feng's wounds from a close distance. This time she could see clearly. Xin Feng's wound was indeed healing perfectly at an incredible speed. It was in such a short while of their talking that the wound from earlier had shortened to about 6 centimeters again. The length of the wound was directly shortened by almost half compared to the very beginning and this time all the team members could see it clearly and plainly. Even though they still felt unbelievable, felt incredulous, but yet, they had to believe the truth of what they saw in front of their eyes. Squad leader, I'm not dreaming or hallucinating, am I? I know that inside this primitive forest, there are a lot of poisonous insects and beasts, and even poisonous miasma. Yang Lu subconsciously rubbed her eyes and blinked again. As for Yuan Weihong next to her, she gently patted her cheeks and secretly pinched her thighs again. Both of them were certain that they were definitely not dreaming, and certainly not poisoned, otherwise they must have had more than just this one hallucination. I should be able to prove that you guys aren't poisoned by the miasma, nor are you dreaming, clairvoyant, try pinching me, Liang Chaoshu said, looking towards Wang Shichang whom he was supporting, and Wang Shichang didn't give him any pretense, he really reached out and ruthlessly pinched the skin on his stomach and pinched it up gently. Instantly, Liang Chaoshu let out a pig-killing grunt, does it hurt? Of course it hurts, ouch I'm going, I'm letting you try not letting you murder me ah. Liang Chaoshu covered his belly and grunted miserably, he he he, I'm afraid that your feelings aren't real enough. Wang Shishan laughed and turned back to relook at the wound on Xin Feng's calf belly, and his eyes instantly became even more amazed, because at this time he clearly saw that the wound on Xin Feng's calf belly, had completely and thoroughly healed, above the white calf, a whole clear muscle outline appeared, but the wound that had clearly begun to become infected just now had completely disappeared. This is more magical than magic, class president. This healing potion of yours, it's not. You're a divine medicine, right? Do you feel anything wrong now? Will there be a mutation ah? Sun Bin stared at Xin Feng and continuously asked questions, and Xin Feng himself was checking to confirm his body, whether there would be any different changes. But after a moment, he shook his head. Apart from the fact that my strength has become greater, my spirit is highly concentrated, and it feels like I've become very focused. It's that all of the physical strength that was consumed has been restored. Also, as you can see, 
The slightly infected wounds are rapidly healing and are as good as new. I'm not dreaming, and neither are you guys. This is all real. Shin Feng nodded his head earnestly and looked at every member of the team. Eventually, his gaze landed on Wang Shichang and Sun Bin. Now you too. Are you willing to believe that it works? Saying this, Shin Feng reintroduced the two primary healing potions and handed them to the two men. Having witnessed the superb healing effect of this miraculous potion with their own eyes, where would Wang Shichang and Sun Bin refuse it now? If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or read mode to read normally. The two people simultaneously took the healing potion that Shin Feng handed to them. This stuff, is it directly drunk? What's the flavor? Looking at his hand, the red liquid, Sun Bin swallowed a mouthful of saliva. On the other hand, Wang Shixiang next to him didn't have so much nonsense. He directly unscrewed the lid at this moment, and following Shin Feng's bold move just now on the spot, he tilted his neck and drank the entire healing potion cleanly. After Wang Shichang drank the touch healing potion, he indeed immediately experienced the feeling that Shin Feng had just described. Very, very clear and strong. And he did feel that the wounds on his body came with a tingling sensation. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. It was as if countless cells were surging restlessly, constantly dividing to promote tissue regeneration. Such a magical feeling made Wang Shichang's eyes brighten and his expression filled with shock. Sun Bin, who was at the side, opened his mouth originally wanting to ask Wang Shichang what he was feeling, but he quickly noticed that the tiny skin wounds on the back of Wang Shichang's hands were healing at a speed visible to the naked eye. Without saying a word this time, this kid directly unscrewed the healing potion in his hand and gulped it down as well. Immediately, Sun Bin also began to experience exactly the same feelings as Shin Feng and Wang Shichang. Your injuries are relatively minor so you can choose to drink these, or you can choose not to drink them first and wait until you need them the most. Shin Feng looked at the four of them, Liang Chaoshu, Yuan Weihong, Zhang Nenjia, and Yang Lu. Each of them, too, had been given a bottle of primary healing potion. This thing could really save their lives at critical moments. The effects had already been seen by everyone. At this moment, hearing Shin Feng's words, Liang Chaoshu was the first to shake his head. This thing is so precious. I'd better keep it until I'm ready to die soon before I use it. When you are about to die, this thing is afraid that it will have no effect. Shin Feng laughed. Primary healing potion could only recover injuries that were minor injuries level 2 and below, and were slightly infected. If one was really on the verge of death, then it would properly be a serious injury level 2 and above. There was really no way to bring someone back from the dead with this thing. It would require a higher level healing potion. He he he. That can't be wasted right now ah. Uh. How precious this thing must be ah, all of a sudden it can make the wound recover. I'd better keep it for now, maybe one day I'll also suffer such a serious injury. A bottle of it will go down and directly fix it. Liang Cha Shu hemmed and hawed, carefully storing away the primary healing potion in his hand. At this time, after observing the healing potion in his hand, Zhang Yinjia curiously raised his head to look at Xin Feng, class president. This thing, it's very expensive, right? This kind of potion which could be said to be able to bring life to the dead and flesh to the bones, must be very expensive. Shin Feng just looked at the other party and smiled without saying anything. Saying more would reveal the truth. It was good that Yuan Weihong's focus was different from Zhang Yinjia. At this time, she followed suit and asked, Squad leader, what the hell is this thing ah actually has such a powerful effect? It wasn't that they hadn't known about the rapid wound healing potion, but it was only limited to movies and novels. In reality, they hadn't really heard of such a thing. Shin Feng sighed helplessly in his heart, using the reward from the system exchange to help everyone. I knew that it would be this kind of result. There was always a need to face some unspoken explanation. Looking at the team members as if they were curious babies one by one, although he knew that they had no malicious intent, Shin Feng felt so annoyed. He couldn't directly tell them that he had a super golden finger, and it had always been the golden finger that helped everyone become stronger, right? Fortunately, did not wait for Shin Feng to open his mouth. At this time, Yang Lu instead spoke first, I once heard that the cutting-edge medical technology of the 9th district had developed a special kind of nanomolecule that combined with the original healing medicine, and after it was made into a capsule, you could quickly promote the healing of wounds by just taking one, but that's cutting-edge technology, in other words a lot of it hasn't been clinically verified yet, part of it is just in the conceptualization stage, and some of it is in the theoretical verification stage, if you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, Please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. It's still a long time before the original drug enters clinical trials. Of course I've only heard about it. And now it looks like the drug has been introduced. 
However, the squad leader also said that this is the topmost medicine technology from the first district. The first district's technology is so developed and belongs to the top in the world. There is still a long way to go for our ninth district compared to them. Looking at it like that, it seems normal. Yang Lu's words immediately attracted the attention of the other team members. As expected, everyone stopped grasping Shen Feng and asking questions, but started to go and ask Yang Lu the names and more detailed questions about those cutting-edge special effects medicines. Shen Feng breathed a sigh of relief in his heart, as if nothing had happened. He smiled and also joined the crowd's discussion on cutting-edge medicine technology, and intentionally or unintentionally, he directed the team members to think towards the first district. I have to admit that the technology of the first district is indeed very different from ours, and there is even a gap of several generations. I've always heard that they're harboring an alien research base there. Now doesn't it seem like it might be true as well? Liang Chaoshu's mind was wide open and imaginative. You don't say. It's really possible. The universe is so big. There must exist alien life forms. Yuan Weihong nodded and said, I've heard that the powered exoskeleton applied to field combat in the first district. The technology is already quite mature. If we can also get a set, that would be awesome. I'll be carrying two. No. Three great compassion Gatling Bodhisattvas as I run around the mountains. None of those bastards will be able to catch me. Liang Chaoshu added. Why don't you say you're going to run with a tank on your shoulder? Sun Bin spat. I don't want a Gatling Bodhisattva. What I want is a Barret. Give me ten Barrets and a pair of powered exoskeletons and I can blow away those criminals. Wang Shichang also came to be interested at this time, longingly fantasizing. As everyone chatted, their minds gradually opened up and their attention was completely diverted. Even Zhang Yanjia, who had just raised questions, no longer remembered to ask Shen Feng about the prices of these potions at this time. All right, one by one, net bragging, all stop fooling around, you guys seem to have recovered well, let's start training next. Shen Feng sized up Wang Shichang as well as Sun Bin, the two people who had needed Liang Chashu to assist them just now, and looked like they were about to die, had now become lively again. Just by looking at their hale and hearty appearance, it was impossible to imagine that they had previously suffered internal injuries. Once again, Shen Feng couldn't help but secretly marvel inwardly that the healing potion produced by the system was really, really awesome. Squad leader, what did you say before? Isn't it about giving us a lesson on campsite selection for wilderness survival? Liang Chaoshu's voice came, interrupting Shen Feng's thoughts. The other team members, too, looked over curiously. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Upon hearing this he immediately nodded. Not bad. Whether it's wilderness survival training or camping hiking, the choice of campground is very important. This concerns your camping experience, survival experience, and even life safety. So today, I'm going to give you guys a good lesson. Shin Feng said while pretending to reach inside his backpack and fumble for something. In reality, he was taking out the other types of training manuals previously rewarded by the system from within the system backpack. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. This one. One manual. Let's rest in place first. I'll tell you how to do it in a while. You guys look at it first to understand it for yourselves and have a basic concept inside before you do it. Shin Feng handed out a copy of the Wilderness Survival Training Manual in his hand to each member of the team. This copy of the Wilderness Survival Training Manual was a special version customized by the system by combining the training essence of the world's top special forces. In other words, this training manual in Shin Feng's hands was the most difficult in this world. Bar none. The team members got the training manual and immediately started flipping through it. However, Liang Chaoshu soon had doubts. Squad leader, I thought we were going to start jungle combat training. How is this wilderness survival training? He looked at the training manual in his hand and then looked up at Shin Feng. After he said this, the other team members also reacted. And each of them looked at Shin Feng curiously. What the hell are you training for if you don't learn how to survive in the wild? Shin Feng returned without any good humor. Oh, that makes sense. Liang Chaoshu sniffed his ass, lowered his head and started to carefully read the training manual in his hand. Shen Feng was holding a training manual himself at this time, walked to the side and sat down along a tree. I don't know if you guys have heard of a saying? He suddenly looked up at the other team members and inquired. What phrase? The team members, in turn, looked at him anew. In the wild, rest is far more useful than speed. Well, haven't heard of that. The crowd immediately shook their heads. Shen Feng knew that this was the result. After all, everyone had never received proper complete and systematic training. It was justifiable that they didn't understand wilderness survival and wilderness combat. There is one more sentence. Shin Feng added while flipping through the training manual in his hand. 
At this moment, with the added benefit of the systems twice the result with half the effort effect, he could almost do 20 or even 30 lines at a glance, quickly memorizing everything his eyes saw and quickly understanding and digesting the meaning of the descriptions of those words, especially the essential thoughts hidden behind the words. To put it simply, it was, understand in seconds. At this moment, every member of the team was looking at Xin Feng, waiting for him to continue. Xin Feng flipped through two pages before stopping and raising his head to meet the team member's eyes. If, you can fight in the middle of the jungle, then you can fight anywhere in the world. That's not necessarily true, is it, squad leader? There is a difference between jungle terrain and urban terrain in the first place. If we can only fight in the jungle, then, Wang Shixiang just wanted to retort, but Xin Feng raised a finger and waved it from side to side. This is not something I said. It's the training motto of the world's most elite special forces. We all know that special forces are troops that belong to all-terrain combat, and for us, if we want to become outstanding mercenaries, our training must be on par with the world's most elite special forces. Otherwise, becoming the most elite mercenaries would be nothing more than an empty phrase. Xin Feng stared at Wang Shuqian and explained thus. His words immediately caused the eyes of every member of the team to light up, and there was a strong urge and anticipation within them. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. To become the world's top mercenary, to be on par with the world's top special forces. Just a single sentence instantly ignited the fighting spirit within every member of the team. Squad leader, don't say empty words. Come up with some dry goods for us, Zhang Nenjia said excitedly, and Xin Feng responded to her with the action of raising the training manual in his hand. Everyone immediately understood and began to quietly read it. Just in time, it was also possible to take this time to finish resting. The first page of the Wilderness Survival Training Manual introduced the table of contents. The first part, however, was divided into survival preparations, as well as an introduction to the various situations a person would need to face when surviving in the wilderness. This includes physical and psychological reactions, stresses, and ways to cope with them. For example, how to overcome personal fear, fatigue, insomnia, loneliness, isolation, injury, illness, pain, how to face the cold, heat, hunger and so on. Weak willpower is the biggest enemy of wilderness survival. The desire for comfort and a negative attitude can cause a person to quickly lose their fighting spirit and confidence in survival. Another thing is to evaluate the terrain and environment. To understand and familiarize yourself with various terrains and environments through research and observation. This way, you will be best prepared for the next stage of your survival. At any time, well-prepared action is always more important than blindness. If you don't master the methods of survival in the wilderness, and can't learn to overcome the negative effects of survival in the wilderness on yourself and others, then jungle combat will be useless. Then, there is no way to start jungle combat. Even if you can barely participate in jungle combat, you will only be asking for death. In one breath, Xin Feng read at least a hundred pages of the contents of the Wilderness Survival Training Manual. These contents spilled out close to a million words. It included the various situations that might be encountered in wild survival from preparation, as well as various precautions, including the evaluation of equipment, the evaluation of personal physical quality, as well as various ways to solve problems, various emergency measures, and so on. At this moment, they had been completely imprinted in Xin Feng's mind, and to do all this, it was only a matter of 10 minutes. Without the help of the system, it would be a fool's errand for a normal person to completely memorize so much content even when they were well rested and their minds were most agile. Xin Feng looked up at the other team members and realized that they were also still carefully reading the training manual in their hands. He continued reading for another 5 minutes and finally finished reading the entire training manual completely. All the contents had long been deeply memorized in his mind. Xin Feng closed the book and stood up to move his muscles and bones. Then, reaching inside the system backpack, he took out the jungle combat training manual. He looked around and realized that the other team members, who were still carefully reading the wilderness survival training manual, looked as if they had not fully absorbed and digested those contents. Thinking about it, Shen Feng was much stronger than the rest of the team members in terms of both learning speed and growth speed, so it was normal that he had finished reading while the other team members were still studying. Shen Feng sat down again and continued to read the jungle combat training manual in his hand, which was a real systematic explanation of the essence of jungle combat manual. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Shin Feng merely flipped the first page, and his eyes immediately lit up. The Jungle Combat Training Manual, which opened with the importance of jungle combat. 
This was a training manual for Shin Fong and his team members after the system combined the training contents of the world's top special forces and extracted the essence. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. There were many people in the world right now who believed that jungle combat was far from modern warfare, and that once a battle broke out one would almost rarely encounter jungle warfare again. So they use such a viewpoint to support their proposal to abandon or reduce the weight of jungle combat training in the daily training of troops. Obviously, such a proposal is obviously wrong. Because in fact, with the development of human society and civilization, cities were becoming more and more prosperous. A large city can easily have millions or tens of millions of people. So in the event of a large-scale conflict, people will first avoid directly targeting the city to carry out strikes, which will trigger a humanitarian crisis and even touch the legal and moral bottom line of anti-humanity. That's why large-scale armed conflicts will most likely take place in jungle regions. This is the unified conclusion of every military research organization in every region of the world through long-term observation and research. Therefore, such a problem as jungle warfare, instead of being avoided, must also be emphasized. And jungle combat, for Shin Fong and his team members, is also an important content that must be learned, must master the necessary combat skills. Because in the future, their mission activities would most likely favor the jungle more, regardless of whether it's an operation against armed criminals, or other types of operations, it's all the same. Looking at the description of the opening guide, Shin Fong understood it, he continued to read down, and what followed was a comprehensive description of the various specific environments of jungle combat, as well as the equipment that needed to be used in jungle combat. It turns out that grenades can't be used in jungle combat, this is a new knowledge I've learned. Shin Fong saw that the description of prohibiting the use of grenades in jungle warfare mentioned inside the equipment, and looked at it with great interest. The jungle terrain was a complex environment, and there was often a large amount of lush vegetation. Using a grenade in combat, it was very likely that the grenade thrown would be bounced back by branches, thorns, tree trunks, and so on, thus injuring oneself and one's companions. Therefore, it is very correct to prohibit the use of grenades. In addition, in jungle combat, because of the limitations of the terrain environment, mainly light weapons, jungle such a special terrain environment, often with high temperature, humidity, frequent rainfall and so on, so for the stability of weapons and equipment, sensors and communication equipment, such as the role of the range of constraints, and for the physical quality of people, psychological endurance, also has very high requirements. Soldiers of the overall physical ability to determine the number of weapons and equipment they can carry in the jungle. It also takes into account the question of the final outcome of the battle. Even if the physical fitness of the warrior is very good, carrying too much weaponry can cause movement to become very inconvenient. In addition heavy firepower and all kinds of large equipment have a very limited effect of being used in the middle of the jungle. Because of the dense trees and branches, leaves, etc. will absorb the shell fragments and seriously refract the bullet's trajectory. Therefore, the real jungle warfare master must be a single comprehensive quality of the elite personnel all types of heavy weapons fire support, on the contrary, is not so important. These were all issues that needed attention. After reading, Shin Feng's mind had a clearer concept of jungle combat. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. He continued to read on. The next step was the specific training methods for jungle warfare. As Shin Feng read on, countless knowledge was unconsciously absorbed and digested unceasingly transforming into his own memories, and generate new inspiration for him. Shin Fong was so mesmerized by what he was reading that he didn't know how much time had passed when suddenly he felt his shoulder being gently tapped twice. Squad leader? Falling asleep? Liang Chaoshu stood next to him, curiously glancing towards the training manual in his hand. Oh, you guys finally finished reading it? Shin Fong closed the training manual and put it away in his backpack. Looking up at the rest of the team, he realized that everyone had already finished learning about the content of wilderness survival. They were now looking at themselves with bated breath. Squad leader, I think we can start training straight away. Learning about wilderness survival just now. We have already learned about how we should choose a campsite. Zhang Yanjia said to Shin Feng. Her words immediately made several other team members follow suit and nod their heads. This in itself was not something too difficult to understand. Each and every one of the team members were good students with strong learning abilities. And with the help of the system, it was only natural that they learned quickly. Well, Shin Feng nodded his head. He also felt no need to continue belaboring those basics. How to recognize the direction inside the jungle. Judge your position as well as use maps, compasses and so on to find routes. You guys have mastered that too, right? 
These are all the contents on top of the wilderness survival manual that you guys read just now. Shen Feng asked. He himself had memorized all the contents of the original training manual in its entirety. As for whether the team members could do the same, it wasn't certain. After all, there was still a difference between them and himself. Fortunately, Shen Feng saw that everyone was nodding every single one of them. Not bad. Then, he said as he took out seven paper maps from inside his backpack. Everyone is rested right. Can't wait to start training right. So let's start now. The terrain inside the jungle has a complex environment. The dense trees coupled with the complex magnetic field environment will have a shielding effect on satellite signals as well as other communication signals. So in the jungle, it's difficult to accurately localize a target. When we want to reach a certain destination and launch an attack on a certain target, we can only identify and judge the direction through the most primitive way, and then launch an operation. Now, this is your first training. Xin Feng handed out the map to each member of the team, and also gave them a simple explanation. Getting the map. Liang Chashu glanced at it. Squad leader, when did you buy the map ah? How come, do I still have to report to you in advance? Xin Feng asked rhetorically. Hey, this is not. Just a little curious. Keep your curiosity and use your energy elsewhere. From this second onwards, you have 12 hours to reach your destination. Always remember, this training is different from our first training. This is a primitive jungle. The environment is complex and dangerous. The range of the communicator will be greatly reduced. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. If you encounter danger, once you cannot contact your other teammates, you can only rescue yourselves. I hope that each and every one of you will get pumped up and take it seriously. Don't lose your little lives here. Hearing Xin Feng's serious warning, every member of the team was instantly energized. Everyone had also put away their relaxed expressions, as every one of them, recalled the experience they had during their first training session. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. At that time, a member of the team had even been bitten by a poisonous snake, and at that time, they were only training for activities in the outer areas of the real primitive jungle. Even so it had almost cost everyone half their lives. Now, Hearing Xin Feng say that inside the primitive jungle, it was highly likely that both the communicator and the locator would not work. When everyone encountered danger, more often than not, they could only rely on their own abilities to save themselves. For a while, every member of the team was more or less nervous. This is a real field survival test. It was a real combat training where life and death were at stake. If you are not careful, there is a real possibility that the whole village will eat a seat. Squad leader. Can't we act collectively? If everyone encounters any unexpected situation, there will be a good care. Sun Bin raised his hand and raised a question. As I said, this is the first test for each of you, and the first lesson of training. Wilderness survival. Learn to survive before you can talk about combat. The map in each of your hands has been marked with the end point, and I've hidden some information on top of the maps. Information that you need to look for at your respective endpoints. Wild plants that only exist at the endpoints. This will serve as proof that you have ever completed your mission and reached the endpoint. Study your maps well and travel through the primitive jungle to reach the endpoint. 30 kilometers away. Within 12 hours. Then, bring back to me what I have asked you to find. This will be considered passing the first test. Don't be eliminated. Otherwise, I'll personally buy you guys air tickets back to the 9th district. Xin Feng said, folding the map in his hand and putting it away. Afterward, he waved his hand. Let's go. He turned around and walked towards the depths of the jungle, not paying any more attention to the reactions of the other team members. This first level was not only a test of the team members' sense of direction and ability to survive in the wild, but also a comprehensive test of their physical abilities, willpower, and so on. Still, it was the same saying, learn to survive first before being qualified to talk about combat. If you can't even survive, it doesn't matter what combat is or isn't. Looking at Xin Feng's back as he disappeared in front of him, in the jungle with thick branches and leaves that covered the sky, the remaining six team members, your eyes looked at me. I'm going to. Class leader really left us alone to go by ourselves, ah? Uh? Liang Chaoshu said while subconsciously taking out his cell phone. The rechargeable treasure still has a large amount of electricity, but the cell phone has no signal. The squad leader is right. We were thrown into this place as equal to being isolated from the world. All signals are naturally interfered with, or even blocked. Looking at the cell phone, the X in the signal column, Liang Chaoshu felt a wave of fear and scorn of the unknown. The other team members, too, began to look at each other with indecision. Do we really have to split up? It's too dangerous, isn't it? Sun Bin hesitated. 
If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. This is the squad leader's second test for us. Remember the first training. It was a test to see if we have the qualifications to become his team members. And now, it's a test to see if we have the qualifications to remain inside the team. A team that will become stronger and stronger. The situations we face in the future will also become more and more complicated. If we can't continue to grow and keep up with the squad leader's team, sooner or later, we will only become the existence of dragging our feet, rather than when the time comes, at the critical moment to drag down our own teammates, so that it would be better for us to eliminate ourselves at. Zhang Yanjia's words were a little bit not very nice. However, what she said was the truth of the moment. The other few team members, after hearing this, all looked at each other once again. TSK, I say, what are you guys wimping out for? It's just a wilderness survival test. It's not like we haven't experienced it before. Time is running out. I don't care about you guys. I'm going to leave first. Let's meet at the end of the line. Liang Chaoshu opened the map in his hand and saw that on the map labeled with a large amount of place name information and with latitude and longitude line scales, there was indeed a red dot 30 kilometers away. There was the destination that one was heading to. One kilometer beyond the endpoint was the location where all the team members regrouped. Each team member, after arriving at their respective endpoints, collected the relevant wild plants according to Xin Feng's requirements, and then needed to head to the final rendezvous location to reassemble. 12 hours, 30 kilometers of primitive jungle marching. The squad leader is really wolfing out ah. This is simply not a task that can be accomplished by a human being right. Wang Shichang shook his head, and after memorizing the location of the endpoint on his map, he carefully put the map away inside the waterproof pocket of his jacket. Afterward, he waved goodbye to the rest of the team. Everyone, I'll leave first. See you at the finish line. After saying that, Wang Shichang quickly disappeared from the view of the others like a nimble panther with his sniper rifle on his back. Xin Feng, Liang Chaoshu, and Wang Shichang had all set off. At the scene, there were only four people left. Sun Bin, Zhang Nenjia, Yang Lu, and Yuan Weihong. The few people looked at me and I looked at you. Sun Bin pursed his lips for a moment, resumed carrying his own backpack, and looked at the others. See you at the finish line, everyone. By the way, Blast, can you give me a copy of that antidote snake medicine recipe of yours? Sun Bin looked at Yuan Weihong. No problem. I'll write it for you. Yuan Weihong was very generous and decisively wrote down her own exclusive antidote to snake venom formula. And there was more than one. She handed the three formulas to Sun Bin, Yang Lu, and Zhang Nenjia respectively. Everyone, let's cut the crap and hurry up and get going. Take care and be safe. Remember the saying, everything in heaven and earth is mutually exclusive. Anything that is poisonous, there will be something that is mutually exclusive with it present within seven steps. After saying that, Yuan Weihong picked up his own backpack and walked in another direction. I'm also leaving. Sun Bin waved his hand at Yang Lu and Zhang Nianjia. Schoolboy, it's just the two of us left. Are you going to give up? Zhang Nianjia pursed her lips and looked at Yang Lu. I am not going to give up lightly. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Yang Lu shook her head and decisively carried her own traveling bag, raising her eyes to Zhang Nianjia. This only represents my personal choice. If you want to stay, I will support your decision as well. Butler, are you kidding me? There's no way I'm giving up. Last to go. Just want to spend a little more time with everyone. After all, we'll be separated for 12 hours. All right, no more nonsense. Let's set off too. Zhang Yanjia waved his hand, waved goodbye to Yang Lu, and also rushed towards his own finish line. Jungle weight traversing. The most testing thing is one's physical ability and willpower. In addition to the sense of direction is also very important. Without the skill to recognize the direction and find the route out of the jungle, even the best physical strength will eventually collapse. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. It was unbearably hot and unusually humid here. A slap down can even kill hundreds of mosquitoes. And it is also very important to prevent various disease problems brought about by mosquito bites. If once in the primitive jungle with lush forests and no roads to pass through, because of malaria and other diseases and fall down. What this meant was self-evident. After Shin Feng parted ways with his team members and left not long afterward, he found a mosquito repellent herb that he wanted. This was one of the reliable herbs recorded in the Wilderness Survival Training Manual. After mashing it with a stone or any way you could think of, just smear it on the parts of your body that were exposed to the air, like the neck, back of the hands, face, etc. Having taken care of the problem of mosquito bites, now, 
Shen Feng planned to go find some water first. Almost all of their supplies had been destroyed by the enemy with rockets during the previous attack. Right now, Shen Feng didn't carry much water on him, only two 350 milliliter bottles of mineral water. Rushing through the hot and humid jungle, relying on just these two bottles of water was obviously not enough. Without timely hydration, danger could occur at any time. This was also one of the survival challenges for every member of the team, including Shen Feng. In addition food was also a big problem. Of course 12 hours of marching was basically enough with the packs of instant dry food that Shen Feng had on him, so he didn't need to spend extra effort to look for food. Of course if it happened to happen, Shen Feng didn't mind having more food reserves. Shen Feng recalled the contents of the training manual. It mentioned that the best way to find food and water in the middle of the jungle was to observe the activities of the locals, their daily routine, where they hunted, how they obtained water, etc., were all good references. Also the wild animals in the jungle are in need of food and water, so tracking the traces left by animals in the jungle can often have unexpected gains as well. However, it was obvious that the latter was far less reliable than the former. Shin Feng was lucky. He had only been walking for a while when he found some traces inside the jungle. By carefully examining and recognizing them, Shin Feng was sure that these were traces of activities left behind by human beings, and that the other party was walking barefoot on the ground to leave such clear and smooth footprint traces on the muddy ground. This should be a local person living in the jungle. Shin Feng quickly made a judgment. As one of the relatively economically underdeveloped regions in the world, the sixth region, many locals here did not all live in the city. The jungles surrounding the cities were dotted with many villages, and the inhabitants within them still retained a relatively primitive lifestyle to this day. Their villages may not have running water or electricity. Every day, they still needed to hunt in the jungle to make ends meet. Shin Feng decided to track the footprints left by this local to see how his luck would be. Of course there was a prerequisite for this. If the route traveled by the target you want to track has deviated from your own destination, then you'd better give up. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. Lian Chaoshu was not as lucky as Shin Feng. Having only left the group for less than 10 minutes, he was already starting to get a little dizzy. Holy crap, how do all these trees look the same? Liang Chaoshu turned around in place twice and felt his head spinning. He took out his own copy of the map from his pocket and checked it. His brain was even more buzzing and chaotic, completely unable to find his way and judge his position. This paper map, replace it with an electronic map how good, direct one key navigation. Alas, no, I have to be calm at times like this, the squad leader said it. In the jungle, a negative will to survive is absolutely fatal. I have to get my spirits up. Liang Chashu wiped the beads of sweat on his cheeks, from the humid and sultry heat, and loosened his collar again. He was giving himself a pep talk about pulling himself together to seriously look for a route out of here. But just then he suddenly felt a vicious tingle coming from his neck, followed by a tingling sensation that began to spread. The onset was very rapid. Liang Chaoshu let out a hiss and subconsciously slapped his right neck. Looking down, under the hazy night color, he vaguely recognized that it was a mosquito. The corpse of the mosquito on his palm and his own blood that had just been sucked out by it. A big pile as if it was the size of a soybean. Holy shit! Liang Chaoshu had a jolt. And only now did he remember that the jungle was not a city. There were all kinds of snakes, insects and ants here. Those mosquitoes and mountain leeches with disease-causing bacteria. If they took the opportunity to drill into their clothes, what would happen? Thinking of these, Liang Chaoshu had goosebumps all over his body. His scalp was numb, and he hurriedly wrapped the loose collar tightly. By the way, what does the self-defense chapter in Wilderness Survival say? When I encounter such a situation in the jungle, I should first. Right. First look for local herbs. Liang Chaoshu closed his eyes tightly, trying hard to recall what he had just memorized. However, it seemed that he failed to completely memorize the contents of the Wilderness Survival Training Manual, which was several hundred pages long. And at this time, he had to temporarily do his homework and hurriedly took the training manual out of his backpack to look through it. He crouched down and quietly turned on the flashlight. This was a dangerous thing to do. In the pitch black jungle, playing the flashlight was tantamount to exposing one's position to the enemy. In addition it might also attract other uninvited guests. Liang Chaoshu knew this very well in his heart, but he couldn't care less now. Fortunately, with his vague memory, he quickly found the knowledge he wanted among the hundreds of pages of content. This time he seriously and carefully memorized the herbs he needed to find. Afterwards, turning off the flashlight and closing the book, as long as those herbs are mashed and smeared on the body, not only can they repel mosquitoes, but they can also prevent venomous snake attacks as well as many kinds of poisonous insects inside the jungle. The hundreds of years of survival wisdom of the locals, it should be reliable. 
Liang Chaoshu mumbled to himself as he organized his backpack and got up, ready to leave this place to look for herbs, but the moment he raised his head, suddenly his entire body sweated and even his hair exploded. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or the uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. My chow. Liang Chaoshu snapped back to his senses, and after blurting out a national curse off the top of his head, he turned around and ran, but he wasn't really trying to run away. Instead, in the second after he turned around and stepped out, he turned around violently again and threw a right hook punch out at the pursuer behind him. The moment Liang Chao Shu looked up, what he saw was a chimpanzee staring at him. That guy didn't know where he came from, and Liang Chao Shu actually didn't realize it at all beforehand. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can read normally. When he reacted, he was directly startled. He turned around at this time and threw a right hook punch which happened to hit the left cheek of the chimpanzee that was chasing him over. A head of over 1 meter 9 and nearly 2 meters, coupled with well-trained fighting skills, the power of this punch directly knocked the chimpanzee to the ground, and he was cured of insomnia on the spot and fell to the ground and fainted. Liang Chaoshu looked at his fist, stunned, looking at the motionless chimpanzee on the ground, whose head was almost the size of an adult. He tentatively went up to inspect it, confirming that this chimpanzee had already been dumbfounded by his punch and was completely unconscious. Liang Chaoshu let out a sigh of relief. Martyr there's even this thing here? This jungle is also too dangerous. With deep scorn, he carefully turned around and quickly left, not daring to linger. Right now, Liang Chaoshu only wanted to find herbs that could prevent the bites of snakes, insects, rats, and ants, and then hurry towards his end. He didn't want to continue staying in this hellish place any longer. On the other hand, Sun Bin also encountered similar trouble as Liang Chaoshu not long after he started. However, the one that attacked him was a wild boar. It was black and dark, with thick, sharp fur all over its body. The two curved tusks, in the darkness, transmitted a cold light, giving people a feeling of numbness in the scalp. Inside the jungle, the wild boar's threat to humans was half as bad as those carnivores, maybe even more so. After all, an adult wild boar can weigh more than 200 kilograms. Their speed is also very fast. Toward you directly a brutal pig rammed over. Afraid of Tyson to come to the spot to kneel down and sing conquest, one of the ways to dodge, I'm afraid, is like Sun Bin at this moment, he watched the huge and bulky boar, with a speed of more than 50 kilometers per hour rush towards himself, Sun Bin was mentally very strong, in danger, looked up to his head above an arm thick horizontal branch, he legs fierce force, a vertical rise, hands grasping the branch easily climbed to the tree, the big wild boar, which had gone crazy, quickly rushed past under him and stopped with a sharp break 7 or 8 meters away. Looking back at him, those dark eyes flashed with a kind of intelligent light. For a moment, Sunbin looked at this large boar as if he was seeing a pair of human eyes instead of a wild beast. Fuck, has it become fertilized you? Sunbin emotionally in a state of exuberance, the body of adrenaline large secretion, do not dare to have the slightest drop of caution. Fortunately, that big boar, just foraging for food passing by. It was obviously not too interested in this sudden encounter with an uninvited guest. See Sun Bin has been hiding in the tree does not come down. It wandered under the tree for a while after they grunted, twisting the big fat ass, low head on the ground arching the soil away to continue to forage for food to go. Finally gone ah. Sun Bin let out a long sigh of relief. Since there are wild boars in this jungle, there shouldn't also be leopards and tigers, right? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled. Please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. There are definitely pythons too. No, it's better to hurry up and get out of here. Sun Bin winced and nimbly jumped down from the tree. After landing on the ground, he saw that right next to him was a herb. This thing he remembered. There were colorful diagrams recorded inside the training manual. As long as you pick its leaves and mash them, then apply them on your body. Not only could it do the effect of repelling mosquitoes and insects, but it could also cover up the human odor on one's body. This would prevent one from being tracked and attacked by the predators in the jungle. Sunbin picked off a large pile of herbal leaves and looked around for a few moments, not finding any tools that could be used to mash these leaves. There wasn't even a single rock on the ground nearby. He looked at the herb leaves in his hand and launched himself in his heart. I hope you guys aren't poisonous. Saying this, Sunbin directly stuffed these herbs into his mouth and chewed them. Soon he spat out these chewed herbs again and quickly applied them to his body. The effect was simply immediate. Those mosquitoes that were still buzzing around him just now, all of them flew away at this moment. Sunbin also smelled a pungent smell of herbs, which emanated from the crumbs of herbs that he had applied on his body. I go, this smell, even humans can't stand it. 
Animals with such a sensitive sense of smell must be even more unbearable. Sun Bin pinched his nose, recognized the direction, and quickly disappeared into the jungle. On the other end, Wang Shiqian, Yang Lu, Zhang Nenjia, Yuan Weihong and a few other members of the team similarly encountered their own troubles after leaving the team to act alone. Although everyone's traveling routes were different, they were all in the same jungle. Either they encountered poisonous insect bites or wild beast attacks, or, because they were not careful to watch the road in the dark, they stepped on the ground and rolled down the ditch. In short, everyone was experiencing a harsh test of survival at this moment. In this cruel environment, to survive, each member of the team must utilize their greatest ingenuity. The slightest carelessness would lead them into the abyss of doom, but every member of the team, by virtue of his or her own excellent skills, successfully turned the danger into an easy way to get through the difficult times. This kind of training is also a very great reward. In the actual survival battles against nature in the field, the team members' mastery of the application of the various knowledge points in the training manual had been greatly strengthened. They didn't realize that they had already begun to grow up little by little towards being experts in survival in the wilderness. At the same time, their physical quality, under the torment of this kind of training, was also constantly being improved. It was believed that after this experience, they would become more experienced than before, with a stronger physique and tougher willpower. Xin Feng had already drunk one of the two bottles of mineral water in his hand after walking a distance of about one kilometer. At this moment, he was carrying a 20 to 30 kilogram backpack on his back, and in the dark jungle, he was moving forward with one foot deep and one foot shallow, only feeling that his mouth was dry. The rate of physical strength consumption was also faster than expected. After this short one kilometer journey, he was already starting to get a little slightly out of breath. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. The footprints on the ground had disappeared into the jungle five minutes earlier. It was as if the person had disappeared out of thin air. Shin Fong couldn't find them no matter how he searched, so he could only re-identify the direction and continue to advance in the jungle, rushing towards his destination. However, just as Shin Fong passed through a low bush and came to the outside of a relatively sparse and quite a few woods, he suddenly heard the sound of gurgling water. Shin Fong stopped, slowed down his breathing, and listened carefully after adjusting himself. He didn't dare to take it lightly. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or the smooth reading mode to read normally. The rattlesnake would mimic the sound of water flowing by shaking its tail, thus attracting animals that were eager to find a water source. In turn, they would attack them through ambush, winning with their venom. Although this place was a jungle, it wasn't the same living environment as a rattlesnake. However, Shin Feng still did not dare to be negligent. He listened carefully to recognize it. This time, he heard very clearly, the sound of water flowing, not a simulation. Moreover, the humidity of the air began to change. The temperature all around became different, out of the dense, primitive jungle that was sweltering and humid with poor airflow. The airflow here was now clearly speeding up. There was a slightly cool wind blowing from the front carrying a burst of water vapor. Shin Feng took a few quick steps, and after about 50 meters, he finally penetrated beyond the woods and came to an open area. In front of him was a river bank that was quite large in size. A large river with a width of about 70 to 80 meters was rushing and meandering eastward not far from the river bank. The sound of flowing water was strong, and it was this large river that was emitting it. Finally found it. Shin Feng breathed a sigh of relief and after observing and confirming that there were no wild animals as well as other dangers in this vicinity, he then left the bushes and walked down to the river bank. Without the obstruction of the lush jungle, the field of vision became wide open and the light was much brighter. Shin Feng looked up and saw countless stars in the night sky. Without the light pollution generated by artificial light sources and with his excellent eyesight, the night sky looked so beautiful and deep. However, Shin Feng did not have so much free time to carefully enjoy the moving night colors. He took out his map and checked it. Comparing the location of the river on the map, he confirmed his approximate location at this moment. Afterwards, he took out his water bottle and quickly walked towards the large river rushing ahead. One of the major functions of the primitive forest was to purify the water. After the rainwater had been filtered by the developed roots of the trees and other plants buried deep underground in the jungle, plus the multiple layers of vegetation with the bottom layer, it had become very clear and clean. By merging into the rushing rivers with extremely fast flow and high oxygen content, microorganisms cannot get a chance to reproduce, which is equivalent to further purification of the water flow. Even, it could be drunk directly without any problem. However, for safety's sake, Shin Feng still made his own simple filtration tool according to the method in the training manual, utilizing the environment and tools in his own vicinity. 
and re-filtered the collected river water. After several times of repeated filtration, he then carefully contained this water. These were the necessary source of life for the next 10 hours of his own adventure, although the map was clearly labeled. After leaving this big river, there were several other relatively small rivers crossing one's travel route on the necessary route ahead. However, Shen Fong was unsure of the specifics of those rivers, and it was unclear whether they were polluted. Therefore, Shen Fong packed a few more bottles of water. Although it increased the weight of his backpack, at least he would not become overwhelmed when he encountered an unexpected situation. At the speed at which the others are traveling, it's almost time to reach this river. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Shin Feng took a sip of the clear and dry water and looked in the direction of the rivers upstream and downstream. Several of his team members split up although they traveled different routes. The direction where each person's final destination was located was roughly the same. Moreover, Shin Feng had also set up a meeting point within one kilometer of everyone's final destination. Therefore, the other team members were bound to pass by the river as well. Let's hope that they can all successfully solve the troubles they encountered. Shin Feng stuffed the water bottle into his backpack, withdrew his attention, and raised his eyes to the large river rushing in front of him, with a width of 70 to 80 meters. With such a current, it wasn't easy to cross it. Without much hesitation, Shin Feng directly walked towards the downstream of the river. Just now, when he was purifying and filtering the water source, he took a short break in passing. It was in such a short while that all the previously expended physical strength had magically recovered. Not only that, Shin Feng also felt that his body had become much stronger. The muscles were full of explosive power, and the physical strength was even more abundant. Obviously, this was the growth effect brought about by the system's subtle strengthening. While the physical quality became stronger, the individual's recovery ability also became faster. When the training was completed, Shin Feng knew that he would definitely be transformed once again. However, although his physical strength had been fully restored and his physical ability was quite a bit stronger than before, it wasn't enough of a base to forcibly cross the turbulent river, about a hundred meters downstream. With the help of the faint starlight of the night, one could clearly see that there was a piece of relatively gentle water. There was a backwater bay. Shin Feng planned to cross the river there, which would be safer. Shin Feng was not wrong in judging the strength of his team members. Not long after he had successfully crossed the river and continued towards his destination, several of his team members, one after another, had also arrived at the same river from different locations. All of them relied on their respective skills to successfully cross the river and continue on their way. For the next 20 kilometers or so, each team member would continue to face more unknown dangers. This was a great test of their individual willpower, physical fitness, as well as the various survival skills and common sense abilities they possessed. Time, so unconsciously passing by the minute. After experiencing various dangers such as monkeys attacking, poisonous snakes, orangutans attacking, and encountering large cats chasing in the jungle. Finally, Shin Feng arrived at his end point an hour before dawn. He looked at the time. His jungle traversing trip, carrying about 30 kilograms of weight, had traversed a total of 30 kilometers. The time taken was 8 hours, 17 minutes and 35 seconds. And in the world, the topmost special forces to complete this kind of related training, the achievement to reach the standard of excellence was 12 hours. Exactly 12 hours is excellent. Less than 12 hours is especially excellent. And more than that is good. Obviously. Shin Feng's achievement like this was already properly a particularly excellent achievement. Of course, he had the added support of the system, and his physical strength recovered particularly fast. This does not mean that ordinary people can also operate like this. 12 hours challenges the absolute limit of the human body. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode can be read normally, whether it was their physical ability or their willpower to survive or the various fighting techniques they had mastered, their common sense, their knowledge and skills of survival, and so on. Despite having the guardianship of the system, the physical strength recovery speed was fast. However, Shin Feng's 30 kilometers of this journey over still made him suffer a lot, and the combat clothes on his body were all scratched quite a bit, leaving a trail of scars. Even, several times he escaped death. Shin Feng simply rested for a while at the same place and climbed up the tree to observe the situation nearby. Being at a high place could prevent the vast majority of wild beasts from attacking. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. After confirming that he was safe, Shen Feng opened the system's monitoring interface. Here, one could clearly see the specific situation of each member of the team. It included their vital signs, specific location, 
and current status, etc. Xin Feng realized that his six team members were a bit more outstanding than he had expected. At this moment they were also close to arriving at the finish line, with only the last two kilometers or so remaining from the finish line, and there were still more than three hours left until the end of this training session. Undoubtedly, the training performance of each and every one of his team members, when put in the context of the world, even according to the training standards of the top tier special forces, was already the best of the best, confirming that his team members did not have any major problems, and after a short rest, Xin Feng's physical strength had also fully recovered. He took out a pack of compressed cookies and simply nibbled a few bites, barely filling his hunger. After that, he jumped under the tree and searched around for a while, and found his quest objective, a herb called Five-Fingered Hairy Peach. After collecting it, Shen Feng left this place and went to the rendezvous point one kilometer away. He was going to prepare a big gift for his team members. After spending about ten minutes or so, Shen Feng arrived near the rendezvous point one kilometer away. He removed the backpack on his body and rummaged for an engineer's shovel from it and then started to busy himself around the area. Taking out the sapper shovel wasn't to dig up herbs or anything else. Xin Feng was laying mines. He had dug out about 50 consecutive pits of varying sizes near the rendezvous point. The slightly larger pits were directly used to make simple traps, which people would easily trip and fall if they stepped into them carelessly. The smaller ones were used by Xin Feng to bury mines. Of course, he wasn't trying to kill his own team members. These mines had been specially treated, and had been pulled out of the explosive part of the charge. It could still be triggered, but it would not explode or cause harm to the personnel. Xin Feng did this, of course, to set up a final test for the team members. Don't ever think that the first training subject is as simple as letting you learn to survive in the jungle. Xin Feng quickly set up the traps. Immediately afterward, he found a suitable location near the rendezvous point and took out the sniper rifle he was carrying on his body to set it up again. With the assistance of the infrared night vision thermal imager, all of a sudden, the entire jungle world in Xin Feng's eyes began to become different. In the jungle, all the objects whose bodies carry temperature began to be exposed to his vision. Everything within a radius of one kilometer was under Xin Feng's sniper rifle scope. Inside his sniper rifle, of course, it was not loaded with live ammunition, but with blanks. This was the second test for the team members at the finish line. Xin Feng, who had ambushed, waited patiently for about half an hour or so, and finally six team members appeared one after another from different directions. The first one that Xin Feng aimed at was Wang Shichang. This kid was the ace sniper in the team, and his sniping skills were second only to his own. Therefore, Xin Feng decided to get rid of this threat first. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. This way, it wouldn't be so easy for others to find their position and launch a counterattack. Welcome to Hell Special Training Week. Xin Feng lightly smiled and placed his finger on top of the trigger, and the moment he was about to pull it, suddenly Wang Shichang disappeared with a tumble in his vision. Oh, Xin Feng's heart was slightly startled, and he decisively fired. Swoosh, the sniper rifle shot out blanks, hitting the position where Wang Shichang had just rolled over and dodged. However, it was dodged by this kid. The thermal imager clearly exposed the other party's trajectory. Good boy, quite alert. Wang Shichang was actually able to discover his ambush which was quite unexpected by Xin Feng. He quickly re-aimed and fired his second shot. However, this shot was surprisingly dodged by Wang Shichang once again. It was just a little bit short of being able to hit the other party's foot. Xin Feng instantly came with a powerful fighting spirit, and without saying anything, he shot again. And the interval between the two shots before and after was less than a second. Shu. This time, the blanks accurately hit Wang Shichang. The corner of Xin Feng's mouth slowly rose, revealing a playful smile. Raising the infrared thermal imaging binoculars next to him for observation, he saw that Wang Shichang, who was lying on the ground inside the bushes and was hit in the back by his own shot, seemed to freeze for a moment. Afterward, the other party rolled over and looked over to where he was. Squad leader? Was it you who sneak attacked me just now no? In the communicator, there was a murmur as well as Wang Shichang's intermittent inquiry. This geographical location, the forest was not as dense, the terrain was also relatively higher than other areas. Therefore, the radio signal was more or less restored. Hearing Wang Shichang's inquiry, Xin Feng secretly laughed, but did not say anything, instead raising his sniper rifle and aiming at the other team members. Clairvoyant, is that you talking no? Liang Chaoshu, who was advancing cautiously, wary of the poisonous insects and beasts that might scurry out from under his feet, suddenly heard a call coming from the radio, and he froze for a moment. Looks like everyone's communication has been restored. Be careful, someone is ambushing us. I've been shot, but it's a blank. Wang Shichang spoke out what he had just encountered. 
reminding the rest of the team. At the same time, he also removed his sniper rifle and started searching for the location of the enemy that had just attacked him. Shin Feng had long since left the sniping position he was in just now. He switched to another position to aim at Sunbin, which was Wang Shichang's spotter and likewise had good sniping abilities. However, after Shin Feng heard Wang Shichang's warning to the other team members coming from inside the communicator, he immediately smiled playfully and lightly. The sniper rifle once again aimed at the other party. This time, Shin Feng shot at the gun in Wang Shichang's hand. Swoosh! Wang Shichang was still searching for Shin Feng's position, and as a result, the sniper rifle in his hand was directly knocked out. He looked at the sniper rifle that fell aside, and his heart was astonished. At the same time, he also realized Shin Feng's intention of doing so. Everyone, I've been killed in action. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. This should be one of the tests for us. The next is up to you guys. Wang Shichang put his weapon away, pulled out a compressed cracker and a bottle of water, and just sat on the ground and ate leisurely. Squad leader, you are really ruthless and black ah, actually ambushed us here. You are really an old 6IU. When Liang Chao Shu heard Wang Shichang's words, he immediately pressed the radio and spat at Shin Feng. However, what responded to him was a whistling blank bullet. After trekking through the primitive jungle for the whole night, the extreme traversal of more than 8 hours had already made the team members physically and mentally exhausted. After arriving near the rendezvous point, everyone was almost in a state of extreme relaxation at this moment. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can be read normally. They hadn't even thought that someone would set a trap here to ambush them. Even more so, they also could not have imagined that Shin Feng, who was the captain of the team, would actually lay hands on them. Therefore, when Liang Chaoshu was still in a state of daze and issued a question, the blank shot by Shin Feng did not have the slightest surprise at all and directly hit the target. Liang Chaoshu looked at his chest near his heart in dismay, the place where he was hit by the blanks. It was only at this moment that the feeling of pain began to spread through the body armor. I'm going to, squad leader. Are you for real? Liang Chaoshu still couldn't believe that he would actually be shot at by Shin Feng, even though it was blanks. Hey, dog bear, you've been killed in action too. Sit down and rest honestly. Wang Shichang felt funny. This guy hadn't even reacted until now. Obviously, this 30 kilometers of extreme hiking had left him completely exhausted and confused. After settling Liang Chaoshu with a single shot, Shin Feng didn't hesitate for a second and immediately turned his gun to retarget Sun Bin. However, what surprised him was that this kid, Sun Bin, had even started to dodge. He meandered through the jungle, quickly using the surrounding terrain to cover himself, and at the same time, he had already unloaded his backpack and started rummaging around. At this moment, Sun Bin was hiding behind a large tree. Inside each team member's backpack, in addition to live ammunition, there are several boxes of blanks. This was specially prepared in order to deal with this kind of actual combat training. After all, the team members were shooting at each other so you couldn't really train with live ammunition. Sun Bin was rummaging through the blanks in his backpack, intending to counterattack Shin Feng, and at this time, Zhang Yanjia was the first to react first, and had already started to use her weapon to counterattack on the approximate direction of where Shin Feng was. They, several female comrades, had been listening to the conversation inside the radio, so naturally, they also knew what was going on right now. Not only Zhang Yanjia, the two of them, Yuan Weihong and Yang Lu, had also occupied favorable terrain positions at this time, searching for Shin Feng's approximate bearing, for a clock direction, everyone, Zhang Nenjia directly shot a shuttle at the approximate location where Shin Feng was, and at this time, Shin Feng finally couldn't help but laugh out loud, did you guys forget that I can also hear your conversations, if you want to counterattack, at least adjust the radio channel first, right, this is another mistake, as the words fell, Shin Feng had already fired decisively, bang, instantly, Sun Bin, who was hiding behind the trees, only exposing half of his shoulder, with an exposed area less than the size of a pack of paper towels, was hit on the spot. Ouch I go. Sun Bin cried out in pain. Squad leader you're also too ruthless. I'm only that much exposed area. This you can even hit ah. Sun Bin rolled on the spot, while ruthlessly showing Shin Feng and the others a wave of his own operation. While rolling and jumping up, he quickly reloaded, and raised his sniper rifle to fire a shot towards Shin Feng's location for counterattack. His sniper rifle was the same model as Wang Shichang's. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. This judgment and shooting was very accurate. The bullet whistled towards Shin Feng. 
It just so happened that Shin Feng had just gotten up to leave this shooting position and change places to avoid being successfully countered by his teammates. The bullet that came whistling was just a little bit short of hitting the position where he was just lying down. Good boy. Shin Feng exclaimed in praise and quickly disappeared from the crowd's view. Everyone heard it just now. It's the squad leader who intends to compete with us. Switch the radio channel. Sun Bin touched his raw shoulder and quickly reminded the other team members on the other end of the radio. Squad leader's tactical strategy is being utilized quite well. First, I will be taken out as the main sniper. And then it's you, the machine gunner who can provide strong fire support for the team. Dog bear, the two of us are now in the same boat. Wang Shershine did not switch channels, but smiled and teased Liang Chaoshu. Harm. Mentioning this Liang Chaoshu was filled with groundlessness. Who the hell would I have thought that the squad leader would even stage a sneak attack here? He was a bit chagrined. He was a little slow to react just now. If he had reacted faster, he wouldn't have just been killed by Shin Feng without even having the chance to strike back. Monkey, where is the squad leader? Zhang Ninja lost Shin Feng's position and asked Sun Bin through the radio. Don't worry, the squad leader can't run away. I've already released the drone. Yang Lu, at this time, reminded the rest of the team that she had already put her technological equipment to use. Be careful oh, these equipment are worth a lot of money at Schoolmaster. This is a jungle. All communication signals will be attenuated. And the drone's range of action will also be diminished. Yuan Weihong reminded. Don't worry, I found the squad leader's position. 3 o'clock, on that tree, 12 meters from the ground. Yang Lu accurately reported the footage captured back by the drone. At this moment, Shin Feng had only just rediscovered his firing angle and was about to shoot Sun Bin in seconds. Sun Bin's reaction wasn't slow, and after hearing Yang Lu's words, he had already turned around to lock on his aim. The movement is quite standard, but, slow. The corner of Shin Feng's mouth slowly rose, and with a gap of about 0.5 seconds, he shot first. Swoosh, the bullet whizzed by, hitting exactly where Sun Bin's sideways exposed right front chest was located. He was smart enough to not choose to expose his heart and other vital parts. With the bulletproof vest's obstruction, this shot you can hardly judge whether or not to dry out the opponent. However, at this time, Sun Bin had stopped resisting, his hands spread helplessly, and he gave a bitter smile towards Shin Feng's location. He gave up resisting. Everyone, I've also sacrificed myself, so I'll rely on yourselves next. After Sun Bin finished speaking, he also followed the example of Wang Shichang and Liang Chaoshu and found a relatively comfortable position to sit down and drink some water. Squad leader, you're a little too ruthless, directly taking out our three males and leaving three female comrades behind. Ha! Huh? Liang Chaoshu switched back to the radio channel from earlier and shouted at Shin Feng. However, his motives were impure, and his purpose was to lure Shin Feng to speak. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. The drone that Yang Lu had released had sound capturing equipment that could assist in localization as long as the target opened his mouth. So Xin Feng did not respond at this time. He was silently, creeping amongst the low bushes, preparing to exterminate the remaining three team members. The squad leader doesn't seem to know that our drone has a thermal imaging function. Yuan Weihong snickered at this time. This was because from the intelligence data that Yang Lu had shared with them, it showed that Shin Feng was moving with a clear trajectory. The three people, Zhang Ninjia, Yuan Weihong as well as Yang Lu, had assault rifles in their hands. They did not have sniper rifles. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. At this time, even with the help of the drone flying above the woods, which had filmed and scouted Shin Feng's exact location, there was no way to make an effective counterattack. Let's touch over and give the squad leader a surprise. Yuan Weihong took the lead and quietly approached towards Shin Feng's position. What she didn't realize was that she was, at this moment, falling inside another trap of Shin Feng. Everyone be careful. I always feel that class president is deliberately luring us. Yang Lu issued a reminder while controlling the drone to continue scouting and tracking Shin Feng's position. Shin Feng was still crawling amongst the low bushes looking as if he was trying to evade everyone's pursuit while looking for a suitable opportunity to strike once again. One on three. We have the advantage. Blast. I'll give you cover. Let's finish off this arrogant brat, Zhang Nianjia said, and also followed Yuan Weihong to quickly approach towards Xin Feng's position. However, in the next second, the moment her left foot stepped out, suddenly Zhang Nianjia regretted it. There was a crunching sound, although it was very faint. Inside this quiet jungle, it was particularly abrupt. This mechanical crunching sound was too familiar. They had already encountered it several times during their first training. Coupled with this period of learning and consolidation, Zhang Ninja realized at the first moment that he seemed to have stepped on a landmine. 
Schoolmaster Blast, it seems like I've been hit. Zhang Yanjia's mood tensed up. She still didn't know if what she had stepped on was a real landmine or a training mine just like the blanks. Hearing Zhang Yanjia's words, everyone was all startled. What's going on? There are still mines? Wang Shichang was surprised. Squad leader, you're playing a bit big here. You even buried mines? Liang Chashu also couldn't help but once again at this time, switching channels to inquire at Xin Feng. You guys can be careful. Xin Feng finally responded. This used to be one of the battlefields where several fragments of the 6th region mixed. More than half a century to a century ago. But there were very fierce battles. And there are mines everywhere in the jungle that haven't been cleared out yet. The ones I'm using are training mines. They don't have the power to kill. But if you guys don't care enough to step on the real ones, then, boom. Shen Feng's response made Liang Chaoshu's scalp numb and stiffen on the spot. The entire person had a shuddering feeling up. He subconsciously lowered his head, looked at where his butt was sitting, and after confirming that there was no danger, he snapped back to his senses, hurrying to switch radio channels to remind the other team members. Everyone be careful. Squad leader said that not only the fake mines he laid here, but also the real ones. It's left over from the war that happened in the 6th district in the last century. As soon as she heard Liang Chaoshu's reminder, Zhang Nenjia, who was already in a tense mood, became even more uneasy at this time. It can't be? Then ask the squad leader if this one I'm stepping on right now is the real one or a fake one ah? Zhang Yanjia was a bit scared. If he was really that unlucky and stepped on a Songfa thunder from the last century, wouldn't he be dead? Several other team members were also very surprised by this. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or read mode to read normally. No one expected Shin Feng to actually play for real. Squad leader. Isn't it a bit overtrained? Sun Bin questioned. The real and fake landmines were mixed together, allowing the team members to run amok in the middle of such an environment. This was really too dangerous. In case anyone was that unlucky, wouldn't their corpse be gone if they weren't careful? Why are there still mines from the last century? Squad leader. This isn't fun anymore. The housekeeper is in danger ah. Squad leader come out and say, is that location a real mine or a fake mine ah? A few other team members. At this time, were also a bit flustered. On the contrary, Yang Lu was relatively calm at this time. She quickly came back to her senses from being stunned. And, calmly made a reminder to Zhang Yinjia. Housekeeper, you must stabilize yourself. Don't move around. We'll go over to help now. Demolition. Do you know how to clear mines? Yang Lu asked. I can. What Yuan Weihong originally wanted to say was that he had only just learned the relevant knowledge, and was not sure for the time being. But on second thought, considering the need to stabilize Zhang Yinjia's emotions at this moment, that's why she decisively gave an affirmative answer. Hearing Yuan Weihong say this, Yang Lu immediately added, Okay, then you go over and help. I'll find out where the class leader is and then clean him up. Saying that, Yang Lu continued to control the drone to track Xin Feng. At this time, Xin Feng had stopped moving. He was half crouching in the jungle, making a static shooting position. It looked as if he had already aimed at someone. Still coming? It's so dangerous at this time. The training should be temporarily terminated. Right? Butler's feet are still stepping on a landmine that he doesn't know if it's real or not. When Liang Chaoshu heard Yang Lu's words, he immediately frowned and said. At this moment, Wang Shichang had quickly calmed down and was analyzing the current situation. Butler, don't worry. I guess that mine on your foot should be fake. Otherwise the squad leader must have already shouted to stop. The fact that he didn't say anything now means that he knows in his heart what the situation is now. According to me, he is trying to train us in real survival skills inside the jungle. An ambush circle was set up close to the rendezvous point. Not only were there landmines, but he also personally went down and sniped at each member of the team. This in itself was a test of the team member's ability to improvise in the face of a sudden outbreak of danger. Obviously, whether it was himself as the main sniper, Liang Chaoshu as the machine gunner, or Sun Bin as the deputy sniper, the performance of the three people on their side were all failing. Now, Zhang Yanjia stepped on a landmine, so she naturally flunked as well. The next step was to test team trust in teamwork, and to test the demoning and obstacle removal abilities of the team members. Schoolmaster, watch yourself. Yuan Weihong had also come back to her senses at this time, and she entered her best state of total concentration and came to Zhang Yanjia's side. Butler, you must be steady. Let me check to see what's under my feet. Saying that, Yuan Weihong gently plucked away the debris underneath her, slowly got down and turned on the flashlight to carefully observe. She rattled the dirt underneath Zhang Yinjia's left foot and carefully dug out a demoning pit from the side with her dagger. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. It is indeed a mine. Loose hairstyle. 
but from the looks of it it shouldn't be a remnant from the last century, but a newly planted one. Yuan Weihong quickly came to her first conclusion after some inspection. She carefully scrutinized it again. Immediately afterward, she gave the second conclusion. The mine is a training mine, but if we let it burst, we will still be killed in action. Hearing Yuan Weihong say that it was just a newly planted mine, and it was also for training purposes, with no actual lethality. At this time, all the team members all breathed a sigh of relief. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Zhang Yanjie still didn't dare to move around, didn't dare to take it lightly, she inquired in a low voice, are you sure this is a training mine? Blasting, don't worry, I've been reading books about making explosives for the past few days, so I'm pretty sure this is a training mine. Look, it's lost its fuse, it's not like I can see. Well, anyway, you're right to trust me. If I make a mistake in judgment, I'll go down with you. Yuan Weihong pacified Zhang Yinjia, hearing that she had said so. Zhang Yinjia could only nod her head. I believe you. Good. Then you keep this position and don't move. I'll mine you now. Saying that, Yuan Weihong began to use the dagger carefully, and started demoning. On the other end, Yang Lu had already locked Xin Feng's exact position through the drone, and she had also circled around to Xin Feng's back, quietly approaching. However, just as Yang Lu was about to reach Xin Feng's position, suddenly Xin Feng's thermal imaging disappeared from the screen. Everyone, be careful, the squad leader has disappeared. Yang Lu subconsciously blurted out, reminding the rest of the team. However, at that moment, she herself stepped on something and tripped on the spot. Immediately after that, Yang Lu felt that her body suddenly came out of a big mountain. Like that, under the heavy pressure, she could hardly breathe. Fixing her eyes, she realized that it was Xin Feng pressing on her body. You've been captured. Shu, Xin Feng used the rope that had been prepared earlier and tied Yang Lu up five times. Afterward, he glanced at the drone controller that had fallen to the side and smiled playfully. Drones won't be of much use in the jungle. Having said that, that thing you just saw, are you sure it's me? Xin Feng finished with a smile and directly grabbed Yang Lu's radio communicator, calling out to the rest of the team under the ladder's dismayed and astonished gaze. Don't overly trust your demoning skills oh. Otherwise, one will regret it. Xin Feng smiled and reminded Yuan Weihong who was concentrating on demoning. Suddenly hearing Xin Feng's voice, coming from their channel, everyone was stunned. How did the squad leader know about our new channel? I don't know. It looks like he bugged it. Awesome. This can be done? Are you kidding me? All in all, the six of us, it feels like we're being completely toyed with by the squad leader alone. Blast. Don't pay any attention to him. Maybe he's just trying to distract you. Just focus on lining up your minds. The team members, after hearing Xin Feng's voice did not lose their sense of proportion. At this moment, everyone was talking to each other. There were those who were surprised and those who encouraged and comforted each other. Even Wang Shixian thought that Xin Feng might be deliberately distracting Yuan Weihong. However, as everyone was chatting, Yuan Weihong suddenly said it's over on the communicator, which made everyone freeze. In the next second, we heard a muffled sound of bang from the distance. The sound was not loud because it was inside the jungle. The spread of sound was blocked by the surrounding vegetation. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can read normally. However, this sound sounds like it's not good. Butler, Blast, how are you too? Are you alright? Liang Chaoshu was the first to come back to his senses and hurriedly asked. And at this moment, Zhang Yanjia as well as Yuan Weihong too, were grimacing and eating a mouthful of mud. Yuan Weihong's judgment was correct. It was a training mine, even though it had been pulled out of the fuse and the blasting part. There was no lethality, but it still taught the two of them a lesson. Squad leader, Yuan Weihong spat out the mud in his mouth and wiped off the dirt on his face and head, grabbed the communicator and shouted at the other end. Your ass. Zhang Yanjia was also depressed. She was scared to death just now, almost thinking that she was really going to be accounted for here. At this time, there was still a feeling of shock and her mood could not be calmed for a long time. All of you have been wiped out. If this time, it's not training, but a real live battle. You guys just came over to give head to the enemy. Xin Feng did not pay any attention to Yuan Weihong's somewhat irritated accusation against himself and the communicator. Instead, he commented on the performance of each and every member of the team. The entire army was wiped out? What's going on? Don't we still have schoolboys on the move? Liang Chaoshu was startled and inquired in dismay. Several other team members were also confused. Just now, everyone's attention was basically focused on Zhang Yinjia as well as Yuan Weihong. No one had noticed that Yang Lu had disappeared long ago. It seems like the school bully should have been caught or killed by the class president. 
Alas, what a surprise, to be planted in the hands of one of our own. Training is actual combat. We are not as skilled as others. We can only admit it. The class president is right. If this is an actual battle, we are all hung up now. It seems that to be a good mercenary is really not an easy thing. Yeah, it's too hard. Over the communicator, the team members you say me say size were heard. Now, everyone must have had this training experience etched in their hearts and minds that they couldn't forget, an experience where the entire army was wiped out. However, at the same time, each team member expressed understanding for Xin Feng's approach. If they wanted to grow into top mercenaries, these failures and lessons had to be experienced. It wasn't hard to understand that sweating more in normal times would result in less bloodshed in wartime, when you were actually facing heavily armed, vicious criminals, or even professional mercenaries that they had hired over to help at a high price. You'll know why such brutal training is necessary, because it teaches you how to save your own little life. Squad leader, were you just simulating an enemy mercenary ambush to attack us? Zhang Yanjia also came back to her senses. She inquired inside the communicator, and at this moment, Xin Feng had already brought Yang Lu, who was tied up in five different ways, to the side of the two of them. The figure that suddenly emerged from the darkness once again made Zhang Yanjia and Yuan Weihong jump in fright. Squad leader, you scared us to death. Yuan Weihong was stunned, and when he saw at a glance that Yang Lu, who was following behind Xin Feng and was tied up with five flowers and could not escape, he cried and laughed a little. Xin Feng smiled without saying anything as he looked at the two. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Yang Lu was full of helplessness. Sorry, everyone, I wasn't able to complete the annihilation mission. She still didn't understand exactly how she was ambushed by Xin Feng who circled around behind her. After reviewing what she had just experienced several times over and over again, looking back at the scene, it was as if Xin Feng was a ghost that suddenly appeared. Zhang Yanjia and Yuan Weihong sniffed and looked at each other. Immediately afterward, they looked at Yang Lu at the same time, looking at each other without words. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. The other three male comrades in the team were resolved by Xin Feng from the first moment the battle started. Then the two of them were terminated by a landmine, and Yang Lu was now a captive. The ending was like this. What else was there to say? Don't take it to heart. Schoolmaster, it's not your responsibility. It's just that the squad leader is too cunning. Zhang Yanjia comforted. Yeah, who would have thought that he would ambush us here? Yuan Weihong also rolled his eyes. Remembering this to this day he still felt depressed. The unexpected training had allowed Shen Feng to take out everyone by himself. Obviously, although the team members had accepted the ending of total annihilation, they were not convinced inside. Just listening to Yuan Weihong's words now. It was 80% that he felt that Xin Feng had taken advantage of the situation. Xin Feng just gave her an intriguing look, smiled and didn't pay any attention to her, but instead picked up the communicator and called. Where are the others? Come and gather. Pay more attention to your feet. I'm not kidding. There really are mines left over from the last century here. As for where they are and how many there are, I don't know. That's what the internet says. Hearing him say this again, the hearts of the crowd were again in awe. Liang Chaoshu, Wang Shiqian, and the three of them, Sun Bin, were approaching over here, and at this time, they became even more cautious. After a long time, these few members of the team came over here without any danger, and met up with a few people from Xin Feng. Everyone met each other again, and they were all very embarrassed for each other. Squad leader, how did we perform just now? Did we disappoint your old man in particular? Liang Chaoshu scratched his head and took the lead to ask with a hefty smile. Not really. Xin Feng shook his head in a serious manner. Before the skeptical faces of all the team members had completely dissipated, he added, I'm just, super disappointed. Every team member knew it would be this kind of answer. Everyone was speechless. Squad leader, that's not fair. You didn't say beforehand that you were going to train us like this. If we had known that you were going to set up a trap here to ambush us, we would have. You guys would have what? Xin Feng interrupted Sun Bin's words. His sharp gaze, swept towards all of them. You guys fought with criminals. Fought with those professional mercenaries with rich combat experience. Did you also tell people? It's not fair. You guys have to warn us in advance when you strike. Is that what you mean? Xin Feng's rhetorical question caused the team members to fall silent once again. Everyone lowered their heads and didn't say anything. At this point, he paused for a while, letting the team members finish digesting his words and think clearly about his reasoning for doing so before continuing. I have emphasized to you many times that the training ground is the battlefield, and training is actual combat. You guys don't seem to have taken this to heart, or else your combat awareness wouldn't be so weak. Brothers, 
What we are facing is one of the most vicious, most genocidal criminals in this world. In addition to those armed criminals, we may, at any time, encounter hostile mercenaries armed to the teeth. So, I want everyone, to be careful and cautious with every step, because you never know, at what point the unexpected will suddenly descend. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. If something bad really happens, I hope that each of you knows how you should respond. And on this point, I must boast about clairvoyance. Shen Feng said here and looked towards Wang Shicheng after a pause. When the crowd heard this, they all revealed surprised expressions. Wang Shicheng himself was also a bit stunned and puzzled. Pointing at himself, he looked up at Shen Feng, me, class president. I am, however, the first one to be killed by you. Are you deliberately being sarcastic? There is no sarcasm. What I said is the truth. Shen Feng locked eyes with him. Just now, the first person Shen Feng wanted to take out was Wang Shicheng. But he remembered very clearly that after he aimed at Wang Shicheng at that time, this guy reacted at the first time, without waiting for himself to fire, he had already rolled to the side to dodge, this kind of action, as if it was prejudged in advance, was still fresh in Shen Feng's memory and was still puzzling to this day, you just now, at the moment you were targeted by me, made a preemptive action in advance and managed to dodge my first and second shots, it took three shots for me to finish you off, of course the fourth shot that knocked out your weapon doesn't count, now for all of you, how did you know I was aiming at you then? Let everyone learn from the experience so that they can get a lesson. Shen Feng himself wanted to know how exactly Wang Shicheng did this. As the captain with the strongest overall strength within the entire team, he asked himself that he was afraid that he didn't have this skill. This was simply too metaphysical. Squad leader, he he he, everyone, if I tell you at that time I just had a feeling inside. A warning signal of danger appeared in my mind. It was as if I just knew that someone was aiming at me ready to shoot, so I followed my body's instincts to dodge. Do you guys believe it? Wang Shicheng scratched his head. Looking back at the scene now, I also feel as if I was a psychopath at that time. Not only now, when I made that series of actions at that time, I also had such thoughts and felt as if I was crazy. But, how about the truth? You all know. After saying that, Wang Shicheng subconsciously looked towards the sniper rifle in Xin Feng's hand. The truth was that the kind of marvelous prejudgment he had at that time was correct. Shit. Sixth sense? Liang Chaoshu incredulously sized up Wang Shicheng, Yuan Weihong, Zhang Nenjia, as well as a few of Yang Lu, were also looking at him in disbelief. The only one who didn't have much of a reaction to all these things happening to Wang Shicheng was Sunbin. Instead, he said with interest, You don't say. I also had this feeling when I was targeted by the squad leader at that time, but it wasn't as strong as what the clairvoyant described. At that time I just had one thought, hurry up and dodge, or else I'll die. Then I was attacked by the squad leader. These two people, one was the main sniper and one was the deputy sniper. Hearing them say this, Shen Feng already knew the answer. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. This should be one of their talents. As a sniper, alertness is the first instinct. Ean people at the same time to prevent being ean without such a gift of alertness, cannot be the most outstanding sniper, otherwise be wiped from the back of the neck do not know. Thinking in his heart, Shin Feng nodded, the two of you have a high level of alertness, but the few of you, you are much worse, especially you, dog bear. At that time, the clairvoyant had already reminded you, why didn't you trust your teammate's words? His gaze fell on Liang Chashu. Liang Chashu was named by Shin Feng and was immediately met with gazes from the other team members. He immediately scratched his head a little less favorably. Squad leader. Seriously. Who would have thought that you would really attack us ah? If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed. Garbled and misspelled. Please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Like I said. The training ground is the battlefield. We must take every situation into account. This time. It was me who attacked you with blanks. Next time. Will it be the enemy's turn to shoot you with live ammunition? Shen Feng's gaze appeared a bit stern and his tone did not have the slightest intention to joke around. His entire attitude was very serious. This made the team members feel a strong psychological pressure. Everyone was like a student who had made a mistake, drooping their heads and waiting to be lectured. However, Shin Feng stopped at the point and did not continue to criticize and educate everyone without relenting. He swept his gaze towards all of them. You guys now summarize one by one how many mistakes you made in total during the action just now. Clairvoyant. You go first. Shen Feng looked at Wang Shicheng. Upon hearing this, the latter nodded and stood out, and after taking a deep breath, he carefully recalled, actually, 
To put it in perspective, when I stepped into this bush at that time, I already had a very bad feeling, but my alertness was still not quite enough. I didn't alert my team members first, and I didn't react in time to find your position for a counterattack, squad leader. I even never thought that I would be attacked at the rendezvous point. Wang Shichang stated all of his deficient points in that training session just now. His perception of himself was still relatively clear and comprehensive. Xin Feng did not make any comments on his self-evaluation, but instead looked at Yuan Weihong. What about you? What do you think you lacked in your actions just now? Yuan Weihong had already prepared for this, and upon hearing this, she immediately replied, Squad leader, I had actually smelled that something was wrong with the smell of the dirt here just now, but I didn't think too deeply, as well as I likewise didn't think that you would ambush here. Wait, you said, you smelled something wrong in the dirt? Shen Feng was a bit surprised and looked at the other party incredulously. The other members of the team also noticed this crucial piece of information, and all of them gazed at Yuan Weihong with great surprise. The latter also froze when he saw everyone's curious eyes. How? Do you all? Can't you all smell it? That very heavy earthy odor. No, to be more accurate, it should be the smell of rusting metal. Yes, it's that kind of flavor. It's also very strong now. Don't you guys smell it? Yuan Weihong looked at every member of the team strangely, and after sweeping her gaze across the circle, it finally landed on Shen Feng's face. What she saw was that everyone was shaking their heads to indicate that they couldn't smell the odor. It's impossible that I'm the only one who smells these odors, right? Yuan Weihong touched her right earlobe, and she immediately saw that everyone nodded at the same time. It's really strange. Could it be that my sense of smell is stronger than you guys? Blast, you're not a dog's nose, are you? Screw you, you're the dog's nose. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. While the players were teasing each other, Shin Feng was slightly moved in his heart. Only he knew what was going on in his heart. The smell of rusting metal that Yuan Weihong had just mentioned was, in all probability, the smell emanating from the rusting of those landmines from the last century inside the soil. But this was a jungle with lush vegetation. Plus the ground was rich in fallen leaves, which had long been buried in layers. Under the mixture of many kinds of grass and wood corruption flavor, not to mention human beings, even a well-trained police dog may not be able to smell out the abnormality. It seems that under the multiplier effect provided by the system, the team members have not only improved their physical fitness rapidly in this training, a lot of new knowledge was learned. At the same time, more of their talents were also tapped. As snipers, Wang Shichang and Sun Bin are more alert, able to avoid enemy sneak attacks with their almost metaphysical sixth sense. As for Yuan Weihong, as a blaster, her sense of smell was exceptional and sensitive. Even mines buried in the dirt could be directly discovered through her amazing sense of smell. All right, don't waste time. Shen Feng came back from his contemplation and looked at the team members who were still flirting with each other, and immediately frowned. It's your turn, dog bear. Tell me, what are your shortcomings this time? He looked at Leon Cha Shu, squad leader. My shortcoming is that I didn't trust my teammates enough. No, it can also be said that I trusted you too much. That's why I didn't make the slightest defense against you. Next, each of the team members were summarizing their shortcomings in the middle of the first training session. They themselves, with the help of the system, were incredibly impressed with every experience they had. At this moment, after the self-examination, basically every one of them recognized their shortcomings and strengthened their impressions at the same time. This helped, help them improve their deficiencies. Xin Feng nodded in satisfaction as he saw that everyone had basically said much the same thing more or less the same as what he had observed. He also didn't bother to excessively hold on to the details. Next we open the second training. Xin Feng's words immediately lifted the spirits of all the players. After the players had learned from the pain, a strong fighting confidence surged within each of them. They didn't want something similar to what had just happened to them to happen again in the next training session. Therefore, at this moment, everyone was listening very attentively, waiting for Xin Feng to tell them the content of the next training. Inside the field combat training manual, the one on jungle warfare, there is an explanation on mine warfare, you should have already learned how to dismantle landmines, how to lay landmines, as well as how to make simple earthen bombs and other methods, our next second training session is called game of the brave, as Xin Feng's words reached this point, some of the team members had already guessed what he wanted to say next, at this moment, Liang Chao Xu's expression became very odd, he and a few other team members glanced at each other, and the other team members also tensed up one after another, and everyone's expression became even more serious than before. Squad leader, you cannot be, intend to let us hear, unarmed demoning, right? Sun Bin hesitated and looked at Xin Feng. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, 
garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Xin Feng suddenly laughed. The smile was as bright as if it was a devil. Afraid? He scanned the crowd. Of course I'm afraid. Yang Lu was the first to raise her hand, followed by Sun Bin. The other few team members didn't have any reaction, but from their expressions, it could also be seen that everyone was quite fearful in their hearts. After all, there were real minds present here. If you're not careful, it's nothing. Xin Feng just looked at each of the team members with a smile on his face, not paying any attention to their fear. After the team members had all slowed down, he then laughed and said, Fear is a normal mental activity that every human being possesses, including me, and I'm no exception. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. But, since we want to become the best mercenaries, we must overcome our inner fears, challenge ourselves, and defeat ourselves. But challenging the ego, isn't it about taking your own life? Zhang Nenjia muttered in a small voice. To be honest, she was starting to regret a bit inside at this moment. If she had known that the squad leader's training was so cruel, even risking her life, she would not have come to participate. Shen Feng's ears twitched slightly as he looked over towards Zhang Nenjia. Being a mercenary is not a family affair, and you guys have already personally fought face to face with criminals, even encountered the pursuit of professional mercenaries. If you haven't come to your senses by now and think that being a mercenary is an easy profession, then you can all give up. Truly professional mercenaries, in terms of common sense, skills and combat prowess, are not inferior to the world's top special forces. Demoning is just one of the most basic skills. If you guys are scared, you can quit now. After Shin Feng finished speaking, everyone instantly quieted down. Every member of the team was weighing it up internally. Whoever said they weren't afraid at a time like this was really pretending. However, it was rare that even though there was silence and hesitation, none of the team members stepped forward and chose to retreat and give up. Shen Feng was trying to give them psychological pressure. Huge psychological pressure would stimulate one's potential and make one grow quickly. At the same time, this was also part of the test. Whoever couldn't even face this difficult setback, then naturally had no qualification to become the top mercenary. Reality was so cruel that no one could afford to be merciful. Otherwise, it would be irresponsible to them, and at the same time, it would be irresponsible to themselves and their team. In fact, the reason why Shin Feng was able to be so bold is to let his team members have hands-on demoning training as soon as they came up. Of course, there was also his own backbone. Inside the system mall, one could use points to exchange for advanced healing potions. This thing was able to quickly heal injuries that were more than serious injuries. And this was one of Shin Feng's bottom line. Even if the team members were seriously injured, he wouldn't worry too much about not being able to save them. Of course this kind of advanced healing potion, Shin Feng would not use it easily until it was absolutely necessary. In addition was the system's auxiliary monitoring interface, which had a one-key rescue function that could be used at the moment when the team members were facing life and death dangers. It could turn the dangers encountered by the team members, including the dangers encountered by Shin Feng himself, into safety. This was a permission gifted by the system after unlocking the subfunction, although it could only be used once, and if you wanted to use it again afterward, you had to pay points. However, even if there was only one chance, it was already considered a great guarantee. Shin Feng still preferred to believe in the strength of his team members, growing rapidly with the help of the system, they themselves didn't know how much potential they had, and they had to be allowed to experience it once for themselves before they would understand and continue to grow. Squad leader, what you said is correct since we're following you out here. Of course we have to listen to your command. If you tell us to train, we'll just train. There's no need to talk so much. I, Liang Chaoshu, will follow you. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or read mode to read normally. Liang Chaoshu said as he prepared his demoning tools. At the same time, he looked at Xin Feng with a firm gaze. Now even if it's a matter of going out on a limb, the big deal was to be accounted for here. But wanting to become a top mercenary definitely required paying a price that was unimaginable to normal people. As Shin Feng had just said, this was the game of the brave. The weak could only choose to be eliminated. I don't have a problem with it, squad leader. However, Blast can you teach me that skill of yours of being able to smell the smell first? Wang Shirchian, half teasingly, looked at Yuan Weihong. Yuan Weihong immediately responded. Just now, someone said that I am a dog's nose. What, you guys want to become dogs now too? No, Blast how can you hold a grudge like this? I'm not just joking. Liang Chaoshu immediately burst into tears and laughter. But Yuan Weihong arrogantly raised his chin, not bothering to take care of the other party, but looked over towards Xin Feng, demoning and bomb disposal. My favorite, 
squad leader. I'll join the training. With these few team members taking a stand, the remaining few people also chose to continue participating in the training. Everyone mustered up their courage. Squad leader, you just underestimated me. I didn't mean that, but I'm too lazy to explain. Next let me show you my determination with my actions. Zhang Yanjiao looked at Xin Feng, full of high fighting spirit. Xin Feng just smiled gently at what he said, and then gave an order. It's almost dawn. However, I am not going to let you guys start after dawn because, when you step on mines, you won't be able to distinguish between day and night. Start training now, and before 12 noon, every single one of you must complete the removal of at least 50 mines. In addition, considering that the vast majority of the landmines here are already old antiques from the last century, very different from the landmines we use in the mainstream nowadays. So, I left some small gifts for you guys here before, combining the old and the new. You guys go ahead and let go of the operation as much as you want. But what I want to remind you is, when Xin Feng said this, his gaze deliberately looked over towards Yuan Weihong and Zhang Ninja. Just now, it was the two of them who were directly killed in action because of demoning. Seeing Xin Feng's gaze, Yuan Weihong immediately perked up. Sometimes, demoning doesn't have to be real demoning. Xin Feng gazed at Yuan Weihong's eyes and continued. When the team members heard this sentence, they silently recited it twice, seemingly not quite able to understand the meaning of this sentence. And Liang Chaoshu curiously inquired. Squad leader, what does this mean? Take your time to understand it yourself. Xin Feng responded. Okay Lu. Liang Chaoshu grinned and turned his ass around to look at Yuan Weihong, blast. What does that mean? Squad leader? Yuan Weihong remembered what happened just now when she was demoning. Obviously at that time, she was about to finish demoning, and had not been distracted by outside influences, but that mine had still exploded. In retrospect, it should not have been a loose fire mine, but actually a trip fire mine also called a pull fire mine. The moment he removed the firing pin, he wasn't actually disarming the crisis, but creating it, so the mine exploded. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. What the squad leader means is that he buried some of the mines in the ground after modifying them. Those mines have the same appearance as normal mines, but they don't trigger in the same way. So if we're not careful to recognize them, we'll be punking ourselves such as mistaking trip mines for loose mines. It's like, I was blown up with my housekeeper before. Yuan Weihong explained. When Yuan Weihong was explaining these words, her gaze had been staring at Xin Feng, locking eyes with him, hearing that she had comprehended the meaning of her words. Xin Feng smiled with satisfaction. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Cut the crap and start. Xin Feng barked out in order you can act alone, or you can team up in pairs. My suggestion is that everyone personally displace at least one real mine, only by getting really close to death and touching those things that make you feel fear. Can you truly, truly grow into the world's top-tier powerhouses? After saying that, Xin Feng also took out demoning tools from inside his own backpack. It was obvious that he was also going to participate in the training together. Seeing Xin Feng's move, the six team members looked at each other. Monkey, you and I will be in a group. We all have a care together. Wang Shixiang said to Sun Bin. Good, no problem. Sun Bin immediately agreed. The two, Yang Lu and Zhang Ninja, also shared the same idea and immediately stood together with a glance at each other. Leaving Yuan Weihong and Liang Chaoshu, the former was looking over towards Xin Feng, while the latter directly walked towards each other with a smile on his face. Obviously, everyone still decided that they wanted two people to team up together in twos. Blast, let's two team up? Liang Chaoshu extended an invitation to Yuan Weihong. What about the squad leader? Yuan Weihong asked in return. At the same time, once again, he cast an inquiring gaze at Xin Feng. You guys just feel free to do as you please. No need to pay attention to me. Xin Feng waved his hand indifferently. He he he, class president. I'm not being unrighteous. Your experience is much richer than ours. And you're also stronger than us. I figured that you're old man. You have no problem moving by yourself. So I hope you don't blame me. Liang Chaoshu looked at Xin Feng cheaply and explained. Xin Feng also lazily ignored him. Okay, being nonsense, hurry up and act. After saying that he walked in a direction by himself, the other team members, too, dispersed in their own groups. The team members were indeed underestimating themselves. At first, when they heard that they were going to clear mines, and that they were also going to come into contact with real, genuine landmines, or even old antiques left over from the last century, everyone didn't have a bottom in their hearts, which is why they acted so nervous and uneasy and even developed a slight withdrawal mentality. But in reality, when they actually started the operation, 
they realized that demoning was not that difficult. Each team member's hand was very steady, and according to the demoning knowledge they had learned from the training manual, they successfully removed one mine after another. There were both real and fake mines. The team members took turns to clear the mines. This was to make sure that everything was in order, and to avoid unnecessary trouble or even accidents caused by the same team member clearing mines over and over again. In addition, it was also to give each other enough opportunities to practice. Throughout the morning, a few hours of demoning training, no matter which group, they had already cleared at least 70 mines. From team to team, the mood became much more relaxed. Everyone was now, so to speak, familiar with the structure of the mines, the detonation process, and the demoning method to the point that they could not be more familiar with them, and every demoning was done with ease. Even if the mines had been camouflaged by Shin Feng, the team members were able to recognize them at a glance. So these mines aren't that scary. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Yeah it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Hey, the two of us, Blast and I, took turns working, and we've already eliminated over 110 mines in one morning. What's your score? As if he was showing off, Liang Chaoshu deliberately reported their results inside the radio communicator. Hearing this achievement, all the others marveled. 110? That's still you guys being great. Clairvoyant and I only eliminated 75 of them. That's because we were more cautious. Safety first. Clairvoyant Wang Shichun couldn't help but immediately pick up the conversation and responded with an explanation. And at this moment, inside the communicator, also came Zhang Yanjia's voice, the two of us, schoolmaster and I, each removed an average of 45 minds. It seems that you two are at the bottom of this group's results. Clairvoyant. Monkey. Zhang Yanjia said unable to resist teasing. Hearing Sun Bin immediately unconvinced, he immediately laughed, don't talk so early to jump to conclusions on my sister. This is not our class president adults have not yet reported the results? Maybe, the class president alone than the two of us to be slower it. Yes, why doesn't the class president say anything? Class monitor? What are your grades? Liang Chaoshu immediately called Xin Feng up. Xin Feng, at this time, was still concentrating on demoning. He didn't remember how many he had eliminated. He just saw a mine and immediately went to deal with it. It was only after three times, after solving another trip mine, that Shin Feng stood up, approaching 12 noon. It was already light in the jungle. However, although the light had become abundant, the sun's scorching heat was what made the temperature here even higher. The entire jungle was so hot and stuffy that it was like an oven. Shin Feng put down the tools in his hand and pinched his radio to respond. There's still quite a bit of time left. Why? Have each of you qualified? After saying that, he subconsciously turned his head to look around. The team members were already relatively far away from him. At this time, everyone had looked over, intending to rendezvous with Xin Feng. Xin Feng had said that the qualifying score was to remove at least 60 mines by 12 noon. He didn't say whether it was an individual demoning grade or a team demoning grade. So at this moment, everyone defaulted to the standard passing grade being the team grade. The passing line was 60, so 75 was already close to excellent. Obviously others were already above excellent. For example, Zhang Yanjia and Yan Lu's combination, and Liang Chaoshu and Yuan Wei Hong's combination. You guys go over first, Clairvoyant and I will line up a few more mines. Sun Bin and Wang Shichang discussed it and made the decision to raise their grades above excellent, so they stayed behind. And at this time, the other team members had already come to Shen Feng's side of the area. When they saw in front of them, that pile of landmines that were taller than Liang Chaoshu's head was almost a meter or so in height. Every one of them, all of them were dumbstruck and shocked. Splat. A mine that no longer had any threatening power was casually thrown up from the front of the mine mountain and rolled down along the top. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or read mode can be read normally. The mines that kept rolling down made the team members all turn pale. And they subconsciously dodged in all directions. It was only after confirming that it was safe that everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Squad leader. Holy shit. This was a mine you drained alone. Ha. Huh? Liang Chaoshu couldn't help but yell. Just as Liang Chaoshu was talking, another mine that had already been neutralized was suddenly thrown over from the other side of the mine mountain. Several members of the team looked at each other in disbelief. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or read mode can read normally. Incredulously, they bypassed this huge mountain of landmines and walked towards the front. And soon found Shen Feng's figure. Shen Feng was lying on the ground, carrying out his third demoning job. He was seen moving skillfully and sensitively. And in less than 10 seconds of work, he successfully disarmed the threat of another mine left over from the last century, casually picking it up and throwing it back. Seeing this scene with their own eyes, 
Liang Chaoshu, Yuan Weihong, Zhang Nanjia as well as Yang Lu's four people directly looked straight. Wo Lei Ge Go, Liang Chaoshu even changed his voice. Squad leader, is your old man demoning or doing magic? In the time it took him to speak like this, another mine was removed and became part of the mountain of mines in the rear. Shen Feng ignored Liang Chaoshu's words and remained focused on demoning. After finally removing another one, he spoke. This road is the path that we must pass through to head to the next training location and open up the third training session. Without opening it up, we can only use our physical bodies to travel through the mines or take the long way around. After saying this, another mine was removed by him. Hearing Shen Feng explain this, the team members once again stared wide-eyed. Squad leader, this is too awesome for you, right? You're not even looking at it. It's like you're pinching a toy. Ha, huh? Yuan Weihong, who was very familiar with ammunition production and dismantling as a blaster, at this moment looked at Shen Feng's skillful movements as if he was playing, and her whole body was dumbfounded. She asked herself that even if she practiced for another whole day, she would definitely not be able to do this level of familiarity of Shen Feng. Allowing herself to eliminate the danger of a landmine within 10 seconds? This was simply making things difficult for Fat Tiger. Yeah, squad leader you're really too good. You're 5 seconds a mine right. In my place I would have already been afraid of cooling down hundreds of times. Zhang Yanjia also began to marvel. This kind of operation I even dream I do not dare to think. Yang Lu at this time, also followed and gave her own evaluation. Everyone looked at Shen Feng who was operating and only felt as if they were not seeing the captain but a god. Everyone was stunned by Shen Feng's lighthearted, yet calm and easy demoning style. Squad leader, you are afraid that these mines are thousands and tens of thousands of mines, right? All of them were demoned by you alone? Liang Chaoshu curiously glanced behind him at the mountains of mines again, once again feeling a small shock. I'm also merely practiced, nothing to make a fuss about. Shen Feng glanced at the time, exactly 12 o'clock sharp. He climbed back up and casually threw one of the mines he had just discharged behind him. With a sweep of his eyes, he frowned and asked, where are clairvoyant and monkey? The two of them are still struggling. Zhang Nianjia immediately said, at this time, Sun Bin and Wang Shichang both happened to return, and hearing Zhang Nianjia's words, the two of them immediately said with a fart, butler, schoolmaster, the two of you really got lucky, we're only one behind you guys, and we could almost catch up with you, alas. Sun Bin shook his head inside, then looked at Shen Feng, but he suddenly reacted only in the next second. It seems that something is not right, so he subconsciously looked at the roadside, and this look the whole person was dumbfounded. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode to read normally, only to see that at this moment, beside Shin Feng and a few other members of the team, a mountain of landmines composed entirely of various rusted and mottled landmines stretched out in front of them. Wang Shichang had already discovered this one's mine mountain long ago, so he entered into a state of shock in advance. Slightly opening his mouth and looking at this in disbelief. Squad leader, is this your masterpiece? TSK, isn't it obvious? Liang Chaoshu responded instead of Shin Feng. Also, don't call him class president. From now on we should call him Master Ban. Liang Chaoshu grinned, turned around and led the way and shouted at Shin Feng. Master Ban, don't talk nonsense. How are your grades? Shin Feng looked at Wang Shichang and Sun Bin and the others as if nothing had happened. Our squad score is 89 mines. Wang Shichuan, sheepishly, glanced again at the mountain of landmines next to him that was a whole lot taller than himself, even almost twice as tall. If this was really Shen Feng's achievement, it would be too awesome. We're 90, me and schoolmaster are 50 to 50. Zhang Yanjia followed at this time to report the results. Then came Liang Chaoshu and Yuan Weihong, every member of the team, when talking about this achievement, would subconsciously look at the mine mountain next to them, and then look at Shen Feng. Not bad. The results are taken from the squad score, which means that each of you has reached a level of demoning that is above excellent. Good job. Next let's get ready to start the third training. Shen Feng did not want to waste time on meaningless communication. After saying that, he was ready to start the third training component. But at this time, Liang Chaoshu pleaded. Squad leader, don't give people a break ah, at least let us drink some water. Catch our breath and eat some more? His words made Shen Feng look up. On the battlefield. Will the enemy give you time to drink and eat and rest? Maybe. Give it? After all, the enemy is also a human being. They also need to eat, sleep and drink water ah. Liang Chaoshu replied at once. Shen Feng blankly glanced at him without any good humor and didn't bother to explain anything further. Rest in place for five minutes. Enough for you guys to solve the problem of eating and drinking. Hurry up. After saying that, he himself sat down cross-legged. Don't underestimate the job of demoning. It requires a high degree of concentration and it also requires your movements to be very, 
Very, very steady. After all, it's a matter of life and safety, and if you're not careful, it could lead to a disaster. So this is a kind of work that constantly tests one's physical ability and willpower from body to spirit. The average person simply couldn't do it without some physical strength and concentration. The five minutes of rest time quickly passed. The physical abilities of Shin Feng and his team members had basically recovered. He just casually drank some water and didn't even nibble a bite of compressed dry food. Shin Feng's purpose was certainly not to save food, but to hammer his hunger resistance. All right, now on to the next training. For the third training, what I need to test is another skill of yours. Another competence related to demoning and bomb disposal. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Shin Feng swept his gaze over the crowd and said calmly, Squad leader, what test is it? Leon Chashu didn't react and asked curiously. Rather, it was at this time that Yuan Weihong guessed what Shin Feng wanted to say, and she immediately looked at Shin Feng, squad leader. It couldn't be that we are going to test our ability to defuse bombs, right? Not bad, guessed half right. Shin Feng nodded and laughed. Shin Feng's answer was to guess half of it correctly. What was the rest of the other half? The 16 members looked at each other with your eyes. And everyone couldn't think hard enough to figure out what the other half was that Shin Feng was talking about. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Squad leader. You'd better reveal the mystery. We are all novice kids in front of your experienced elder. Liang Chaoshu made a very helpless look. After all, before becoming a formal mercenary, Shin Feng had said himself that he had several years of training experience, compared to a veteran like the squad leader. Of course they could only be considered novice little kids. Shin Feng didn't talk nonsense to them and directly nodded his head. Since you've learned to disarm bombs and clear minds, then, I think you should also have mastered the methods of assembling bombs and making improvised mines. The next training session is to train you all to simulate making reliable improvised weaponry to give the enemy effective kills and injuries without any weaponry at your disposal. The first session is to make long-range carry weapons such as bows and arrows, crossbows and claymores. The second segment, on the other hand, is to make earthen bombs and earthen mines. It's all knowledge from the training manual. Don't tell me you can't do it. I don't want to hear those three words. It's all training time from now until 6 p.m. But, as Shin Feng spoke, he suddenly revealed a mysterious smile. He looked at the team members, his gaze sweeping over everyone's nervous and uneasy faces. Squad leader, what kind of bad thoughts are you planning to make again? When Liang Chashu took a look at this expression of Shin Feng's, he was terrified in his heart. The incident of being ambushed by Shin Feng just now was still fresh in his mind, and he didn't want to be ambushed again. Several other team members, hearing Liang Chashu's words also followed more nervous, and at the same time, they were also very curious. They were all curious to know how exactly Shin Feng would torture them. I see you guys, you ate a lot just now, and I intend to help you digest it. The next step is a 15 kilometer hasty march. When we get to our destination, everyone must find suitable materials as soon as possible and make out at least 3 bows and arrows, 2 crossbows and arrows as well as 10 grenades and 5 mines. Remember, you must complete this series of tasks within the next 6 hours. If you can't finish it, I'm sorry, I'll buy airfare for you guys and go back to the 9th district. Shen Feng's words didn't seem like he was joking. He had two big words of seriousness written all over his face. Hearing him say this, the team members once again looked at each other. Squad leader, you really are a devil. Liang Chashu shook his head in tears and laughter, picking up his own backpack and locking eyes with the rest of the team once again. Can we form a team? Squad leader? Sun Bin immediately asked. Whatever you guys want. Shin Feng replied. That's good. Thousand miles. The two of us should still team up together. So we can also improve our feelings for each other and increase our trust. Sun Bin immediately looked at Wang Shichang, as Wang Shichang's observer as well as the team's deputy sniper. He certainly had to get on good terms with Wang Shichang, and even, achieve Jedi trust in each other. Then we'd better be together. Right, schoolmaster? Immediately, Zhang Nianjia also looked at Yang Lu and proposed. As soon as she heard her say that, Yuan Weihong next to her hurriedly spoke up. Since that's the case, why don't we all just act together directly? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, Garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. With more people moving together, it's also good to take care of each other. After all, all kinds of dangers are possible to encounter in this jungle. Liang Chashu also followed suit and expressed his approval upon hearing this. In the end, everyone agreed to simply act together, without distinguishing between groups. Shin Feng silently watched everyone's decision from the side and did not say anything. In his heart, he was quite pleased. Sometimes, 
learning to work as a team was more important than being a lone wolf. The training of making earthen bombs and earthen mines was actually very simple and didn't take too much time. The team members' real time was basically wasted on weighted cross country. 15 kilometers of extreme marching. Although this time, everyone didn't carry more than 50 kilograms of weight per person like last time. But, their cross country time was drastically shortened. It was less than 6 hours. This greatly tested the physical abilities of the team members. Not to mention that after arriving at the finish line, they still had to start manually making earthen bombs right away without stopping. Fortunately, Shin Fong was not wrong about his team members. They were very strong. In the end, every member of the team completed the training task according to their own requirements. Shin Fong did not give them a chance to catch their breath and immediately started another round of training. How do you guys feel? Shin Fong walked towards each team member with a smile on his face and a kind look on his face. As soon as they saw this expression on his face, the hearts of all the team members suddenly sank hard, feeling a strong wave of ill will. Squad leader, how do you want to ravage us? You just say it. I'm not in fear anyway. Liang Chaoshu seemed to have already prepared himself mentally, and at this moment, he waved his hand and patted his chest with bravado. A few other team members, too, nodded along. Although they did not say anything, their firm gazes and inquiring eyes were already telling Shin Fong what they had in mind. Next is the anti-starvation training. The time is two days and one night. That is, from now until the day after tomorrow at six in the afternoon. Within this time, we need to not eat or drink. Shin Fong laughed. The physical fitness of the players was stronger. However, the energy consumed during exercise had also become more. Just now, 15 kilometers of weight-bearing cross-country came down, plus the full concentration on gathering materials to make earthen bombs and mines. They had already consumed too much physical energy. The food that they had eaten and the water that they had drunk earlier had already been basically digested. So at this time, when they heard Shin Fong say that they wanted to conduct anti-starvation training, at once all the team members' eyes went straight. Squad leader, can I eat a compressed cookie first? Liang Chaoshu swallowed a mouthful of saliva. He was bigger and consumed a lot of energy. At this time, he was already starving. Hearing this, Shin Fong just smiled without saying anything and looked at the other party. Just by looking at this expression Liang Chaoshu's heart was cooled by half, understood. From now on, you can't eat and can't drink water. But, are we just going to stand here stupidly and do nothing? It might be better if Liang Chaoshu didn't ask this question. As soon as he opened his mouth, Shin Fong instantly picked up. You've reminded me. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Having you guys sit or stand still is really too low of a difficulty, and two days will pass quickly. So I've decided to increase the difficulty for you guys. From now on, I'll set off first, and an hour later, you guys will come and round me up for an extreme jungle chase training. I'm asking you all to use all your skills to find a way to catch me as much as possible. Whoever does it will be richly rewarded. Shen Feng's words had just finished, and the faces of the team members changed. One by one, it was as if they were bitter melons frowning in disbelief as they looked at each other in disbelief. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. To endure two days and two nights without eating or drinking was already a very, very difficult thing. And now there was going to be an extreme jungle escape training? This is to put people to death training rhythm ah. Even the toughest of bodies would not be able to withstand this kind of training, right? Squad leader, do you want us to die here? Sunbin made the action of foaming at the mouth, sort of taking pleasure in his bitterness. From here, it could also be seen that his mind was still stable, but he was just spitting appropriately. Squad leader, this jungle extreme pursuit, is there a distance limit, or what about a time limit? Yang Lu asked at this time. As a rationalist she was obviously more concerned about the training rules. It was related to whether they were enough to be able to pass the training successfully. When you track professional mercenaries, or chase criminals, will you know when you can catch the enemy, and how far you have to run at what place you can catch or annihilate them? Shin Feng asked rhetorically as he looked at the inquiring gazes of his team members. This training, which also lasts for two days and two nights, will end at 6 o'clock in the afternoon the day after tomorrow, along with the anti-starvation training. The standard for you guys to pass is to discover my trail. The standard for reaching the line of excellence well. Shin Feng smiled playfully as he said this. The team members were still looking at him with burning eyes, waiting for him to continue on. Seeing this smile everyone once again felt bad. Sure enough Shin Feng just blandly threw out two words. It's hard. This round of training would last for two days and two nights. In addition to training the team members' resistance to hunger, as well as their tracking ability, it also tested their camouflage reconnaissance ability. Shin Feng would use night vision devices, thermal imagers, 
and other technological equipment to aid in the training by then. He would also lay traps to wait for the team members to deliver themselves as before. If the team members were unable to approach themselves in disguise, carry out reconnaissance to confirm their position or even launch an effective attack against them, then there was no doubt that they were seriously deficient. Then there was no doubt that they were seriously deficient. This kind of shortcoming must be trained to understand. As for the relevant knowledge, training methods they could all find the corresponding content in the training manual. Of course, they can also be flexible and get more solutions. This would depend on how well the team members were able to comprehend and adapt. Shen Feng didn't say any more. But after explaining the training rules clearly, he left the team alone and quickly entered the jungle and disappeared. Come on, this old six of a squad leader must be waiting to set a trap in front of us again. Sun Bin looked at Shen Feng's figure disappearing into the jungle and spat out a breathless sentence. Don't look at him as skinny. His metabolism was actually a bit faster than the average person. So he was also a bit dizzy from hunger at this moment. Hearing Sun Bin spat, the rest of the team members looked at each other. What do you guys think? Liang Chashu looked at Yang Lu, Zhang Nenjia, as well as Wang Shichang and Yuan Weihong, and inquired. The squad leader isn't here. Why don't we sneak in some food first? Wang Shichang proposed. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. However, this proposal of his was rejected on the spot by Zhang Nenjia. No way. We agreed that we are going to have anti-starvation training. If we steal food at this time, that would be irresponsible. If we can't achieve the training effect, we won't be able to continue to grow. Can't you guys see that the gap between us and the squad leader seems to have begun to grow wider and wider? When Zhang Nianjia said this, the team members seemed to be really true when they thought about it carefully. From the very beginning, everyone was above the same starting line. Although Xin Feng had trained for many years before becoming a real mercenary. However, the strength he had displayed then was not as powerful as it was now. From the beginning of this second test, the first round of training Shin Feng was far ahead, consistently faster than every one of them. In terms of physical ability, even Yang Lu, who had superior physical talent in the team, couldn't compare to their squad leader. There was also the previous demoning training. In 7 or 8 hours, the team members had tried their best, but they had only removed no more than a 100 landmines as a squad. However, looking at Shin Feng again, it was as if he was playing, casually removing dangerous mines and letting those mines that had lost their power pile up like a mountain. This ability had already made the team members deeply feel the strength gap between them and Shin Feng. And the third round of training was even more obvious. Zhang Nenjia remembered clearly that at that time, Shin Feng hadn't eaten anything, and had just taken a small sip of mineral water. However, the other party was still far ahead of the other six team members in the next 15 kilometers of weight-bearing cross-country training. Not only that, when the team members arrived at the finish line, they found that Shin Feng had already finished making the required clay bombs and clay mines. All these things were undoubtedly telling everyone. Shin Feng's growth rate was terrifying, and his strength was far above the rest of the team. Therefore, they had to accelerate their pace to catch up with Shin Feng to avoid falling too far behind themselves. Zhang Yanjia's words immediately silenced everyone. After a short period of contemplation, finally, everyone nodded their heads up. Steward is right. The gap between us and the class leader feels like it's really getting bigger. If we don't try to keep up with the class president's growth rate, everyone will only become a drag on the class president in the future. Yuan Weihong said while already taking out and starting to check the footprints on the ground up. These were the footprints left behind when Shin Feng left just now. Wang Shichang was a bit embarrassed, but he was frank. And at this time, he hemmed and hawed. It's me who shouldn't be smart. Everyone is right. We must train seriously and try to keep up with the squad leader. Actually, Everyone didn't care about what he just said. What everyone cared more about was how they were going to catch Shin Feng now. Everyone, we'd better discuss our tactics. You all know by now. This old six of the class leader is really ruthless. Don't let's give him another total annihilation when the time comes. Liang Chaoshu reminded. Upon hearing this, Yuan Weihong stood up and looked at everyone, normally to complete the tracking of the class president. The most effective is still the technological equipment in the hands of the schoolmaster. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. However, the environment inside the jungle is complicated. So in order to avoid losses and loss of usefulness, we can't just use them. So we can only rely on ourselves. Everyone, take out the night vision devices as well as the thermal imaging cameras. Before, we were beaten so badly by the squad leader. One was because we were caught off guard and the other was because we didn't use these equipment. Now that we know how squad leader defeated us, there's no reason why the six of us can beat one of him and still be completely annihilated by him. We're not so bad. 
she encouraged. Behind them, the team members were still studying the tactics on how to deal with Xin Feng, and at this time, Xin Feng had already left the team alone and traveled forward alone for about 10 minutes. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Acting alone, he moved very fast through the jungle. In just 10 minutes, he had already run out a distance of 2 kilometers. However, Xin Feng suddenly stopped at this time. He didn't choose to continue escaping, but, instead, he intended to leave a small gift for his team members. The agreed time for the chase was one hour later. Now there were still 50 minutes, enough for him to make preparations. Xin Feng took out the earthen bombs and earthen grenades that he had previously made, and after removing the ammunition's combat parts, he kept the detonators and deployed them around. After simply setting up an anti-tracking trap, Xin Feng then continued to move forward again. Thereafter, he would set up one to more traps every kilometer or so to create trouble for the team's tracking. Not only that, while stopping to rest, he would also deliberately misdirect his movement traces and clean up the original correct traces. If any of the team members fell for it and followed the traces left on the ground or vegetation to track them, odds were that what was waiting for them was one trap after another. More than half an hour had passed without realizing it. At this time, Xin Feng was already more than 5 kilometers away from the starting point. The jungle here started to become lush again. The sky-hugging trees, together with the luxuriant branches and leaves blocked most of the light. Xin Feng turned on his night vision device and continued to advance. Suddenly just at this time, he sensed a danger approaching, and a trace of a seemingly fishy odor appeared in the air near himself. Judging from his previous experience of traversing the jungle, coupled with the content of the textbook on top of the training manual, Xin Feng realized in an instant that he had been targeted by a predator in the jungle. As expected, he had just subconsciously stopped in his tracks, when a jungle tiger with a huge body size suddenly pounced out from among the bushes on his right. Although the sixth region was not able to develop economically, because of some traditional reasons, a lot of wildlife had survived in their area. Some of the wildlife was not found in other parts of the world. Poisonous snakes were the most common, and there were also many fierce tigers. The moment Xin Feng saw the pouncing tiger clearly, he barely thought about it and violently turned around with an overhead back kick. Bang! With this kick, he solidly kicked the tiger's left shoulder blade. The powerful kick immediately sent the tiger, which weighed at least three to four hundred pounds, flying out. Its body heavily hit a tree in front of it, immediately climbed up again after falling to the ground, shook its head and looked ferociously at Xin Feng again. However, this time, compared with the time when it just pounced out, it was obvious that inside the eyes of this tiger, there was already a trace of panic. Xin Feng stood still, his eyes locked with the tiger without letting go an inch. At the same time, his hand had slowly touched his weapon. As long as this fierce beast lunged towards him again, he would not hesitate to shoot. Fortunately, this fierce tiger was obviously not lightly kicked by Xin Feng's kick just now. Seeing Xin Feng's action, it actually wimped out, turned around and limped away towards the depths of the jungle without stopping or launching another attack. Xin Feng breathed a sigh of relief. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Looking up at the surrounding area, the vegetation that had been crushed by the battle just now, it seemed that this place could not be restored. However, Xin Feng did not get frustrated, but directly deployed several mines near those vegetation that had just been crushed by the manticore. Only after doing this did he quickly leave, an hour's time quickly passed. The sky darkened completely and utterly. The jungle once again became sunless, and the six team members seemed to be in boundless darkness. At this time, they had already started tracking. According to the discussed battle plan, with two people in a group, they split into three ways to quickly chase the traces left by Xin Feng far away. After a while, Wang Shichang and Sun Bin's squad on the left stopped. Everyone, you have to be careful. Just like our judgment, the squad leader left us some gifts. Wang Shichang and Sun Bin notified the rest of the team members who were less than 500 meters away through the radio while at the same time, they also backed away to a safe distance. Immediately after, Wang Shichang decisively fired at the trap found in front of him. A muffled sound of boom spread in the jungle. The other team members heard this sound and immediately became alert. Squad leader is really playing this trick again. But we've been trained. I'm good at demoning. Leon Chaoshu was confident and eager to try. Just as the words were finished he and Yuan Weihong ran into trouble. Don't move. We seem to have been misled. This isn't the route the squad leader left. It's a trap to deliberately lead us in. Yuan Weihong confirmed his judgment by observing the traces on the ground. As well as the broken vegetation nearby and so on. There can't be any mistake. This was left behind by the squad leader on purpose. It wasn't broken naturally. Bear, watch your own step, she said, 
sniffing the air with her nose a few times, and suddenly made another discovery. There are sixteen mines in all, five on the left, seven in front, and four on the right. Don't be careless, it's possible that these mines are in series with each other. Yuan Weihong reminded again, and informed the other two groups of his findings. At this time, the other two groups were also misled by the clues that Shin Feng had deliberately left behind and entered the ambush circle. With the previous experience of being ambushed by Shin Feng, each team member gained and was inspired in an amazing way. They cited one example and diversified their thinking. There was ample forethought on the various ways of using landmines and so on. Can we go over directly? Liang Chaoshu inquired. Of course it can. Look at me. Yuan Weihong signaled Liang Chaoshu to back up. The latter thought she was going to start the demoning operation. But who knew? Yuan Weihong directly threw a homemade high explosive grenade towards the trap area in front. There was a boom sound. As the grenade exploded in the jungle bushes, a chain reaction started in the surrounding area. The mines in those buried traps were detonated one after another. The muffled sound of boom 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 was endless. Fortunately, the two of them stood farther away, outside a safe distance. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Plus, Shin Feng had long ago removed the combat parts of the mines, which would not cause an anti-personnel effect on the team members. This one trap, there was no danger. Awesome blasting, worthy of being the blaster in our team. Liang Chaoshu kissed Yuan Weihong and gave him a thumbs up. Go! Yuan Weihong didn't talk nonsense and led the way to continue. At this time, the team members in the other directions had also completed their demoning operations and continued to pursue in the direction that Shin Feng might have fled. Shin Feng was, at this time, almost 10 kilometers away from the starting point. The continuous running away, coupled with the constant setting of traps, his physical strength was seriously depleted. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. The feeling of hunger had already appeared for the third time, one time more intense than the other, even though he was physically overpowered. At this moment, Shin Feng felt a little dizzy and he instinctively slowed down his traveling speed, although it was important to get rid of his teammates to avoid being caught up or even besieged by them. But, surviving inside the jungle, being hasty and adventurous was the number one taboo. The more at this moment when thinking became sluggish and actions became slow, the more it was necessary to remain absolutely calm and never go fast for the sake of going fast. Because in addition to the jungle chase training, there was also camouflage reconnaissance, infiltration ambush and other subjects training, in addition to anti-hunger training. Therefore, Shin Feng had to allocate his physical strength. It's useless to just run away. The camouflage technique should also be utilized at this time. Shin Feng began to collect nearby materials and camouflage himself locally. In a short while, he perfectly blended into the entire jungle nature. He purposely picked a large tree that was relatively thick and sturdy, and climbed on top of one of the branches on the tree. Utilizing the leaves, branches, and so on, he built himself a camouflage spot. This position could not only avoid attacks from the ground as well as the wildlife under the tree. At the same time, it was also a relatively good observation point with a good view, as well as, a sniper point. Shin Feng set up his sniper rifle while taking out his night vision device. As he stood still, the rate of stamina consumption slowed down, and that strong feeling of hunger he had gradually disappeared. The lost physical strength was slowly recovering bit by bit. It was a run of nearly 10 kilometers. Along the way, he constantly encountered traps and attacks from the residents in the jungle, coupled with being misled by the clues deliberately left by Shin Feng, resulting in several trips in vain. At this moment, the six team members who were responsible for pursuing Shin Feng were already exhausted. Not only that, they also had dry mouths and were severely dehydrated. I feel like I'm going to die. It's too stuffy here. I need water, really need it. The lanky Liang Cha Shu, in such an environment, his lanky figure became a drag on him. Now he not only felt extremely hungry, but at the same time desperately wanted to drink water. However, Yuan Weihan next to him immediately stopped him. When you drink the first mouthful of water, you'll want a second and third mouthful, and then you'll still want to eat. That way the effect of the anti-starvation training will be gone. What's the point of you doing this? Just hang in there a little longer. We're close to the squad leader. As long as we catch him or finish him off, we'll count the training as over and then we can eat. Yuan Weihong encouraged. Liang Chaoshu sniffed and barely managed to raise his spirits. He staggered forward, while at this moment, he suddenly seemed to think of something and jerked his feet. Everyone, we're already almost at our limit by this point. Guess how far the squad leader can run in one breath? Liang Chaoshu inquired. I don't know how far class leader can run, but I know that we are being teased by him. 
Those deliberately misleading traps just now were meant to quickly deplete our physical strength. We were obviously already so careful, but we still fell for it. Everyone, if you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. That's what the squad leader has calculated. Everything is under his control. He must know by now that we're about to die by the time we get here. So, beware of being sniped is the most important thing. Inside the radio, Wang Shirtian's reminder came. Immediately afterward, he added, the jungle will also block the squad leader's line of sight, and the only means for him to spot us are night vision and thermal imaging. Night vision works at a limited distance, but thermal imaging can capture the heat from our bodies much more quickly. Everyone, we need to camouflage. After Wang Shirtian finished speaking, he and Sun Bin exchanged glances and began to take up positions. They had already utilized the effort they had just made to dig out a small puddle on the ground. Utilizing the abundant underground water resources, they mixed soil to coat their entire body. This could effectively evade the tracking of the thermal imager. This jungle camouflage method was used by even the world's top special forces. Although primitive, the effect was truly surprising. At this moment, the other team members were doing the same. Soon, the six team members had completed their camouflage. It proved that their judgment was correct. At this time Shin Feng was waiting for them one kilometer away. Only, the team members who had carried out the camouflage had successfully avoided the tracking observation of Shin Feng's thermal imager. At this time, they had already approached to less than 500 meters away from Shin Feng's camouflaged lurking position. Each squad became more cautious. Everyone didn't want to expose themselves at this final juncture, leading to the loss of their efforts. And at the same time, they also needed to identify the traces left on the ground more carefully and conscientiously, judging whether they were real traces or clues used to mislead them. Shin Feng looked at the time. It was already nearly 12 o'clock at night. At this time, they should have already caught up with them right. Not finding anyone, there is only one explanation. Shin Feng inwardly judged silently. The corner of his mouth slowly rose. He had already guessed that the team members had carried out a camouflage and avoided his reconnaissance. But at this time, he did not leave, but continued to stay in the tree and wait. Another moment passed. Sure enough, two creeping figures appeared under the field of view of his night vision device. Shin Feng clearly saw the appearance of Liang Chao Shu as well as Yuan Weihong. Distance 150 meters. Wind speed. Negligible. Air humidity. Shin Feng silently judged the environmental parameters in his heart and loaded his weapon with a silencer. Shu, he fired decisively. The two bullets, shot out almost simultaneously, were aimed at two different targets. Liang Chao Shu, who was creeping forward, as well as Yuan Weihong, didn't even have time to react and were hit on the spot. Both of them were shaken at the same time and looked at each other. Liang Chao Shu reacted violently and picked up his communicator to notify the other team members but he was stopped by Yuan Weihong. Shu, she shook her head. Don't forget that we were taken out. Dead people can't talk. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Liang Chao Shu unwillingly smashed the ground with his fist, very breathlessly raising his night vision device and looking towards the location where the sniper rifle had just fired. Can Ah, squad leader you old six, did not expect to still be ambushed by you. Hey also quite good at hiding, even in the trees. Yuan Weihong had likewise already seen, just about 150 meters away from them on the tree Shin Feng. Despite the camouflage, some clues could still be seen on close inspection. Now, we can only look at the performance of the others. She shook her head helplessly and directly rolled over to lie flat. Right now, was really hungry and exhausted to the point that she couldn't exert any strength at all, and her ears were starting to buzz. Liang Chashu saw Yuan Weihong directly fall to the ground in exhaustion. He also followed the other party's action to directly lie flat. The two people relaxed their bodies and minds, and although hunger coupled with exhaustion kept coming, they keenly heard some sounds that had just been ignored. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. It was an unusual ringing sound in the jungle. It shouldn't be the sound of them moving, right? Liang Chaoshu whispered to Yuan Weihong. It's also possible that it's the sound made by the wild animals in the jungle that are foraging for food. Yuan Weihong reminded. As soon as these words were uttered, the two men sat up violently almost simultaneously and glanced at each other. No good. Liang Chashu jumped up with a strange cry, just wanting to turn around to check what was going on behind himself. But at this time, Yuan Weihong suddenly stopped him. Don't move, dog bear. Liang Chashu sniffed and immediately stood still as if he was a wooden stake. What? What's wrong? Blasting? Having avoided the tracking search of the thermal imager by using earthly methods, at this moment, 
Wang Shichang and the two squads of Sun Bin, Yang Lu, and Zhang Ninja were continuously approaching towards Xin Feng's location. They hadn't discovered Xin Feng, but had sensed something a bit abnormal. Clairvoyant, Dog Bear and Blast and the two of them. They haven't seemed to say anything since just now. The situation doesn't seem to be quite right ah. Sun Bin reminded Wang Shichang said. At this time, Wang Shichang had already stopped and was prostrate in the middle of a bush. He was adjusting the angle of his sniper rifle, trying to check the situation in the neighborhood to see if there was anything to be found. Hearing Sun Bin's words, Wang Shixiang responded in a low voice, Call them and confirm the situation. Sun Bin tried calling again. There was still no response, but it was Yang Lu and Zhang Yinjia's side that responded. It seems like something should have happened to the two of them, but both of them didn't give any warning beforehand. This is not in line with common sense. Even if they encountered sudden danger, they wouldn't be able to say nothing. The only explanation is that, they were killed in action. There is no way for a dead person to speak. Yang Lu quickly analyzed. Hokage, do you mean to say that the class president is in this neighborhood? Maybe he's aiming at us at this moment. Everyone be careful. The radio quickly fell silent. Also keeping silent were the actions of every single person. Schoolboy, it's up to you this time. We must find the squad leader. This time, we really can't let him regiment us again. Otherwise it'll be too humiliating. Zhang Ninja whispered beside Yang Lu, and at this moment, Yang Lu had already quietly taken out her technological equipment, and several small robot dogs were released by her. Does this thing still work? Zhang Ninja inquired curiously as she looked at the miniature robot dogs that were silent and moved quickly between the corrupt fallen leaves and shrubs. Although the jungle environment has an attenuating effect on the control signal, it should still be fine within a 200 meter radius. The only problem, is that we can't be sure if the squad leader is within this area? Maybe he's hiding 500 meters away peering at us. Yang Lu said, and let fly out two more machine bees. This gadget, together with a few machine dogs acting on the ground, air ground integrated reconnaissance. As long as a target existed within the area of reconnaissance, there was a high probability of not being able to hide. We're really too passive now, but if we lock on to the squad leader's position, he'll be the one in bad luck when the time comes. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, Please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Zhang Yanjia was confident. As long as they determined Xin Feng's location, they had plenty of opportunities to approach. At this time, Xin Feng's attention was not on the several other team members. First of all, of course, these few team members were already in a state of silence, while camouflaged and lurking, and there was no way for him to discover the position of these few team members. Another, it was because Xin Feng had first discovered Liang Chashu and Yuan Weihong in distress. Liang Chashu and Yuan Weihong heard strange noises in their neighborhood. At first, they thought that it was the sound of the other team members crawling on the ground. After all, the ground in the jungle had a lot of rotten leaves, dead branches and other things. If they weren't careful, they would make a strange noise. But then they realized that the movement was not from the other team members at all, but the wild animals in the jungle. The moment Liang Chashu stood up, Yuan Weihong had also seen exactly what that thing behind him was only to see that it was a king cobra that was sufficiently thicker than an adult man's arm. The king cobra was also known as the mountain peak, with an unusually ferocious temperament, very fast movement speed, and a huge body size. They are usually over three and a half meters long. The largest individual can even reach about six meters. The stout head, and even from time to time, people mistakenly think that this is a non-venomous python, unauthorized contact, and because of its huge size, it makes the amount of venom it discharges when it attacks its prey very large. In the event of an attack on a person, there is a very high probability of a tragedy. This highly venomous snake used to be widely distributed in the southwestern and southern regions of the 9th district. It has since become an endangered species due to habitat destruction caused by population growth and urban development. Even so, its threat to mankind has not diminished at all. In the economically underdeveloped region 6, it is widely distributed and very common, especially in grasslands open slopes, jungles and other places, because king cobras are ferocious. In addition to preying on food eaten by common snakes, they will also feed on other snakes as well as their own kind. Therefore, it is not an exaggeration to say that they are the king of the kingdom of poisonous snakes. Every year, because of this king cobra, there were incidents of people attacking and dying. Xin Feng was also startled by the sudden appearance of the king cobra. The thing he was most worried about had indeed happened. When king cobras warned or were about to launch an attack, they would stand the front third of their body upright to deter the enemy or to facilitate the attack. At this moment, the king cobra in front of Liang Chaoshu was erecting the upper half of its body as if it was standing up. This time, its head was directly about the same height as Liang Chaoshu, who was close to two meters tall. 
And this also meant that this was a giant king cobra, which was at least 5 meters long. Liang Chaoshu saw the threat clearly, and his entire body was completely confused. Although he didn't recognize the king cobra, he also didn't know just how infamous this guy was. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. But just by looking at this fierce and vicious viper, which was staring intently at himself intending to take the initiative to attack, he had also realized that the big deal was not good. At this time, his whole body began to break out in a cold sweat, his heartbeat accelerated, and even his hand had subconsciously gone to touch the field dagger at his waist. Dog bear, you must not act rashly, you listen to me. Yuan Weihong once again issued a low warning. Yuan Weihong had once revealed that their family had made a living by catching and raising snakes for generations. Nowadays, the family already owns several large-scale snake farms, mainly breeding not only economic non-venomous snakes, but also a variety of highly venomous snakes used in medicinal research and other fields. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can read normally. The top 10 highly venomous snakes in the 9th district were all farmed, and among them was the king cobra, so she knew the habits of the king cobra very well. This type of snake was fierce and aggressive, and was very good at taking the initiative to attack its prey. Once your range of motion was too large and gave it a sense of threat, it would immediately attack without hesitation. Hearing Yuan Wei Hong's warning, Liang Chaoshu stopped moving at once, not daring to make any more rash moves. Slowly, calmly, slowly back away. Don't take your eyes off at sight. Yuan Wei Hong was slowly backing up step by step while uttering her voice to guide Liang Chaoshu. However, what she didn't expect was that this King Cobra, which was much more ferocious than what she had expected, had followed it and continued to confront the two. That movement of constantly shaking its head and nimbly turning the snake's neck made Yuan Weihong's scalp a little numb as well. This was an action to launch an attack. She didn't dare to breathe a single breath, yet she was still calmly reminding and guiding Liang Chaoshu. Liang Chaoshu's breathing had long since become rapid. He was already severely physically exhausted and starving. Encountering such a danger at this time was simply killing him, but he could only force himself to concentrate and try not to panic. Pretending to be relaxed, he looked back at Yuan Weihong and asked, Blast! Do you think I'll die on the spot if I get bitten by this thing? When Yuan Weihong saw his movements, his face changed violently and he shouted in a low voice, Don't turn your back to it. But it was already too late. That King Cobra had already been poised to strike. The moment it saw Liang Chaoshu turn around, it decisively launched its attack and violently lunged towards Liang Chaoshu. In the nick of time, the sound of a gunshot rang out. Shu, the sniper rifle's bullet whistled, and within less than 0.5 seconds, it directly disintegrated this king cobra's head into pieces, and just at the moment when the king cobra's head was exploded, a second bullet was shot over, directly hitting the king cobra's upright snake body. This shot instantly split the bullthick snake body in two on the spot. Liang Chaoshu still maintained his posture of shock stiffness, eyes wide open. He watched the scene for a full moment before he was able to come back to his senses. I, can I move now? The whole body is, numb, am I bitten by it, blasting? I'm going to die, right? Liang Chaoshu saw on the ground, the king cobra that had its head blown off was still rolling and twisting its huge body. The snake's body, which was almost as thick as his own arm and almost as thick as a normal eating bowl, rolled and twisted inside the bushes, directly overwhelming the surrounding vegetation. At once, he once again felt a tingle in his scalp. Yuan Weihong first came back to his senses and let out a sigh of relief after going up to check it out. It's the squad leader who saved us. She turned around and looked towards the location where Shin Feng had just shot and saluted giving another thumbs up towards Shin Feng. Only then did she turn back to Liang Chaoshu and patted his shoulder to signal him to relax. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. It was really too dangerous just now. Dog bear, remember in the future, never turn your back to this thing when you encounter it, otherwise it will think you're conceding defeat and will directly attack you. If you get bitten by it in the jungle, all I can do is to call 120 for you and then send you out of the forest with everyone else. Yuan Weihong said heartily, although this was a bit of a semi-exaggeration within, but she wasn't actually wrong. Being bitten by a king cobra, one needed to take the correct method to treat the wound in the first place to prevent the venom from spreading further. At the same time, you need to immediately go to a large hospital to receive formal treatment. Even Yuan Weihong, who came from a family of snake breeders, did not have the means to effectively treat the bite of such a large and highly venomous snake in the wild. Just now if unfortunately really bitten, if it couldn't be treated and injected with anti-venom in time, even with Liang Chaoshu's size and cardiopulmonary function, he would be absolutely cool within two hours. Even, 
If the amount of venom that was injected was a bit larger, it wouldn't even take that long. Yuan Weihong's words made Liang Chaoshu deeply realize the terrifying aspects of the jungle. At the same time, he also realized that he had, just now, truly walked through the gates of hell. Escaping from death, he hurriedly turned his head to look in Xin Feng's direction and similarly saluted at Xin Feng. Squad leader, thanks for saving my life. Liang Chaoshu obviously hadn't completely calmed down. Squeezing his communicator, he said thanks inside the radio. This opening of his mouth was tantamount to directly exposing the fact that Qin Feng was in this neighborhood to Wang Shichang, Sun Bin, as well as several team members, Yang Lu and Zhang Nianjia. However, there was actually no need for Liang Chashu to say so. Qin Feng had just switched from blanks to live ammunition in order to save the two of them. He had been completely exposed the moment he fired. At this moment, four team members were surrounding him. The sounds of did 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 and mut 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 were endless. Even if Qin Feng was well disguised and robbed of his strength, being surrounded by four team members from four different directions, and each team member was well trained and had a hundred shots, he couldn't afford it even for a moment. Xin Feng had to jump down from the tree he was hiding in and quickly flee the scene. At the same time, his harumphing voice came over, count yourselves as qualified this time. However, it's better to hurry up and get out of here. Be careful of the King Cobra in the jungle. That thing is a bigger threat than the sniper rifle in my hand. He had set the training rules before. As long as the team members were able to touch their position and spot themselves, it was considered that they passed. If they caught themselves, or killed themselves, they would be considered excellent. Although it happened suddenly just now, and it was Xin Feng who took the initiative to expose his position. However, considering the dangers in the jungle, Xin Feng still let in a little bit of water. King Cobra? What do you mean? Who was bitten? Was it a bear? Wang Shixiang fired a blind sniper shot in the direction Xin Feng fled. Before he came back to his senses and hurriedly inquired inside the radio, if you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. No one was bitten, but we just encountered a King Cobra attack, and it was the squad leader who stepped in to save us, a sort of escape from death. Yuan Weihong immediately responded. Several team members quickly converged, and after gathering together, Seeing the corpse of the King Cobra on the ground that was broken in two and still had its head blown off, along with Liang Chaoshu's narration from the two of them, it was only then that everyone finally understood what had happened. It seems that we were lucky just now, or else at this moment, it is estimated that we have already been completely annihilated again by the squad leader. Wang Shichang said gruffly. No one bothered to refute Wang Shichang's words because everyone knew that it was the truth. If Xin Feng didn't fire those two shots just now, but instead waited for them to start their own operation and then expose their position. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Then, with Shen Fang's sniper marksmanship, there must be no one who could be spared and would only be named by him one by one. Liang Chaoshu, with a palpitating heart, took another look at the corpse of the King Cobra on the ground. He raised the heavy machine gun in his hand and shot at the corpse. All right, don't waste bullets. Is everyone alright? Yuan Weihong looked at the other members. After confirming that all members were fine, she and Yang Lu exchanged glances. The appearance of this big guy here means that there's no more threat in this nearby area. Inside the King Cobra's territory, it's almost impossible for other venomous snakes as well as its kind to appear again, and all other types of predators will deliberately avoid this place. Those that didn't leave in time, the odds are that they've already become its food. So for our next step, we can safely continue to hunt down the class. Hearing her say this, Liang Chaoshu gave an ah. Still chasing ah? Didn't the class president say that we passed the test? He was really frightened by what he had just experienced. Now for the next adventure. Felt worried. The jungle was so dangerous that there was a real possibility of completely explaining himself here if he wasn't careful. Sun Bin heatedly laughed and walked up and patted Liang Chaoshu's shoulder. What? A small snake. It scared you like this? That's because you didn't experience the scene just now. Do you know how menacing that was? That thing? Standing upright with its upper body is taller than me, Liang Chaoshu retorted defiantly. At this moment, Wang Shichang followed suit. This is considered a victory for us. Not to mention that we weren't even able to take him down when the class leader took the initiative to expose himself. Do you guys think that this passing grade can be counted? I don't feel good inside anyway. I also feel that we don't need to accept this handout grade. I'm not going to stop until I catch the class president myself. Zhang Yinjia clenched his fists and cheered himself up. Upon hearing this, the others nodded along. Everyone agreed that just now, they were lucky and didn't rely on their own strength to discover Shin Feng. Therefore, everyone felt depressed and unconvinced in their hearts. I still don't believe it. How come the squad leader is so powerful? 
since everyone thinks that we should speak with our own strength, then I, dog bear, will just lay down my life. Go, go after the squad leader. He raised his heavy machine gun with one hand and raised his arm, leaving the ambush area just now. Shin Feng hoofed it all the way and continued to rush. He was now fighting with himself, constantly challenging his limits, trying to surpass the current upper limit of his strength. Various negative states such as hunger, fatigue, sleepiness, and so on kept coming. Shin Feng was indifferent to this, and his tenacious willpower allowed him to persist. Not only that, he was still insisting on setting traps to make training more difficult for his team members as well. A true warrior was an absolutely powerful being from body to spirit. Two days and two nights of extreme training, time passed quietly in the action of the team members and Shin Feng chasing and escaping each other. On the afternoon of the third day, Shin Feng stood on top of a hill. This was the edge of this vast primitive jungle, which meant that they had completed traversing the entire jungle within these three days or so, close to six o'clock in the afternoon. The team members also returned one after another. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or read mode can be read normally. These two days and two nights of training. No sleep. No food. No drink. Just chasing after themselves. At this moment every one of the team members looked incredibly haggard. Incredibly woeful. Not to mention the dirty clothes on their bodies. On each of their faces, the high fighting spirit had long since disappeared. Now, all that was left was a droopy disheveled look. What, can't hold on anymore? Shen Feng looked playfully at Liang Chashu, who had rolled to the ground after climbing up with difficulty from the foot of the mountain, panting heavily and staring at the sky. Squad leader, I can't, I'm going to be practiced to death by you. Liang Chashu's two eyes were straight. What he saw was not the sky, but a pitch black. These few days down the training, the physical torture on their bodies had already made people feel numb. The most tormenting aspect was still the mental will aspect. Because of the limited time and the fact that the players had also been fighting with themselves because of Shin Feng's water release, everyone wanted to catch Shin Feng and use their strength to prove that they weren't bad either. So much so, the team members who had barely gotten any sleep had their heads buzzing by this time. Even their minds were about to stop functioning. Being able to arrive here was completely supported by a tenacious and indomitable willpower. As Liang Chao Shu arrived at the top of the mountain, the other team members also converged one after another. Each and every one of them was lying on the ground in exhaustion not even bothering to move a bit. Got you. Squad leader, Zhang Yinjia was the last to arrive. Her physical ability itself was the weakest within the team. However, her willpower was very, very tenacious, and she still didn't forget to skin a little when she came next to Shen Feng, reaching out and grabbing Shen Feng's feet. Training time is up. Now you are authorized to drink water. Take a small sip first. Just by looking at the team members, each one's current state knew that they hadn't stolen food on the way. Shen Feng was still very satisfied with everyone's performance. He himself at this time, also took out his water bottle and took a sip of water, although it was just a sip of mineral water, but having been replenished by the source of life, as if injecting extraordinary energy into his body, his strength began to recover at an accelerated rate. The feeling of weakness just now was not as strong anymore. After resting for a while, the team members had recovered quite a bit of spirit. Everyone began to take out the only remaining compressed cookies and shared them with each other. Squad leader, this is already the edge of the jungle, right? Look guys, there seems to be a village in the distance ahead. Should we go over and take a look? Sun Bin pointed to an area in the distance at the foot of the mountain, about a kilometer away. Between the trees looming in the distance, one could indeed see the presence of buildings, mainly wooden structures. There's no need to bother the locals. After everyone has rested in a while, let's launch the final training. Shin Feng smiled at the team. Ah, the training isn't over yet? Liang Chaoshu was directly dumbfounded. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Counting the first round of training, they had experienced a total of three days and three nights of torture. He felt that he had eaten all the bitterness he could eat in his life. Unexpectedly, this wasn't the end. Shin Feng just smiled without saying anything, waiting for the team members to finish the last food in their hands before he added. The next training is a comprehensive test of your physical ability, tactical skills, mental will, psychological quality, your intelligence, and your ability to survive in the wild and so on. After completing this training, we are considered to have completely graduated. In the future, no one can call you rookie novices anymore. After thoroughly completing the training, they could go and clean up those criminals and fight them for real. When the team members heard this, they immediately came to have more spirit. Hearing Xin Feng's words, the team members remembered that they had previously encountered those professional mercenaries hired by the criminals to chase them, as well as, 
The experience of being attacked by the enemy sending helicopter gunships for direct bombing. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. These hatreds instantly ignited everyone's fighting spirit. But I'm still waiting for the day of revenge. It's finally coming soon ah. Wang Shichang narrowed his eyes. Last time, he failed to put down the enemy with a single shot and almost let the other party escape. This matter had been nagging at him. In these few days, he had been silently swearing inwardly that if he met such an opponent next time, he would absolutely, positively not give the other party any more chances. The enemy will definitely be surprised when we appear again. I can't wait to see their panicked expressions. Lian Chao Shu also clenched his fists. It wasn't a gentleman who didn't repay his enemies, let alone those vicious criminals. No one would be satisfied or rest until they clean them up. As long as I can become stronger and make my enemies pay the price they deserve. It doesn't matter if I train for another 4 days, 10 days, or a month, I'll be able to persevere. Zhang Yanjia was testing his grip strength. As her fists clenched and unclenched in between, that feeling of power filling up and surging became strong. After her physical strength was restored, she had already realized that her strength had become much greater. It clearly felt like it wasn't the same thing as before the training. This intense feeling of becoming stronger made her a bit mesmerized. Those who also felt this way were Yuan Weihong, Yang Lu, and the rest of the team. At this moment, everyone was fine with continuing the training. The enemy was not an idle one. They would face stronger opponents in the future. There was absolutely nothing wrong with sweating more and putting in more effort. Sweating more in normal times would result in less bloodshed in wartime. Unless one doesn't become a mercenary anymore, the training will never stop. Seeing that the fighting spirit of the team members was so high, and everyone's eyes were unusually determined and bright, Shin Feng nodded in satisfaction. In that case, we'll start after a five minute break. The next four days and three nights of comprehensive training tested the comprehensive quality of each member of the team itself. As for the specific training subjects, in fact, the team members had already been deeply exposed to or skillfully mastered them long ago during the previous training, so it was not a difficult task for them. What was really difficult was how to use their own wisdom and apply what they had learned flexibly to solve the difficulties they actually encountered. At this point, the players did not let Shin Feng down. Whether it's hijacking and anti-hijacking, captivity training, armed cross-country, heavy pursuit, armed swimming, anti-starvation training or psychological quality test, crossing the poisoned area and other training. In addition, there is also targeted training that simulates the environment of the enemy strongholds, as well as hostage rescue training. Although there are dozens of subjects, but with the help of the system, the players have achieved twice the result with half the effort. The performance of every member of the team had reached excellence or above. From here, it could also be seen that they had indeed grown rapidly in the past few days. Every member's strength had reached the level of a senior mercenary. The only thing they lacked was more actual battles to accumulate richer combat experience. When the training was completely over, Shin Feng and his team members once again crossed the entire jungle spanning nearly 200 kilometers, and returned to the area where the bright area was located. From the lush primitive jungle, back to the modern society, including Shin Feng, everyone was as if they were in a different world. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Looking at the world of traffic and lights in front of them, there was a feeling of unreality. It was good that they quickly adapted. Shin Feng took the team back to the hotel and changed his clothes after taking a comfortable shower. Coming out of the bathroom, Shin Feng casually picked up the cell phone that was charging and turned it on. Just after the phone was turned back on, he immediately received countless text messages, social software message alerts, and various app messages. The messages were drip 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 non-stop. Even the excellent performance of the phone actually experienced a brief lag. Shin Feng slightly frowned. At this moment, the door of his room was suddenly slapped vigorously. Through the cat's eye he saw that it was Liang Chao Shu and the rest of the team outside. Shin Feng opened the door to his room. Squad leader, have you seen the news? Liang Chao Shu squeezed in and asked as he opened the door. Immediately after, several other team members followed in with odd expressions. Haven't had time to read it yet. Why? Shin Feng sensed that the situation was not simple. Closing the door to his room, he casually rubbed his hair, which was still not completely dry, with a bath towel, and walked back to pick up his cell phone again. You'd better take a look at it. Squad leader. Wang Shirshan looked at Shin Feng's cell phone with an odd expression on his face and reminded. Seeing everyone looking so secretive, Shin Feng curiously unlocked his phone and tapped the message. His phone once again showed signs of slight lag. It was hard to open the social software, and dozens of people had sent themselves thousands of messages. In addition to a large number of message alerts requesting to add friends, Shin Feng wondered in his heart, 
What happened again? He soon saw the messages sent by his mother, Lin Ngaoyun, and his father, Chen Qingsong. In addition there were also messages from teachers and leaders of the school, some friends that he usually didn't have much contact with, and so on. After reading these messages, Chen Feng raised his eyebrows slightly as he finally understood what had happened. After the criminals had dispatched helicopter gunships to attack them, they had disguised the news that they had been attacked and annihilated and spread it on the internet. Now, the incident was festering throughout the entire 9th district. Almost everyone, including their own parents and relatives, thought that the rumors spread by the criminals were true. Xin Feng and his team members, who were once regarded as the heroes of the 9th district, had suddenly been sacrificed. That's why so many people, because they cared about them and constantly bombarded them with text messages. All kinds of news such things happen. For a while, Xin Feng cried and laughed. His grandmother, these criminals are quite good at playing psychological warfare. If I'm not wrong about these things, they are deliberately spreading them out to other mercenaries. This move is called killing the chicken to warn the monkey. Only, I didn't expect the rumors to actually cause such a huge stir in the 9th district. Xin Feng guffawed and skimmed his lips again, raising his sword brows. He clicked on the chat window with his mother, Lin Ngaoyun and prepared to make a video call to the other party to report that he was safe, so that everyone wouldn't worry about him. But just at this time, Xin Feng saw a news push. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Criminals strike again. At least dozens of young men and women in the 9th district were scammed into traveling to the 6th district. Life and death are uncertain. Their whereabouts are unknown. Parents set up 500 people group emergency search unsuccessful. This message instantly caught Shen Feng's attention. The team members did not notice the news push that appeared inside Shen Feng's cell phone at this moment. Seeing Shen Feng's silence, Liang Chaoshu next to him inquired, We've also all received messages of concern from our families as well as the community. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. There are also a large number of messages from unidentified people requesting to add friends. Squad leader, this time around, not only have our photos been directly utilized by those criminals and posted on the internet, but also our home addresses and whatnot have been unearthed. Now everyone knows that we are the mercenaries who acted in the 6th district and crushed the criminal organization of Lee Sanpa and his gang. And, speaking of this, Liang Chaoshu's expression once again became odd. The other few team members, too, were all looking at me and me, each with an expression that was both depressed and a bit helpless. Squad leader, the criminals spread the news that we've hiccuped and were taken out by them and now everyone thinks that the news is true. There are a few points that we need to deal with as a matter of urgency, but can't decide. So we came to ask for your opinion. Wang Shichang followed suit and spoke. Shen Feng knew what they wanted to ask. At this moment, he looked back and looked up at all the team members. You guys are worried about the safety of your family members. Worried that they will be retaliated against by criminals, right? Yes, that's right. Yang Lu was immediately the first to nod. The fact that things had developed to this point today was something that everyone had never expected. The identities that were meant to be kept secret had now become a matter of public knowledge, and even everyone's home addresses, photos, graduation schools, and other information had been revealed and exposed on the internet. The impact on each and every one of them was undoubtedly immeasurable. Xin Feng could understand the worries of every member of the team, and he himself was also very worried about his parents and relatives. However, it was useless to worry now and one needed to remain calm to think of countermeasures. Our families are in the 9th district, which is a forbidden area for mercenaries. Ordinary mercenaries don't have the chance to start operations in there, and ordinary criminals aren't that capable either. After all, our 9th district's border defense as well as the patrol division, national security, and so on aren't vegetarians either, so there's no need to worry for the time being, not to mention that we've already reminded our parents and relatives previously to be more careful. They must already be stepping up their guard. Xin Feng first gave the team some consolation. The 9th district was recognized as one of the safest places in the world, and the law and order situation had long ranked among the top in the world. Who would dare to boast so much if they didn't have a couple of tricks up their sleeves? After listening to Xin Feng's words, the team members felt that it made sense. Then squad leader, should we reply to the messages from those who care about us now? Mainly I'm worried about my mom and dad. My dad he doesn't have a good heart. If something happens because he's worried about my well-being, I'll be over it for the rest of my life. Sun Bin still inquired after hesitating for a while. Hearing his words the rest of the team members, they also looked over towards Shin Feng. Everyone had become very cautious after realizing that their identities had been exposed and that it was also highly likely that they would involve their families. Although they were eager to immediately reply to their family's concerns, 
Everyone surprisingly remained rational and calm and did not act rashly, but instead ran over at the first opportunity to discuss their countermeasures with Xin Feng. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Not for now. Xin Feng shook his head decisively. Now the enemy themselves are afraid that they think we are dead or missing and don't dare to mess with them again. With all this news spreading out, and with our personal information all over the internet now, guess who's behind this? Their purpose is to make us know what to do. If we contact our family now, it's highly likely that the enemy will notice. And once they realize that we're still active in the 6th district, that's what would be irresponsible to our family. Therefore, my suggestion is to wait until we have resolved the mission in the 6th district and return to the 9th district before contacting our family members according to the actual situation. Shen Feng's analysis was not unreasonable. Those criminals were inhuman, and when pushed, they would do anything. If they were to know that Shen Feng's group was still waiting in the 6th district to clean them up, by then they would be infuriated and might really take the risk. Once they ventured into the 9th district to launch an operation, targeting Shen Feng and the other team members' families, then, at that time, the consequences would be really hard to predict. Squad leader is right. The current situation is one where the enemy is clear and we are in the dark. We know the enemy's every move. While the enemy definitely doesn't even know where we are right now, this is our advantage. Let's not take the initiative to break this advantage. Yang Lu also nodded her head in agreement with Xin Feng after a brief moment of thought. The other team members didn't have any major opinions on this issue. Although they were also worried and desperately wanted to let their families know that they were fine. However, considering the big picture, everyone still resisted that urge. Squad leader, then what do you think about the matter of those criminals knowing our identities? And the matter of our identities being exposed all over the internet? Can we still remedy it? Zhang Yanjia inquired at this time. She wasn't mentally prepared for that kind of situation right now, and hadn't decided to disclose her mercenary's identity yet, but the news had already leaked out. This caused her a great deal of trouble. Not only would some bored people probably come to harass them, other criminals and even some mercenary organizations active in the underground world would be paying attention to them. No one knew what kind of situation they would face in the future. The unknown, the most unsettling. Yuan Weihong also had similar troubles as Zhang Yanjia. She also didn't want her mercenary identity to be known to everyone. Xin Feng swept his gaze across the faces of the crowd and let out a playful light laugh. Why do we need to deal with these problems? To remedy them? We don't need to remedy it. Squad leader. What do you mean? Liang Chaoshu curiously asked after him. Xin Feng locked eyes with him. What is the purpose of our coming to the 6th district? To get money? No. To fight for the 9th district. To save our suffering compatriots and make those criminals who do wrong pay. Liang Chaoshu was the first to raise his hand in reply. And, if you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. And, he hesitantly looked at Xin Feng and scratched his head. Become, the top mercenary? That's right. Didn't each and every one of you make an oath before that you must become the topmost mercenary and represent the 9th district to make a name for yourselves and go global? Now, the enemy has already done this for us, saving us a lot of effort. Xin Feng playfully laughed softly once again. Xin Feng's words caused all the team members to, at once, be energized. One of their initial purposes of coming to the 6th district and becoming mercenaries was indeed to make a name for themselves and make a name for themselves. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode can be read normally. Every member of the team wanted to grow into the world's top mercenaries so that the mercenary organizations from other districts would be impressed by the 9th district. From now on, no one could say that District 9 didn't have decent, powerful mercenaries. Xin Feng wasn't wrong, the enemy's publicity for the purpose of making an example out of the enemy, although it brought a lot of trouble to each and every one of them. However, wasn't it also doing publicity for them? At this moment, while every member of the team was thinking, Xin Feng continued, Sooner or later, our fame is going to be made. At that time, the world will still know about us, and countless people will still pay attention to our existence just as they do now. So, why should you guys be bothered by these criminals, who are being smart? Not only do we not need to be bothered by these crap things, we should also be thankful to those criminals. They are saving us a huge amount of publicity expenses and publicity consuming energy. Xin Feng said and laughed playfully once again. His easy and relaxed laugh infected every member of the team, causing everyone's mood to become relaxed as well. Squad leader has a point. With the enemy publicizing us like this, now that everyone outside thinks that we've all been killed by them, maybe those criminals who spread rumors are themselves believing the nonsense they're saying. At that time, we'll give them a big surprise and catch them off guard. When we clean up after them, 
The whole world will know who we are by then. Wang Shichuan's eyes were filled with a strong desire as well as a high fighting spirit. After listening to Xin Feng's words, not only was he not confused now, but on the contrary, he had a clearer goal. The rekindled fighting spirit made him eager to clean up those criminals. He had to ruthlessly thwart their arrogance and get back the favor for himself while rescuing the persecuted abductees. Squad leader, when are we going to act? I feel like I have inexhaustible strength right now, so I want to find a few enemies to practice on. Liang Chashu was also a bit impatient and looked at Xin Feng with eagerness. The other team members, at this time, were also concentrating and looking at Xin Feng with burning eyes. Xin Feng, however, was staring at his cell phone at this time. He was checking out that one news tweet just now. Dozens of young men and women, who had disappeared from the 9th district, and whose families were anxious and eager had formed a large group of 500 people to seek help. Through exchanging information with each other, they confirmed that their sons and daughters were suspected to have been lured to the 6th district by criminals. This matter was now on the news. On the hot search. It happened right after Xin Feng and his mercenaries were killed. And now those 60 young men and women, generally between the ages of 18 and 26, have been out of contact with their families for more than 48 hours. The entire network of the 9th district is discussing this matter. And will this matter? And Xin Feng and others killed event at the same height. The same degree of heat. Looking at the two events in tandem, countless netizens believed that this was the secondary revenge of the criminals in the 6th district. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or read mode can read normally. The purpose was to nakedly provoke the 9th district. Provoking the bottom line of everyone in the 9th district. Xin Feng clicked on a well-known question and answer social app based on the hot links on the internet. And the first on the hot list was this related news message. The second on the hot list was the question related to Xin Feng and the others going missing. Suspected to have been killed by criminals. And the third and fourth were still other news related to the first one. Xin Feng clicked on those hot list contents one by one. According to the content inside the first question, Shen Feng got some more crucial information. Among them, there is located in the 6th district business for many years in the 9th district compatriots, appeared to answer the question. The other party confirmed that the dozens of missing young men and women has indeed been cheated to the 6th district. Moreover, the park where those victims are being held is near where he does business. In the midst of his answer, the anonymous netizen also released several sets of photos. Based on the background of the photos, Xin Feng judged at a glance that the environment there was indeed the environment of the tropical rainforest that was common in the 6th district. In addition, from those District 9 faces captured in the explosive photos, comparing the photos of those male and female youths who had disappeared inside the news on the internet, it could be realized that they were indeed the same group of people. This also means that the news is basically true. However, these contents were not too complete. As the incident continued to ferment, more information was disclosed from the internet. Xin Feng continued to browse and also learned more information. The content of this information. Some of the parents and relatives of the parties personally broke the news to the media. Some of these missing persons, they had been taken over by criminals. Criminals sent over videos of their children being kidnapped and controlled to extort a high ransom. Parents whose families had some money left over, worried about their children's safety, decisively paid hundreds of thousands of dollars in ransom as demanded by the criminals. And some families are not really generous people. Parents are also mobilized relatives and friends the east and west to put together enough ransom. But what they never expected was that the money was given, but the people were not released. Those criminals, obviously see these parents to give money to give so fast, directly threatened to ask for more ransom. If they didn't, they would send gifts such as the hands and feet of the missing persons. This piece of post triggered more than 100, 000 hot comments. The number of viewers even reached nearly 300 million. Countless people were condemning the criminals for being untrustworthy and despicable. Xin Feng directly ignored these comments. In the face of vicious, genocidal criminals, condemnation is useless, only to give them equal harm. Let them also feel the pain, is the most direct and effective means of deterrence. He continued to browse more question posts. And at this time, a few team members also noticed that Xin Feng was out of sorts, and they all looked over curiously. Squad leader, what are you doing? Why don't you say anything? Liang Chashu curiously came over and looked twice. What's this? What he saw happened to be a blood-soaked photo. And at first glance, he just saw that it was bloody and didn't see what it actually was. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled and wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Waiting for Liang Chashu close to look. Directly exclaimed hell. Other team members, see him so fuss, also have curiously surrounded over. Everyone subconsciously to Shen Feng's cell phone picture to look down. Do not look okay. This look. Everyone instantly scalp numb, sweat hairs stand up, 
There is a kind of nausea and regurgitation but also very fresh sense of curiosity spread throughout the body. This picture, the reason why it made Shin Fong as well as the team members feel uncomfortable in their hearts was because, it was a human head, a bloody, dead head. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. It was being lifted in the hand by its hair, and on the ground next to it, there was the corpse of the suspected owner of this human head. The corpse could almost be described as dismembered. Its body did not know how many knives were cut. Knife to the bone. The whole person was cut to a bloody mess. The cement floor has been completely red with blood, and several machetes more than half a meter long were scattered on the ground next to the corpse. Obviously those were the murder weapon. After being chopped to death alive and then decapitated, then photographed. What kind of person would be able to do this kind of dehumanizing and inhumane thing? There was only one answer, and that was the criminals in the 6th district. The post that Shin Fong clicked on was indeed a reproduction of the picture and accompanying text that the criminals of the 6th district had arrogantly posted on the network. The accompanying text in the picture was obviously written by locals or people familiar with the 9th district. Only that some of the words had been misspelled. The picture had been corrected by someone. This is what happens to those who start, thinking of escaping. And if they catch one, they will kill one, Jew, and will not be lenient. This won't be the first, nor will it be the last. Rush to the block, fast, to pay the sale, ransom. Otherwise there will be more western, life, people. This is a picture of the criminals of the 6th district. Exterminating one of those 60 missing persons. The blood-soaked photo tugged at the hearts of everyone who saw it. Shin Fong and his teammates, at this moment, came back from their shock. And every single one of their eyes were filled with deep anger. At the same time, their fists were all tightly clenched. But this was not the end. Shin Fong continued to scroll down and saw even more infuriating content. This time, it was a few other photos. Looking at the content on the photos, it was a few young girls, locked up inside a larger house, surrounded by at least 20 to 30 figures. All of these people were only photographed in half. Their looks did not exit the country. The five girls, already stripped naked from the photo, were holding their bodies with their backs to the camera, surrounded by a dozen other men harassing them. The picture likewise has the accompanying text. This is for their education. Every arriving guest has to undergo such a welcoming ceremony. If they don't obey, their heads will be cut off, or they will be sold directly to the key, brothel. This set of photos, likewise, looked at Shin Fong and the six team members with rage, their eyes seeming to spit out flames, and immediately after that, the next content, was a video that was 18 minutes long. Judging from the cover of the video, it was the face of a somewhat blurred and distorted man, in the mold of growing his mouth and letting out a miserable scream. He was naked and his body was covered with a bloody wound. Shin Fong slightly took a deep breath, and exchanged glances with a few other team members. Then, clicked play. Instantly, heartrending screams came from the cell phone. Ah, ah, don't, don't hit me, please, don't hit me. Mom, dad, hurry up and give them money, please, I really can't stand it. Ah, ah, I really do not dare, do not dare to resist, please let me go. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. This man who started off by tearing his heart out and yelling for mercy looked to be less than 20 years old. The body, which was thin and weak in itself, was being beaten in turn by three or four brawny men with electric batons. The electric baton, not a bit of politeness, one after another beat on the body of that young man. Not a few times to beat him all over the body scars, screaming. Not only that, the criminals also used the electric baton to shock the young man one after another. Within two strokes, the young man was electrocuted and fell straight to the ground, writhing around like an eel. In the end, he even foamed at the mouth and rolled his eyes. But even so, those criminals were still not the slightest bit soft. They still continued to electrocute this youth. It was only when the youth completely rolled his eyes and lost consciousness that he finally gave up. Shen Feng had seen the photos of those missing persons. He had just browsed through the complete news on the internet. And he had also seen the photos that had exploded from inside the parents group. At this moment, he instantly recognized that this young man who was being tortured and beaten with continuous electric shocks was precisely one of the 60 missing persons. After the video had played to 3 minutes and 57 seconds, the camera began to move. The scene came to another youth who was being tortured. This male youth who was being tortured by the criminals was about the same age as the previous one, and was equally thin and frail. He was being pressed face down on the ground with his shirt off by 4 or 5 criminals. Another criminal was using a wire brush to rub the floor tiles on the young man's back repeatedly rubbing it back and forth. In no time, this young man's originally smooth and white back was rubbed to a bloody pulp and drenched in blood by the wire brush. 
he kept struggling, crying and begging for mercy. However, the criminals were simply indifferent. One of them brought a white bottle filled with an unknown transparent liquid and poured it directly onto the injured young man's back. While pouring the unknown liquid, he chanted with his mouth, as if it was crocodile tears in general soothing, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, clean the wound for you, wash it, it's okay, it'll be okay after a wash. With the action of pouring, the liquid fell on the male youth's bloody back, at once he let out an even more miserable howl, ah, ah, it hurts, ouch, please, don't torture me anymore, please ah dash. The male youth's pleas for mercy did not have the slightest effect, on the contrary, his screams seemed to have angered the criminals, and the one who was rubbing his back with the wire steel brush, the force on his hands became stronger. For a while, blood flowed down the male youth's body, quickly staining his entire body as well as the ground. The screen camera began to switch again at this time, and this time the one being tortured was a girl. It looked to be about 24 or 25 years old. Seven or eight big men were surrounding her with a burst of punches and kicks. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. The girl has been beaten to the point of confusion. Also do not know how to cry for mercy. Just like that dumbfounded general paralyzed on the ground. But in spite of this, those criminals still did not have any hand. Big slaps constantly smacked on the girl's head, face, splitting sound. A few of the criminals, while hitting, cursed, chow nimas then, let you resist, resist again, try resisting, how dare you bite me, fuck, kill her for me, I'll contact someone to get my kidney today. In the video, a man with tattoos all over his body, using a very fluent 9th district language, kept abusing the girl who was being beaten, and at the end, he even threatened to kill the girl right away and directly remove her kidney to sell it. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. And, he didn't tell lies. These criminals, really did just that. The tattooed man, after turning around, directly drew a half meter long, brightly shining oxhorn knife from the head of an iron framed bed, and stabbed it down on the girl who seemed to have been beaten senseless when she didn't move at all. The girl's body immediately twitched and shook. Her mouth even made the sound of coughing up blood, as if she was a pig being killed. She finally began to try to struggle against it. However, her struggles were immediately held down by several other criminals. Within a few seconds, a large amount of blood spurted out from the girl's body, directly coloring the camera red. Several criminals cursed with their hands and feet, dodging one after another. And at that moment, the camera switched once again, going black for about 30 seconds or so. Although there were no more relevant images, the video could still be heard. The screams, cackles of blood, and cries for mercy. After 30 seconds or so, the picture returned, and this time the camera was focused on two young men who were hanging from the steel hooks of a fan on the roof. They were bleeding all over their bodies and had lost consciousness completely and utterly. But, there were still criminals all around them, beating them with belts, whips, and even weapons like bicycle chains. Each blow would leave a shocking trail of blood on the bodies of these two young men who had clearly lost consciousness. At the end of the video, the camera focused on a group of young men and women who were crouching on the ground with their heads in their hands, as if they were lambs waiting to be slaughtered. There were about 40 to 50 of them. Each one of them was silent in the face of the tragedy that was happening right in front of their eyes, on their own compatriots, or even on their own friends and relatives. Not a single person dared to stand up and resist, not even daring to utter a single word. Hurry up and call the money. Otherwise there will be more videos sent to you. Fight. Money. Chao Nimas heard it all. At the end of the video, the criminals left such vicious threatening words, and then completely ended the shooting. The short 18-minute video seemed to have taken Shin Fong and a few of his team members 18 centuries. At this moment, everyone's heart felt like it was pressed with a big stone. Everyone had a taut face and was silent. It was too miserable. Truly, it was too tragic. How could they not expect that those victims who had just been tricked into coming over to the 6th district, kidnapped and controlled, would be subjected to such inhumane abuse so quickly? There were even people who had lost their lives as a result. Shen Feng's fist, at some point, had already loosened. It wasn't that he was numb or didn't feel anger. Rather, he knew very well that at a time like now, anger was not helpful at all. The most important thing was to find a way to figure out where the victims were being held so that he could try to rescue them. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Fuck the horse. Liang Chaoshu was so angry that he slammed his fist on the glass table. With a thud, he smashed the glass table. These dog days criminals. Simply not life. A bunch of animals. Squad leader. 
I want to go over and get them killed right now. Let's do it. Liang Chaoshu hated his teeth. The short 10 or so minutes of video made him empathize. Inside the video, those compatriots of the 9th district who were kidnapped and abused felt immense sympathy and felt immense anger towards the cruelty of the criminals. It was as if the one being tortured was himself. You calm down, dog bear. Think hard about why the criminals are releasing these videos. Directly? Their purpose? Is it really as simple as just to demand ransom? Yang Lu frowned at Liang Chaoshu, who was close to storming out, and reminded in a deep voice. What? Could it be that they still want to threaten us with these? Sun Bin was so furious that his body was shaking gently, and his fists were already pinched to the point where his knuckles were white. He now, too, couldn't wait to use those methods of torture he had just seen in the video to treat those criminals properly, letting them also feel what it meant to be desperate. Not a threat, but a warning. Or, to be more accurate, a provocation. Shin Feng said coldly. Provocation? Squad leader, do you mean that they want to lure us to deal with them through this video and these photos? Wang Shixiang revealed a startled expression. If I'm not wrong, that's exactly it. Shin Feng nodded seriously. A week ago, the enemy had sent helicopter gunships to attack their training site. Although at that time, Shin Feng and his team members had turned danger into danger. Not only had they escaped the enemy's bombing attack, but they had also disposed of the two armed helicopters, as well as the drones that were tracking them, and took out all the enemies. In the end, they also successfully hid in the jungle, avoiding the enemy's pursuit. However, the enemy only needed to send someone to check afterward to find out that they hadn't died. In other words, those criminals from the Edelweiss company now must also be well aware that Shin Feng and the others were hiding in the shadows waiting to clean them up. The other party was playing this trick so that, on the one hand, it could make Shin Feng and his team members feel like throwing in the towel. Secondly, it could stimulate Shin Feng and his teammates, trying to get them to expose their position themselves. That way the enemy could come and deal with them. So the more it was like this, the more calm they had to be. Definitely, they should not be easily fooled to avoid falling into the enemy's trap. These enemies are not only cruel, but also quite cunning. Last time, we were almost planted in their hands, and we were almost taken out by them in one fell swoop. So for our operation this time, we have to make sure that it's foolproof, and we definitely can't be led by the nose by them. Yuan Weihong came back to his senses and reminded as well. Everyone soon all gradually calmed down from the emotional outburst just now. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. After a moment of thought, Zhang Yanjia looked at Shin Feng, squad leader. What are you thinking about? Intelligence. Shin Feng calmly spat out two words. As you all can see, the current situation is that the 9th district can't intervene because the criminals are hiding in the 6th district, and that's not our law enforcement area. Therefore, this matter can only be resolved by us as mercenaries. To save those victims, we need intelligence. First and foremost, it's to figure out where exactly they're being held. Saying that, Shin Feng as well as the other team members' gazes, all of them subconsciously looked towards Yang Lu. It was no secret that Yang Lu's computer skills were very impressive. Everyone already knew that. And at this time, there was no need for Shin Feng to open his mouth and say more. Yang Lu had already started to take out her laptop, and her nimble fingers were constantly striking the keyboard. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode can read normally. Seeing that she was obviously utilizing her computer skills to obtain intelligence information, Shin Feng didn't say anything and just watched silently. However, Liang Chaoshu on the side couldn't help himself at this time, and asked curiously, School teacher, what are you doing? Everyone circled around behind her, curious to check it out. The interface of the laptop was a browser interface with a netherworld background. It looked kinda relatively clean and tidy. Only that the language and text in the interface were all in non-region 9 scripts, but international common language. This was really confusing to read if one didn't have a little bit of foundation in international common language. I'm logging into the largest local darknet in the 6th district, inquiring to see if I can find intelligence information about the Odessa Corporation. Yang Lu explained. Oh, Liang Chaoshu revealed an expression of sudden realization. But in the next second, he asked, What is the dark net? TSK, you don't even know this? Then you owe my SO. Next to her, Zhang Yinjia rolled her eyes. Hearing this, Liang Chaoshu was a bit aggrieved. My sister, you don't think about where we usually have time to play with our cell phones in class? And back home there are all sorts of practice problems, homework and whatnot. Cell phones and computers. My family's control can be strict. Liang Chaoshu's complaint made Sun Bin and Wang Shichang empathize with several of them. Everyone subconsciously nodded their heads. Although living in a modern society, 
There were many channels to access information, however, the chances that they could actually surf the internet and play with their cell phones on a regular basis were actually not very many. After all, everyone's family education was not quite the same, and parents disciplined in different ways. At this time, Yuan Weihong was serious, explaining to them, I've heard about the dark net on the news before. I heard that this is the network that is hidden in the very deep dark corners above the internet, and it needs to be accessed through a specific portal, and the average person simply doesn't know how to get into the dark web, and those social media, various websites, and so on that we browse on a daily basis basically belong to the non-dark web. Everyone understood when she said that. Liang Cha Xu and Wang Shi Chang, Sun Bin and a few others nodded their heads to show that they already understood what the dark web was. That's a world hidden outside the surface network. The underground world inside the network world. However, can this find information about the Odessa Corporation in the 6th district? As a layman, Liang Cha Xu expressed some skepticism about this. He had just finished speaking when everyone saw that some highlighted red titles appeared in Yan Lu's open computer interface. At the same time there are some videos, pictures and so on, are very bloody and very cruel images. Instantly everyone quieted down and subconsciously held their breath. These pictures and videos, just seeing one glance already made people very, very uncomfortable. The dark net is also known as the extra-legal land of the internet world, because a certain threshold is required to enter here. Ordinary people simply can't get in. And those who are active here are either world-renowned hackers or all sorts of shapes and sizes of guys who can't see the light of day. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. Weapon smuggling and trafficking, drug dealing, pornography, and all sorts of other sinful things that are inconvenient to describe are likely to be seen here. This criminal organization, Edessa Corporation, engages in exactly these black and gray things. And whether they are sending out advertisements or completing transactions, the odds are that they will leave traces on the dark net. Yang Lu, while operating the computer, constantly searched quickly, utilizing relevant techniques as well as tools to crawl the information intelligence that he wanted to obtain. At the same time, she gave a simple explanation to the team members around herself. Suddenly she shouted excitedly, found it. Upon hearing this everyone's spirits lifted, and they all curiously looked over towards the new interface she had opened. Even Shen Feng couldn't help but be a little curious. What is this? They all recognized the words in the computer interface. Soon everyone basically understood the meaning. It was a post seeking a trade. The poster was in a state of anonymity. The items posted for trade on it included all kinds of common uniques, as well as human organs and even living people. And it was emphasized that only cryptocurrencies were accepted for transactions. However, although they could understand the meaning of the post's content, the team members felt very puzzled because they didn't see any relationship between this post and those criminals from Edessa. However, Shen Feng was an exception. He had already noticed that some tools were running in the lower right corner of Yang Lu's computer. Did you analyze anything? Shen Feng asked a question. Yes, class president. Look, I purposely screened those IP addresses located in the 6th district and correlated them to match, based on relevant keywords. Although the data still amounted to thousands, more than 550 of them, all came from the same IP. Moreover, this hidden IP after multiple encryptions happens to be located in the bright area. A more specific location is here. Yang Lu's hands seem to be like lightning, rapidly tapping on top of the keyboard. And with her movements, a satellite map was opened and quickly localized against the entered target. Eventually, after the satellite map was reduced to a scale of about 5 meters, the localized ground picture was displayed precisely and clearly. Look guys, where is this place? Yang Lu looked around at the team members. With just a glance, the team members recognized that it was the campus of Edessa Corporation. They had even gone on a special field reconnaissance before. This guy who posted a trading post on the dark net. The IP address is within this park. The Edessa Corporation's park building one. I can even see his online status now. Yang Lu said and tapped on the keyboard a few more times. Sure enough the background that was pulled up showed that the other party's account was online and had been recently active a minute ago. Seeing this prompt, Yang Lu's heart was slightly moved. She once again crackled an operation and soon locked an unfamiliar user. Just now, the criminals from Edessa Corporation contacted this guy called JJL101. This should be a buyer. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, messy code and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Yang Lu analyzed and judged. Her thoughts as well as operations turned too fast, and the team members were not too familiar with computer technology. So everyone listened a bit plausibly. Can we see what they're chatting about? Shen Feng cupped his chin at this moment and asked after pondering for a while. I'll try. Yang Lu started operating again. This time, 
Yang Lu's maneuvering took a bit longer. It took about three minutes before she finally clapped her hands. It's done. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. I bypassed their firewall and conducted real-time monitoring against their communication messages. This is the content of the previous chat log. The computer interface in front of them, a dialog window popped up, which showed the content of the previous communication between the criminals of Odessa Corporation and the buyers from a third-party perspective. However, just as everyone was filled with anticipation, thinking that they could see the contents of the plain text conversation, they were suddenly dumbfounded one by one, because the content of the chat they saw was not plain text at all, but encrypted content. What the hell is this? How come it's a string of numbers? Liang Chaoshu scratched his head, his face full of puzzlement. It seems that these criminals are indeed very cunning, Shen Feng said. That's right. Although the dark net is not accessible to ordinary people and is a favorite gathering place for countless criminals in the world, but it's not entirely full of bad guys. Some law enforcement officers from various regions around the globe will also lurk here through technical means to try to find the targets they want to arrest. So to avoid risk, buyers and sellers are usually in contact with each other as acquaintances, and will use encrypted messages to communicate. Yang Lu nodded in agreement. Hearing Shen Feng and Yang Lu say this, the faces of the team members instantly became disappointed. And at this moment, Shen Feng analyzed, although it's an encrypted message, they shouldn't find themselves too difficult to encrypt in order to facilitate communication. These numbers, they might be simpler than what we think the meaning is, like the letters corresponding to a cell phone keypad. When he said that, all the team members immediately took out their cell phones and compared them. You guys don't need to look. It doesn't need to be that troublesome. I'll just look it up and know. Yang Lu said while opening a new interface. It was a secret text analysis tool inside her computer. Yang Lu entered the chats of those two criminals, line by line. Soon, each message was automatically numbered and arranged, and gave at least 10 or more types of content analysis information. Among these given messages, most of them were bullshit, and only one or two of them had a relatively smooth meaning. Translated out of the first relatively have some logic words. Shen Feng saw it translated as, eat me tonight do not want to want to want to do not want to? Obviously, this was not the message they were looking for. The second translated message, on the other hand, made Shen Feng's eyes light up slightly. The goods have arrived, and they can be delivered tonight. Shen Feng hurriedly went to check the transcoded translation of the second secret message. Again, it was filtered out by Yang Lu into two more fluent translations. The first one was, I can eat first then eat the food then eat the food then eat the food. The second one, on the other hand, was, there is a temporary change of plan. You guys get the goods ready first, and I'll let you know when the ship arrives. Obviously, the translation of this article and the second translation of the first sentence in front of it, matched up. Shen Feng continued to look down, and the other translations of the secret text, were similarly the same. Each sentence would have one to two messages that were smoother, and only one of them was the smoothest, which could directly connect the preceding and following texts and was logically self-explanatory. Looks like this is what we're looking for. Schoolmaster, this ciphertext deciphering tool of yours can be ah, so convenient, if you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally, Shen Feng was pleasantly surprised, Yang Lu, on the other hand, smiled and casually said, I developed it using my spare time, and the underlying framework logic is very simple, she didn't say much, because it wasn't the time to discuss computer technology, it was still a bit more important to be serious. Soon, she had deciphered all the contents of the two criminals' conversational ciphertexts. All of them. After sorting and analyzing, Shin Feng and the others also came up with important information intelligence. The criminals from the Edelweiss company intended to conduct a transaction with a certain mysterious client this evening. However, the mysterious client had changed his plans due to certain reasons, and had agreed to let the criminals of the Edelweiss company prepare the goods first and they would look for a suitable place for the transaction in addition. The criminals of the Edelweiss company replied that it was no problem to wait for them. After that came the content of the mysterious seller's inquiry about the status of the goods. The criminals sent a couple of photos to each other. There was no way to encrypt or code this thing, so Shin Feng and the others could see the contents of the photos clearly. Originally, they were still guessing whether the goods were uniques or human organs or something else. Now there was no need to speculate wildly anymore because they had gotten the answer they wanted. The photographs were of people who had been locked inside separate cages one by one. Living people. And all of them were clear faces from the 9th district. Shin Feng even saw a somewhat familiar face in the cage in the far right corner of one of the photos. He tried to recall and confirmed that it should be the latest batch. One of the 60 missing persons. This was because not long ago, 
Shin Fong had seen the other party's photo on the internet. In the middle of their reply message to the buyers, the criminals had also claimed that the goods were very healthy, physically strong, and did not have any diseases. It also accurately stated the quantity, which totaled 500. However, it was unknown whether the victims, who were about to be sold, were being held inside their corporate campus or in some other stronghold. The conversation ended quickly. Those two criminals also doubled down. We must launch an operation. Shin Fong made a decisive decision. When the other team members heard this, they were all a bit stunned and puzzled. Squad leader, won't you utilize hacking techniques to learn more information? Yuan Weihong asked curiously. There is no need for that. Do you guys remember those videos you saw earlier? It's the videos and the answers above the Q&A community in the 9th district. Shin Fong said as he began to dress and pack his things. Remember, class president. You mean those victims are still being held inside the park? Zhang Nianjia thought back carefully and came to his senses. Shin Fong had said that because of a few points. The first was the geography of the 6th district. Because of the poor economic development, only a few cities had decent buildings. To the outskirts of the city, it was basically barren mountains and relatively primitive and backward villages. Previously, they had also been to the strongholds of those criminals in the wilderness in Li Songpa, where there were no decent houses at all. Basically only wooden houses. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode can be read normally. And in the video I saw on the internet before, those victims were held in renovated brick and concrete houses. One piece of information that could be confirmed here was that the new batch of kidnapped victims were most likely within the campus of Edelweiss at this moment. Zhang Nanjia was not the only one who judged this way. Several other team members, at this time, also realized this problem. Everyone's eyes changed as they looked at Chin Fong. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. The class president deserved to be the class president. Very observant and with a strong memory. He reacted very quickly. However, what they didn't expect was Shin Fong to directly shake his head. It won't be in the park. It should have been there before, but it won't be now, because they will soon be used as goods to be used to make a deal with the buyer. The geographical location of the park of the Edelweiss company is not suitable for this kind of deal. It's too conspicuous. Shin Fong shook his head to make his judgment. Although the criminals were rampant in the 6th district, with an umbrella helping them to prosper, but they weren't stupid fools either blatantly conducting a human trade at the entrance of the park. This kind of thing would have serious consequences once word got out. At the same time, the criminals must also be worried about leaving a criminal handle for others. Otherwise they wouldn't need to establish the park to set up a legitimate company as a cover. Schoolboy, check and see what other places are suitable as trading places in the bright area of the 6th district. These places need to fit the characteristics of convenient transportation, complicated movement of people, and not easily attracting attention. Shin Fong had just finished speaking when at this time, Yang Lu obtained another important piece of intelligence information. Squad leader, guess what I found? Everyone heard this and all of them curiously came together. In the computer, they saw a classified personnel profile information. Who is this guy? A retired marine? Everyone saw that on top of the computer was a bearded man, and the profile showed that he was from the first district, and had served in the world's top special forces, the Four Corners Marine Corps. Now after retiring from the military he works as a security consultant for a pharmaceutical technology company. This is the buyer who just chatted with the criminals from Edessa. Janeway replied. Pharmatech company. Human trade. District 1. Joining all the key information together. The team instantly came up with a shocking guess. Those goods. No. Those victims from District 9. Are about to be sold to District 1? And the buyer is most likely the pharmaceutical company behind this guy? Wang Shirtian's eyes widened as he guessed. At this time, Yang Lu was still continuing her query, trying to search for more intelligence information. Soon she once again made a discovery. Squad leader, I found that guy's location. His signal transmitting location is located near the airport in the bright area. Yang Lu displayed the relevant information. Shen Feng's heart stirred. It seems that the first district is where those victims are about to be sent to, and they can only use airplanes to transport them from a distance of 10, 000 miles. So, the transaction location must be near the airfield. Can you see if you can find the exact location? Give me some time. Yang Lu continued to operate. After a while, she opened up a few photos. Squad leader, I've inquired that this is the branch office of the Odessa company near the airport in the Guangming area. This company's registration information shows that the business scope includes meat processing, logistics and transportation, and daily necessities. Logistics and transportation. Looks like that's where we're looking for. Go set off to have a look. 
If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Shen Feng didn't have any nonsense. The enemy was already preparing to move those victims. It was highly likely that the 500 victims from the 9th district would be sold to the people in the 1st district. And once they got on the airplane or completed the transaction, it would be much harder to get the people out. The 1st district is a much trickier place than the 6th district. Shin Feng and the team drove quickly to the airport, and about an hour later, they arrived at their destination. This place was much more depressed than the core area of the bright area. After all, it was already located in the suburbs. Aside from the lights in the town, the rest of the surroundings were almost all dark wilderness. Outside of the town were large expanses of banana forests. There was also a sizable area of tropical rainforest and the like, making the environment very complex. Schoolboy utilizes the technological equipment to scout the enemy stronghold first, to see if those victims are being held in that logistics company. The others wait for orders and wait and see what happens. In the car, Shin Feng gave orders to each team member. And at this time, Yang Lu was still trying to find more intelligence through technical means, holding her laptop. She had now exited the dark net. And what she was attempting was to invade and infiltrate the internal network of Edessa Corporation. Upon hearing Shen Feng's order, Yang Lu had no choice but to put down the work at hand first and began to operate the technological equipment to launch a reconnaissance operation. Several small bees went out in the dark night and flew towards the target's brightly lit building. Soon the reconnaissance footage was transmitted back. The robotic little flies flew directly into the office building of the criminals and quickly found the office where the management of those criminals were located. They were lucky that at this time, a few of the management were conversing in the office. Mr. Wang, the customer said that the time and place of the transaction has changed. So let's get the goods ready first. Inside the brightly lit office, a man sitting in front of a laptop said to another man in a suit. Wang Sigeo sniffed and immediately grunted coldly. This group of shabbies. They clearly said that they would deliver the goods a week later. And at that time, they had the audacity to threaten me and demand that we not be late. And now they're saying that they want to postpone the deal. Fuck. Although he was cursing, Wang Sigeo still asked his men. Did they say when the deal would be ready? Didn't say. Just said to wait for news. At this Wang Sigeo a burst of gnashing of teeth, took out his cell phone and looked at it. Marred. This time even did not even make a phone call. Move the people out first. He ordered. Shin Feng and the others, who were checking the reconnaissance footage, heard these words and their hearts snapped. They glanced at each other. Shin Feng was about to give the order to prepare to start the operation. And at that moment, another voice came from the screen. Big brother, transfer out? It's not enough for people to stay here. Why transfer? At this moment, Another man sitting on a chair with his legs crossed looked a little stunned. Wang Sigeo just looked deeply at the man, but did not offer any explanation. I believe my judgment is not wrong. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Just do it. All right, I'll personally go and arrange it. After this man finished speaking, he stood up and hurriedly left. Only after he left did Wang Sigeo look at the technician sitting in front of the computer. Has the message been sent out? It's already been sent out. Mr. Wang. Those mercenaries will definitely fall for it if they see these messages. That technician immediately replied. Upon hearing his subordinate's reply, Wang Sigeo finally just revealed a satisfied smile. He sneered. Hoof. A bunch of milk toast brats. Dare to fight me. What are they going to fight me with? If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled. Please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. If they dare to come to the door, it's their time to die. After saying that, Wang Sigeo narrowed his eyes. Afterward, he turned around and left the office. Before leaving, he didn't forget to exhort the technicians. If those customers have any new movements, tell me at the first time. In the alley outside the logistics company, hidden in the darkness on the car, Shin Feng and the team looked at each other. Yang Lu had already retrieved the robot B. Squad leader. They're moving those victims to other locations. We just need to follow them to know the exact location. But what was that message they just said they posted on the internet? Liang Chao Shu inquired Shen Feng. But the person looking at him was Yang Lu. Because here Yang Lu was the quickest and most efficient at getting information and intelligence. At this moment, Yang Lu had already started to act. Utilizing her computer skills to start retrieving relevant information. It's the latest news released about the victim being tortured and abused. Look guys. This video was uploaded 5 minutes ago. Yang Lu crawled out the information scattered on the internet. And after quickly summarizing and analyzing them, he divided them into text-based information as well as video and audio-visual information. These information, released on many platforms, 
were almost all released synchronously, and after they were sent out, they were automatically reprinted by multiple types of accounts. It seems obvious that all these accounts that reproduce the messages are also controlled by human beings, and these messages that were spread were quickly reprinted in the ninth district and spread rapidly. Shen Feng and his teammates, unintentionally, had personally witnessed the complete process of an internet rumor from spreading to fermentation. Those guys, they must be trying to use these messages to lure us over to rescue people. And odds are that what's waiting for us there is the dragnet they've laid. Shen Feng judged. At this time, Yang Lu casually clicked on a video. We are in the park. Save me. Save us all. Please don't fight. Don't fight. What did he say about the park? Zhang Yanjia asked curiously. Several other team members looked at each other. No one heard clearly. Yang Lu rewound the video and played it back several times, but still couldn't hear it clearly. No matter what park it is. In any case, with this information, we already know that it was deliberately spread by the enemy. So the information about the locations mentioned in it, the odds are that those victims were forced to speak out. If we go there, we'll fall right into the enemy's trap. Yang Lu said, Damn it, these enemies are really incomparably cunning. Luckily we made the mistake of knowing this information in advance. Otherwise, the odds are that we would have been trapped by them. Liang Chao Shu had a palpitating look on his face. What he thought of at this moment was the last time they were bombarded by enemy helicopter gunships with aerial guns and RPGs. Last time, it was their home field and the enemy's away field. The lack of preparation had still beaten their side so badly. This time the enemy came prepared. If they were caught in a trap the consequences would be truly unimaginable. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Squad leader. The car is out. Wang Shirqian, who was observing the movements at the enemy's company gate, reminded in a low voice at this moment. Upon hearing this, the crowd came back to their senses and looked out the window in unison. Sure enough, they saw one vehicle after another, driving out from the logistics company, which on the surface appeared to be just very ordinary cargo delivery vans. However, Shin Feng and the others were 100% sure that inside that car was the target they wanted to rescue. Let's follow up immediately. Dog bear, hurry up and drive. Watching the last car leave the gate of the logistics company, Sun Bin immediately reminded. But Shin Feng stopped Liang Chao Shu who was about to start the car. Wait, he didn't explain, but instead stared with burning eyes in the direction of the enemy's logistics company park gate. Sure enough, not a moment later, another car followed and drove out slowly. The few enemies in the car probed and looked around for a while, and after not discovering any followers, they then drove the car and tracked the transportation convoy that had just left and took off. Surprisingly, there's still this trick. These enemies are really cunning. Sun Bin marveled. Yang Lu, on the other hand, opened the car window and threw something into the sky. The thing was so fast that it had disappeared in the blink of an eye, and the team members didn't even have time to see it clearly. The enemy is a professional criminal. We must be more careful when dealing with them. If they don't even have this sense of vigilance, I'm afraid they would have been terminated by other mercenaries a long time ago. Let's go. Follow them. Shin Feng turned his head to look at Liang Chaoshu. Liang Chaoshu started the car while looking curiously at Yang Lu and asked, Schoolboy, what did you just throw out? The traversing machine. Yang Lu replied. At the same time, the traversing machine she was controlling had caught up with the enemy convoy at a speed of over 200 kilometers per hour, and accurately dropped a locator on the roof of one of the enemy's vehicles. Afterwards, Yang Lu operated the traversing machine again and flew back quickly. So powerful looking. This is a drone, right? Looking at the traverser that flew back and fell into Yang Lu's hands, which was almost like a mini drone, the crowd looked over curiously. Almost, but it lacks some of the characteristics of a drone. It's too troublesome to explain. In short, you guys just need to know that this thing is characterized by being fast. That's all. Yang Lu didn't explain too much, because it was indeed troublesome to explain. They didn't have that much free time. Putting away the traverser, Yang Lu linked the signal sent by the locator to the tablet. Immediately afterward, he shared the data to the rest of the team. Everyone immediately saw the enemy's travel route trajectory clearly on the satellite map. These technological equipment, it's really too powerful. Squad leader, you spent quite a bit of money buying these things, right? Liang Chaoshu lamented and at the same time, he also became curious once again. Concentrate on driving. Don't bring us all to the ditch. Shin Feng responded in a good-natured manner. Okay, hey, if you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. You can rest assured about my driving skills. Old driver, said Liang Chaoshu as he stepped on the gas. With the help of the locators tracking, they didn't need to follow too close nor would they lose the signal. 
following the enemy's convoy. All the way out of this small city, they soon arrived at the outskirts of the city where the lights were blind. After traveling for about 5 kilometers, Shinfeng and the others saw the enemy convoy start to turn right and enter a small road. There, it looked like it should be an extensive banana plantation. Shinfeng and his teammates were able to see that at the end of the view in front of them, the tail lights of the enemy's vehicles disappeared after flashing for a while. There was the road that turned right into the banana plantation. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. We'll have to get off here. They'll find us if we follow them any further. Shinfeng reminded all the team members. The enemy was very cunning, driving a car and following them over too close a distance, especially in this kind of dark night, was tantamount to telling others that they were coming. The team members didn't have any nonsense. One by one, all of them put on their equipment and checked their weapons and ammunition and so on. Liang Chao Shu disliked the car directly into a banana forest by the side of the road. And after hiding the car everyone left the car and began to walk forward on foot. Squad leader. They stopped. Yang Lu casually threw a drone into the night sky while still controlling the locator to check the enemy's movements. According to what the satellite map showed, the enemy's convoy had stopped inside an area 2 kilometers from the main road. On the satellite map, it showed that it was supposed to be a residential area, which appeared to be the residence of local villagers. However, Shinfeng and the team knew that criminals loved nothing more than to hide their secret strongholds inside such village-looking residences. The drone footage is back. Look! Yang Lu's whispered reminder caused Shinfeng to gesture to stop advancing. Everyone gathered over to check out the situation. The drone had clearly captured the enemy escorting the victims. One by one, down from the top of the delivery truck from directly above the enemy. Just like the last time we attacked Lee Sampa stronghold. These criminals hid those victims. All of them, underground. The crowd watched as hundreds of victims were forced by armed criminals into a passageway leading underground. Soon the hundreds of victims all disappeared as if they never existed. The entrance to the passageway into the underground, on the other hand, was reclosed by them and the lid was filled with sand and dirt, so it didn't look like there was the slightest breach. If it wasn't for the drones clearly filming all of this, Shinfeng and the others wouldn't have been able to find those victims even if they were able to attack the enemy stronghold. Everyone be careful. This is not the same thing as Li Sungpa's stronghold. The area alone is at least 10 times larger than the stronghold we once attacked. Shinfeng looked at the top of the satellite map, the large building area and reminded every member of the team. And at this time, Yang Lu was also scouting through the drone and found out more about the situation. Squad leader. Look, there are enemies hiding and guarding in the woods at the intersection. They are very vigilant. The drone scouting in the night sky carried thermal imaging equipment. Although the enemy was hiding in the dark woods and the car had been turned off, but the engine still had a high temperature. And the presence of the criminals hiding in the car was clearly detected. At the intersection where they turned in from the main road, in the woods to the left and right, there were a total of three cars and twelve enemies hiding in ambush. In addition, there were also a large number of armed criminals, on guard with guns, around the perimeter of the enemy's stronghold. The number of open and concealed sentries on guard in the periphery alone amounted to more than 60 people. Just as Shin Feng had just said, if you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. This place was not the same thing as the stronghold of Lee Sungpa's criminal organization that they had smashed earlier. Whether it was the number of criminals, their sense of defense or their firepower, it was all too much stronger than Lee Sungpa's criminal organization. It seems that these criminals should have some military training, so everyone should be careful. Especially, as we are traveling inside this banana forest, we must be careful of your feet. Shin Feng once again reminded the crowd, it was possible that the enemy had laid mines around here. It would be troublesome if they weren't careful. Squad leader, the latest batch of robotic dogs you procured have a function to automatically detect landmines. I'll give it a try. Make a safe passage out for everyone. Yang Lu said that she was about to release the robot dogs, but was stopped by Shin Feng. These things might just be gimmicks. They might not really work. The matter is important we can't hope on top of this kind of function that hasn't been verified yet. I think it's better to forget about it. It wasn't that Shin Feng was timid, but it was prudent. After all, in case the machine dog's recognition function made a mistake and took them to step on a mine that would be a big deal. Hearing Shin Feng say this, Yang Lu instantly also had palpitations and nodded. Forget it then. Butler, blast, those enemies at the intersection are in your hands. Clairvoyant and monkey, you guys are responsible for occupying a favorable position. Listen to my command. Dog bear, you and schoolmaster follow me. We'll clean up the enemies on the periphery of the stronghold. It's the same old story. First take care of the threats on the ground then we'll figure out how to attack underground. 
Shin Feng arranged action orders to all the team members. There were drones carrying thermal imaging equipment that were responsible for providing them with intelligence support. Even at night, they easily grasped the location of every enemy, which was a huge advantage. With the enemy in the dark, the odds were that there wouldn't be any big surprises in this operation. Squad leader, let everyone wear this. Just as everyone was about to set off and split up, Yang Lu, however, suddenly took out something that looked like clothes made of tinfoil from inside her backpack. What is this? Sun Ben asked curiously. Heat insulating combat clothing. Inside the black market, this thing is called a stealth suit. It's specifically used to deal with the enemy's night vision and thermal imaging equipment. Shen Feng blurted out. He had also checked the reward equipment that the system had previously given them along the way. So for most of the rewards, there was still some understanding. After all, in the minds of the team members these weapons and equipment were all purchased back from the underground black market at his expense. If he didn't even know what kind of equipment he had bought, that would be too much to say. There's even this kind of stuff? Wang Shirtian was a bit surprised. He hurriedly turned around and picked up an invisibility cloth to check it out. It's very thin ah. This thing can really be invisible? Liang Chaoshu also a little curious, touched it and found that it was similar to silk pajamas. Cold and soft, light feeling like a layer of tulle. Spear and shield, are the two major cores of mankind's research and development of weaponry throughout the ages. There is no such thing as the most powerful weapon, nor the most powerful defense equipment. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally. Therefore, we have to be in high spirits in every action. Don't think that just because we have fine equipment in our hands that we think we can hang our opponents. Maybe the enemy has stronger technological equipment in their hands than we do. While responding to Liang Chaoshu, Shen Feng had already put on a cloak of invisibility. Yang Lu immediately took out a thermal imager and glanced at him. Fantastic. She instantly marveled. From the perspective of the thermal imager Yang Lu used to observe Shen Feng, it was as if Shen Feng had completely blended into the night. He really magically disappeared inside the thermal imager's observation view. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, Garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. It couldn't be said that it completely disappeared. It was just that there was a little bit of heat leakage from some insignificant heat generating parts of the body. But this was not enough for one to judge whether or not there was a living thing standing in front of them through this. This was because there were simply too many things that existed heat radiation inside the natural world. Let me see. Liang Chashu curiously took the thermal imaging camera from Yang Lu's hand and also glanced towards Shin Feng in front of him. Sure enough. He also saw the same image. All right, it's good to confirm that there's an effect. I'll cut the crap and hurry up. Shin Feng signaled his team members to put on their invisibility cloaks. Afterwards, he took Liang Chaoshu and Yang Lu with him and split up according to the plan just now. Squad leader, you said that this underground black market has such awesome equipment. So will the enemy also have this stealth combat suit in their hands? If they also have this thing, then our night vision and thermal imager will be useless. Ah, the enemy might have more than that. Liang Chaoshu was more talkative. At this time, he raised such a speculation. His words caused both Shen Feng and Yang Lu to have a simultaneous footstep. This speculation was not impossible. Firstly, it was very likely that such military products had already appeared in the world. The second thing was that criminals were tricky and cunning. Although these criminals of theirs were said to be numerous, it was not realistic to have a set of this kind of technological equipment in their hands. However, it was only necessary to let a few of them, who were more powerful, were this kind of anti-thermal imaging equipment. Then, at that time, it was indeed possible that their own seven people would not have the means to discover the existence of those hidden enemies in the first place. This would turn into a state of enemy darkness. Shin Feng glanced back towards Liang Chaoshu. That's why we have to be even more careful. Enemies that cannot be seen by technological equipment. Use our naked eyes to observe them. Squad leader. 150 meters ahead. Three targets. Yang Lu was not distracted by Liang Chaoshu's words. Now that they were deep in the middle of the enemy's camp, with arrows on the string and soldiers in front of the battlefield, the most taboo thing was that the military's heart was shaken. Even if the enemy had three heads and six arms, they could only go up and finish off the enemy as fast as they could. Squad leader, leave those guys to me. Liang Chaoshu volunteered to go up. Shin Feng, on the other hand, turned his gun around and swept back, wary of a sneak attack from the rear. The monitoring equipment still clearly showed the location of the enemy's guard post. Not only did the thermal imaging equipment detect their body temperature, the drone could even clearly capture what they were doing. Dog bear, use the silent killing method, Shin Feng reminded. This place was too close to the enemy's position. Even with weapons that were equipped with silencers, 
It was impossible to be 100% silent. Liang Chaoshu immediately nodded, put away his weapon and touched his dagger, quickly approaching towards the enemy. While Shin Feng also touched towards the other two enemies, the results of the jungle hell mode training over the past week were starting to show at this time. Shin Feng appeared behind the enemies as if he was a ghost. However, the two enemies were still standing under the banana tree smoking and chatting, completely unaware that the Grim Reaper had already arrived. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode to read normally. Shin Feng saw the moment when the enemy on the left turned his head, directly leaped forward and wiped the neck of the other party on the spot. Immediately afterward, he turned around and pounced forward, stabbing the heart of the enemy on the right twice. These two enemies, before they even understood the situation, had already gone to meet the king of hell. Liang Chaoshu's side of the operation was also very smooth, other than almost being shouted out by the other side when resolving the third enemy. Nothing unexpected happened. Squad leader, two are coming over at your nine o'clock. Be careful. Dog bear, directly in front of you. Three targets. Smoking. Yang Lu continued to provide intelligence support to Xin Feng and Liang Chaoshu. At the same time, she didn't forget to observe the actions of a few other team members, as well as the movements of the enemies in other positions. The two of them, Wang Shichang and Sun Bin, had noiselessly touched the other side of the enemy stronghold, forming a two-sided pincer movement opposite Xin Feng and the others, launching an attack on the enemy's guard post, and in the direction of the intersection, Yuan Weihong and Zhang Yinjia, who had also quickly resolved the enemies in two of the cars, were feeling their way over to the enemy ambushed inside the third car. Butler, be careful, the enemy in that car is coming out. Yan Lu vaguely saw the enemy's movements through the drone. Sure enough just as her words fell, the enemy in the driver's side of the car directly pushed open the door and walked down. After stretching his back, he walked towards the banana grove on the side to unzip his pants. But it was at this time that suddenly a sharp dagger, from the side of the banana tree in front of him, stabbed towards his neck as if it was lightning. Put. There was nothing fancy about the dagger, and it pierced the criminal's throat with a single blow. What's wrong? The moment Zhang Yinjia struck just now, the dagger's cold light flashed for a moment, which alerted one of those three remaining enemies inside the car. At this moment, the other party immediately looked over to this side and inquired in the local language. His words caused the remaining two criminals in the car to also look curiously in the direction of the banana forest, not even realizing that at the other end of the car, right behind them, a figure had already stood up. Shu. Shu, Yuan Weihong decisively raised his pistol and attacked the three enemies inside the car. Every shot was a precise headshot. Watching an enemy's head blossom was indeed a little bit disconcerting. However, as soon as she thought of the videos she had seen previously, she saw that the enemies were treating the victims as if they were animals, treating them cruelly, without any sympathy, without the slightest bit of mercy. The feeling of discomfort within Yuan Weihong's heart quickly disappeared. In its place was a dash of strong sense of justice as well as the thrill of revenge. Squad leader, all the enemies at the intersection have been resolved. Inside the radio, Yuan Weihong and Zhang Yinjia's report came. The enemies to the east of the stronghold have also cleared out. Wang Shixiang similarly reported the results of the battle on their side. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Actually, there was no need for them to say more. Xin Feng could also see it. On the satellite map above the PAD, the thermal imaging targets displayed had gone from 67 at the very beginning to only 15 today. As long as these remaining 15 enemies were resolved, all threats outside this stronghold would be basically lifted. I thought they would lay mines around the stronghold, but now it looks like these enemies are nothing more than that. Liang Chaoshu was a bit complacent. Xin Feng was just about to remind Liang Chaoshu not to take the enemy lightly. At this time, a sudden unexpected situation occurred. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Behind them, on the body of one of the enemies that had just been taken out, the voice of a call came from the walkie-talkie. Tuko, is it okay out there? It was a very fluent language of the 9th district. Xin Feng's heart was slightly flabbergasted, and the two of them, Liang Chashu and Yang Lu, exchanged glances with each other. Immediately afterward, he stepped forward with a single stride and picked up that walkie-talkie. After hesitating for a while, Xin Feng was just about to respond to the other party by pretending to be their companion. But at that moment, the door of the bamboo house room outside the banana forest opened. What's going on? Xin Feng looked at Yang Lu in surprise. It could be that there is an underground passage in their house. Just now the reconnaissance was that no one was in the house. Yang Lu immediately replied. 
She had just purposely used a drone with thermal imaging equipment to specifically target the residences in this area for reconnaissance scanning. The other team members were also able to see the results of the scan at first glance, but there were indeed no criminals in there. Shin Feng sniffed and turned his head to look outside the banana forest once again. At this moment, about a dozen heavily armed enemies escorted a group of eight people out from inside the room. These eight people, who were very sturdy looking, Shin Feng had a very strange feeling at the first sight of them. Intuition told him that these people did not look like ordinary people. He carefully observed and found that those criminals had used handcuffs as well as shackles to completely bind the hands and feet of those eight people. At this moment, someone told them to kneel down with their hands on their heads. Let you all kneel down, do you hear me? Bang! The criminal, while threatening the eight men, fired a shot directly at the feet of one of them. However, in the face of the criminal's threat of force, these eight men were indifferent, completely unfazed by their threats. They are either mercenaries or soldiers. Shin Feng immediately came to his judgment. Ordinary people facing such heavily armed and murderous criminals would have long since gone weak in fear. Only hardened men who had truly experienced the test of blood and fire and had strong willpower were unafraid of such threats. Wang Shichang and Sun Bin were still continuing their actions inside the banana forest. Soon, together with Zhang Yanjia and Yuan Weihong, they closed in from different directions to get rid of all the remaining 15 enemies inside the banana forest. At the same time, they quickly noticed the situation outside. What's the situation, squad leader? How come there are still so many enemies, and who are those subdued ones? Wang Shichang had already found the best sniping position, and at this moment, together with Sun Bin, they were aiming at the dozen or so enemies in the open space outside the stronghold while asking curiously. It's not clear yet. Don't act rashly yet. Listen and see what they say. Shin Feng reminded. At this moment, sure enough, among those dozen enemies, there was a man with a mustache, who looked like he should be a small leader, who circled around to the front of those eight captives. At the same time, he stared at those eight hardened captives with feigned ferocity and threatened. I'll give you one last chance, seeing that each and every one of you, you are all hardened men, pointing to give you a way out. As long as you tell us your unit number, your names, and your next deployment action plan, you can regain your freedom, or, you can choose to join us and work for our company. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. After this little criminal leader finished speaking, he used the pistol in his hand and pointed it at the head of one of the captives. I'll count to three. If you guys don't say anything, he's going to meet the king of hell. Shin Feng and his team members, who were ambushed in the surrounding area, heard these words and instantly realized that these eight Hans turned out to be soldiers indeed. Moreover, the odds were that they were still soldiers from the 9th district, because that criminal just now, was using the standard 9th district language to try to communicate with them. For a moment everyone's hearts were involuntarily raised. However, in the face of the criminal's threat, those eight hardened men were still standing upright, neither kneeling nor saying anything, but it seemed as if they had already anticipated that this would be the case. That little criminal leader was not angry. He looked at the man he was pointing his gun at and asked, How much can you get for selling your life like this for a month? 5,000? 10,000? TSK TSK. I really feel unworthy for you guys. Obviously having such a good skill. You guys can't see the situation clearly. I'll ask you guys one last time. Are you willing or unwilling to work on our side? If you are willing, nod your heads. I guarantee that with your skills, you'll be here in the future. Eating good food, drinking hot water and playing with the prettiest ones. If you still don't know how to behave, then I'm sorry. You all can just go to hell. I'll count to three. You guys decide for yourselves. After saying that, this mustache criminal, indeed, with an untamed face, turns sideways, pricked up his ears and waited for those eight tough guys to give themselves a response. But after waiting for two seconds, he still didn't wait for the result he wanted. It was obvious that he did want to pull these soldiers in. It was a pity that the well-trained tough guys of the 9th district didn't eat their words at all. Don't know how to raise your voice. 3. The mustachoed criminal really started counting down. Inside the banana forest, Liang Chashu asked in surprise, Squad leader, these are all our soldiers from the 9th district ah. How did they suddenly get caught? Now is not the time to ask this. Do it, clairvoyance. Shin Feng issued a combat order to the entire team. Understood. The three on the left are yours. Monkey, leave the center to me. The rest are yours. Squad leader. Wang Shichang had already locked onto the target long ago. He was waiting for Shin Feng to open his mouth and give the order. At this time, he and Sun Bin got the order and fired decisively. The bullets each hit the first target after flying for less than 0.5 seconds. Shin Feng and several other team members also synchronized their attacks at this time. The first second passed and half of the 16 or 17 enemies fell. 
In an instant, the enemy was confused, and at this time, Shen Feng and the other team members had already launched the second wave of precise attacks. In three seconds' time, by the time the enemy came back to his senses, there was only one enemy left standing on the spot. Bang! Shen Feng intentionally left a survivor and shot off the weapon in the opponent's hand, while at the same time another shot punched a hole in the opponent's thigh. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Check the surroundings. Shen Feng and his teammates, instead of rushing out at the first opportunity, now observed the banana forest. After confirming that there were indeed no other enemies outside, they then carefully showed up and came to the side of the eight stunned hard men. Shen Feng quickly came to the side of the enemy that he had just knocked down, and after kicking all the weapons away from the other party's side, he tied up this living victim again. The rest of the team members converged together, each taking up their own position on guard. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. On the other hand, Shen Feng went around behind those eight hard men who were still standing upright and looked a bit surprised and came to the front of them. Seeing that Shen Feng was actually so young, a look of surprise obviously swept across the eyes of those eight men. Ninth district people? Shen Feng asked as he looked at one of them who was staring and sizing himself up. In fact, from within the words of those criminals just now, coupled with the crisp, clean cut, inch haired hairstyle of these eight tough guys in front of them at this moment, everyone's heart had already had the answer. This kind of essence, this kind of hairstyle and resolute and bold eyes, either these eight people were members of the Ninth District's internal defense force, either that or they were active duty special forces. This kid, it seems like he's one of the mercenaries who was killed off as mentioned on the internet. At this time beside this man, another person said after staring at Shen Feng and sizing him up twice, important information could be obtained from his words. That is, these people knew Shen Feng, or had seen those hot news that were making a lot of noise on the network of the Ninth District. That was why they instantly recognized the Shen Feng in front of them. Looks like I'll have to wear a hood next time I act. My name is Shen Feng. I'm from the 9th district, and I'm currently a trainee mercenary. And you all are? Shen Feng smiled very friendly and inquired at them. However, it was obvious that these eight soldiers still held a wary attitude and did not answer Shen Feng's question. Young man, good marksmanship. That shot just now. If it had been a little more off, it would have blown my head off. At this time, the man directly opposite Shen Feng who looked slightly older, about 35 or 36 years old, stared at him and laughed. Shen Feng knew that the troops had confidentiality requirements. Even in normal times, they would not reveal half of the things about their troops to their own families, not to mention that they were now out on a mission, and being captured made it all the more important that they absolutely could not reveal any secrets. He didn't continue to ask about the origins of these people, but instead looked at Liang Chao Shu, Dog Bear, Untie These Seniors, Squad Leader. We haven't confirmed their identity yet, in case they aren't. What? You grow this head. Are you still worried about being fucked over by me? The man standing in front of Liang Chao Shu, hearing his words turned his head to look at him and asked in a provocative manner. Question mark. Liang Chao Shu did not say anything, but looked at Shen Feng with a questioning gaze. Shen Feng knew that they didn't trust his side yet either, so he nodded and signaled Liang Chao Shu to untie these people first. After they were untied, the expressions of these people eased quite a bit. They sized up Shen Feng and his party, and Shen Feng and his party were also sizing them up. All right, you guys, now it's rumored everywhere outside that you've been killed by these criminals long ago. I didn't expect that each and every one of you are unharmed and alive and well. The burly man who looked like he should be the captain, smiled and looked over towards Shen Feng, you are their captain. Right, Shen Feng? Right, Shen Feng nodded. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, Please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. As for the 27 to 28 year old man who had just spoken in the same accent as Liang Chao Shu, he looked at Liang Chao Shu and said, Buddy, how about giving a weapon to use? What are you thinking? You want a weapon before we can confirm your identities. How do I know if you're in league with those criminals? Liang Chao Shu vigilantly took half a step back and responded half jokingly. The other party directly froze at his words and looked up at Liang Chao Shu with glaring eyes. Me? With those criminals? The others all looked over towards the two of them, looking at the expressions of both sides fearing that they were about to get into a fight at the drop of a hat. All right, the identities of the several of you have now been published all over the internet. We know you, so we won't hide it from you. You guys should have already guessed that we are covert operations officers from the 9th district. We can't tell you the specific numbers and names, so you guys understand. Just call me Old A, the middle-aged man in the lead, explained briefly to Shen Feng as well as the rest of the team members. 
and those team members around him also began to introduce themselves one after another. My name is Old B. Old C. I'm D. These eight people directly replaced their names with letters. Regarding their principle of secrecy, Shen Feng and the team members also expressed their respect. Why are you guys here? Shen Feng asked as he curiously looked at Old A. It's a long story. Old A shook his head in great shame. We originally received a secret mission that required us to come over to carry out the mission. But I didn't expect that after infiltrating over here, we realized that we had been betrayed. The enemy has long been waiting over here to ambush us. Old A didn't reveal much information. However, Shin Feng and the others had all noticed long ago that they did have some wounds on their bodies. Obviously, inside the enemy stronghold, they had experienced severe torture. Associated with these criminals, the powerful weaponry that they held in their hands, Shin Feng guessed that it was even possible that these people had also paid a very heavy price on their way over. However, if people didn't say much, they didn't ask much. At the same time, it dawned on Shin Feng and the team members. They felt puzzled. With the strength of the special forces of the 9th district, there was no reason why they could secretly come over to carry out a mission and still be captured by the enemy. It turned out that the mole had betrayed the information and fell into the enemy's ambush circle. There is no way out. Under the ambush of the enemy's powerful firepower, even an immortal would have to shed his skin. Ola swept a glance at Shin Feng as well as his team members. His eyes especially skimmed over the weapons and equipment they were holding in focus. These mercenaries looked much younger than in the photos. And importantly, they were very strong. Just now, Old A and his team members had witnessed the entire process of Shin Feng and his team members, launching a coordinated attack on those criminals. The dozens of criminals outside this camp were thus easily solved by this seven-man team. It had to be said that even if this strength was placed in the special forces of the 9th district, it was also an existence that could be ranked among the top. Boys, why did you guys show up here again? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. His eyes swept over the weapons and equipment in the hands of Shin Feng and his teammates, and while he was inwardly surprised, Old A could not help but inquire curiously. We got a reliable intelligence tip that these criminals had kidnapped a large number of victims and were going to sell them, so we came over to rescue them. Shin Feng replied. When Old A heard Shin Feng say this, his heart was slightly moved. He once again looked back and forth at Shin Feng as well as his team members for a few moments before shaking his head. So you're still on a bounty mission against the criminals in the 6th district. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. However, young man, don't blame my old brother for talking too much. You guys have to be careful. These criminals are not simple. There are experts behind them guiding their actions, and their degree of cunning is far beyond our imagination. Come to think of it, their previous actions had been informed by the enemy a long time ago, including the number of personnel on their side as well as their course of action, firepower configuration, and so on. The enemy knew everything. By the time they touched over from the 9th district, they were immediately hit hard by the enemy. Originally, there were three squads operating together, including the strategic support squad as well as the logistical support squad, but now there were only eight of them left. The others, all had fallen on the battlefield. When he thought of this, Old A's heart felt another pang of heartache, and at the same time, a strong emotion of jealousy arose. Such an enemy was no rabble. Not only were they powerful, but their ability to acquire intelligence was also very impressive. Coupled with the fact that this was their territory, it was indeed too dangerous to try and fight them. He he he, old brother, you don't know anything, do you? These enemies will hire some veteran mercenaries to help them do their thing. The last time we were hunted by a team of professional mercenaries. However, those guys were nothing more than that. They were all taken care of by us. There's also those news that they bragged about on the internet. Those two crashed helicopter gunships were their own, taking heavy firepower to attack us, and they were all destroyed by us. I see these enemies. Ha! are just like that. Liang Chao Shu was a bit complacent. This couldn't be blamed entirely on him. It was really because the battles they had come all the way over were too smooth. It wasn't just now that they slaughtered dozens of criminals again. At a time like this, anyone who came and heard someone reminding them that the enemy was very strong and they should be careful or something would not take it to heart. They would only think that they were just being overly cautious. However, Liang Chaoshu was flaunting his strength in an uproarious manner and hadn't noticed that his words had already caused a moment of embarrassment for Old A and his teammates. People had only just been captured with heavy losses. And you're saying that the enemy's strength isn't good in front of others at a time like this. Isn't this slapping them in the face? Cough cough. Shen Feng lightly coughed twice to remind Liang Chaoshu not to talk nonsense. He then looked at Old A, old brother. Thanks for the reminder. We'll pay attention to this. 
By the way I want to ask, were you guys just held underground by those criminals? Xin Feng asked the doubt in his heart. The other team members heard this and also curiously listened with their ears sideways. They had guessed just now that there must be underground entrances inside those wooden and bamboo huts, otherwise there was no reason why the previous reconnaissance had not found so many enemies hiding in the houses. Not bad. These enemies' main strongholds are hidden underground, and they have developed a very vast space underground. Old A immediately nodded and explained to Xin Feng and the others what they had previously seen underground. The house in front was indeed hiding an underground entrance. Because the 6th district was very chaotic and turbulent in the last century, wars were frequent. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Therefore, the locals dug a lot of underground passages. Now that the years were peaceful, these criminals often made use of these underground passages left over from the last century, and after expanding and remodeling them, they turned the underground space into one of their secret strongholds. According to Old A, the underground space of this stronghold is very vast and well connected, with multiple divisions. Previously, they were held in the partition that specialized in torturing captives. Those criminals saw that they couldn't ask for any valuable information from their mouths, so they were preparing to execute them. Fortunately, Xin Feng and the others arrived in time and took action. Otherwise, speaking of which, young man, it's really thanks to you guys for stepping in to save us, otherwise I'm afraid we'll have to give an account here. While Ole was so grateful that he thanked Xin Feng and the other team members again, he also sighed helplessly. He recalled the previous battles, those comrades who had sacrificed themselves in the middle of the enemy's ambush circle. To this day, he still has no way to bring them home, or even, know where they were. This is good. Since you guys are from the military of the 9th district, it means that we, the great 9th district, aren't just sitting back and doing nothing. You guys call for backup directly. Let's join forces together to take out all the criminals in the 6th district. Liang Chashu didn't see the sadness on Old A's face and excitedly proposed. As soon as he finished speaking, the others looked towards him with odd expressions on their faces. Especially Old A couldn't help but let out a bitter laugh as he looked at him. Even Xin Feng and a few other team members looked at Liang Chashu speechlessly. What? Can't? Liang Chaoshu hesitated and locked eyes with everyone, looking at this and that. I've already said that this is the 6th district. You think it's the 9th district? According to the relevant regulations in the world, sensitive personnel from any district, especially official personnel, cannot enter other districts at will to conduct activities, especially military personnel. It's a taboo amongst taboos. Wang Shishan looked at Liang Chaoshu breathlessly and explained, but didn't they come over? Liang Chaoshu looked towards Old A and his crew. According to his thoughts, since these people had the means to come over, they certainly had the means to call for more support. What did they care if they came anyway? Old A smiled bitterly once again and shook his head. Your teammates are right. We came over through an irregular route. In other words, our existence can't be known to the officials of the 6th district, or else it will bring trouble to the 9th district in terms of Zhengji and diplomacy. And because there is such a restriction, our actions are absolutely confidential and we will also be in an isolated situation once something goes wrong, even if, caught by the enemy, we can't take the initiative to recognize our identity. When Old A said this, Liang Chaoshu finally understood, he looked at his teammates, and then looked at those few soldier brothers, and was speechless for a while. For this kind of relatively sensitive matter, everyone didn't know what to say for the best. At this moment, Liang Chaoshu asked curiously again after a moment of silence, is the person who betrayed you someone within the organization? This question was not supposed to be asked by him. It was inappropriate. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. But he was really curious. If it was the organization that had betrayed the information from within, then the matter would be serious. Fortunately, after hearing Liang Chashu's words Old A was directly shaking his head. No. Hearing Old A's answer, all the team members, including Xin Feng, breathed a sigh of relief. If it was someone within the organization who had betrayed the information, then this would be too big a problem. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Fortunately, it is not. And at this moment, the team member beside Old A, Old B, also explained, Right now, we are only suspicious. And at the moment, the one who knows about our plan of action, apart from the people within the organization, there is also the informant over here. He is a person dispatched by our friendly unit to carry out undercover activities over here. And the line of travel this time was also advised by him. Otherwise we wouldn't have been able to find the enemy's stronghold to come. Therefore, 
It is currently suspected that the probability is that this undercover officer has defected. Shin Feng and the team members once again came to a realization when they heard this explanation. The 9th District's patrol division had many anti-narcotics officers who fought criminals on the front line. Among them, undercover reconnaissance was one of the most commonly used means. Only, this job was really too dangerous. And sometimes individual officers would be threatened and enticed by criminals with all sorts of money, beautiful women, and even the safety of their families. As a result, it was not uncommon for the initial heart to waver or even go astray. This was not an issue that Shin Feng and the team should meddle in. The official internal problems needed to be dealt with by themselves. At this point, everyone fell silent once again. But Liang Chaoshu was obviously a guy who couldn't stay idle. He looked at Ole again and asked, You guys are also here to rescue those victims, right? In that case we can act together. There's strength in numbers. Now we've determined that the underground of this stronghold is holding at least more than a few hundred victims who are all about to be sold. Liang Chaoshu again proposed to Ole and the others. The criminals had now posted the information of those 60 latest victims who had been fraudulently kidnapped on the internet. The criminal's aim was to attract Shin Feng and his team members, as well as any other District 9 mercenaries that might exist, to rescue the hostages. From there, they would utilize the dragnet lay to clean them up. All this information posted on the network would of course attract the attention of the officials of the 9th District, as one of the few most powerful districts in the world. It would be unreasonable for District 9 not to respond a little. It made sense for covert operatives to infiltrate the 6th district to launch a rescue operation. Shin Feng and the team members all thought so. However, after Liang Chaoshu finished his words, Old A and his team members were awkwardly glancing at each other with a look of wanting to say something. You guys didn't come over to rescue rescue those victims? Yang Lu had always been observing these people. Noticing the obvious embarrassment and hesitation on their faces at this time, she immediately frowned and pressed the question. Old A's gaze was a bit surprised as he glanced toward Yang Lu and nodded. We came over to rescue the victims. But the main task of our squad is not to rescue those victims. They have another action group to be in charge. It's just a pity. As you all can see, this squad of ours was captured. And the other action squad, which was caught right in the middle of the enemy's elaborate ambush, has currently been completely wiped out. Because this is a covert operation. It won't receive direct support from the military of the 9th region. And it's impossible for the officials to recognize the existence of this operation. So we are currently already in a state of isolation, and even if we sacrifice, we will not be known by the outside world. Once the news leaks out, it will bring a very serious diplomatic crisis to the 9th district. This is also an important reason why we can't just make a move. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. In fact, we have been keeping an eye on the movements of the criminals in the 6th districts. We are also very angry at what they have done. Old A had already said these words in a more euphemistic manner, but it didn't affect Shin Feng and the team members, their understanding of what he meant. Everyone was also understanding of their hardships. The relationship between each region and region was not as simple as the relationship between people and people. There were too many things at stake. For the sake of the overall situation, the officials would not easily send troops to directly intervene in such matters. In general, they will only let the comrades of the police department be responsible for the investigation and contact the International Police Department to seek help, etc. Zhang Yinjia couldn't help but pursue the matter. Zhang Yinjia couldn't help but follow up at this time. What is the mission of this squad of yours? Old A and the team members glanced at each other. He then swept two more glances toward Shin Feng and the rest of the team. It seemed to be a mental struggle. Only after a few seconds did Old A speak quietly. Several scientists in District 9 have been kidnapped by criminals. These include genetic engineers and research experts in the field of life sciences. I'm not at liberty to disclose their specific names, but I can only say that their academic achievements belong to the top batch even within the world. All of you should be able to understand a little bit about the importance of these talents, right? The criminals kidnapped them, and according to the intelligence we received, they were trying to make a deal with the first district. As for the deeper purpose, our intelligence department guesses that it's Region 1's attempt to utilize the human genetic data of Region 9 to research a genetic weapon targeting our race in Region 9. If such a genetic weapon were to be developed, the consequences would be unimaginable. And if the people of the first district want to develop this kind of genetic weapon, the first thing is to obtain a sufficient amount of genetic data of the human race of the ninth district. The other thing is to obtain the relevant genetic engineering technology. Those kidnapped scientists are their keys to unlocking the genetic treasure trove of the human race in the ninth district, as they hold a large amount of genetic data of the ninth district's human race in their hands. Therefore, the order we received was to do our best to rescue these kidnapped scientists and absolutely not let them fall into the hands of criminals. Can't let them, 
be taken away by the criminals of the first district. Old A was obviously very determined. When he said these words, his eyes flickered with a kind of sharp light, constantly scanning back and forth across the faces of Shin Feng and his team members. As for Shin Feng and the others, when they heard these secrets, one by one, all of them were also dumbfounded. Your eyes looking at my eyes. They also didn't expect that the criminals in the 6th district were even connected to the 1st district. And these criminals were so bold that they had managed to kidnap such an important scientist from the 9th district. No wonder. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit the reading mode or the uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Now I finally realize why they made a deal with the biomedical technology company in the 1st district. That batch of victims was to be sold to the 1st district as experiments. Yang Lu came back to her senses at this time and couldn't help but exclaim in shock. At this moment, she recalled the information she had previously investigated on the dark net, and connected these things with the information she had previously obtained. In an instant, the criminal's purpose became clear. Shen Feng and his teammates were very angry when they heard Old A's explanation, and Yang Lu's analysis made the anger in everyone's chest burn. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or read mode can read normally especially the short-tempered Liang Chaoshu, who had clenched his fists by this time. His grandmother, Liang Chaoshu couldn't help but burst out a foul mouth. These criminals, kidnapping and swindling and torturing and abusing our compatriots in District 9, is already unpleasant enough in itself. Now they even have the audacity to collaborate with the 1st District's Black Tech Pharmaceutical Company, intending to use biomedical engineering against our 9th District? These people, they simply deserve to die. Squad Leader what are we waiting for? Directly attack in to get those criminals killed and save the people. Liang Chaoshu gritted his teeth and looked at Shin Feng, impatiently proposing that he couldn't wait to rush into the underground stronghold and raid all the enemies right now. Several other team members, at this moment, everyone was also filled with righteous indignation. Infected by the bloodshed and emotions displayed by Liang Chaoshu, everyone revealed a powerful fighting spirit. Shin Feng was calm, and was not in a hurry to give orders to act, but looked at old A and asked. You must have information on those kidnapped scientists in your hands, right? Are they being held here as well? He thought to himself that such important figures would not be held here like ordinary goods. There was a high probability that they were being held elsewhere. It was even possible that they had already been taken away by the enemies of the first district, which was the worst case scenario. As expected, Old A sniffed and looked at Shin Feng approvingly and nodded. He did not immediately answer Shin Feng's question, but first looked at the bloodthirsty Liang Chao Shu and reminded, When I was your age, I was also passionate and did things impulsively. Boys, all of you are good, but old brother I, as a passerby, give you a piece of advice? Do things remember to be impulsive? Impulsiveness is the devil. In all things, we must first clarify the intelligence and determine all the details before drawing up a battle plan. Old A was first bitterly, admonishing Liang Chaoshu as well as a few other members of the team. Only immediately afterward did he look at Chen Feng. Those scientists are certainly not here. We weren't captured here either but were transferred here after being captured after being ambushed by the enemy elsewhere. Speaking of which, at the moment, we don't know where those scientists are hidden by the enemy. Old A finished shaking his head. Yuan Weihong asked curiously, could it be that they have been taken away by the enemies in the first district? Impossible. Old B immediately dismissed the speculation. Old A beside him, as well as several other team members, followed suit and nodded their heads in agreement with this judgment. How are you guys so sure? Wang Shichuan pursued. We received accurate intelligence before we entered the 6th district. The people from the 1st district will make a handover of the goods this evening. Originally, if the plan had gone well, our operation would have succeeded in stopping the transaction, and then we would have taken the opportunity of their transaction to rescue those kidnapped scientists. However, the accident happened too suddenly. We were ambushed, our team members were killed or injured, and this special assault squad of ours was captured in its entirety. Those enemies in the 1st district are very cunning. They won't risk another deal until they know how many more of our rescue forces are conducting operations. Old A explained. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Upon hearing this, Shin Feng took the lead and nodded. His words were actually very reasonable. The area of the 6th region was so large. There were several large areas that together formed a vast area reaching millions of square kilometers. Although the Edessa Corporation's main active range was in the bright area, they might not necessarily not have strongholds in other areas. Without intelligence support, who could be sure where they were hiding the hostages? Looking for them rashly was like finding a needle in a haystack. The safest way was to wipe out the enemy when they were making a deal. 
and then rescue the kidnapped scientists. Only, no one had expected that the information would be leaked by the undercover officers trained by the 9th district itself and operating in the 6th district. This was what caused the operation to be undone. Now that the enemy already knew that the military personnel of the 9th district were conducting an operation, they certainly couldn't risk making another deal. There would be no telling when the next transaction would take place. So those guys temporarily terminated the deal and changed their plans because of you guys ah. Shin Feng and his teammates glanced at each other, and each of them revealed an expression of sudden realization. They had previously discovered the enemy's communication records by mistake while investigating the intelligence on the dark net. By deciphering them, they learned that the deal between the criminals in the 1st and 6th districts had been temporarily cancelled. At that time, everyone didn't think much about it, not knowing why the enemy would suddenly change their plans. Now, the truth of the matter came out. It was because the enemies in the 1st district had discovered the information that the military in the 9th district was launching a rescue operation. Therefore, they had temporarily cancelled the deal for safety reasons. Hearing the words of Shin Feng and his team members, Old A and his people also glanced at each other. Looks like you guys have quite a bit of information in your hands. Old A looked intriguingly at Shin Feng. That's for sure. We're professional mercenaries. Sun Bin proudly patted his chest. At this remark, Old A just smiled and did not comment. Both sides suddenly fell silent again, each thinking about their own thoughts. What are the next plans old brothers? Shin Feng looked at Old A and asked. We intend to get in touch with our superiors first to see if they can send support over. In our current state, it's not very suitable for us to continue launching operations anymore. Moreover, the enemy has been alerted. And now we don't know where they have moved those scientists to hide. We need to figure out the situation before we can make a decision. Old A shook his head in response. Upon hearing this Liang Chao Shu and the other team members glanced at each other. Their minds were moved and they blurted out. Why don't you guys just go back? Just leave the task here to us. We are professional mercenaries. It's much easier to act here. Liang Chao Shu said confidently. Old A, as well as the people under his hand, looked towards Liang Chao Shu in unison. Everyone's face was a bit odd. Young people, you shouldn't blame old brother for my direct speech. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Your strength is indeed very strong. Not to mention being novice mercenaries, if I didn't know better. I would have thought that you were senior veterans. However, the batch of enemies we fought with are not the same thing as the ones you just solved. They were also very specialized. Olda finally spoke the previously undisclosed truth. While it was true that they had been ambushed by the enemy and caught off guard, there were also experts on the enemy's side that were very strong. This was the major reason why they suffered heavy losses and were captured in full. Olda's words made Shin Feng think of the group of professional mercenaries that had previously chased them in the first place. The rest of the team members, too, showed serious expressions. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. Criminals do cooperate with some professional mercenaries, hiring them to deal with their opponents. Last time, we also encountered a squad of professional mercenaries, but we took them out. Wang Shishan responded to Old A with a bit of pride. Upon hearing this, Old A looked over towards him his gaze intentionally landing on top of the sniper rifle on Wang Shichang's chest. He first nodded at Wang Shichang with respect in general before he added, those enemies who fought with us. I see that their strength is at least at the level of the world's top-ranked special forces. Those people shouldn't be ordinary mercenaries. I think we still need to think long and hard before we can start an operation. Old A was distraught about the previous battle. This was the first time he had fought with the world's top special forces amongst all the operational missions he had personally led. It had made him deeply realize how powerful the enemy was. He was now worried that a few of Shin Feng's team members seemed to be a bit complacent. Even though bloodthirsty young men were mostly like that. But it was precisely because of this that they couldn't be trusted with the mission. It wasn't just the reason that the success or failure of the mission at stake. It was also for the sake of being responsible for the lives and safety of Shin Feng and his teammates. At this time, one of the comrades beside Old A, also looked at Wang Shixiang a bit flirtatiously. Do you know what the time interval between two accurate snipes before and after is for the best sniper in the world? This question was not just a question to test Wang Shichang's common sense. It was also intended to remind the other party of how powerful the enemy really was through this question. Don't know, right? I'll tell you. My sniping interval is 2.4 seconds. And among those enemies we fought with, that guy who plays sniper, his sniping interval is 2.2 seconds. See this. The other party pulled his collar down a little, revealing a wound on his right shoulder. It was a penetrating wound, and the bullet should have gone through his right shoulder blade and directly through his back. This is the meeting gift that guy left for me. The other party looked at Wang Shichang and said, 
Immediately afterward, he stretched out five fingers. We have five team members who were taken out by that guy alone, naming them one by one, and just fell down in front of us. Young man, do you think that your sniping skills can compare to that guy's? Do you want your team members to join you and face that kind of existence? After saying that, he stared at Wang Shirqian's eyes with a burning gaze. That kind of bitter talk was supposed to persuade Shen Feng and his team members not to take it lightly. Don't underestimate those mercenaries. However, Liang Chaoshu blurted out at this time. What's the point? Our squad leader sniped twice with an interval of 0.1 second. I would call it the world's number one continuous sniper. Right squad leader? Liang Chaoshu looked towards Shen Feng. Shen Feng didn't say anything. And Wang Shirqiang followed suit and complimented him. Picking up. That's right. Our squad leader's sniping skills. There shouldn't be many people in this world who can surpass him. As for what you said about the enemy's two sniping intervals of 2.2 seconds this. I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend you. Old brother. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed. Garbled and misspelled words. Please exit reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. I just want to say that with my current sniping technique. I'm able to control the interval between two precision shots within two seconds. If you don't believe me. Let's both compare and spar. Wang Shirqiang realized that his words were bullshit only after he finished speaking. This was because the other party had only just displayed the wound on his right shoulder. Although it was a penetrating injury, the shoulder blade was damaged, and along with it, it was impossible to exert too much power with his right hand. This meant that the opponent's combat power had been greatly reduced. To compete with himself, that would be bullying himself. I'm sorry, I forgot that you have an injury on your shoulder. Wang Shirqiang came back to his senses subconsciously glanced at the opponent's shoulder and apologized. At this moment, the old A on the opposite side as well as a few comrades beside him. All of them were dumbfounded as they looked at Shen Feng and Wang Zhichun several people. Brothers, I know you guys are strong. You guys have already proved it all with your battle results. But, I think what you just said is bragging. 0.1 second between two precise shots. Do you know what concept this is? Blind sniping doesn't carry this kind of power. The sniper who had just cited an example to persuade Wang Shirqiang and the others was constantly shaking his head. As for Old A and the others, they also laughed without saying anything. Obviously none of them believed that Shen Feng and the team members had such strength. I knew you guys didn't believe it. Ugh. Squad leader. Are you going to go or am I going to go? Wang Shirqiang looked at Shen Feng. Shen Feng, on the other hand, looked at Liang Chaoshu. Dog bear. Show these seniors a couple hands? Liang Chaoshu immediately understood. He 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 smiled to look at the old A and others. I take charge of the machine gunner in the team. You guys let me carry a heavy machine gun raid. This thing I'm good at it. But class president. Sniper rifle I really can't play ah. It's fine. Just show everyone your hand. As a way to learn from your seniors and exchange techniques. Shin Feng and Liang Chashu sang in unison. Old A was crying and laughing as he listened. You young people. You still don't know the heights of heaven. Alright. Stop acting. I'd like to see if you guys are really that good. If you guys can really do what you say, then let's pretend that we've looked away and don't know him Tai, Tai, we will consider entrusting this mission to you guys to complete. As a veteran, at this time, Old I obviously also didn't believe that Shin Feng and his team members were really as powerful as what Wang Shirqiang had just said, so he also came to have a little bit of temper and directly made a promise. By the way, he also wanted to have another good lesson on how good these young mercenaries really were. Everyone, are you guys really planning to cut a deal here? Don't forget that we are now in the middle of the enemy's camp. There are still enemies to be dealt with underground. And there are still victims waiting for us to rescue them. Yang Lu was speechless. At this moment, finally couldn't help but remind. It's only two shots. It won't take much time. A comrade beside old A was also obviously a bit unconvinced. If you encounter content that cannot be displayed or incomplete display. Messy code and wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. At this time, he directly stood out. I'll just spar with you. Who gives a weapon? He spun around and looked at Shin Feng and his teammates. Here, Sun Bin handed his sniper rifle to the other party. How does it compare? This soldier brother, who claimed himself to be old age, took the weapon and checked it, casually calibrating it twice before looking up at Liang Chaoshu. Just by looking at that set of movements he just did, it was as easy as eating and drinking. It was enough to see that this was indeed a connoisseur. Although the other party's set of movements were flowing smoothly. However Liang Chaoshu took a look at the wound on the other party's right thigh and shook his head helplessly. Alas, all of you old brothers why are you actually doing this? Wouldn't it be over if you believe in what we are saying? If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words. Please exit the reading mode or uninterrupted reading mode to read normally. You guys are in such a state. I won't be able to win ah. After Liang Chaoshu finished. 
He took another look at the wound on his opponent's thigh. Gunshot wounds were no joke. It takes a hundred days to get injured. Having been injured, the fighting strength of these soldier buddies must be greatly inferior to their peak. It's just shooting. It's not cross country. It's not in the way. Come on. Old H was very brash. Full of disinterest in the other party taking advantage of him. Seeing that the other party was so insistent, Leon Chaoshu didn't say anything more and glanced at the distance. 1000 meter target. You go first, old brother. However, at this time, Shen Feng proposed, it's pitch black, and this is near the enemy stronghold. There's no need to run that far. I do have a better suggestion. Hearing him say this everyone looked over, and Shen Feng didn't sell himself short and immediately explained, let's find a way to draw out the enemies underground and then compete in small teams. Let's see if all of you old brothers have solved more enemies, or if we have taken out more enemies, that would be relatively fair. And between dealing with sinister and cunning criminals, and hitting targets that don't move, it's obvious that the former is much more difficult. Of course the biggest benefit, was that this way not only could they compete with them, but they could also take care of the remaining enemies here in the process, both at the same time. This proposal of Shen Feng's was immediately supported by everyone, whether it was his own team members or old A and their side. They all agreed that this method was the best. Okay, let's do as you say. However, brother, do you guys have any ideas on how you plan to draw out the enemies underground? Old A was deliberately testing Shen Feng. As professionals, they definitely had ways to deal with such enemies hiding underground. But they didn't say it first, but instead asked Shen Feng rhetorically instead. How could Shen Feng not hear it? Smiling softly at the words, he turned his head and his teammates to look at each other. Big brother Old A, I want to ask you again about the specific situation of those enemies underground. Shin Feng looked at Ole and carefully asked them again for information about the enemy's underground strongholds. However, at that time, Ole and his comrades, after being captured and brought there, couldn't see much because they were blindfolded. The understanding of the whole underground situation was very limited. They were only able to determine that the enemy's underground stronghold was roughly divided into five areas. They were the areas that specialized in holding captives for intelligence torture as well as the area where ordinary victims were held, waiting to be traded. In addition, there is also the living quarters of the criminals. Then there's the operating room, where they perform organ harvesting on the victims. Then there is the processing area. What they process is self-explanatory. Apart from this information, Old A and the others did not know how many enemies there were, the areas they were guarding, and their firepower. With so many areas, it would take at least dozens of enemies to be able to guard them. Schoolboy. It's up to you this time. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Shin Feng turned his head to look at Yang Lu. Yang Lu just made an okay gesture and started to operate. She took out a few gadgets from her backpack and placed them in her palm. Afterwards, Yang Lu signaled Liang Chashu to help. I'm going to put them in. You help me open the underground entrance. Without saying a word. Liang Chaoshu immediately took the thermal imager and walked towards the location of the entrance and exit where they had just seen the enemy enter the underground. The top was already buried in dirt and sand. No abnormalities could be seen on the outside at all. However, Liang Chaoshu didn't immediately rush to open the cover of this entrance, but suddenly raised his head to look at the captive who had been tied up and gagged by them on the side. That criminal had been shot and wounded by Shen Feng and was now grunting with a bitter frown. Liang Chaoshu's gaze quickly caught the attention of the others and everyone looked towards the captured criminal, only to see Liang Chaoshu suddenly walk over towards the captive criminal, and one-handedly grabbed the other party's collar as if he was carrying a chicken and lifted him straight up. Do you understand the words of the 9th district? Liang Chaoshu blared evilly at the other party. This criminal, however, made a disdainful look and directly twisted his head away from looking at Liang Chaoshu. It seems to understand. All right, quite a backbone. Liang Chaoshu lightly grunted and nodded. Immediately after that, he suddenly reached out and formed a claw with his five fingers, grabbing the right side of the criminal's ribs from the bottom up at once. The powerful finger force not only pinched the flesh on this criminal's stomach, but also directly snapped onto the other party's ribs at the same time. Immediately, the intense pain caused the criminal's face to distort, causing tears to come out of his eyes from the pain. Shin Feng and a few other team members, watching the scene, could not help but raise their eyebrows at the same time. No one had expected that Liang Chao Shu would have this kind of trick, and at this moment, Old A and his teammates were likewise very surprised by Liang Chaoshu's trick. They had all received relevant captive training. It was very clear that those torture tactics and response methods for treating captives. But this was a trick they hadn't really learned. Hiss. Looks quite painful. A team member beside Old A grimaced and shook his head. Your brother's hand is quite dark ah. Another team member. 
looked over toward Xin Feng and the others. Xin Feng burst into a guffaw and didn't say anything. About ten minutes, after Liang Chaoshu and the criminal had exchanged friendly words, finally that criminal honestly compromised and softened. I say I say, big brother, please don't pinch me. Can't I just say it? I'll say whatever you guys want to know. Please don't torture me. I'm also just a part-time job. I'm not the boss ah. It's not about my yes ah. Why do you want to torture me like this? This criminal is about to cry out. Obviously, Liang Chaoshu's unique torture tactics were very effective. How many other members do you have in this underground? What's the firepower situation? And are there any organ alarms behind this door? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incomplete, garbled and misspelled, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Liang Chaoshu does not talk nonsense with the other party, still grabbing the other party's collar and questioning with an angry face. How many people underground I am not clear, because I have not gone down. I am only responsible for the guarding task on the ground. The most powerful firepower in their hands would be the bazooka. Behind the door is a staircase going down, and the end of the staircase is defended by an iron gate, so there are no guards behind the entrance. But, but there is an alarm system. The other party answered honestly. Hearing this criminal say this, Liang Xiaoshu raised his head in Xin Feng and the others looked at each other. He smacked the other party and questioned again. How are we going to break this alarm system at the entrance? If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and misspelled words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Dog bear aren't you talking nonsense? This still needs to be asked. What did we do last time? Wang Shishan looked at Liang Chaoshu and asked. His words instantly made Liang Chaoshu wake up and directly put that criminal down, mainly because his arms were a bit tired from lifting this hundred pound plus contraption. This underground stronghold of yours, just how big is it? How many areas is it divided into in total? Liang Chaoshu questioned again. The information provided by Old A and the others just now could only be used as a reference, because they themselves weren't too sure about the underground situation. This was the important reason why Xin Feng kept this one alive. At this moment, everyone's eyes were on this criminal, and the eyeing look made him feel fearful. Speak quickly. Don't hesitate. Don't make little master me wait too long. Or else I'll let you learn the tactics you used in those videos of torturing your victims that you posted on the internet. Liang Chaoshu said as he raised his palm as big as a Kwai fan and aimed it at this criminal. As soon as they thought about it, those videos and pictures they saw before. Seeing the miserable conditions of those victims who had been tortured and abused so much inside the videos that one couldn't bear to look at them. Liang Chaoshu's heart was left with nothing but the fury of anger and vengeance. For these vicious criminals, he really did not have any sympathy for them. This kind of person, you can never be merciful when dealing with them. When the other party heard Liang Chaoshu's threat, his eyes really shivered and he hurriedly said, I, I said I said. Your special forces of the 9th district are just awesome. The situation underground is pretty much the same as what a few of them just described. It is indeed divided into those areas. But the area is a bit larger than what you guys judged. By the way, there is one more thing. This criminal subconsciously glanced at Liang Chao Shu's raised palm and shivered once again. What thing? Less nonsense hurry to say. Liang Chao Shu once again threatened. Yes, yes, yes. It's like this. There's more than one entrance and exit of the underground stronghold here. I'll tell you the location of those entrances and exits. Please, can you, spare me? I also just have no way. Forced to work under the hands of boss Wang Saigao. I really am not a bad person. I have a wife and child to support. And my 80 something old mother. This criminal had a pitiful look. Saying that, he began to beg for mercy. You fucking. Liang Chaoshu couldn't wait to directly give the other party two big ear scrapes. How old are you? He stared viciously at the other party and asked. Two, twenty-three. You're 23 years old. Your mother gave birth to you at 60 years old? Snapped. An unceremonious slap directly on the other party's face. This criminal is not tall. Only 1 meter 72. Three looks. Skinny and small. Where can he withstand this slap from Liang Chashu? Who has a thick body and a broad waist? In an instant he was hit as 7 meat. Eyes starry. The corners of the mouth are directly overflowing blood. But no one went to stop Liang Chashu. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or incomplete display. Garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Because, treating these abominable criminals, here, no matter if it was Xin Feng's group or Old A and the others, they all had the same attitude. There was absolutely no way to give them any image of mercy. It was to make these criminals pay the price they deserved. Only by letting them truly feel the pain would they know how to respect other lives in the future. And know not to hurt others so easily. The criminal who was exposed for his lies begged for mercy once again. But what greeted him were the two big slaps Liang Chaoshu gave him once again. At this time, 
Xin Feng walked over and reached out to stop the third slap that Liang Chaoshu slapped out. The two were singing in unison. All right, stop fighting for now. Xin Feng looked at the criminal. You should still want to be able to touch women with both hands in the future, right? At the same time, he pulled out his brightly shining field dagger. These words made his team members, as well as Old A and his comrades, all of them had their eyes stomped. Even Liang Chaoshu, who was next to him, was filled with question marks, and that criminal immediately understood and hurriedly nodded scornfully. I'll say I'll say. I'll say whatever I know. Do you know where those kidnapped scientists are being held? Xin Feng was satisfied that this guy was so uptight and immediately pursued the question. The other party obviously froze for a moment at his words, looking at Xin Feng and then at the dagger in his hand. This, this I don't know. Is it that you don't know, or you don't want to say? Xin Feng's tone chilled. I, I really don't know. Even if I know I can't tell you guys, otherwise Boss Wan will definitely not let me off. The other party's face was bitter and he began to beg for mercy continuously. This criminal answered in such a way that made Old A and the others light up. Old A directly walked over and looked down at this criminal. So you do indeed know where those scientists are being held. I see that you speak the language of the 9th district fluently. You look like you're from the 9th district as well, right? Old A was a mature and stable man after all. He was much more patient than these youngsters like Liang Chaoshu and Xin Feng. At this moment, his tone was also relatively calm, giving off an inexplicable sense of trust. That criminal hesitated and nodded. I came here five years ago. The truth? Yes, it's true. I was smuggled over. At that time, I was also tricked into coming here, but I didn't resist, and I was willing to cooperate with their work. So gradually I also gained their trust. The other party hurried to explain further. Old A nodded, good, I believe you. Then, do you want to return to the ninth district by making up for your mistakes? It's very dangerous to live a life of blood on the edge of a knife here, isn't it? Are you willing to spend the rest of your life in danger and instability like this? He asked again, following the temptation. This time, sure enough the criminal began to hesitate and didn't say anything. After a few minutes of silence, and seeing that he still had no intention of opening his mouth, Liang Chaoshu instantly became impatient once again and raised his palm to punch the man. However, Old A stopped him and said to the criminal, All you have to do now is to tell me where those scientists are being held, and I can guarantee to intercede on your behalf and get you the most lenient treatment possible. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete, garbled wrong words, please exit the reading mode or smooth reading mode can be read normally, and we can even escort you safely back to the 9th district. But if you're not willing to cooperate, then there's nothing I can do to help you. After saying that, Old A turned his head and deliberately glanced at the ferocious Leon Chao Shu. Old A and his teammates were each handpicked and had received formal training from real special forces. Captive training, how to torture prisoners of war these routines they knew exactly. If you encounter content cannot be displayed or display incomplete. Garbled wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Knows very well how to utilize the vulnerability of human nature. At this moment this criminal looks, has been completely taken by him. Soon the other party's psychological defense completely collapsed. Under the cooperation of Xin Feng, Liang Chaoshu, and Old A, the three of them sang red face and black face to each other, facing the psychological pressure brought by the strong aura of the three of them. This criminal, finally, will know the information and disclose. In the beginning, this guy did not tell the truth when facing Liang Chaoshu's torture. In fact, inside the underground stronghold here, there were still at least 70 criminals on guard and the number of victims being held inside. Besides the hundreds that Xin Feng and the others saw being sent over at the very beginning, there were still at least two to three hundred people inside. These victims were all waiting to be processed, charged per head. To put it bluntly, they were sold like piglets. No organs or blood. The whole thing was sold. As soon as the buyer comes to collect, they're sent to a nearby airport for the transaction. As to where they are to be sold and what they are to be used for, this is unknown. The other thing is that the scientist that Old A and the others are trying to rescue is definitely not here, but somewhere else. According to the criminals, this place is only responsible for guarding ordinary goods, such as those scientists, politicians and other important high-value targets. They will be guarded by other people, all of whom are the elite of the Edelweiss company. However, this criminal is only a small minion in the criminal organization. He really doesn't know the specific place of detention. In addition, there was another important piece of information. That is, the layout of the underground stronghold Xin Feng and the others were already fully aware of it. The entire underground stronghold had a total of six entrances and exits, which were located in the five directions of southeast, west, north, and south. The remaining one was inside the piece of wooden house in front. Once something unexpected happened, the enemy could escape at any time from any of these six exits. 
Old G, I'll leave this guy in your care, you're responsible for keeping him safe, we'll take him back to the 9th district with us when the time comes. Old A did not go back on his word. After getting the information he wanted, he handed this criminal over to one of his comrades to watch over, then looked at Shin Fong, little brother, what do you have in mind? He asked while taking a gun from the hand of his comrade next to him. Just now, Shin Fong and his team members had taken out dozens of enemies, and more than enough weapons and equipment had been collected here. He just said that all six exits here can allow the enemy to escape at any time. We first need to seal these remaining exits, then guard the last exit and wait for the enemy to come out. Shin Fong spoke out his idea plan, and Old A immediately nodded, showing a hint of approval to Shin Fong. It had to be said that these few young people were, indeed, outstanding. At least when faced with a real action, there was in using their brains to think about the problem. Regardless of whether it was the Shin Fong in front of him or a few of his team members, they were by no means the kind of wooden lumps that could not pass the special forces selection at first glance. How do you want to force them out? Old A looked at Shin Feng's eyes and asked again. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Seeing that the other party wanted to test himself again, Shin Feng smiled slightly. I was on the internet and saw some screwing wild videos. Those countryside bloggers who live in villages, when they catch voles in the fields, they will pour water or smoke inside the holes where the voles hide. You want to attack with water or fire? Old A understood and looked at Shin Feng meaningfully. It seemed completely unexpected that this young lad was so old-fashioned and resourceful in his methods. By the way, cut off their water and electricity supply again. Shin Feng laughed. Hear all that, right? Look at these young people. They're really something. Little brother. A few of you. It's a shame that you don't join the army to participate in the special forces selection. Ole looked at Shin Feng and a few of his team members with a bit of regret. There was no way for those who had already registered as mercenaries to continue enlisting in the army through the army's vetting. However, he really appreciated Shin Feng and his team members. It's fine. Senior, no matter where we are and what profession we are in, we are all fighting for the glory of our ninth district. Shin Feng laughed cheerfully. All right, let's split up. My people will be in charge of blocking those entrances and exits. The rest will be a bother to you. Old I obviously didn't want to discuss too much about this topic either, and proposed at this time. No problem. Shin Feng immediately turned around and made a division of labor arrangement for his team members. As for Old A and a few of his team members, since they were injured, they were responsible for going to block those entrances and exits. There were many cars parked outside the stronghold. They were all driven by these criminals. Now they came in handy. Old A and his comrades, with one car in each hand, drove the cars directly over and crushed them on the steel lids of the underground entrances and exits. The weight of these steel lids is not light. When pressed by a car weighing several tons, a world-class Hercules wouldn't even be able to push it away. Shin Feng and his own team members, on the other hand, split up. Yang Lu still utilized the drones, machine bees, and machine dogs to conduct a comprehensive reconnaissance alert of the surrounding situation. Wang Shuqiang and Sun Bin were occupying favorable terrain, using their sniper rifles to suppress the target and create cover for their teammates. Yuan Weihong and Zhang Yinjia began to set up traps to prevent any leakage later on. Liang Chashu and Shin Feng, on the other hand, one of them went to destroy the plumbing facilities leading to the underground here, while the other one went to destroy the external power source. Soon, they finished carting off the action. The water pipes and power lines were all destroyed, and those enemies underneath the ground became completely blind. There was no water, no electricity, and even the exhaust system was blocked. If these criminals could stand it and not come out, that would be a ghost. At this moment in the underground stronghold, Suddenly the entire underground space blacked out, making the criminals inside very puzzled. Hey, why is there a sudden blackout? A few of you go check. Someone shouted in the darkness. Several criminals, with flashlights are taking out their cell phones to turn on the light illumination, went to check the underground wiring. If you encounter content that can't be displayed or is incompletely displayed, garbled and wrong words, please exit reading mode or smooth reading mode to read normally. Soon they realized that the problem was above ground. There should be a problem up there. Ask to see what's going on above ground now. Hurry up. It's hot as hell. Even the exhaust system is having problems. What's going on? Do you want us to die of heat here? None of you can be held responsible for the problems with the cargo. Once again, the voice of an exasperated chorus of orders came from the darkness. 